Hello and welcome to EFAP TV. This is actually the first Hello. EFAP TV format one to be released. Welcome to... We've had other ones that didn't release. <laughs> I'm weird and no one likes me! I guess you could call this the first of the last of yeah, us. Yeah, new format. V We've shown people this format before in, in, in episodes, I just we haven't had a chance to use it yet. E yeah, let's play it safe. Welcome to 2024, everybody. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So weird. I feel like this one deserves a little bit of preamble, right? We got different levels of familiarity yeah. here. The yeah. Last of Us, the yeah. IP, the wonderful, wonderful IP that people, seriously, for one entry, people adored that IP. Not bad, yes. it did a good it job. Was, uh, I believe it was Naughty Dog's most successful game, more so than even Uncharted. So, and you hear about it everywhere. I remember I picked it up real late. I was like, fine, I'll play this video game. And then I was like, that was good. Question mark, and then I was you like, know, "Hmm." It's Cause... funny that you say that because my experience was similar. I bought it for uh, the remaster for PS4, and I was like, "That was I really liked it, but not as much as everybody else." <laughs> I just remember that was the I had so many mechanical the complaints, but I was like, "I like yeah, the story AI, a lot, though." I was really bad, but yes, the story was strong. Straightforward, simple, but hit a lot of beats and did so very effectively. And they're doing the what is it? It has an archetype name like Wolf and Cub or something. That's the thing. The common, yeah, the disgruntled, jaded old uh, man going on an adventure with a kid and with then young whippersnapper. Well, and it's funny to look back on, right? Because a lot of people yeah. said God of War 2018 is just like a blatant ripoff of The Last of Us, but now with Ragnarok, it's like they've finished out their story and it's fucking golden. How Last of Us uh, do it yeah, again? It's... it's like, shut up. Well, it's, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? Because it's it's the same thing where like Logan, right? People said it was ripping off children yeah. of men. It, it's just like, you know what? It's just like a storytelling like format. You're saying <laughs> like, this. Maybe that's all with... it is. Having watched, uh, we, we just decided for the fun of it, not for anything else, to watch Kung Fu Panda, and it's just like, Hero's, Hero's journey. journey. Yeah, just yep, hardcore really, Hero's Journey. Really well done. Because it's, it's the, the reality is that simple or complicated, people want to be moved, people want to feel something, people want to learn something about themselves or about the world. So even though The Last of Us is really straightforward, it's, you know, two people traveling across America, right, to maybe, like, save the world. And yet so much of it is derived from just those character interactions between Joel and Ellie and the people that they encounter on their adventure and how the two come to trust each other and value each other. It's a really strong story. And then they, they made a sequel to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird because it's like, oh yeah, that was, was that four years ago? What the fuck? That was uh, three, three years ago, nearly uh, oh, okay. 2020. Jeez. Yeah, oh, because th and the Last like... of Us itself is 10 years old this year. For some reason, that's easier for me to swallow than than how old Last of Us Two is. Last of Us Two, for some reason, feels like it's Older. new still. Than... No new. Oh, okay. it does feel new. Okay. It does feel new. It doesn't feel like it's nearly three years old. And maybe it's just yeah. a matter of um. It seems like Naughty Dog has been subsumed by The Last of Us to the detriment or to the exclusion of anything else that they could be making. Um, that's kind of how it feels right. Right now because the last of us was their last new ip and that was 10 years ago and they used to make them way more frequently there'd be a new one every generation and maybe they're working on a new one but it seems like yeah the last of us has become they're working on a multiplayer mode for two that they've been working on for like years they did the remaster or the remake actually for the first one because they did the first one then they did a remaster and now they've done a remake for ps5 and now they're doing the show which um neil Druckmann is directly involved in like in a major way to set the stage there you've got one a landscape of media yep. that's not great which we, we, we're most of the time you're getting a bad thing. Second part, it's an IP that was once beloved and is falling apart. And then three, it's an adaptation of a video game. So, but an adaptation of the video game that people loved. The one that everybody likes. Right. Well, I, all I'm trying to say is that this is where we're at. And of course, uh, dis discourse has followed for that reason. Being like, great, here we go again. And that's not to even include all of the weird comments about the production of this thing that have that have existed it's been a strange litany of comments about video games as a storytelling medium their merits compared to like film and television a lot of very dismissive remarks a lot of dismissive remarks about video games and other adaptations it's kind of like it's 2023 Arcane exists now, and and I mean that's that's like one of many, right? Obviously of varying quality, but like there was Castlevania, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I mean Sonic the Hedgehog. 
Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, you know, you know. Um, at, at, well, because it seems like at this point we are very much in the era of yeah, we're gonna adapt video games because like the number of Sony ones, like there's a Horizon show, God of oh, War damn. show, a Gears of War show, uh, and film, I believe, and they're making the Bioshock t TV show movie. Mm. Dude, it feels so weird because Bioshock, Gears, and uh, God of War, they're all things I care about a lot. Like depending on the well, era, sort of it's thing. all of that era, you know. It's uh like the late two thousands. That's kind of uh, I don't think it, I can take it. We, if all three are horrible. Insane. Well, um, it's interesting because now we're in the era where they're getting the money, right? They're getting the money, but oh, f yeah, what? Of course, there was Halo as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there was a Halo show. Everyone has forgotten um, about it, or they don't want to think well, about it at all. It's, it seems now at this point it's going to be impossible not to compare The Last of Us, one of Sony's flagship titles, and Halo, Microsoft's flagship title, and like yeah. the quality of those two shows. That, that's going to be an inescapable conversation, yeah. as is, of course, the nature of this adaptation, too. We absolutely should be getting the meme of Homer is Microsoft. Like, why does it mine look like that? Yeah, yeah. That's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why does it mine look like that? Well, Shit writers and people it, who didn't care about Halo. I was just going to say, if this is better than Halo, but the better. thing is... That is such an easy bar to pass that I'd be very surprised, especially with the level of blueprint they've got to work with. The relevant question, obviously, with this show is, is it going to be great? Um, mm. Which, it, at least based on the initial critical reception, seems to be, like, overwhelmingly positive. Like, we have been hearing good things. things. Yes, from audiences as well. I've heard nothing but positive things. This seems to be... It, it, it really is a situation where it seems like all of the stars align for something good, right? You got a lot of backing behind it, so there's not going to be any limitations by a way of what you want to achieve technically. Got a lot of great actors in the cast. One of the showrunners made Chernobyl, but then also, you know, one of the showrunners made The Last of Us Part 2. But he also <laughs> made the first one. He made the first one too. It's the thing that that's, probably whatever that comes forgotten. up. The old adage, what have you done for me lately? And that's that's the truth. Is what has he done lately in uh, The Last of Us 2? But he still made, the, and he did work on Uncharted as well, you know? Like, mm -hmm. he's, got, he's got a resume, and there's some good stuff on that resume. Well, so that's um, actually one of the worries a lot of people have, is that this show, it may very well take a lot from Last of Us 1, but it's going to be tweaking it until it matches yeah. the Last of Us 2 better. Yes, which is funny. That's, like, the right decision if you want to adapt both of them, right? If you want to adapt the second one to actually try and Make sense. logically account to make sense of it but you are gonna piss character. everyone off when you do that well it's just interesting because it's almost like it's not a retcon but it's almost like a meta retcon you know <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's kind of like yeah, a cause... retcon that you almost want to apply on a grander level to include the video game yeah people want the last of us to be adapted they don't want to see the last of us retold by neil Druckmann's preferences years or later that's not what people want we at efap you shouldn't be surprised by this take but if they actually did fix all of the problems in The Last of Us 2 story-wise and found a new adapt adapted and, and fixed up Last of Us 1 to match it. It involves Joel getting killed with a golf club. I'm pretty sure we said in our coverage, like, there is a way you could do that. It's gonna be hard. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be real fucking not hard. The not the way they did it in the, the game. That's, that's no, sure. we, we, we've got examples of great heroes getting killed. It's, it's just, like, the word respect keeps plowing into my mind. It's like, yeah, you gotta fucking respect them. You can't do it the way you did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not respect. That's very bad. Lots of different things being said about this already. It's a big old conversation piece because this show isn't just a show. It represents a lot more than that. A little bit yeah, of progress does. in the media landscape. What will this be remembered in a as? Sense. A step forward, a step back, a step to the side? Those <laughs> will just find out. Ah, oh, HP. Hello. I associate them with good things because of House of the Dragon. They, well, I mean, that's, that's not them Velma? Right. <laughs> category. Well, that's God. HBO Max. Oh. So, well, of course, we end up with a global pandemic. pandemic. How relevant. Also, that's John Hanna on the left. Oh my God, he's older. He's in The Mummy, if you guys remember. Do I know you? No, no, no. I, I've just got one of those faces. He was the funny I, brother. The guy on the, uh, the oh, right. Oh, yeah, is you're right. Yeah. Man, that's... The guy on the uh, right is viewer's big head from Silicon Valley. He's a completely useless appendage, and we all know it. Oh, hey, man. That's cool. I'm just having a moment of... Everything's so old. <laughs> yeah. Not bacteria, not viruses, so... Mushrooms. There are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. 
Viruses can make us ill, but fungi can alter our very minds. Fungus starts to direct the ant's behavior, telling it where to go, what to do, like a puppeteer. The person in the middle doesn't seem like a real <laughs> person, <laughs> like a robot <laughs> or an <laughs> android. He's an NPC so in the background. Yeah. It keeps its puppet alive by preventing decomposition. Oh. Dr. Schoenheist, you're in distress. He's having a bad time. Of this kind is real, but not in humans. True, fungi cannot survive if its host's internal temperature is over... 94 degrees. What if the world were to get slightly warmer? Well, now there is reason to evolve. A one warming. gene mutate, cordyceps, aspergillus, there it is. any one of them could be. That's the one. It, it is. The, the Last of Us deserves a lot of credit for a really creative new type of zombie. Yeah, and I would say this is a good start, too. This is yeah. a good start. This is an interesting way of delivering this uh, essentially exposition. So if that happens, we lose. <clears throat> Oh, you would have thought you would you would he do a, a fun like, thing do a of joke like, or something, yeah. Well, let's of course, hope that that's never going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that's time I buy pod. some portabella from the Krogers. What are they going to like choose the to do? Pods are real neat now. They put a lot of effort into them. Gotta love that theme too. And the music, yeah. But actually, I think they, they brought back the composer. They brought back the composer. Yeah, I'm there just he thinking is. about Halo. <laughs> Well, yeah, because Halo, they butchered it. They didn't like. <laughs> they they brought back the Halo you recognize, the Halo music for that like one moment at the end, so that you could fucking hate them. Yeah, for <laughs> just discarding everything else. Whereas here, they actually brought back the original composer. They brought back a lot of people. I think Tro uh, Troy Baker uh, is in it. Ashley Johnson as well, like in small roles. It's like that's nice. Steve Downs didn't get anything based on the game. PlayStation, we can't have our MCU, but we could corner the market on video games. Oh, that, no, they have a PlayStation Studios, like, MCU logo for their films and stuff. I saw it before Uncharted. It's got, like, Aloy, Ratchet and & Clank and stuff in it. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, I was referring to oh, them yeah. having a, the ancient that's, times. That's ten years. What, well, I'm interested. Is this, are they starting it earlier? They're starting where the game starts, right? No, the game was 2013. Interesting. Game starts the same uh, time as the, the like as the year it came out, so this is earlier. Yeah, this room is so gay. Girls can be gay so now, wait. rags. Oh, that's true. A lot of them. Oh my god, Dinjarin. It's, it's Joel. <laughs> Dinjarin, my favorite. No, Star he's character. from Krypton. He's Joel. No, it's Max Lord. <laughs> Pedro Pascal really isn't like the top world, isn't he? <laughs> he's doing all right, I think. Yeah. You know, I don't really like pancakes. I know you don't like them. It's for my benefit. You can get your uh, homework done. Fractions. <laughs> Still, I'm um, giving a good listen to that accent. Oh, he's doing. Yeah, he is. He's putting it on. Is there enough for Uncle Tommy? Oh, Don't Uncle Tommy. Ah, that's alive, him. Still alive, you old fucker. Oh, he loves you. He's dependent on me. Not the same. I'm not splitting his job. I barely want to split it with you. I'll be done by nine. By nine, right? I'll bring back a cake. I promise. I mean, I can tell he's trying, but it mostly sounds like him to me. It does, but maybe he's just not doing a super emphasized one. Your t-shirt's inside out. See, this is what I was thinking, like, one of the benefits, I guess, that it, it's, again, it's just like, when you're making a video game, especially when you got a lot of combat, it's like, well, you know, sometimes you have the challenge of how much do we have of no combat versus combat compared to yeah, you how much time can we spend. For every you know, minute here. you spend not doing combat, you're risking it. Whereas in this case, it's like, well, you can have the whole day, right? Yeah. Instead of starting, like, right at the outbreak. You guys we watch. get to spend a little bit more time seeing what Joel's, you know, normal life looked like. And yeah, that watch will matter. Oh, yeah. Knife. Those are some it's older so weird because too. I wonder when they were making this, that they were making it with the point of view in mind that everyone knows what's going to happen. Well, they no, have to do a large retard. number of- it's a very successful game. Yeah, so like a lot of people know, know exactly how this goes. Kind of like how if you do Batman's origin on- Oh, the they're setting up the, uh, setting up the neighbor. You know, I do really like The Last of Us. <laughs> I do like it too. <laughs> the original game. He's a zombie. Is he feeding him mushrooms? Well, because the, the idea in the game is that it was, like, disseminated through food. But yeah. Um, Atkins diet. Atkins was relatively it had a popularity around then, didn't it? In what the two thousands? Put that out. Happy birthday to you. Operation Desert Storm. Oh, bat veteran. Storm the desert. His uh, his brother seems to be they, uh, harder on the accent than he is. 
And yeah, 26th of September, that was Outbreak Day. So Bush. this is the day. Yeah. I thought they lived in Dallas. Did they live in Austin? I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's just... Because yeah, we are spending much more time with her, I guess, than... Uh... I mean, you, you got 10 episodes, right? Like, I think, I think that's well. a good decision. Yeah, I think it's a really good decision. I don't see how it could be a bad one. I guess that hair's coming in handy. It's like little pillows yeah. on the sides of your head there. I'm just waiting for the Shaun of the Dead style, like, someone falls over right in there. Waiting for somebody to start <laughs> coughing, yeah. <laughs> Reports of I'm today not... of many people falling over. Well, it's gonna be hard to top Shaun of the Dead's montage of flipping through it's all the It's just hard to top Shaun of the Dead's fucking great movie. Yeah. Or a little cat... thing. If, clock. That makes me think of Simpsons, that cat. I think they have a clock. Yeah. Effect, I wonder if all those clocks on the wall are correct. It must be ah, madness there, staring uh, at him, being fire wrong engine. all day. The fire engine yeah, is to put out the fires on the mushrooms. Well, and SWAT team there. They're called fire trucks, but they dispense water. Makes no fucking sense. Humans are stupid. Apparently they made up a whole language just for this scene. Things don't seem right. I don't like that, though. The clock becomes clearer when the, the line comes down. Line goes yeah. down. Yeah. Doesn't make you feel so bad about closing. Mm-hmm. Getting something for my dad. Oh. Hi, Mercy. I'm worried about that old lady. Is everything okay? Like on the news? Now it's like, all shit, then? like always. People out there need to get right with Jesus. Oh good. I was thinking we'd make some cookies. Chocolate chip. Raisin. Oh. No one likes those old lady. No one likes those. <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> Every raisin you bought could have been a chocolate chip purchased. You fool. Oh good, the raisin cookies no one will eat are done. <laughs> She'll eat one of them. Grandma could eat them. Grandma's, that's the only thing she eats. She only eats raisin cookies. Everyone starts to like raisins when they get old. That's just how it works. Because they feel like they are turning into raisins. <laughs> they become cannibals. Hey, Mrs. Adler, could I borrow this? That's creepy. That was nice and creepy. Oh, I should go. You sure? Yeah. Well, you're taking yeah. some cookies. If you give someone raisin cookies, you're essentially saying, here, you throw these away. <laughs> here, I don't like you. <laughs> Back to normal, I guess. Oh, Doggo don't trust it. Doggo's can sense bullshit. He's like, Grandma, you're not Grandma. The other thing, you're making a show like this, it's always tempting to just, how will you portray this world slowly showing signs of falling apart? It's weird to see jets, but, well, I guess the air is where they'd be. It's ten. Oh no. Gave us the wrong size for the headers. Where's the cake? Shit. Come on, man. I'll get us one tomorrow. Fixed it for you. Did you? What? I don't hear anything. <laughs> Thank you. This scene is really beat for beat. It's even yeah. got, like, identical dialogue in a lot of places. Well, and that's the thing. It feels weird, but it's true, I guess, to say they're doing well. It's like, yeah, you're following the guy. I think they're doing well. Yeah, I think they're doing well. Here. What's this? Your birthday? Hmm. Fixed it for you. You kept complaining about your broken watch. So, uh, figured, you know. You like it? I think mean, this is... It's what? nice, but I... I think it's stuck. It's not... What? No, 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 no. Oh, ha, ha. Did you? What? I don't hear anything. <laughs> that was lame. <clears throat> You're lame. Yeah, I know. Where did you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. Where'd you get the money for this? Drugs. I sell hardcore drugs. It's better when I do. Oh, good. You started helping out with the mortgage then. Yeah, you wish. It was only $20, which I stole from you. Besides, it's the thought that counts. And you were never going to do it for yourself, so. Yeah, so far, I'm digging it. I want to see what happens next. Well, that's well, the thing, right? If none of us knew anything, and right. we watched this with zero context, that opening scene has already set the stage, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the creepy granny and the... Because he said, if you don't get me out today, you won't be able to get me out at all, assuming they don't let people out on Saturdays and Sundays. Justice is off well, on I, weekends. 
I actually don't know. I was just curious. I don't either. I, I didn't know, know that that's a thing. I wonder if we're gonna... No, we're not... Okay, so, yeah. But this is basically where... Closer to where the... This is where... Everything goes wrong. The game wrong. began with that scene, basically. And yeah. this is... Yeah. Oh, no aliens. Interesting, too, because this... This game came out around about the craze for the zombie stuff, right? The zombie era of media. And that was like Walking Dead was huge. Um, they should be yeah. watching. Were, could, would they be watching Paul W. S. Anderson's Resident Evil series? I think the first yeah. one was out by then, right? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> that was the dog's vision of stupid woman. Come back! You fool! They said to stay indoors. If the dog doesn't want to go home, you know something's up. Oh, is she gonna no joke. go inspect a bit? You can add that in, why not? A little unsettling. Well, That's really open. unsettling, the door open like that, yeah. Blur. I'm half the expecting, like, seat. Grandma's just staring at the wall in one of these rooms or something. Yeah, just something weird. That empty wheelchair has been in two shots pretty deliberately right now. Did she be taking getting a cell phone and calling Dad? I feel like this thing? would be enough to call him, yeah. She was asleep when he left, so she should be panicking a bit. Yeah. It is 2003 though, she might on. actually... Did she have a phone? Oh boy. Close the door anyway? Oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely would've been closing doors myself. Why would you drop that? Why would you drop that? You fool! It just saved your life! Keep it! He her. Is he worried about the blood on it? Or? We gotta go, Sarah. Listen to me. It's not just the Adlers. We're gonna be brave, and we're gonna get out of this. Hey, let's go, come on! You lock your doors now! Come on, come on, get in! You just killed Granny Adler! Three fish, she was running at us. You was crazy. Oh, you're dead, buddy. You take Daddy. We don't know. They're saying it's a virus, some kind of parasite. Is it from terrorists? We don't know. That'd be a fair question the, 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 the age of it. Yeah. Of course not. Yep. Well, how do you know we're not sick? They're saying it's mostly people in the city. I went into the city. We have to go a lot. Right? We're fine, trust me. Listen, lady. We'll just have to wing it. Hopefully we're okay, all right? Whether we got it or not, we gotta go. Oh, they, this is what I mean. It's like, yeah, there are a lot of bits that hit in one. Just so like, just keep hey, driving, stop. Tommy. Stop! Keep driving. Stop. Yeah. That's important for Joel's character. Yeah, it is. Come along. Someone else will come along. By the way, just this is already so much more work for him to do than in Mandalorian. Absolutely. It's because Joel Cause he didn't do character. shit in Mandalorian. Mando is nobody. They're riding a little low. They're very low. Oh, this is bad. Everyone and their mother had the same damn idea. The sequence looking from the back seat. Well, it's, it's just like in the game. Turn here, turn here. No, 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 no. Come on, people, move. What are they running from? Get us out of here. I'm trying. Yep. Even I remember that. Yeah, yeah missed pot. I can't drive through them. Are you serious? Just keep going. We can't stop here, Tommy. I can't fucking drive through them. They're Go. back up there. They're behind me too. There, there, there. Hold on. Go. Uh oh. Wait, what? Get her out of here, Joel. Go. Surely you can go around, right? You can just go around, yeah. Yeah, you can it, just go around. Can you run? Is it like so close to the wall he can't get over? That is incredibly inconvenient. Okay. Eh. I feel like you could. Yeah, I feel like you could get. You could. We're in, oh, in the games. They in the game. Yeah, you can crawl together. over. If you're this desperate, over. you would absolutely jump over the the trunk yeah, of uh, the police car. Yeah. You just crawl over. Yeah. 
Oh, jeez. Close doors. Close the door. What is the door? Oh, I guess it was really close. Still, because right now you don't even know if these things are smart enough to follow you through doors. I'm sorry, repeat. Hey, no one told you to move. Yes, sir. We're not sick. <laughs> sir. We are not sick! <laughs> Please, don't. Yeah, it's amazing that he didn't kill you. Yeah. It's actually fucking miraculous that you are not dead. You're okay. You're okay. Move your hand, baby. Move your hand. No. I know, baby. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it hurts. Okay. Damn, 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 damn. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tommy, help me! Joe. Come on, look it up. Come on, baby. That's about everything I would have expected them to do. Uh, yep. I would not have expected them to deviate from that. They, well, I mean... Really? And tell the same story. It's instrumental. This is after Godzilla. I was going to say it was Boston and King of the Monsters, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Got nuked, and then they totally pretended that didn't happen. We don't want you falling out of the chair. What's your name? How did you get this? What if I told you that after we gave you some medicine, we're gonna find you your favorite food to eat? Would you like that? It's just a little needle. You're safe. I think they cut to a harsh fire after her saying that on purpose. So did Joel say in this he was 30-something for the 20-year gap? Uh, well, because in the game, he's about 50. So it's probably, yeah, about matches. Or like 55, something like that. Mm. He's fairly old. No surprise here. Yep. He was infected! Yeah, because uh, it showed red on the little detector thing, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> This isn't in the game. Jim, we're going to be meeting Tess yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. I'm actually curious what we are going to see in total the first in episode. What, like this episode? Yeah, because yeah. hour and a half. Damn. My yeah, guess would be that That's we're going to get three, basically three. Joel and Ellie meeting. Um, and, then, and then like episode two, I imagine, is them leaving Boston. I reckon That's the thing. season ends with the end of the game. I think so. That would be, which I guess is I, interesting. That seems like a safe like, bet. How long can you keep it going? I suppose is the interesting question. Because yeah, we've got the uh, there, the whole... we got two games, you know. So, well, and there's um, yeah. there's a lot of things that happen in the game that you can extend. That's true. Well, it's it's part of kind of I guess what's going to be interesting as an adaptation is like I imagine that we're going to get a lot of things extended. Man, this, you execute them, there's nothing else we can do? I guess leaving quarantine zones is a huge no -no. It is. Well, yeah, because if you leave but, and then sneak back in, then you could destroy everything. Yeah, if you snuck out way. and sneak back but in. Like, yeah. yeah. I wonder if the first punishment should be exile. Well, then you uh, just... Well, yeah, I think I guess, if you maybe. knew that, then... But they might come back in, right? If they well, snuck if they, back that's in That's what I'm saying, first again. punishment. If they are exiled yeah. and they come back, then maybe death is I guess suitable. the thing is, is that maybe they don't want to take any chances. I guess so. Ah, this world. world. Sorry, I, I didn't just, expect you to count. I could imagine they could be upset here and there because of uh, family members making mistakes, you know. Bartering. Bring it back. Uh, it's pronounced bataring. Bartaring. Bartaring. Like tartar sauce. Hi. From Atlanta? I don't know where he gets them from. I just know they're real. It supposedly only makes two things. Pills and bullets. So the more you shoot people, the harder it is to sleep, I guess. <sighs> oh, you guess? I need to bag back. That's, I like that as a touch. That even plastic Need the bag back. Like, yeah, yeah I, I would like that back. Four of them on that. Stay off the streets for the next few nights. Fucking fireflies been blowing shit up all week. Guys are jumpy and tired. 
What was he getting for that? Was it, um... Uh, he got food credits, I think. Because remember, that was in the game, right? Like, the food yeah. stamps. Or tokens, tickets, something like that. It's not like I planned on ripping you off. How about we just let it go? Guys fucked you up. Yeah, so discipline them. What about your guy? Now, I give you my word that he won't hurt you. I'll tell him that I got jumped by some guys. He is saying everything I, she should he say. He wants on. to survive yep. this encounter. Yep. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Who or what? <laughs> Man, lucky that wasn't you. Also, don't breathe that. This would be the fireflies, right? Must be, yeah. Which is incredibly coincidental. He's gonna let her go anyway, yeah. I guess. That sounds like it. Wait, all of them are like knocked out except her? Okay. Oh, wow, that's lucky. I don't even know where the other guy went. I was gonna say the main dude, I guess I he ran off. Robert ran off, right? Maybe, yeah. or he's in the corner? Or well, because remember, the, the deciding thing was that Robert stole their guns, uh, yeah. sold them to the Fireflies. You know a change like how long Tess will be in this story? That's something that really, to me, depends on how you handle it. It's not like an outright wrong to me. It's going to be dependent on what they do. I'm not a firefly! Count slowly and clearly from one to ten. One, two, three, four. Slowly and clearly. One. Fuck. You. State your name. Slowly. Veronica. Same as yesterday. Let me out or you're gonna pay, motherfuckers! Ellie in The Last of Us 1 is just so gosh darn likable. Nothing? Is there any chance it's coming in at night? You're sleeping, you miss it? When I'm sleeping, Gabriella listens, or my son, the smart one, not the other one, God bless him. <laughs> if Tommy responded, we'd know. It hasn't been that long. It's been three weeks. It's never taken him more than a day to respond. Show me where the tower is. Joel, it's in Wyoming. There are worse things than infected out there. Californians. Are are but you're sure Tommy's okay? It's, uh, it's the Cody Tower. Q bar four, but I don't know exactly what... Probably listen to his explanation. I was, I was actually about to Next. say, dude, you want... He's gonna have the best information out of anybody, right? Yeah. You're gonna... You let him talk and explain in thorough detail where he thinks you need to be That going. little circle he's made on the map, that is incredibly important, down to the last little scratch. Because you might say, sure. it's probably here, but if not, you might want to check over here where they're, you know... Yeah, Wyoming's a fucking long way. I guess he's trying to figure out where word is taken. God. It's gonna be a fun trip. Right. Dulls the pain. I got jumped by a couple guys. You're lying. Come on, you know these guys born after the outbreak? Never learned how to argue, they start swinging. I need the battery, Tess. The truck's no good without one, and if I don't get to Tommy soon, he's gonna die out there. Okay, fuck it. We get our money back and the battery. All this for such a mundane item. No, I promised Robert that you wouldn't hurt him. Ain't no mundane items in this world. To hurt him. That's the idea. So let's go hunt that motherfucker down. Swear, because I just had to—I had to replace my car battery uh, about a week or about a week ago. I just walked in, bought one, walked out with it. Simple as. But now it's like worth potentially killing over having a working car battery, or imagine a charger, or a McDonald's Happy Meal, or a McDonald's Happy Meal. That's true. Girl or boy toy doesn't fucking matter. Marlene. We've already lost four people, and we're. What's the point of this? One of them. Now, see, I don't think I'd be My putting the logo up on the wall. And why do you have yeah. um, <laughs> And the guys you have guarding her won't tell me shit? But... Tell them to follow fucking orders. You two, go to Southeast 3, now. That'll quell the uh, I wanted inquisitiveness. To Are the Fireflies being fitter anyway? Rebellion takes time. If you fight for 20 years and you get nowhere, you're not a rebellion. You just spray paint. Why do we spray paint that? Why do we do that? I can understand putting it in... Here, random places here, as a form of here, like we're here yeah. we're, we're moving things and, but in your actual hq we're quitting no we're taking that random girl locked in that room west that'll be the cure yeah keep it quiet i wonder if we're gonna get much like pure because in the game like the fireflies get yeah basically wiped out 
moving west. Would and that's make it, sense well. to retcon just how much we got to learn about them if we're going to be going with the Last of Us uh, 2 storyline. Uh, also, they've changed the stuff with Tommy because there was no like big urgent thing with Tommy. It was just no. go find him. He fireflies he can help you out and even it's such a tough sell you, you want us to the idea that you really want to make like endear us to joel and everything and then try and make it to the end he was wrong in his decision i don't know what they're gonna do i'm very yeah, curious i don't know either if you're feeling lost you tell me to look for the light and i'll break your jaw is that how the I fireflies would... recruit oh. i can tell you to seek the shadow well, it cost us a couple of cards but uh we got him. I'm not sure why they didn't just have it like because with the big explosion and everything it's like it was just before, it was just Tess comes back, she's injured, let's go get Robert. Hmm. So, Veronica. How are you feeling? The same. A little bit down. Where are you gonna go? Back to Federal Military School? They put me there when I was a baby. It's for orphans. I did. Ellie. Are you my fucking mom or something? I look like your mom. I'm the leader of the Fireflies in the Boston QZ. Why would you terrorist dump me with Fedra? Terrorist? Was Riley a terrorist? Ba -ba -ba -ba. I was gonna say, we're running out of time to do our assumed action set piece for the Robert stuff, right? Ah, uh, well, yeah. I guess this would be it, right? Hey, look, they're like getting down, taking off the backpack like in the video game. I think they based that in the video game off real life, though. You know Very what? true, real life, my friend, real life did happen before video games. <laughs> Real life if you remember, before. I know it's true. Yeah, sometimes I wonder, Rex. Sometimes it is, I wonder. It is disgusting how real life, real life is just copied by video games. Oh, that's the one. I think they'll go for the stealthy approach. Oh, oh. Oh, shit. oh my God! It's annihilation. Yeah. I remember that movie. He wasn't down here last time. Did we be Did breathing? After it? Ah, well. I don't do the spores anymore. No spores in this show. Oh, because that would cover up actors' faces. This will, I, I, you could argue that'd be a reason. This, it makes things less complicated for them storytelling-wise, I guess. Does it though? Yeah, there's less to worry about. I just, I don't know that that's a reason to stop doing it. I don't know. The spores was kind of an it's interesting like thing to have. Structure. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, there there will be consequences, obviously. Like, like there has to be. You smell that? Asbestos gunpowder. Uh oh. Ooh. That's Robert, right? Is it? I was trying to spot the face. The battery's no good. Oh. He still tried to sell it. I say we're really deviating from the game. Really, we're not in a wider context, but we are with how closely they were doing it before. Well, yeah, because this is totally different. Oh, well, yeah, because she got shot, yeah. Marlene? The war must be going pretty shitty for you to be buying from scumbags like him. Yeah, it kind of has been. The merch was bad. <laughs> She's standing there with a bullet hole. <laughs> like, yeah. it's nothing great. Go. Not at her. Can you just not be a barbarian, please? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'd want my knife back, but yeah, it's probably not worth pushing like, it right now. It's there. It's there. Like, yeah, I'll get it later, you know? It's our business to know things. To know things. You're the cause of it. You turn my own brother against me. Okay, Joel. I wonder if we're, we're going to get any flashbacks of, like, Joel and Tommy. Because like Tommy is not... He so was not happy okay. about those experiences that he had. Yeah. I'm not going with them. Let me take her. We don't smuggle people. Sorry. I can do it. Kim, you don't have a fucking ear on your fucking head. Could you please? Oh. I, I really didn't... Be, I, didn't I really didn't know she meant literally. I thought she was saying yeah. that, like, What's you're an idiot. And I know what you're both capable of. What are you giving them? What are they capable of? You get her there safely, and they'll give you what you need. Not just a battery, the whole thing. Fueled up truck, guns, supplies, all of it. Um. I swear. Yeah, sorry. That's a lot of stuff. Is it really worth the I price? Swear. Because they could just go on a resource adventure themselves, right? Uh, they could, I but I guess so. There's still a lot to... of stuff out there. What I'm saying is, like, if you I... go and deliver her and come back, we'll get you a truck and guns and some supplies and stuff and it's like we could probably get that across like during delivering her probably well because the original thing was robert sold them the guns and so it's like well i bought the guns for and square so you know like yeah i would have played more into the fact that it's obvious that this girl is fucked if you don't do this but before we hand her over they give us everything that we want if not we kill her there and then deal really that fast don't fuck this up That's, that's me to this show, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, same here. 
Because it just, there have been a few instances where the deviation is like, oh, that's like neutral, and then there are parts where it's good, and then there are parts where it's like, hmm, seems like a worse choice. That, that just made you more suspicious, honestly. Uh, yeah, that made yeah, you more suspicious, say, idiot. Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, nobody here knows who you are, or that. There's like, no reason. Yeah, nobody's you. looking for you. You're just a girl. Yeah, nobody's you're just a random LA. person. Give us a minute, all right? I'm guessing that all that the, the, because. Uh, well, so I guess playing. we should wait until. Can I just open the door if you wanted? She can hear them too. <laughs> Who's Bill Cast as? Who's Cast? Uh, as it's as Nick as Offerman. I think that could work out. Let's hope. Uh, that could be really cool. Yeah. If this is important and she just randomly stumbled over it and. It's annoying so when that happens. Yeah. Oh come on! You knew she heard all that, right? Radio is a smuggling code, right? 60s song, they don't have anything new. 70s, they got new stuff. A lot of this dialogue is one to one. What are you doing? Killing time. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm sure you'll figure that out. Well, what am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. So what's the deal with you anyway? You some kind of big wig's daughter or something? Something like that. Oh, the radio came on when you were sleeping. It kept saying, like, like, wake me up before you go-go. Shit. 80s means trouble. Code broken. Listen, it could be something specific. We don't know. It's time to go. Wonder if it actually would have been a good idea to go at night in that case. Yes. Because there's a curfew because of the Firefly stuff, so they went at night instead of during the day while there's like... A Remember how the guy said earlier? They'd be jumpy. They'll be... I guess they've got don't, this passageway. Don't go out at night because of the yeah. Fireflies. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me think. It, I, it could be fun for a conversation, right? Like, what makes more sense? Because, of course, you have the cover of Darkness, but you also have they're on high alert, so... Yeah. It depends on where the... Um... High alert in the day anyway, right? They'll be all over the place. Potentially, and yeah. It depends on where you're going yeah. specifically and where the ins and outs got, are. You got no good choices, really. Because <laughs> once you're uh, outside yeah. the wall, darkness is almost certainly best. Yes. Uh, we, and yeah, of course. Of course, now it becomes clear, like, the reason they showed us those people getting hanged is that raises the stakes for this. I feel like you'd want to be really sparing with that helicopter. Yeah. Fuel for that the, must be precious. Fuel, yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Fuel for helicopters is precious. Being able to go... Like, a helicopter is one of the most valuable things you could possibly have. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, right after a big firefly attack, you know. I suppose that's the angle, yeah. But still? Still, though. Like, are you just, like, looking if, randomly yeah, if, with, a, with a light to see if you're... literally see using it just to fly over and use a spotlight, that is a huge waste of something so very valuable. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, is he peeing? Oh, it's not the friend, is it? Uh, uh, man, uh, I was wondering if they were gonna have this be the ending. Actually, get on your knee. Listen, you let us do this run, we'll split the cards with you. Oh, will you? Yeah. Really, man? Yep. We're doing this by the book. Out of your fucking mind. We can fix this. Move. Oh, you didn't need to show it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. He pulls that trigger once and a gunshot happens. And he would totally have pulled. Absolutely. That this was also is... an interesting reaction from her there, that first one. That one's fine, though. Damn, don't, like, hurt your hand. You'll need that. No, no! No, I'm not sick! No! I'm not sick! No! I'm not sick! No! Look! Look! This is three weeks old! Nobody lasts more than a day! We gotta move, Joe! They're gonna take the gun, Why take the gun. Why didn't they have part of the conversation where, like, they thought that Marlene set them up? They thought that they were, like, getting put in a shit situation. They would be thinking that, surely, right? There'd be so much. I mean, maybe we're gonna get it. The next episode, maybe? We have to have a come to Jesus meeting, yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of next stuff episode. to be talked about. Surely that's the end. What else we got? Man, I would grab more if I could off that guy. So, right after he something. left, he got a radio message then. From Tommy, I guess. Or to signify after something three about weeks. Well, that sounds I do. Oh, there's the buildings. Yeah, 
Well then. Hmm. Well, that wasn't bad at all. I would say it I think achieves it the rank solid. of good. I would say it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's just that there were some minor things where it's like, just minor little like, hmm. Yeah, or, need some hmm. tweaks. Um, yeah, to... but, it's, but that's the thing, it's tweaks. Like, the core's really strong, which it should be, right? Like, if you're adapting. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. Again. I think this is uh, definitely good. Because, like, the burst shot that takes out his original daughter, I'm pretty sure that's just exactly how it is in the game and i think i even i'm even like one of the people who's like hmm mm, but, uh, i don't know how you I, I don't know how it's possible for you to miss but all right you remember frank does he get more more wounded in the in the game version than in this he's less wounded in the the game version i don't think he even gets hit so much of this is like beat for beat very similar but then yeah, there are which, a few parts where it's a little bit if it turns out to be um beat for beat almost throughout not not changing like this is strictly a hypothetical i don't think this is going to happen but if they were to do it one to one and only changing stuff for like pragmatic reasons for uh, adaptation no reason why this wouldn't be very popular it's already got a built-in audience and then it would finally prove like maybe you should stick to the source when you adapt maybe the you games should, yeah, maybe you should respect that what you're adapting has merit because it's, it's funny um, to me that this might get quite a bit of hatred because of the current zeitgeist around the IP, but at the same time, this could be the thing we need to finally prove that uh, video game adaptations, the only thing that was stopping it is paying a fucking attention to the original well, and yeah, why people like it. Well, yeah, because in this case, like as we saw during the opening sequence, a lot of it was just take the same material but expand it. Don't really change it. Add new information, sure. I add new scenes, but like keep the, the, the core stuff the same. Because it's the same, right? Like, Joel's got the same setup in terms of what his character arc is going to be. Ellie's probably going to have the same stuff too, right? And I imagine it's going to be yeah, cause... fairly consistent for everybody, right? Like, Bill's going to have probably more stuff with uh with his partner, Frank. And then you'll probably have more for Tommy. Maybe Maria as well. Like, it, it just seems like if this is any indication of the way that they're going to adapt it, it will just be keep basically the same beats, but expand them and tweak them in a little bit. Which, compared to the likes of Halo, which, like, radically... Yeah, the story is different. Well, it annihilates it. It's just, they it doesn't even do it seem like Halo at all. Well, and it's why we're, well, they we're highlighting the spores, working, right? Yeah. It's not because I love the spores and I wish the spores were here as a fan of spores. It's that mm, if you don't have spores, it, there's a couple of things you're going to have to change in the story yeah. now. Gonna well, it's items you have, yeah. items yeah. of value. It's things you can I go places you might not be able to go, items you need to have. It's a sense of tension. I will say, in that, in this, the only thing to me that seemed like noticeably different and that it will probably have major implications is seemingly the stuff with tommy because like in the game all it was was like tommy is off you know in like he's in jackson he's not with like the fireflies anymore he's not with joel anymore uh you gotta go find tommy because he can help you link up with the fireflies because of his connections like that was it whereas it seems they've got more of like a pressing tommy is in trouble maybe which makes me wonder, mm -hmm. is it not just going to be that they get to Jackson and everything's really chill, and then, you know, they have their little moment together? And My yeah, guess like, is that they're setting something up as, like, a different plot point, but, I mean, otherwise, it's pretty pretty similar. And if we didn't have any context, if we were to be watching this just as a TV show, I imagine right now we'd be talking about, oh, this, this uh, you know, Joel's the character. He seems to be, like, he's, he's hardened as a result of what happened with his daughter and that uh this new girl i i wonder how much i'm gonna be basing it off what i know versus what i'm given would i have concluded from this one episode that this is clear we're going to be repeating do i think they've set enough groundwork to be like oh look he's got a bad relationship with this girl because he doesn't want to even risk getting close to it or am i being a bit harsh and i should wait for at least another episode before we've set that foundation well, it's one episode and we only spent half of it in our uh like they barely well they, they met barely each other for like five minutes yeah yeah uh, I, I get what you mean, because, I'm, like, I'm going to be... It's very hard for me not to view this without always constantly, like, drawing my attention yeah, back. Yeah, it's tough. They did like, I got to I gotta well, really uh, separate uh, them out as uh, they are well, separate. Well, I, I guess that would, be, that would be the thing to clarify. Everything where it's, like, it's different, I'm not, like, thinking that it's bad or anything. I'm more just like, hmm, I'm curious. Yeah. Like, the Tommy thing. Like, that could be that could be a whole episode. Well, the spores. Be, I guess. Like, it's not necessarily to... bad. We'll have yeah. to see what happens. Like, you know, even something that's seemingly way less consequential, which is just, like, the, the whole thing with the guns versus them getting the battery and the supplies to go find Tommy. Yeah. It's just different. Like, whether or not it's, it's a better or worse change, I think I think the only things would be like, man, that it was the same guy that you bumped into, like out there, when in the game it was just two random soldiers. It's like that's very coincidental. Um, though I guess it's pretty inconsequential. It didn't seem to make much of a difference, right? Like, there's a couple whether of or not it was him. coincidences of like I would call them mid. They are mid coincidences in terms of impact. Um, yes, some of these. Yeah. They're not, they don't destroy anything, but they're not exactly small. <laughs> they wouldn't be called well, small. Well, and I guess it's really interesting because it's like the game didn't have those. 
So, like, you changed it and kind of added coincidences where they didn't really exist in the games. Yeah, and, and part of the trouble is that we, I, I guess we need to wait a little longer before we can be definitive because it might be an aid of something we don't know yet in terms of what of story they want to tell. Or the, there's more information that we'll get to contextualize some of these things better. Who knows? But yeah. Just, um... Yeah, I mean, there's not much to... There's not much to be crit critical of, really, by way of, like, what's happening with the plot, because we barely started yet, and otherwise, in terms of character, I feel like, you know, like, with each scene, we've gotten a pretty good read of every person, you know? I mean, like, I, me, I feel like by the end of this episode... This might be the very first proper archetype of what people want when you adapt from a game to a TV show. Um, and yeah. it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy, right? It's like, oh, surely Arcane. It's like, no, 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 Arcane, Arcane's not the same thing. It's it's like a, a really great TV show that uh, is inspired by League of Legends. This is practically telling the same story, but again. Um, yes, yeah, so it's more of a direct adaptation because when it, you, you run the gambit, it's like, and hey, we compare it to the other Naughty Dog thing. Uncharted's very different. It has Nate and it has Sully, but doesn't have Elena, doesn't have the same El Dorado, like a central, doesn't have the same villains doesn't have the same dynamics or interactions at all. It's it's very different. Whereas in this case, it's, it's the same plot. It's just like minor changes and variations. And there's not a lot of video game adaptations that are like that, that are directly doing... Mortal Kombat was not really directly like pulling any story from any Mortal Kombat game. Kind of pulled bits and pieces. And of course, Halo was like not even fucking close <laughs> like it's totally different well that's kind of the thing right uh, you'd be like there they should theoretically be four results ones that are uh, the unfaithful but you know well executed so uh, yep. arcane unfaithful and badly executed bad halo. halo uh faithful um, and badly executed is that have we got one for that i the we problem I is think we got one for that. there are, there are not so. many faithful video game adaptations there just aren't um at least they haven't been for a they just, while. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the that's uh, the reality we've been in for so long. They just don't care. Evil, when you adapt something like Resident Evil, yeah. it's like, what am I taking? Zombies? Mansion? Yeah. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, of course, it's... Because it, when I'm thinking about other examples, it's like Castlevania is kind of like its own thing. Like, I don't think that one was retelling. It was kind of like a... It pulled characters, right? But different scenarios. And then Edge Runners is like adjacent. It's like set in the same universe, but it's not an adaptation of Twitter. What about that, that Pac Man movie with Adam Sandler? Oh, Pixels. Pixels. Yeah. Everyone loved that, uh, right? That's right. They uh, did. Uh, Everyone yeah. did love that one, yeah. And then, of um, course, you have. I'm sure that there's, uh, there's other ones I'm getting as well. And then you'd have Faithful and Good, and, and that good. is what I would rate this right now. Yeah. Well, this episode for sure. Well, yeah. you know what's crazy um, is that there are people who, if they loved Last of Us enough, could be like, this fucking shit isn't faithful. Have you seen how much they fucked it? I'd be like, yeah, see, everyone's going to draw a line uh, differently. <laughs> like, I pretty guess darn the thing close, is, like, I, I feel imagine. like I've got my references, and it's like, there are a lot of lines that are just, like, identical. Your watch is broken. Your watch is broken. You mumble in your sleep. You mumble in your sleep. Um, one it really one. depends on how you do it, right? Because, like, if, if it was, how much does it stay one-to-one? -one? It's like, well, okay, it doesn't in a lot of ways, but, like, no, the, no, the no. spirit is absolutely, we know exactly what we're getting from this. It's going to be what the point of the game is. Listen to me, I know this hurts. <laughs> You're going to be okay, baby. Stay with me. I'm going to pick you up. I know, baby. I know it hurts. I know this hurts. You're gonna be okay. All right. Baby. Baby. Baby, listen to me. I gotta get you up. Come on, baby. Please. I know, baby. I know. Sarah. I know, baby. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tommy, help me! Joe. Come on, get up. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, please. The fact that they were even trying to, like, mirror the vibe or the atmosphere of specific moments in the game with the framing, right? Like in the car, where it's very much 
Because, I mean, they did the same thing, right? In the game, Sarah is the POV character in the, yeah, uh, the opening. In the opening, and then it, it kind of transitions gradually over to Joel, and they did the same thing, too. And, like, it, it feels very deliberate. It's weird to see that kind of thing with the comments that came out before this thing you released. What are you, what are you thinking of? Like one's about storytelling in video games you got you got a vibe oh i get you. yeah right it's like why were you like it it seems maybe that maybe that's the neil Druckmann influence of trying to like inject the stuff from the game that he worked on yeah maybe i'm not sure it's i mean it's always going to be well, hard to say right like, it could just be the man was saying some stuff that didn't translate well slash he wasn't explaining himself too well just take for example uh the whole like oh you can reset a whole thing because it's a video game and that'll ruin the your investment yeah. blah 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 you could imagine if he was given like an hour to explain entirely what he means he could be like a lot of the time in cutscenes we do it because it's really hard to have something bombastic or significant drama happen and then like reset because you died or you didn't press the switch or you didn't blah blah, blah. so we usually cordon those big moments off to cut scenes so that they are like that's one of the many reasons why that might happen uh, so you can't fuck it up and you're fear you, you are permanently progressed you don't see that twice you don't see something like his daughter dying twice because you didn't kill enough guys at one point that's done and it's yeah. done you know um and then he could be like and that's what we're doing in the TV show now, it's going to be every moment is one you see once, and so we can further focus on, like, that aspect that gaming does really well, but I'm saying this as if it's even close to something he might think. I don't know. I'm just going from the fact that I've seen this, and I'm like, oh, you clearly respect the game, then. It's it's hard not to get the sense that there is respect being paid to the game in... in mm -hmm. Uh, like even even yeah, in what weird. we've seen so far, it is kind of weird, right? The comments, but then again, a lot of his comments were like, "This is the greatest story ever told in video games," which like, calm down. But st yeah. but still, though, right? like, it, but, yeah. I'm fine with him well, saying it's, it's his it's, favorite, but greatest it's, 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 bit much. Uh, well, let's put it this way. It's a lot better that he doesn't seem to have contempt for The, for the <laughs> yes. Last of Us. Yeah, even it's if nice. That's a good about, start. Even if his comments about the industry and the medium as a whole have been very bizarre. Like, it seems like a lot of it has been fawning over the games. And I guess the fact that you've got, like, some involvement from, like, Naughty Dog, you know, people that does that. Um, I, yeah, I guess just... all I would say is, like, after that first episode, it's like, yeah! You know? Yeah. Like, that's... Well, that's, uh, uh, what are the neat. talking points? Like, I think that all the acting is... Uh, fine to good. Um, I'm not sure I've yes. been blown away yet. I'm hoping I will be when we get to the harder stuff. Uh, but well, be, I mean, you know, it'd be I, nice if I there's mean, a performance in here that makes me go like, "Holy fuck, that was amazing!" Well, I mean, yeah. we got a lot of a lot of really crazy moments, right? Like, um, yeah. like Ellie against David, the the cannibals, like that scene. Yeah, we've the got a lot Henry to come. stuff as well. Like, there's yeah, and of course the ending. There's a uh, there's a lot of stuff that that could be like really uh like really showcasing um, production value. It, it it feels like a movie, obviously. That's we're in that era. Yeah. TV shows looking like yep. films. Um, this one's got a lot of money behind it, but more so than Halo, which it oftentimes felt cheap. This one felt like super duper cohesive. Like yeah. there was never a point where I'm like, man, I feel like you're on a set. I didn't yeah, really have yeah. those sort of I never feeling. got those moments at all. It all felt There's a lot of there's a lot of cool cinematography choices again. It's like there's a clear dedication to like realizing something here, so that's a good sign. Definitely shot with care. Um Oh yeah. So I'm, and, and I'm I, really I, curious to see more. And I guess something that I, I would like to actually give them props for is like bringing back the original composer is really cool. Um, bringing back some of the actors from the games either to play the same character or to appear in some other capacity is really cool because like a few people from the games are going to be in the show. Not playing the same characters, obviously. Likely to do um, with Druckmann's connection as well. That would have facilitated a lot of that, I'd imagine. Listen, well, I think it's just Last of Us 2 is terrible, to... but if this is worth complimenting, we can't be lying about it. <laughs> like, that's just how well, it Well, I mean, if, if this show is really great, he deserves credit for that, because he is, like, a major... He, he co-wrote the show. Like, <laughs> it's, he's, honestly, he's directed a few episodes, so... The thing about it is, like, if it were as good as it currently is, when this one episode for, like, nine out of ten episodes, and then the tenth one, they change everything to match Last of Us 2, <laughs> that is gonna piss me <laughs> off so hard oh yeah but hopefully they, they're not going to be doing that i don't um, know what they're going to be doing i don't know what they're up to you know it's kind of hard but to... i suppose that the reality is if they maintain this this quality it's like oh you've d you've done a good job um i don't know if you've done as incredible it's, it's hard to say right like um because it's not done yet we're not we're not up to a lot of the big payoffs um no and i guess we don't know yeah. th this may very well be the most faithful episode for all we know yeah, I suppose. The interesting thing will be, like, almost sitting there wondering, because my impression would be episode two ends with Tess dying, and then, you know, them setting off. Something that I know for sure is that they're going to do way more with Bill and uh, his partner. Like, that's going to be a much bigger 
uh, thing than just like a story that, which is kind of expand interesting. everywhere. Like, there is room to expand, but then there's also the question of how much do I want to see? Do, like, do I need to see what Joel and Tommy got up to during those intervening twenty years? Well, how long are these episodes going to be? I'm assuming this is an abnormal length. I presume that they're. I presume that they're going to be like an hour, roughly. Yeah, right. Like I would assume. Well, I, was, around, so. I wouldn't have been surprised. If it was like forty five minutes, but I guess we're going to be fifty uh, minutes. Ah, it's maybe? HBO, right? So sometimes they're chongus episodes. Seriously though, if, if they stay the course of this first episode, there's no no nothing stopping them from being popular. I don't think. I don't. I think I, so. I, this is definitely yeah. the beginning of what could be a very good you know a good track to be on yes i agree that was a good premiere definitely a good start we uh give a thumbs up and well thumbs up i guess thumbs up even consider the thumbs upwards uh we will likely continue to watch them uh as i think so yeah i'd like to watch it whether or not you guys would like to see more of this sort of thing what you just watched there let us know in that comment section below but, that's right um, yeah other than that, that's The Last of Us TV show episode one. Episode one. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, bye. Goodbye, everybody. What'd you bring me? Hello and welcome once again to The Last of Us television show. A curiosity of the whole world of whether or not it's going to be any good. Everybody's keeping their eye on it as a video game adaptation, as a fun TV show, as a mm -hmm. thing in general. And we're here to offer our perspective here and there. First episode, like I said, seems to have gone over relatively well with the... Uh, with the people of the world, and uh, a lot of people have said it's up to episode two now to see if, if that was a fluke or if there's going to be a pattern emerging, as well as comparisons to how the game does it. Lots of uh, thoughts on, you know, whether or not they'll be taking dialogue or scenes. We talked about how a lack of spores is going to change things. I've heard about a change they've made to how the monsters work, or rather the enemies work, and something that curious how it manifests in this, as well mm. as um, whether or not bigger changes are coming. Like, are we going to see Tommy earlier? The drama is going to be involved with him, and what's going to happen? to test because the game has set out quite a specific path. I think so far that we've had good things to imply from the dialogue, the performances, the production values, and the faithfulness. So I think we're in a good spot. That's what I reckon. What do you guys so reckon? Far. So far, yeah. After that first episode, I thought that was pretty solid. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good too. I'm curious to see what they do next. There's plenty of things they could get wrong though. Hopefully they won't shoot themselves in the foot here. We've tried to highlight uh, little little pieces of dialogue that I think are better than others that imply something going on. One of the ones I caught that I meant to praise was um, when he's talking to the uh, the radio guy and he's like... Show me where the tower is. And the guy's like, all, all this open country? There are worse things than infected out there. There are raiders. There are slavers. The crazy idea. There's all kinds of horrible things out there. Joel then says to him, But you're sure Tommy's okay? And then uh, the guy just looks at him and then just starts explaining where he needs to go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the Cody Tower. I thought it was neat in terms of like, you're not going to stop if Tommy's not safe and I can't tell you he is. So may as well cut to the chase. I'm just going to give you the information you need. Mm -hmm. Like uh, interactions sort of like that, I quite details. like. Yeah. yeah, then there were a few of those in the first episode. It's expeditious and character buildy. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I guess uh, without further ado, let's see how this series continues. <laughs> HBO. <laughs> B.O. Oh no, the Cordyceps zombies have made a civilization. Oh my god, is this... Uh, this okay, is so this could right. be either it's before or from... after the uh No, this is before, this is two days. Know. It's two days before the outbreak. Oh my god. It originates in Jakarta? Or maybe it's... I believe just... in the game it originates in, uh, it, it was like Indonesia or South America? I can't quite remember, because it was food. So is it like a simultaneous all of food on Earth, or how does it work? I think it was... Food from a particular location that got spread out to a bunch of different places. Mm. I, I'm not. I, can't, I don't quite remember what it was from the game. It like wasn't detected like fast that. enough to stop. I guess. Yes, something like that. Indonesia, Indonesia. That fungi man, Indonesia. it'll get you. Mm. Apologize about your lunch. You know what? It's fine. Should have taken it. I didn't go. think we were gonna get any more uh, pre-apocalypse stuff. Yeah, I'm actually surprised they're doing this. Professor <laughs> Mycology. Universitas Indonesia. Kita memiliki orang yang tepat. You are expert in cordyceps, yes? No, no, no. I, I'm a, no. We have terrible things. Gynecology, not mycology. Ew. If I have to deal with fungus, things have gone horribly wrong. 
I know me some mushrooms. It's gonna be like they show her a sample. She's like, oh, we're fucked. Yeah, don't tell her the answers. Yeah, quit women explaining to her. Uh oh. Oh, I, I guess this is a nice companion piece for the first episode's opening scene, isn't it? So if that happens, we lose. Yeah, yeah just I wouldn't mind getting games. more of these. It would yeah, be I like a lot of good setups. So. I'd be curious if we get one of these per episode of the world falling apart. Cool. I can kind of see that as a pattern now. Yeah. That could be neat. And maybe you keep changing country as well. And maybe we get to see different people. Maybe we see what happened with Bill, you know? Also, if you feel sick, please leave. It's like, oh, great. Thanks. Do oh my. you see what I see? What is the age rating for this show? I can't remember how uh, how violent they've been as well. Violent hasn't been... Hasn't been really violent. How you doing there, people? Oh, no. So who done did the biting? Did your doggy bite? I thought you said your dog did not bite. That is not my dog. <laughs> did your dog bite? Gross. It's been shot in the forehead, so it's dead as fuck, right? Oh, I didn't know if that was what that is exactly. I, it, it's the implication then that this thing attacked soldiers, maybe, and they shot it. That'd be my guess. In the head, yeah. Ugh. Ooh, yum, spaghetti. Oh, careful. Don't breathe that. This is an ugly room. Looks like a room gold member might have. <gasps> Turtle. Look at him. Please kill. Kurang lebih 30 jam yang lalu, bu. Pabrik tepung dan gabah di barat kota. Flour and grain. Lalu bagaimana dengan orang yang digigitnya? Dibawa untuk diobservasi. Telah menjadi keharusan sesuai dengan prosedur mereka harus tetap dieksekusi. Oh dear. Kapan itu pak? Kami tidak tahu ibu. Si berkeliaran di luar sana. But yeah, I guess it considers we don't have a patient zero. Yeah. Orang hilang. Kami membawa ibu Ratna kemari untuk membantu kami untuk penyakit. Oh, it's a bit late for that. Kami butuh vaksin. Oh shit, just bomb the whole place? Yeah, what are mushrooms gonna do against the power of nukes? The power of the atom! The only problem is we don't do so well against nukes either. Jeez, like, she's just basically like, we lost, game over, like the first clip says. So is the only transmission being bit? Well, I think well, it's, it, the, the, I she, think the in, implication the, on that the scene is that like it's already spread in the food now, because she would have been yeah. working with it. Because that was uh, how it spread around the world, was food. But yeah, the, the question is, of course, how did she get it? It's like, presumably a bite, and where did who bit her? It's like, don't even know. We can't even trace yeah. how they may have gotten it, whoever bit her. Because obviously there would have been a jump an evolution or maybe even through species, but I'm assuming the point the show's making is we can't even trace that. Yeah. You guys ever see Contagion? Yes. No. That film, um, you know, is dealing with the pandemic, the process of it. I think it became really popular when COVID shot off, actually. Like, again, it, numbers rose yeah, for watching right. it. But I think I that film ends movie. with uh, showing how it all started, and it's like a bat eating um, something somewhere, and then like a pig eating something somewhere. Like, it's just, it's just you know, unfortunate circumstances of cross this, that, and the other. Back to modern times. It's a flutter by. Maybe this is a dream. Oh, you have shitty dreams. Yes, if you live in a world of mushroom people running around, you dream about mushroom people? Maybe. Mushroom places. This is the episode Neil Druckmann directed. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> Morning. Oh yeah, I guess they'd have issues with it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do I look like I'm infected? Show us your arm. I'm surprised they let her go to sleep, to be honest. Yeah, it's not getting any worse, is it? She locked me up and had her guys test me every day to see if I was getting sick. Test you how? I have to pee. Oh, for a second there, I thought she meant the test involved peeing. Steady yeah. peeing. I think what really impressed them was the fact that I didn't turn into a fucking monster. Well, infection's a little more complicated than that, love. <laughs> like, yeah, you could be carrying it right now. Yep. There's not gonna be anything bad in here? Just you. Oh, funny. Okay. Maybe a hairline. It'll heal fast. She made it through the fucking night. Job. It doesn't matter. It's gonna happen sooner or later. We sneak her back into the QZ, we find a different way to get the battery. This is our best shot. 
I'm gonna scan her, and they'll kill her. Well, better them than us. You need to stop talking about this kid like she's got some kind of life in front of her. Yeah, it's kind of complicated exactly what they would talk about. This is super unprecedented for them, and nobody's guiding them on this. Nope. It's, it's just like, yeah, is she just gonna die? I don't know. Why are you so important to Marlene? Don't lie to me, or we'll take you back. Take me back, you don't get your battery. You heard that? Then you must have heard that he wants to shoot you. I ain't I'm denying it. You like you're an adult, okay? They're working on a cure. Mm -hmm. We've heard this a million times. Vaccines, miracle cures. None of it works, ever. Fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. You and me both. We need to go back. Uh, that framing felt very deliberate, didn't it? Yeah. She I think that was actually pretty good. I like that. that she is. Like teetering right now on a decision, isn't it? Yeah. The thing is, she is the probably the best and clearest way to get what they want right now. So much as twitches. Well, it's what it's what Tess said, but it was, but I mean, you know, Tess is, you know what I mean? Like, is is that really why she's interested in doing it, or is there, if, if they're going the same route they did with the character in the okay. game, then you can already start to read into why she's actually nudging them in favor of this choice. And yeah, I mean, fly, we'll uh, get a camp, lot more time. Hospital, doctors, you know. maybe zebra saving yeah. doctors, I don't know. <laughs> you have a gun? Absolutely no. not. Okay, Jesus, fine. I'll just throw a fucking sandwich at them. No, get a bottle or a brick. Well, I mean, she'll be probably getting that gun eventually. Not that one, but a gun. You're thinking about trying to do years of war with this sort of thing, with the, how chunky those guys are. <laughs> chunky boys. <laughs> and put them in chunky armor. We can't fit through the door. Break it down. <laughs> Make a whole new world of bigger, chunkier doors. The chunk plague. Everyone became so, chunky. How did those sorts of things happen? They bombed this area. Right. Okay. They all, all the should get moving. infected pushed it over. They got on the side. <laughs> <laughs> pushed it over. Yeah. I don't like civilization. I'm also just noticing as well that all of the cars are like looking appropriate for the era. It was something I was thinking about because I think I saw like a Mastercard logo on the door, and I was wondering like, are we are we going to be seeing only brands, you know, up to 2003? Man, Mastercard if they, still exist, but you know, <laughs> like if they simply I mean? bombed loads of major cities to slow it down, that's how you know we've basically lost. Yeah, essentially. But I mean, it's easy to see how it got out of control because so many people got sick so quickly. Yeah, and. I find it more believable than a lot of newer I versions of zombie stories. Much more I really yeah. like the setup. The backdrop looks really good. Oh, yeah. And I mean, just the fact that even though everything fell apart, you've still got your quarantine zones around the place, and then you've got different organizations with their own little settlements. Yeah, and over time, faction, rather. they can build up, but simultaneously they'll just start hurting each other. Well, yeah, five flies at war with the government. How did you get bit? You know the old mall in a QZ? The one that's sealed off I wonder if we'll get that scene as well, probably. I, I would imagine we'll get a whole episode on Whatever, that. Whatever, I snuck in. I wanted to see what it was like. DLC episode for the show. I didn't think there was going to be anything in yeah. there. One just came at me out of nowhere. I wonder if she's going to mention uh, so it was just you and Riley. Then, yeah, because Riley has been mentioned in episode one. And you were safe there until you decided to sneak out. A terrorist? Was Riley a terrorist? So it was just you in there alone? Yeah. Ah, nope. She's hey, keeping that to herself. Yeah. Fourteen. Mommy, you got some balls on you, sister. Thanks. If only Tommy could go over trucks. No, no the one who can't. Because right? like if mom, you don't know Rags in the game, he holds the door closed because boyfriend. they're a bunch of infected. It's like, well, I'm going to be faster than you, so I can catch up. That's why he splits up better, with them in the first one, yeah. It's a better one in the game, yeah. Definitely. Everyone said the open city was crazy. Swarms of infected running around everywhere. How people like to tell stories. So there aren't super infected that explode fungus spores on you? Shit, I hope not. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well. Like I, I guess they're going to encounter blood or at some point. I thought the spores were just a non-element in this. Even if they were a non-element, I could easily imagine. Oh. What was that? Man, TV shows, they just have them chongus budgets now, don't they? Oh, yeah. Well, and you know, when they pitched this, they were like, we can make you a lot of money with this one, okay? Yeah. Here's our one, proof, exactly. look at the game. And then they'll be like, what's all this about Last of Us 2? Like, shut up. Oh, look, little buckies. How cute. They used real ones, not CG ones. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. piano. Frog and a piano. Look at him go. <laughs> this side, I like it. I like, I like the... 
practical sets. They're cool. Yes, there was a I real really frog like on a piano as well. They built real sets with tons of sets. They bought a details. frog. They it would have taken ages to make this thing. Think of the people who got involved. Well, because this show was shot over the course of, I think, a year. It had a long, long production. Yeah, I don't know how to swim. True, Seriously. that is a thing. I think we have poison. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to know that. Because that's how buildings work. I, I guess looking at it, you might have thought it was deeper. I don't know. But yeah, that'll be, that'll be relevant another time, I imagine. Motherfucker, what are you doing? Yes, sir, I would like your finest sweet, please. You're a weird kid. You're a weird kid. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Hello. The bellhop is not going to get a good tip. <laughs> He's scaring the customers. He's scaring the customers. <laughs> also, they have to push their own luggage. <laughs> I do yeah. like that his knuckles are still bruised there. Oh, yeah, they they uh, made a good note of that at the beginning of the episode. Oh, yeah. Boy, and even he hurt himself doing it, you, which is nice if, when a, a story acknowledges that punching I, somebody in the face over and over again is probably going to hurt your hand. I think Rag specifically said, don't do that, you'll hurt your hand. <laughs> Damn, don't like hurt your hand, you'll need that. <laughs> Man, if I was them and I came across a hotel like that, I'd be opening up the luggage because a lot of people, they yeah. bring toothpaste, toothbrush, all things like that inside of their bags. It's kind of, I mean, the... Passing through of different areas makes me think like, has anyone looted these places? Because man, you know, could be gold mines waiting to happen. That's what I'm thinking. All that stuff that you can't really get anymore. I mean, if the game's stuff, running in the toiletries. Asian, that would go with the show. Yes, a lot of these areas have been pillaged by moving groups of like raiders and bandits. So finding a locked door is like, hey, people haven't been in here. Maybe. Yeah. But you die and you get nothing. You stay. Here's the thing, if it were me, I'd be happy to have these three for several episodes. Mm -hmm. I'd be fine with that. It's a bit of a mess, so I'm gonna need a few minutes. Gosh, it's like a bomb went off in here. <laughs> Terrible wallpaper, look at it. Nice knife. Where'd you learn to do that? The circus. Where are you from? The circus. See, the I can be a mass hall too. <laughs> what about Tess? Detroit. It's in Michigan. I go to school, I know where Detroit is. Uh, that, to be fair, <laughs> like, do you go to we school? Don't know what... You don't go to school right now. To, like, uh... Pass. How long do infected live? Oh, I thought you went to school. It's a really shitty one. Some last about a month or two. There's others, been walking around about 20 years. I killed lots of them. Is it hard? Like, knowing they were people once? Sometimes. What now? It was very video gamey as well, by the way. Like this door is stuck. Yeah. You have to lift your NPC character over there to go and open it up <laughs> while yeah. having some dialogue. Truly, in like a city, it can't be that hard to get where you need to go, right? Well, with all the roads, sidewalks, buildings meant for human traversal. It does seem like they've opted go into a building when I wouldn't have thought they would want to do that until oh. they reach the building they want. Unless they try to scope it out to see if they can. You know, get a vantage point. Yeah, like that. Oh dear, All right, that's a lot of infected. Yeah. Not sure what they're doing either. I guess maybe they're so sleeping. The last chilling. Is it the sun that's fucking with them there? The fungus also grows underground. You step on a patch of cordyceps in one place, and you can wake a dozen infected from somewhere else. That's the new now mechanic, they apparently. You are, now they come. Uh -oh. Okay. You gotta watch where you're walking. Now, uh, I have heard, by the way, that you you were correct in the assumption that the reason they got rid of the spores, at least mainly from what I'm seeing, is they wanted less gas masks. Oh, more emoting. Okay, right. Bringy loves that. Sure. I'm the one who likes gas masks too. No, so for <laughs> I was talking about he doesn't want people's faces covered up in the media. I, the thing is, is that like this to me is because they've replaced it with something else as a mechanic. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, no, this like, is the ground no, up. We haven't. See how they, we didn't arbitrarily throw this on in season two or something. This is this yeah, is from the start. Right, ex exactly. And like this is just an alternate explanation that gives them that rather than let's take the helmet that protects me from like concussive damage yeah. in, a, in a battle because I need to have my face shown because I'm a famous actor. Why don't you take the fire escape ladder on the side of the building, if there is one? Yeah, it's like, is this the way they have to go? Uh, there are obviously invisible walls in the TV world as well. Oh no, that's not okay. good. That's what really got everyone. If you come up against anything, you get behind us and you stay there, okay? Yes, I have a spare hand. Congratulations. You don't trust you with guns. 
I think it's more for the uh, the torch, right? I oh, no, she's, she's got one. Got okay, it. so, yeah, so it is the gun then. Obviously, we'll be getting a payoff eventually with her getting a gun. It's gonna be yes. fun. But yeah, this place would be... Was it a museum in the game? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You encounter them in the buildings, though, right? At night, before you get here in the game? Like in the skyscrapers, yeah. I think? Um, yeah, yeah. Because I don't take a break. They just go straight there. Well, because the show itself isn't going to be as long as the game, is it? Well, it's kind of it's kind of complicated, right? Because the show may be longer in other ways. Like, yeah. it will have more strict cutscenes. Or more strict, like, you know, scenes than the game does. Looks fresh. What the yeah. fuck did that? Zambi? Maybe he was a the doors. I don't hear it. Who would you hear? You definitely needed to explain this to her. Uh, she hasn't encountered a clicker before. Why aren't they telling her about the clickers? And they should have told her that before they went in the building. Well, I thought when jo when Joel was talking about, you know, a month versus a year, right? Because clickers are about a year, and then bloaters is like, they've been infected from the beginning, more or less. Then those ones in The Last of Us 2, like the hyper flash pile things. The Rat King, yeah. <laughs> And then there's other versions, because it's like the Stalker as well, which is like partway between Clicker and Runner. I'm curious if they'll do the thing like in the game where the Runners are sometimes standing there crying as they're twitching. The Last of Us offers you plenty of horror opportunities. Oh yeah, this is a terrifying place to be. What's interesting as well is that you probably want to be equipped for creating noises uh, at a distance. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, picking up rocks or something like that. You'd want to have an well, egg timer mean, handy. Right? Like video games do. You always have like a little rock to throw, especially. Well, because runners are complicated. They can still see you. It's the clickers. Which, by the way, what a great idea. They can't see, so they use echolocation to find you. Look at this set. It's taking yeah, ages to make this like, thing. Jesus, look at this. And it's going to be gone after this episode, probably, right? This whole set. Probably, yeah. Nice. Remember what they said. Step on a thing and... Mm -hmm. I don't know how she accidentally stood on a whole ass hand. You got one okay, job, okay, no, honey? Watch where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Don't st- <laughs> Really creepy, right? Because it's kind of like Alien, where all the environment mm. is like a, a particular way, but then you can sometimes spot, it's like, oh, that's a person. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> yep, this is about on cue. Yeah. <laughs> This is gonna be like one of the big reasons to have uh, people be waiting for, right? A clicker. Yeah. Yeah, I figure already you want to throw something across the other side of the room. I suppose they can be kind of easy to lose to an extent. Mm. Oof, loading, that's dangerous. Wow, it'll be like in that trailer for the game, right? When he loaded it and that was the thing that revealed his position. I wonder if they that, can um, do that again. You can throw your shells Yeah, you should Yeah, you should have thrown those if well, at least one of them is yeah, empty. They make, a nice, they, they make a nice tinkling noise. Oh, show. Zoo would write it on Yeah, you're doing, you're doing the thing. You're doing it. <laughs> Gotta be right there. Yeah. You don't even consider throwing the torch at this point. Anything to distract it. One shot to the head, right? Uh, from the back, but from the front, the, the fungus is kind of like a protective thing. Dang, to stop a bullet? Or at least dampen its effects. That's what know. it did in the games, yeah. Like, yeah, in the games, it, that's almost got mechanical value, right? Like, if you get it uh, behind. Yes, of course. Yeah. And of course, you can't take them in melee in the game, unless you have a. Oh yeah, they just like insta kill you, right? I do love how like terrifying they made them here. Uh, uh. How the fuck is it still alive? They shot it so many times. Plus, well, kind of how they work. They don't have like a human's health. No, they're stronger. Because I just made an encounter with two of them, like, absolutely terrifying and tense. 
difficult. Even though they're hardened survivors, like, still, even 20 years in, encountering, like, two clickers yeah. is terrifying. I shit my pants. You fucking kidding me? I mean, if it was gonna happen to one of us. I assume it is you need to be bitten, not just scratched, or, uh... You gotta be bitten. Just wait there. Give us a minute. There's probably more ahead. So we'll deal with it then. This bite didn't take. And what about the sick? I thought you'd just take the good news. Can you do that? I need to think for once, maybe we can actually win. I was keeping an eye on her facial reaction when she said if it was going to be one of us. Yeah, she's already been bitten. Is it everything you hoped for? Was that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. Jury's still out. Man, one to one. But man, you can't deny that view. Oh man. You can't deny that view. Come on, this way. Yeah, it's like identical. Come on, let's get there before it's dark. Yeah, if they keep this up, it's like, man, this would have cost a shit ton, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, like, nine-figure budget. But hey, it's already one of the most successful shows, like, on HBO ever, so... A lot of people, like, I've seen the sentiment, like, I've seen The Walking Dead, why would I care? It's like, Walking Dead is shit. Uh, yeah, Walking Dead is lame. The the show, anyway, the comic was pretty cool. At least up to the part where I read it, but the show was lame. And how many seasons did Walking Dead have? Like, a million? Uh, I think it got up to, like, 12 or 13, and there's, like, other spin-off shows, too, that had multiple seasons. Yeah, Fear the Walking Dead had already, still... like, six seasons or some shit, right? I, I... And there's another one, I believe, too. And I'm pretty sure that they're doing two new ones. Like, they're bringing back, uh, Rick and, um, Michonne for, like, another <laughs> season. Like, another series. Let it die. <laughs> now, AMC won't let it go. It's, like, their most successful thing. And it was Even like... more so than Breaking Bad. They found every way to make it cheaper as well, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting how money translates, because you'd be like, is it worth putting all the money in to make all these sets for this show? And it's like, well, it's going to make people remember this show. I'm not kidding. Well, it was the, the thing, right? Like, The Walking Dead was the biggest show on, on AMC ever, and the second season got a reduced budget per episode. It's like, seems odd. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing about The Walking oh. Dead is that that's a show my parents used to watch, and then my mom mm. said, we stopped watching it when characters started acting fucking stupid for no <laughs> Dude, reason when yeah. they should know better. Dude, everybody and I'm like, man, if like that. normies, yeah, like my parents are Everybody's super mega normies. Yeah. 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 And I think it's the reason why you have, if it continues at this rate, like this show will be pretty strong, and I'm pretty sure everybody will agree with that sentiment. If it keeps up. They're, they're doing I mean, a good job. I don't mean this in a denigrate way, but they're copying someone else's very good homework, so... That's true, but they've done a lot of things that are neat well, the, what translation. I'm, I, the reason I bring that up is that they've got, like, a safety blanket, almost? A safety net, true. I should say. Like the, well, I mean, the almost Walking a skill Dead floor. had the safety blanket, right, of the... Didn't the they not really series? adapt it that accurately at they all? They didn't. They, they deviated um, pretty significantly. Oh, I spent a lot more time figuring out that, uh, yeah. Well, we know this building, Fringy. Mm-hmm. Come on. So we're trying to meet up with the fireflies right now, right? Yes. But to deliver yeah. the girl. Oh, shit. oh dear. Um, S seems a little more agitated than you'd expect. Yeah. Seems like it's about more than just a car battery. I mean, there's got to be a, a fucking radio or something, right? Ammunition. Hey, You'll need that. One of them got bit. The healthy ones fought the sick ones. Everyone lost. Tess. He says that like that's happened before. A lot. It's over. We are going home. This is not my fucking home! Our luck had to run out sooner or later. She's infected. This is real. Josh is fucking real. I need you to get her to Bill and Frank's. Yeah. I never ask you for anything not to feel the way I felt, not to you shut the fuck up because I don't have time. You get her there. You keep her alive. And you said everything right. Please. Oh, fuck! Gonna a little more of them. There you go, the mechanic pays off. Kind of like a one of us has just been destroyed. 
destroy whatever did that sort of thing. Coming. All of them. What are you doing? Making sure that they don't follow you. Man, this is a bit more of a uh, massive, like, blaze of glory for her than uh, in the game. Ah. Oh, take some it. of those. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, guys, we've got ammunition boxes. I will say, boxes. you grenades. are correct, but this is. Joel is not going to be uh, rational right now. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I would just, I would just get a grenade. To be honest they with you, start taking grenades, pulling pins, throwing, pulling pins, throwing. Are these clickers? They're not here now. Oh, well, she's already infected, right? So maybe they don't care. Oh well, like it was said, right? Even if you're infected, it'll kill you. They'll, they'll fuck you up. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, we've got episode two. I think that was good. Yeah, I think I so think too. Episode. I think they did a really good job establishing. Uh, we got like the human. We had like an episode of like the human area. Now we got the infected area, and they're very deadly. It's not just like, ooh, I'm a zombie. I'm gonna walk towards you. How could humanity have lost? No, no, no. It's it's like it's actually. Uh, yeah. It definitely sells like that. This is something that feels like it could actually like beat humans. Just the fact that even trying to fight two of them is like this incredibly terrifying encounter. Yeah, they're kind of really tanky. Difficult. They're kind of fast, and yeah. and they alert others when you fun. kill them or can anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, that is a change. Right now, we get to see what that actually looks like, which is an interesting change. It certainly is a uh, different than how it worked before. Leverage there to enable quite a different payoff to in the game because in the game test basically just does a last stand against a bunch of military guys. Yeah. Uh, whereas here it was like a massive explosion. Yeah, and the acting is just really on point. Really um, strong. They take in. Yeah. I'd say the important parts of the game. I don't feel like we missed out at all on on any of the connecting pieces that are up to this point in the no, game. Really. I don't think so. I mean, again, production side is super impressive. The sets, the visual effects, the designs on the the infected, the sound yeah. design and lighting, it's all really strong and in service of, of like capturing the tone that they want to evoke in each moment, right? Where you can have these like scenery of this destroyed world, but nature is reclaiming it and then contrast that with a different, more scary version of nature, essentially trying to assert control over the world. Yeah, that episode was just all focused on them three, pretty much. And then we lose Tess, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, if you play the game or watch this series without any of that knowledge, I do think that comes as a surprise that Tess dies that early. Probably would, yeah. Even though, obviously, we knew what was going to happen. I think that there's enough indication in the way that she's acting after that encounter to give to give away, right? Like, something's wrong. Yeah. Her, her entire temperament has changed, but you see it gradually anyway, right? Her coming to more and more sort of accept the situation and a willingness to push forward with it. Meanwhile, well, Joel is just kind of apathetic the whole time, just like, I don't want to do this. They give you snippets as well, right? Like him saying, we're going home, and then she says, that's not my home. Being, of course, I think she's referring to a wider context of this isn't home, what's happened anymore. Like, we. Well, it's not home. Yeah. And having to deal with it is a fucking nightmare. And so there's this one shot here of. Uh, Something. But yeah, obviously something, Joel anything. just Joel has already said he doesn't fucking believe in it and he doesn't care about it. He wants to just do what the smartest thing is, whatever it is at the time. But yeah, he's written that off. Uh where she's now in a position where she's willing to accept it. And basically now he's got a, uh... in order to defy basically her life, right? To to give her to give her life some kind of meaning instead of it just being like twenty years of killing people and smuggling and just looking out for herself. Well, and the uh, I've never asked anything of you, never asked you to feel how I felt. I think it's just a bit of like mm -hmm. a, the relationship was never quite um, as deep as maybe one of them wanted. Which, I mean, you got that in the first game as well, kind of, where it's like, there's got to be enough here for you to feel an obligation. 
basically the same thing here. Right? Yeah, like, that's, this is that's how we get a character it, like Joel to com commit to this now, is that he's yeah, got like a, a life plot. debt almost. Yeah. Somebody who cares, who he cares about has said, you, you're you going to do this for me. Like, you got to, you have to do it for me. And now that it's just those two on their own, it's like, well, now is the opportunity to basically force Joel to develop that relationship. Whereas with Tess, there's a little bit of distance he can, he can leave between him and Ellie. Yeah, and it seems like they put an effort in this episode to make uh, to make Tess a little bit more likable to Ellie than Joel, so that it's, yeah, it, it get you get that sense of like, oh, if it, if I had to lose one of you, it really had to be her, and then it's gonna be like, well, yeah. and Joel. as the game goes on, or as the story yeah, goes on, I should say, the story goes on, evidently, but there there is that change, right? They're not because they encounter Bill by passing through Bill's town. Whereas now it seems like she sent them to go to Bill specifically. Uh, yeah, whereas uh, in the game. Go find Tommy, because uh, he ran with the Fireflies so he can help you. I'm very curious how they're going to adapt. One of my favorite moments in the whole game is when uh got the chance to sort of ditch her, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, and even that opening scene, so was, I think it makes a really fun addition, right? Because it's quite horrifying, I guess. Uh, I, well, yeah, it makes me wonder if it's like you said, right? Uh, it was either your rags. Maybe that'll be what we're getting each episode is uh, more insight into what happened before and maybe that means because i imagine next episode will be bill that would be my guess maybe we'll get to see what happened with bill and then maybe we we'll see what happens with like henry and sam um because yeah, they did maybe we'll see, yeah. if intro one was uh an intro to the science behind the theory almost of how it could happen and then it literally taking place i'd wonder if we're gonna get scenes of uh, different areas falling apart maybe yeah maybe we'll see how like certain quarantine i could easily imagine that we might get a flashback on like the fireflies coming to exist as an entity it would be cool if we had like a White House uh, opening scene as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, what what is the plan? What are we doing here? And maybe that's when they're like, we're going to create these quarantine zones. This is what we're doing. Everything outside of it, we're abandoning. Yeah, it definitely seems like the episodic structure can be like really worthwhile in terms of um, each episode focuses on like one specific thing or each episode we encounter a new set of characters who only stay for one or two episodes because it's Joel and Ellie as a consistent element. But yeah, all it is is that I'm I'm engaged and I'm interested to keep watching. Yes. It. Yeah, and they keep I laying am. more and more foundations as well as mm -hmm. arguably more payoffs than a lot of TV shows get within their first two episodes. And two episodes, yeah, because you, you've only had tests for two episodes and it's like, sh that was that was good work that was good work that they did with her yeah and yeah, props to the actress so. as well she was pretty good mm -hmm. what else can you say you know i just i just feel like pretty much every <laughs> element is either good or if not great i mean the set design is fucking fabulous yeah Production it's like one of the great. it's like among the most convincing green screens i've ever seen this the city backdrop it looks so much money and effort went into it it is mm -hmm. so easy to accept that they're walking through this post-apocalyptic city that it's like you legit forget that it's a movie set. That it can't be real. It, it can't be real. But those yeah. sets, man, like, god damn, they're so detailed. Yeah, they worked so really hard and it pays off. Exactly. Yeah. The practicality of a lot of the places they're in, the it looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. Last of Us episode two. Episode what two. What else can you say? Thought it was really, really yeah. solid. We'll see how this show goes further on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. <gasps> what you bring, you bring, what you bring, you bring, you bring, what you bring, you bring, you bring me. But up, up, but up, but up, 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 up. Here we are. Oh, God, there's a fourth person. Ah! You say something. Not usually here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, hi. There you go. Thanks for <laughs> the sufficient thanks for intro. Me on. You know, we just have so much variety in the form of what we cover and who we cover with. And I, I saw you tweeting about this little show, and I was like, "Hey, that'll be fun. We could talk to you about it." The episodes that have come previously and are to come. So I guess we could simultaneously catch up quickly. What did you think of episodes one and two? I'm digging it so far. A few mm. missteps, but uh, nothing that egregious. I'm quite impressed with it overall. What would you say is the most praiseworthy thing? I'm tempted to say that it actually followed the game, which is what Halo should have done. <laughs> what would be the point of that? <laughs> but I, I don't think it needed to be exactly like the game, but I'm glad that it did. And I like how crazy the zombies are. They yeah, kind of, I mean, the people the playing the clickers around. are pretty neat. And uh, I just think the, the detail on the, uh, the prosthetics are really good as well. So you have, like, this grounded human drama, which I think Craig Mazin is quite good at. But you also have like the pulpy, like crazy zombies. It like t 
uh, turned up to a degree that we haven't really s- that I haven't seen s- since like 28 days later where hmm. they, they really feel like a threat. What do you mean? Walking Dead's been of... out and going for years. Oh my god. Why does everyone hate Walking Dead? What did it do other than be horrible? Oh well, jeez. Uh, <laughs> you make one mistake. <laughs> this it's it's quality so far. Hmm. Well, uh, if you had the biggest criticism, what would it be? If I had to pick a thing, it's this even bothered me in the game where the soldier shoots at Joel and Sarah and it's like Joel should probably be dead, right? I mean, he's like got shot point blank full auto. It's just like he was barely grazed and he just rolls down the hill and then I don't know, he the soldier takes his time like reapproaching him and I don't know, I remember that kind of bugging me in the games and it kind of bugged me here again too. Yeah, it's uh, hard to even tweak that to fix it because you kind of to generate a scenario where someone shoots at them with a rifle and only tags his daughter and not him it's like that's a very specific result that can be difficult to sort of provide because like especially just a shot from a rifle it's just like oh you're both dead surely and you know Tommy yeah, turning just up the... just too late slash just too early to have either both of them or none of them die. Yeah but that I think is just a small detail. It's not a huge deal. It didn't really get in the way. Some of the things I saw people talking about, they were surprised we didn't talk about, so I was curious if you guys have any additional thoughts, but um, everyone was very weirded out by Tess getting the tendril kiss before she dies. Do you have any commentary for that? It doesn't strike me as too... I mean, it is weird, but all this is sort of weird. The question is really, like, is it weird in a way that doesn't seem to fit their behavior, or if that's a setup for later. The tendrils almost seem like they're a, like a sensory organ, or they are like checking to her breath or something to see if she's infected, or something along those lines. Or it's, it's like a really fast way to infect someone, maybe? Maybe a really fast it, way I think to we infect saw, Was the old lady doing mouth. that in the first episode? When she yeah, like when a... she when she looks up, the tendrils come out of her mouth. And remember the first guy who's infected in uh, mm-hmm, Jakarta, yeah. the body has the tendrils coming out of it as, yes. uh, in the mouth as well. So oh, yeah, the tendrils are definitely a thing. Them. I just meant the targeting of like mouth to mouth, uh, which may be a fast way to spread it. And that's why that happens that way. But part of what I thought suited about it was the fact that Tess was like absolutely terrified of becoming one of them. And then, like, talk about having a worse fear realized right before she actually kills herself. Like, it's that close and that sort of, that's like a violation in in a couple of ways, right? Like, it feels really, I think it's supposed to feel really gross. Yeah. Simultaneously, it's like, well, that has the effect of feeling gross to a lot of audience members. And so a lot of people were uncomfortable watching it. They didn't want to see that. I would imagine that that was the feeling that they were trying to evoke with that scene. This is a deeply uncomfortable. <clears throat> yeah, like on a on a specific right. level, and then on a broad level, right? Like it's not just yeah. that it's annihilated society; they are fucking disgusting. They take the human body and use it for whatever they want. It's like ugh. that tendril kiss. The, the the one thing that kind of threw me off about it is that I'm not sure what makes an infected go crazy biting someone and then doing something like that, where it's just like a weird leaning in for a, a kiss sort of thing. I thought Does the issue with that, that one a human was is there. That she was moving very little, and so the clicker wasn't 100% sure of what was in front of it, maybe. Okay, and it, it was one of the blind ones, right? I'm not sure, uh, actually. I need to check again. It, looked like uh, it, might have it had was a stalker, I think, and I'm pretty sure the stalkers are kind of partially blind, because it's it's yeah. like you got runners who can still see, and then as the growth gets there, it becomes more and more difficult to see until they get to clickers when they can't see and they have to use echolocation. It's kind of in the middle ground, that one. Right. And I don't know if the, the concept of she is infected and maybe she's giving off some kind of a a signal or some pheromone or some sort of something. As much uh, as I, I, I think, think that's a fair that. idea, that's a good point. Um, does that reflect with Ellie at all? I need, I don't know. Mm. Um, I don't know if Ellie be having it, but being like immune to it is some something they can sense. Uh, I, I just don't know. Maybe yeah. have, I think I think they need to. I, I'll believe it if they if they come up with an explanation or the or if they explain it, I can go along with that. The impression that I'm getting with these the the fact that episode one and two began with like sort of a delving into the nature of the infection makes me wonder if that's going to be something that gets explored way more in this show compared to in the game, like how it actually works and how a cure might come to exist rather than just maybe a cure can actually come from this, you know? I'm I'm guessing that they might be trying to actually delve into it a little bit more, how it works and how to stop it. Perhaps. 
I think it's fine because I understand why they're doing it. Like they, Craig Mazin didn't want to do spores because then you'd have the actors with gas masks on a lot. And he said himself that that didn't, he felt that didn't translate to film very well. So it's like, okay, well, there needs to be what component of the fungal growth infects other people. If you're not going to do spores, then it needs to be like tentacles. They've added in the sort of network aspect, which um, I think suits fine. I've seen people say like they better stay consistent to it. It's like it should be easy to stick to, right? Because it's either if the place is old and dry, then it won't have any like network potential. But if ever they um, fire at uh, or kill cordyceps monsters where they fall onto like a floor that's covered in the same goop, then it can like translate messages and stuff. So sounds like something they should be able to control pretty easily. And then it can also cause, you know, big drama on a whim. It's a better setup to have hordes appear than hordes simply appear, you know? Yeah. So hopefully they use it well. But yeah, yeah, yeah uh, the, the fungal network idea I really dig. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, if they if they do it well, I could really be into it. We'll see how they actually, you know, utilize that new mechanic going forwards. We'll have to see, though. Yeah, we're we up to, to episode see. three now. Where who knows what'll happen? I mean. Mm. Knowing exactly what happens in the game doesn't necessarily tell you what'll happen in the episodes. Not I've seen right. plenty of discussion for this one already, so we'll have lots of things to talk about once we're at the end of it. Whoa. Hubbo. Good da, old hubbo. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's a different one. Oh. Hmm. It's kind of like the... No pre-credits yeah. scene, evidently. Nah, we're moving on. We're moving past that. They've evolved that old, past that. That old cultural monolith. This is a new era. Look at all this grossness spreading. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. And you never want that growing everywhere. And equally gross. Children eat Cheese Whiz and they think it's amazing. It just shows that children are retarded. Well, have you tried Cheese Whiz in different things? Maybe it really tastes good when it's uh, with with a um, ice cream. Or ice cream? <laughs> a nice Cheese Whiz on the ice cream. You oh, want yeah. some chocolate syrup or some, you know, the, anything like that? Like, nah, I'll just have the Cheese Whiz. Just Get a big old swirly of it on, a big old spiral on the top, yellow and white. And that's what this intro evokes. Oh, it's prey. It took that rock a million years to get to shore, Charlie Brown. Now you've thrown it back. Now he's making art oh, no, out he of didn't it. Throw it back. He is making art. Wow. Not bad, I know honestly. That Joel is an artist. Yeah, he found some good stones to stack up. Ellie's like, Joel, come on, are you still fucking around with those rocks? Yeah, that took him like three go. days of <laughs> balancing. <laughs> yeah. We Finally. think he's a great artist, but he's a really bad artist. The power of editing. You want your jacket back? Oh, let's lemon spread. About, I want your sorry. I wasn't gonna say I'm sorry. Nobody made you a test take me. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. It's a bit of a subversion, right? Because the typical conversation is like, I'm sorry for what happened, and the person says it's not your fault. Who being like, please don't blame me for that. They probably went to like a real forest to do that. This is uh, a, you know what? A green screen. <laughs> Get, they, they're getting remember? really, really good with him. Black Widow, the forest. Oh the god, forest. the fucking fake forest. Disney didn't have yeah. the. They, they didn't spring for going into the woods, but they had to green. Wow, the see. thing is, it's more expensive to shoot outside because you have to pay attention to like your sunlight and you know weather conditions. It must be so oh, annoying all... to know that like they can't just get away with it. They just can't. Yeah, like it's Disney. <laughs> like, just go outside and fucking turn the camera on. What if it's rainy? The, the scene's rainy. It was all shot in Canada, so as a Canadian, you're welcome. Well, Canada's got them nice pine tree forests and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and also, no, no cap on their tax credit in Alberta. Someone shot at me and missed. I missed too. It happens more often than you think. Because you suck at shooting or, like, in general? In general. Shooting guns is fucking hard, bitch. Well, I think that's that's kind of neat, right? He's trying to say like most people miss most of the time. The vast majority you know, of the shots will be misses. I, was thinking I, should no. I do wonder about that. I guess it is just a matter of character-wise. He just doesn't. Would you say doesn't trust her, or just sees it as a bad move to give her a gun? Because you probably want bad move to give her a gun. 
You, you probably want your only other companion to have the capacity to save your life. Uh, in this situ situation, I don't know if I'd give her a gun either. Like, someone who's not familiar with firearms, I feel like they'd just be more of a danger to me. Especially if we're walking around the interiors and dark places, and we're jumpy and agitated. I don't want this person who's not used to guns having a gun. Well, yeah, not before you've had an opportunity to actually, you, you know, can't really, teach you how to use one. You can't guns really like teach a... someone very well, because you don't have ammo to spare, right? Oh, also, Kombat the element too. of, like, it's a handgun. They're really, really difficult to shoot accurately without practice. It would be safer to give well, her the... Fucking assault rifle, probably. I imagine it's she could have maybe gotten some combat. light training, like if she's part of a military esque, like it was uh, a school. It was a training. It was like a school school. It was a Fedra school, right? Yeah. I don't know if they would have given training for weaponry. I... Nah, they're probably gonna save all that for actual like soldiers and militia. I guess. She's pretty young too. I would. I'd be surprised she hasn't had any training, but that's the thing, uh... If they do a payoff where she shoots her gun for the first time and she misses horrifically and the guns are really, really loud, and it's like the recoil she's not used to, then that would be a nice payoff. And she'll say, eat this, and hit the infected right between the eyes. <laughs> From a mile away. <laughs> yeah. Blow okay, the so barrel. He just, just said, the barrel. you can go look around because... This place has been cleared out, like there's nothing here. I hope she doesn't fucking find something. And you tell me... That's something he missed, or...? He hasn't even been back there yet. No, this is a place he's been before. You forgot where you put your stuff. No. I'm gonna take a look around, see if there's anything good. Trust me, it's all been picked over already. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh. yeah this is a place he's been many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's currently getting his stash that he keeps here, and he, he said you can go look around, because this place has been run over so many times that there's nothing to find. I don't believe for a second that he wouldn't have found this, so I hope there's nothing new down here. Are you gonna jump down there without a way to get back up? Without even Might telling Joel. Without <laughs> telling Joel. Oh, gee, I, like I hope you don't no fucking... spooky music yet. I hope there's no spooky sudden monster <laughs> down here, too. Well, that'll do it, I guess. That'll help. I like how it just holds on the eerie ambience of this. Like, the stillness of it. Yeah, rather than hitting you over the head with, like, a musical track to get you freaked out. Yeah, like, bong. We're in the dark now, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. In the dark of the night, people will find her. Ooh, uh, there is an infected, damn it. Of course there could be. Well, so, that's like a double wham, even annoying. Joel being like, you can go wander off because I've been here before and there's nothing here. It's like, that doesn't mean there isn't something here now. Yeah, the, yeah. the mobile nature of life is such <laughs> that maybe something has arrived since your last meeting. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if at this point he was hyper-protective of her for the sake of Tess. As in, yeah. like... It is my job now to make sure you make it, no matter what. Well, that guy's, uh, he's ready not for doing a, very well. He's ready for studying. He's, he's, he's like, not gonna this hit anyone. This is Oh, it's such a, like, gross disease, fungal flea. Yeah, pretty terrifying. Did we each find secret tunnels? Oh, looks like he's found his stash. Kind of interesting, it's following the knife. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing it's something they might be trying to sort of establish here, right? Is like, be white. there's an element of humanity left in a certain infected. You Like the lady yeah, in the second one. Yeah, that's real gross. Jeez. Damn. Well, it's probably for the best. Because there was something that was a neat touch in the games, is that the runners sometimes, when they're standing there, you can hear them crying. Because it's like they're still they're still sort of aware of what's happening. Oof. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, like they're still aware as and they're slowly losing control until obviously once you start to get to clickers, they're like non-human anymore. Like, yeah, Dying just, Light did like, that in a really creepy way too, where some of the ones who are like the more fresh zombies that are really quicker and that can climb, they they say some things. They're zombies, but you could hear like actual like, a little bit of words coming out of them and stuff. No, they need me. No. And it's like, oh, that's like, ugh, that's uh, scary. I don't know if this comes across as nitpicking, but come on, you're not gonna tell him what you found. You literally found an infected over there in your safe stash place. Just saying, you know. It feels like they're doing the whole, like, she handled all of that on her own and didn't even mention it. One thing that would be good is to maybe, like, put that in a plastic bag or something and roll it up. Keep the moisture off of it. Also, it'd be oh nice God, to know how much ammo he actually had, because that would 
factor into whether or not I think it's a good decision to leave that behind. Or to just bring the magazine or just the bullets. Or... Dude, you got to go up in the sky. Yeah, well, so did they. Statistically, though, safest way to travel. Yeah, safer than trains. Fuck trains, am I right, guys? How? I mean, <laughs> how did it even start? Cordyceps mutated. Some of it got into the food supply. Probably a basic ingredient like flour, sugar, bread, cereal, pancake mix. Cheese whiz. You eat enough of it, it'll get you infected. Day goes on. They started to get sick. And, and that's the thing, life. too, right? They won't realize that the food's the reason yeah, that's done it, so they'll keep eating the food for at least a little bit longer. Yeah, and uh, depending on, like, well, the, the specifics of the virus or the, the fungus itself, it, you know, who knows what the incubation is or yeah i've heard there's there's like ants that will crawl all over something and then i'll start biting sure. so that they can coordinate instead of the first one on bites and then the rest what? don't get a chance so who knows if the fungus has here. some kind of semi-intelligence like that maybe serious ellie can it hurt me no aren't you honest man should have said axe murder whatever it was i think it's gone there's definitely a dynamic difference of um, their early on relationship in the game. I think he is much colder to her. Let me use that. I'm a pretty good shot with that thing. How about we just leave this kind of stuff to me? Well, we could both be armed. Cover each other. I don't think so. I need you to shut up. All right? Uh, yeah. I think some people think of him as more of a pushover in the show as a result of that when... You know, it's easy to interpret. He's just less case. cold. I mean, there's a scene to come up that if I've seen in the room. trailers where he refers to her as cargo. If there wasn't. But I think he's just saying that in the moment, probably, because he's mad at her or something. He's definitely, like, warming up to her Those already. Aren't sick. I kill them. Dead people can't be infected. All right, so let's all kill ourselves. Well, so apparently that logic is if his uh, QZs are full when they have people to come in, that they can't take care of, do they let them, I guess, run off, or do they kill them? Seems a little evil to fucking kill them. Yeah, like, if you just, yeah. if you're in the quarantine zone anyway, then why not just let the people outside of it stay see? outside of it? Yeah, especially if they're rural areas. I suppose is that, like, they want us to believe that they just consider, a, like, if a group of humans, they're just too fucking risky to let live, because they'll turn into zombies and come back, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Like, what is the military r worried it's about not running even, out of bullets? It's not even just that the military decided that that would be something they would do. You have to believe that all of the people would enact that. All the soldiers. Which I don't, honestly. I just don't believe that. Not today, you new world order jackboot fucks. Well then, that looks like a bill. It looks like a man with a beard of the darkness. Yeah, because it feels weird that you have maybe like a locked off, almost locked off suburb sort of thing with a bunch of people just living their lives and then the government comes in, collects you up and quote unquote takes you to a QZ but then just executes all of you so that they can reduce the overall numbers of the Cordyceps zombies. It's like, really? That seems like a really mm -hmm. strange way of doing that. That involves a lot of policy. Extra things yeah. I would almost do. say, like, shouldn't you want as many people as you can find and you want to expand and maintain, like, the workers to have a growing a quarantine zone, right? You want to build up a city almost, eventually. Do you not slowly open the door and peer out? Do you, do you just burst open out the front door and then start looking around? Don't you? I don't know, I feel like if they were just here, uh, I wouldn't just I just wouldn't go outside that day. Especially if you've got cameras. Just stay safe yeah. for a while. I'd just be hanging out. Finally, I can go boating. <laughs> I wonder how Ooh, he's... Ooh, he's, he's splurging. He's getting supreme. Why not, in it? I feel like everybody the wouldn't home mind. The Depot. That's French for the toilet. Where was Home A? That was fast. That Home Depot is a gold mine. I mean, it's... Wires, outlets, plugs, lumber that's already pre-cut, measured. Yeah. Ooh, gold mine. All the tools, the last of lifetime. Well, the fact that he already had a um, a hidden underground thing going on, it's like he's he's like the kind of guy that a person who just like a prepper. Yeah, prepper. Yeah. So yeah, he he would know better than most probably how much of uh, he's got to be able to use. 
He's probably just been dreaming of the day. The kind of person who believes that the apocalypse is always just around the corner. Yeah. And in this case, it, it was. Finally come. Yeah. And the, if anything, he's uh, this is his element. <laughs> Arot. Chicken. So yeah, it's worth mentioning, I guess, that what, what's interesting about this episode is that, um, as far as I'm aware, we're not getting any more Joel and Ellie now. It's all going to be about this guy. Well, and this marks, like, the first sort of, I guess, major deviation is that we we meet Bill uh, just during Joel and Ellie's main adventure. We never got to see the whole story of Bill. Yeah. I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. And, and then, and then his relationship with Frank, and obviously we saw what the end of that looked like, but we didn't get to see it play out. So, yeah, obviously you're referring to the game. Um, yeah, because this is already different, but you can see what pieces they've pulled, or at least how they've come yeah. to make this as a story. Well, I mean, we already knew Bill was like hyper prepped. His whole town was filled with traps and everything. Yeah, which is obviously reflected already here. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. It doesn't get old. What's interesting now and making me think is like, is, have we almost done a flip of the convention of the first two episodes being that we have an opening scene to provide some context about another part of the world that relates to the progress of the infection fungal thing. And then we get Joel and Ellie slash the main story. This time we had an opening scene with them and the rest of the episode is going to be big old... Uh, Bill. Yeah, you know, like what, something that's not them. Right? Just... It's almost yeah. like a flip. Yeah, I guess it keeps you on your toes. You never know what to expect in an episode, even if you played the game. Well, it's TV, in it? Because yeah. it ain't a game, so we do different things here. Of course. That's another thing, is we don't have to make gameplay segments. Well, it just means you can have these long stretches of no combat. It is one of the challenges I... of telling a story in a game when you have a bunch of combat. I remember in the game being really fascinated with Bill and Frank's relationship and wanting to know a bit more about it beyond just the letter that was left. So I'm, I'm yeah, glad that the show is doing this. Like it feels like an opportunity bit. if done well. Are you armed? No. Why did you take that long to answer? I thought about lying for some reason, but the reason didn't come. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, like, I, I are you armed? It's like, if I say... No, maybe they won't think of me as a potential, yeah. like, I can handle ten. myself sort of thing. I'm alone. From where? Baltimore QZ? It's gone. Are you hurt? Yeah, I fell in a just, hole. Just a bruise. What do you think of the likelihood of getting out of that hole yourself? Uh, 100%. You can With dig, enough like, time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dig little it is notches dirt. in there. Yeah. We're gonna deep rock galactic our way out of this ditch. <laughs> yeah. No, no, dig up, stupid. How are you gonna get out of here? We'll dig our way out! No, no, dig up, stupid! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a little infection check, a good. How'd you get that? Found it. None of your goddamn business. He was just laying there on the ground, on that guy I killed. <laughs> Gotta be so fucking hard to trust anybody in this environment, you know? Yeah. Boston is that way. You can make it by nightfall. I'm really hungry. I'm letting you go, so go. All right. Look, my yeah. name's Frank. Oh, yeah? yeah? Here's the thing, Frank. Then every bum you talk to about it is gonna show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch. It was a restaurant. You don't have free lunch at Arby's. That's true. I won't talk about it to any bums or hobos or vagabonds, I promise. I've only got so much cheese whiz. I can't feed everybody. <laughs> I'll spare it. It's like a silo of cheese whiz. <laughs> that old classic, isn't it? You feel pretty safe probably getting rid of this guy. But then you also feel pretty bad if he's just a guy. I'm gonna go ahead and bet that Bill's not super social. Or at least he wasn't. No one named one Bill is social. Living on his own for like four years. I left some clothes here for you. Which is enough to make anybody who isn't social sort of... Especially in the midst of a post-apocalypse too. Yeah, like, how long can you last entertaining yourself off of, like... Because he's, he's secured himself real well. Sure. But you'll eventually finish sure. all of your tasks, you know? Thank you. Yeah. And then you'll be like, now what? Amazing. B? It's about... Someone else is enjoying stuff. I'm, I'm trying to think of other stories that have done this, but, like, yeah, just... 
enjoying something is one thing, but enjoying it with other people is, is a whole other thing. Somebody out of dust. No one touches my dust. <laughs> it's taken me years to cultivate that fine <laughs> dust. You put your fingers all over it. <laughs> this would be probably mind blowing if you've been living in the apocalypse for like years. What the fuck? Everything tastes good when you're starving. Yeah, but not like this. <laughs> Yeah, but that's like a meal. Yeah, but yeah, it's been four years. I remember what food tastes like. <laughs> A man who knows to pair rabbit with a bush. It would actually be enough to make you know, forget briefly that the, the world has ended and there's zombies yeah, outside. This is like so unexpectedly awesome. I always keep a gun on in case the rabbits get, you know, jumpy. But rabbits jump all the time, right? Thank you. You're welcome. What year so was this? I Did they say? Well, this is four years later, so yeah. Because I'm just trying to figure out the ages right now. Like, they would... However old they are now, we got another... But first... 20 years. Well, they're 16 years from here. Uh, wow. You know how much these are worth? Currently nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these, these aren't yours. My mother's. Could uh, you uh, not... This is you. <laughs> Imagine you took your job so seriously. Like, you'll be playing piano like one episode of one TV show that you'll be a part of and it's like, I must learn how to do it myself. <laughs> like, oh, well, that's not really necessary. It's like, no, I must. No, 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 sir. No, thank you. Might just be that fundamentally it's like, no, don't do this. You gotta make me like you and then I'm gonna have you stay and I don't want, I don't want that. <laughs> I wanna be on my own. Oh, you definitely get a big old sense that he's like, closed off but simultaneously show, he's, he's taken a lot of actions to show that he clearly wants to do stuff with someone. Yeah. Might call it multi-dimensional. Sounds like good advice. I like this. Like neither one of them want to leave or want the other person to leave, but they they don't want to weird the other person out. Yeah. Yeah, it's all super awkward, but a lot of also subtext. desperate. And look, it's music that's uh, being able to bind them. I mean, that feels deliberate, right? Like, it's food, drink, and music. Like, it's all just experiences. Right. I always like it when Nick Offman shows up in anything. Find him fun, which is well, funny because... Well, I think when everybody found out that he was going to be playing Bill, that was really exciting. It was just like, that seems perfect. We liked him in Fargo. Who's the girl? Girl you're singing about. There is no girl. You like it when your beard touches another beard? <laughs> he doesn't even know his name, that's true. Bill. Oh, funny, right? Bill and Frank. Bill and yeah. Frank are, yeah, like this. The, they go, we need names. Who are they going to be? I don't know. Frank, Bill. Go take a Bob shot. and Joe. <laughs> well, hey, it's been a while for both of them, I suppose. Well, it's, uh, it's official. Pianos are gay. What would be the straight instrument? Guitar? Accordions, <laughs> actually. Electric guitar. <laughs> I don't have sex for lunches. Have sex for brunches. Not even great ones. Not even great ones. If I do this, I'm gonna stay for a few more days. Wait, isn't that just the same thing? That but makes you more, more of. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually makes you seem like more of a whore. You're a frugal whore. Yeah, it sounds like you're not. You're just negotiating, honestly. Yeah, I thought he was going to go the direction of, like, this means something to me, as opposed to, I'm bartering for more than just a meal here, okay? <laughs> like, I'm getting a couple days. I think he also knows that Bill probably doesn't want him to go either. Oh, God, the no no zone. Oh. Well, it's interesting, right? Because Bill comes across quite hey, strong and antisocial, but in an environment like that, he's fucking ever? super vulnerable. Right. Why, why, this is for us. Who cares what they look like? I do. Oh, we're getting our racist. Our home isn't just <laughs> our house. <laughs> you live in a psycho bunker where 9-11 was an inside job and, and the government are all Nazis. The government are all Nazis! Well, yeah, now, but not then. <laughs> not then. <laughs> <laughs> I am asking for some paint and some gasoline for the lawnmower, that's all. I'll do everything else myself. Oh, he wants to, like, make the place look nice, I guess. Management? 
Okay, okay. Just tell me why. Paying attention to things. It's how we show love. And I'm fixing up some of the shops. Whoa, Not the whoa. stupid ones, just the, the wine shop and the furniture store. Wait, what are the stupid ones? And the clothing boutique. Anything that isn't a wine shop or a furniture the store. Boutique. Or a clothing boutique. Are, are we hosting the memory a store from garden party? The the memory store. We're going to make friends. And we will invite them to visit. There are no friends to be had. Well, I've actually been talking to a nice woman on the radio. What? You what? <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's a good reaction. Really just, it's amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you oh my god! <laughs> he just got his pistol. Hey! hey so oh, you're a paranoid schizophrenic too? I'm not schizophrenic. Uh -huh. But I am paranoid. It's a very nice dovetailing of the plot lines. Mm. I like this. Well, can I? How nice this is to have a civilized meal in such a, a beautiful place. It's been so long. I mean, I just uh, I want to thank you, even if we don't end up working together. He's got his gun on the table. Yeah. <laughs> we are working together. I, think I haven't had a meal of this uh, caliber and such. I mean, a fine meal uh, in such <laughs> a long time. <laughs> uh, Frank! Uh, Ellie asked about Frank and Bill. I think Joel said Frank is nice. So, yeah. I understand. He clicks the hammer back now that it's just <laughs> <my> him <laughs> too. Again, yeah. I wouldn't be happy either. But of all the people he could have found on the radio, we're actually decent people just trying to get by. Uh-huh. What a oh. coincidence. <laughs> well, aren't I the lucky one? Books, medicine, machine parts. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. Prepper or something? Survivalist. We're self-sufficient here. I don't need you or your friend complicating our lives. That fence has got a year on it. Tops. Galvanized wire already started to corrode. If I can get you ten spools of high tensile... Yeah, and neat, right, it's not only that he's been living in the post but so that I... Joel is, uh... He was like a contractor for buildings and stuff. Yep. Wow. Yeah, he'll know about materials and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. It's just the reality of well, stories like just, this, um... where working together will get you results you wouldn't even well, expect. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that that's what we're going for here, right? Is like Bill's notion of self-sufficiency is, is kind of like not real. There are certain things that he doesn't know and there are certain things that he can't do for himself yeah. and there are certain needs that can't be fulfilled in the absence of other people. No matter how but then, yeah, you, you might have like to it. cooperate with other people as independent but, as you think you are, you know? But that just invariably exposes him to new dangers. Of course yep. it does. Because like, yeah, maybe it's fear, and test yeah. really... You know, maybe Joel and Tess are nice, but what about the next well, people? The thing is, and Joel just said, like, you know, warning, there will be raiders eventually. I would almost be able to interpret that as a threat. Yeah, that's almost like maybe, what I yeah. think, but maybe but it I depends on the conversation like and their dynamic, like, but... It's just that you can't you know, know, isn't it? Because it's like, if Joel asks you to cooperate the nice way, and if you don't, he might yeah. bring back his friends someday. But then there's just mm. the... It gets to the illusion of safety that he has here that's, you know, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> How'd you get those cars like that? Maybe they found a... They lifted them. <laughs> Must have had a crane or oh, something. Just yeah. <laughs> I think both of their beards oh. have changed color. Joel and Tess when you're yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Which getting gun? older. Strawberries! See, you wouldn't have this unless you were nice to Joel. Oh, I don't take the 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 leaves off. I use them as a little handle. <laughs> I do sometimes too. I go back and forth. I eat the leaves. They're good for you. Calcium. I am very thankful. I know. I'm sorry. I'm allergic to strawberries. I should have told you. Getting older faster than you. Older means we're still here. I was never afraid before. Because he had nothing to lose. That's a cool line. Yeah, that is a good line. Though I guess it's particularly uh, sad if you know where this ends. Well, and you kissed me in the strawberry patch. Strawberries. I mean, how can you not as well start to link this? What do you think the point of all this is? To rip it away from him. Well, I mean, the point broadly would be like, yeah, that's kind of the trade-off, isn't it? For these, like, really... Uh-oh, what's about to happen here? Oh, we got raiders. What I was going to say is the what do you think Ellie represents in Joel's life, right? It's a it's a reason someone he cares about so much. Because it seems like 
what we're gunning for with Bill was that he was surviving, but he wasn't living. Wow. Oh, jeez. Geez. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he was surviving, but he wasn't getting much out of life. He was simply existing, if anything. Yeah, now that's why he's everything's different now, because this is yeah. actually great for him. Well, but... now he has something that he can lose. I sure do hope nothing bad happens to anybody. I just feel like that's going to be what we're supposed to incorporate into thinking about Joel and Ellie. Is... Oh, sure. Which is what I yeah. think a lot of side characters are supposed to do, right? And y'all don't keep a well, they're all in the different, bedroom? yeah. No, don't go outside. Now they can see you. I don't even know if Bill's given this guy, like, proper instruction of what to do and where to go. Oh, there's Bill, yeah. Fucking hell, he's still there, just getting flamethrowered. Oh, he should wow, be in Bill, cover, dude. Alive? You gotta... Wow, you're just, uh... like, standing out in the open. You wouldn't have thought, like, a doomsday prepper type. He'd be, like, yeah. in, a, in a bird's nest sort of thing, wouldn't he? Not just yeah, standing out like, there like that. Yeah, doesn't he have, like, a bunker? Does he not have a... A bulletproof vest, at the very least? Yeah, yeah, you'd think. I guess if you went out there in a rush, but still, it feels really weird to just shoot out in the you open like that. Yeah, you're not even gonna shoot from the windows of the um, the house and everything. All right, Bill, you got shot because you were standing in the street. You need to work on that. that next time, buddy. Yeah, that was really dumb, Bill. I don't expect this kind of sloppy maneuvering from you. If they just wander into the fence, I guess. List for Joel. Uh huh. You ain't dead yet. <laughs> that could just be a flash wound. You might be alright. Kind of interesting that he would, in desperate moments, tell him to go to Joel. That must mean that he believes that Joel is the kind of person that would take care of people. Yeah. Okay. Go. Oh, we've definitely gone on now. 2023. Santa? Maybe kind of a young Santa. He looks like J Jordan Peterson from that angle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you clean your room? They gave Nick Hoffman loads of. Are they called liver spots? The spots you get when you get older? Yeah. So. I think they may have, may have given him a little too many. I call them <laughs> wisdom speckles. I'm not fighting about it. Back in I bed. I promise you I'm gonna stay up. Why? Because this is my last day. What if we find a doctor? What if what if someone shows up who can help? Who's coming, Bill? The door-to-door -door MRI salesman? I'm not gonna give you the every day was a wonderful gift from God speech. I have had a lot of bad days. I've had bad days with you, too. Just give me one more good day. Then you will crush all of these up, put them in my wine. I will drink it. <sighs> I can't. Well, I don't really have commentary for this, it's just sad. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just watching. It's very sad. Yeah, I have commentary. That's an ugly shirt. Some, um, obviously, it's realities of. Stuff, shit like this happens in real life, but uh, this would totally happen in post apocalyptic places because there's so much less ability to circumvent disease and. Well, just, yeah, that he got sick, you know? And there was nothing that could be done about it. What is The Last of Us as a game this point all about? Isn't it like it's worth hanging on to what remains of the best of experiences we can have with each other as opposed to desperately clinging to just exist? Um, yeah. yeah. That's what it felt, felt like by the time you hit the end of the game, right? Like, Joel is like, yeah, Ellie's worth everything. And I imagine that's what's being reflected here. Oh, and I yeah. see what we're doing here. It's what it, the first meeting between yeah, these it's the two. Same meal first as well. dinner, and this is the last, yeah. With the wine. I mean, it's hard to portray like a, a whole, a, what, two decade long relationship in just 40 minutes ish. Yeah. Good zigzag. They get along, they fight. One one's life is in danger, and then it's flipped now. Yeah, it feels like they covered all of the necessary beats to get to this point. Yeah. All the things that a normal relationship has, you know. <laughs> Were there already 
pills in a bottle. Enough to kill a horse. I'm old. I'm satisfied. And you were my purpose. Oh, I should be furious. It's incredibly romantic. That is a big deviation from the game. I was watching this episode wondering if they were going to do this. Well, so the thing about it is that felt uh, appropriate considering the story they've been telling. Given all the context that we had, yeah, this does seem like... This seems like something that would happen. Oh. Man, there's a lot of trust giving him the, uh... Yeah. Code. I quite like that that's a sign that something's very wrong. Yeah. It's from Bill. Who was this? So they're dead. Mm -hmm. You you want to take anything you need. The bunker code is the same as the gate code, but in reverse. But still. It's like we're friends. Almost. And I respect you. I used to hate the world, and I was happy when everyone died. I saved him. Yeah, I there you go. Him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep... Oh, I'd be tasked when it... Stay here. Yeah, the game is... His portion is all about getting a car in working order, right? Yes, yeah. and it looks just like this car as well. They have to go to the school to get the battery, I think. And then shit tons of infected arrive. And that was the reveal of the bloater as a boss, so I think people might have been disappointed with, like, the no bloater reveal yet. But that's... Oh, well, again, obviously, you know, give it time. <laughs> You'll get your bloater, probably. Listen, about Tess. Hey, look, <laughs> um... About Tess... I, I don't even know what... Here's how this thing's gonna play out. If I'm taking you with me, there's some rules you gotta follow. Rule one, you don't bring up Tess, ever. You don't bring up Tess, ever. Matter of fact, we can just keep our histories to ourselves. Matter of fact, we can just keep our histories to ourselves. Rule two, you don't tell anyone about your condition. Secondly, don't tell anybody about your condition. If they think you're crazy, they'll try to kill you. They see that bite mark, they won't think it through, they'll just shoot you. Rule three. You do what I say when I say it. And lastly, you do what I say when I say it. We clear? We clear. Yes. Repeat it. What you say goes. Sure. Repeat it. What you say goes. Good. Yeah, they got some stocking up to do. This guy was a genius. I guess this is a good stash, right? As opposed to take everything from here. Grab some cans from over there. Nothing dented or swollen. Dude. No. There's a wall of them. Fucking with clocks. Pretty. Shut up. Maybe the odds are pretty high she saves him with the gun. Later yeah, that's and he's like, well, where did you get the that? Payoff, right? They'll do the the one from the game. Yeah. It's 
first time. I wonder what it's like to approach a car without any context of it. I guess it would be pretty interesting. Yeah. Is it weird that I think sometimes when I'm driving, like, what if, like, a, in a time machine, like, George Washington or something was in my car and I had to explain to him not to panic on the road because everyone stays in the lines. <laughs> you're just like, ah! And you're like, no, you're like, no, 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 it's no, fine. No. We, we all stay in the lines. It's great. There's rules. <laughs> You know, that is actually before my time. <laughs> that is winter, though. Oh, man. Well, better than nothing. It's better than nothing. That'll be the bedroom window, then. Yeah. That was a pretty great episode. Yeah, that was really nice. I really like that. Good. Um, knew exactly what its goal was and it achieved it. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it did. Bill. Well, it's just a great example of like how to tell a very complete story in a single episode of television to tell a complete story with a theme that was set up and paid off and reinforced and ties into the broader theme of the, uh, what, well, presumably will be the broader theme of the show if the game is any indication. Yeah, and it's just they chose a really good character from the game to use for this story because they managed to yeah. even get to keep a lot of his elements. Obviously, he stripped away a couple, but uh, and he doesn't get to well, interact. Well, the role with... that he plays in the story is different, very different from the role that he played in the uh, right. in the game. In the game, it was much more of an active role in the main plot, whereas here it's much more of a thematic role. Yeah, what he passes on in terms of support and help to Joel is much more. Um, it's done in the form of that that message right like oh, i feel like planting the seed for a, a later character choice and i imagine that those will be consistently reinforced with i mean with like when is... meet with tommy henry and sam i imagine that all of those stories will sort of uh be you know building up that core motivation Bill's gonna feel like he failed with Tess to some degree now and it's like ellie yeah. is his uh second go around but in the same well, way so obviously the well right Kind of. Well, those are like, that's what it all comes down to. He's supposed to protect these people. And uh, yeah, if they yeah. die, that means that's he's uh, fucked he up. Failed. Yeah. They didn't have him uh, cry after reading it. You can tell he's um, he's struggling. Pretty with... upset. Yeah. Especially because he probably well, fucking I... liked Frank and Bill um, after knowing them for that long. Like, like when he's just like, they're dead. And he's just sort of staring, having to deal with this. Yeah. Everyone keeps fucking dying. So I think in the games, he did serve a thematic purpose there as well. I, the, it's the theme is different. Obviously, he served the obvious function of like providing the car battery and also having like the school set piece and the the bloater boss fight. But uh, he also represented to Joel on his journey what you can turn into if you wall yourself off completely. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about, a partner. Somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing. Getting you killed. So you know what I did? I wisened the fuck up. And I realized it's gotta be just me. Yeah, I, I don't mean to, uh, certainly don't mean to downplay the, uh, the, the role that he played. I guess it's more so that in this one, when you strip so much of that away, it just lays bare. Like, this case is very much a, uh, thematic sort of story. Because it doesn't yeah. tie directly into helping Joel and Ellie on their quest, really, at all. Whereas in the game, it was kind of, yeah, it was doing two things at once. It had the plot stuff, but then it also had, this is Bill, This is, these are his outcomes, and Joel has to sort of consider those outcomes and maybe think about whether he wants, you know, what he could do to avoid the situation that Bill finds himself in. Totally alone, bitter, miserable. Yeah, and super actually... secure, but like... Just is that worth it when you've well, got existing, right? He's yeah. existing. Whereas what we saw here was Bill was existing and then he was living, and he got a lot out of that relationship. And it and the the ending, of course, as well, because in the game Frank disappears and then he finds out what actually happened to him, and it's like that's something that he has to deal with. Whereas here it's a very different story in that regard. But there's obviously inspiration. They've taken elements, moved things around. Yeah, adapted. well, they've created something pretty new um with this story but at the same time you can see how they got it from the game 
And I was I was pretty impressed with uh, the work that they did for those two characters, considering that it was just one episode. I feel like you get to see that whole relationship sort of play out, even though you're only really seeing flashpoints of, like, big significant moments. It feels like a relationship that lasted 16 years there by the end. Like, that felt like a relationship that had matured and sort of endured for, for many, many years. Yeah, it's very believable. Um, it's it's very, very easy to buy. Sure, because obviously we can tell all kinds of different stories could have gone hideously wrong, right? And that Frank was just an asshole and took everything from him or yeah. killed him or whatever, but it's just a genuine sort of antisocial closed off man who thought the whole world may end and hates the government is thriving in this environment almost. But he doesn't have everything. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. And then this one person comes into his life and and, and totally and completely enriches it. Well, and, and the, they have that scene, right? This guy, this guy is, Bill might even describe this guy as useless, as in, like, his talents uh, are almost in the aesthetic, and uh, he cares about him, he's aware of music, but, like, what, what is what is his pragmatic use of this environment? It's like, we didn't see a huge amount of it, to the point where uh, Bill says immediately when he thinks he's dying, you gotta get Joel, because Joel can take care of you. You know, like, cause without you, like me to look after you, how long will you really last? Because obviously he was dying when he found him. But yeah. he values him more than anything. Well, yeah, because we saw that even in him allowing, it's like, you know, he was trying to min-max, right? Bill's like, well, yeah, but, you know, this doesn't serve any clear utility, so why would we do this? Whereas, you know, Frank is more like, well, it's, uh, you know, in terms of re rejuvenating the house and everything. It's like, what is the utility? It's like, I guess there's no strict utility, but it makes you happier, so, you know, like, it might as well, right? It's kind of like, that's what the two complement each other very well. Well, they, they created a little paradise for themselves in hell. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I like that about it. I uh, really I, liked that relationship yeah. those two had. And you, that kind of is summed up by the, like the last shot where you it, it like tracks into the bedroom and then you focus rack from the outside to the inside in the little perfect home that they built for themselves and it represents like a life lived, loved and lost. Yeah, the, the, they it have a clear zigzag the... pattern as well that goes into the right the distance. I can imagine people being disappointed who are fans of the games who wanted the punished bill phase where like he's still alive when joel and ellie come around yeah like if it was if it wasn't for the line where he put the pills in the bottle enough to kill a horse it's like that's them the audi like the writers telling the audience like oh he's dead after this okay if it wasn't for that i would i was kind of half expecting bill to like show up at, at the very end and be like the hell are you doing in my house you know like and then the I next episode would be like the adventures with what, bill adventure where you get to together. see him yeah. crazy like unhinged and what this losing frank has done to him like he's driven him a you bit could loopy. tell that story yeah. I, I think you could yeah. i guess by the time it was him old, like frank old and sick there was a thought in the back of my head of, you know, you could deviate from the games here. Like, you yeah. could you could do something different. And and I was sort of, the, the longer time went on, the more I was thinking, I think you are. I think you're about to deviate here. And I think that it is a choice that's totally legitimate. Yeah, I, th I think it works. This is a different thematic route of, because the key that makes this work, I think, is, like you pointed out, Mahler, the line in the, the letter. I saved someone who was worth saving. Right. Yeah. And then that's and, like and of course the think. subtext is that Frank saved him as well. You know, like yeah, he saved somebody's life. Which is Frank exactly really what Joel and, Joel and Ellie is was going to pretty be. much. Yeah, that, that right. through saving Ellie, Joel basically sort of rediscovers the, the this uh, ability to care for others and something that he lost. You know, somewhere along the way. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's a it's a funny thing, right? But uh, Frank reaching out and uh, talking to Tess is incredibly risky. But you know, it leads to them having that relationship. They exchange supplies back and forth, and then to the point where if Bill thinks he's gonna die, he has someone that he can you know get Frank to sort of thing. Which and he has someone he cares about. He he leaves Joel and Tess uh, all of his stuff. It's like it's, it was worthwhile. But he's just he's just that careful that. Uh, secluded almost even though you're getting lots of evidence so you don't have to be yeah and it, it makes sense that he decided to go with him you know because it's like what am i sticking around for after this like if you're gone i know there's nothing like i know what's waiting for me after this and it's just days and days be going back to his old life I, isn't it? yeah um and it's made me think like well 
in the game he stuck around but then i remember in the game he doesn't know he frank died until he finds him yeah. well no because like, he was bitter he about himself. it he thought frank abandoned him right yeah they find him dead yeah which right? again I feel like you can't have that one in this when you've built it this way. You wouldn't have, Frank wouldn't abandon Bill with the way that no, these two are. No. Like I was saying before, I remember in the games being really interested in this relationship and wanting to know more. And so the show decided to do that with its unique format, which I think is a good idea. And if you're going to do that, then this is the route that makes sense, is to just let, let, that, let, let that life play out. And then it makes sense for... Um, it wouldn't make sense if you were to just stick around, I don't think. I like the story in and of itself, like... and then I just like how much it, it, what it has to say about what I assume will be the season overall, but certainly Joel and Ellie, and Joel and Dara, and Joel and Tess. It's the reality of, I quite like that Bill sees a lot of himself in Joel, which is a, both a good thing and bad thing. Yes, yeah. Because right. uh, I don't think in any of that montage we saw what he does for fun, we just saw all of the pragmatic stuff. Which I think is kind of the point, this is fun. Uh, for him, but as soon as it runs out, then what? Meanwhile, when you have right. someone, you know, every single day is a, is a new experience. The discussion I've seen around this episode is the, for one, boring as a criticism. Yeah, I guess I'm not surprised that people call it boring, but Makes um, sense. it's not. <laughs> but um, I don't yeah, find like, it boring. Make, well, like, yeah, I, I, I get it. I didn't find it boring at all. I didn't think it was boring at all. I wanted to see, uh, wanted to see what was, uh, what was going to happen. And uh, it seems deliberate and purposeful. And I'm really glad that we got to see an episode where you're kind of reminded those things do still get made, actually. I yeah. think it's neat, too, to just have our main characters be guest characters in this episode. I quite like the scenes with Joel and Bill. And maybe there is a sense in my head, it's like, it would have been cool to have had more for a maybe punished Bill with, with Joel and Ellie. All the dialogue you get with that is now not possible. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business and we're here because you owe Joel some favors. And oh. you can start by taking these off. I owe Joel some favors. Is some kind of joke? Yeah, sure, Joel. Go ahead. Take my car. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. Listen to me, you little shit. No, fuck you! You hang- Hey! What'd I say to you when we walked down the steps? What'd I say? I'm just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. <sighs> but I suppose that is a different story that can be told. There are so many that can be told. So many lines that could have come out. So many different directions you can take. I just, uh, I think sometimes people will just assume the alternative would have been way better instead of sort of appreciating this for what it is and what they did. There's yes. pros to both methods. I remember in the game, I really like the last exchange with Bill. It's like, we square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town. And then that's the end. And Joel's just like nods. He understands because there's like, shit between them from the past and but it's like whatever water under the bridge and then they'll never see each other again after that i like the bittersweet but this it works the human drama was really well executed it's a good little story really well acted yeah i thought the acting was terrific the guy ron swanson parks Wouldn't. and rec guy i his performance was great and it's it was evidence fantastic. to me yeah craig mazin has figured out the secret of casting comedians for shit like this. Funny guys, they just understand the role. They understand grief. Like a familiarity with grief could be that a lot of jokes are drawn from pointing out just things that suck about life, but in a format that we can all sort of just laugh at it instead of be depressed or anything. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's sort of a foundation of pain when you get like a belly laugh off a really funny joke. Not all the time, but I find the best comedians, you know, like, Richard Pryor would joke about his personal life and go into really dark shit, and he would extract like that. Like that, comedy, comedy can speak to the core of the human experience, and that includes tragedy and sadness. Yeah. That, like, and in so order think... to be great, a familiarity and understanding of that seems like almost a prerequisite. And maybe that's just you can translate that to a dramatic performance in a way that is almost surprisingly adept, because people sometimes don't think of comedy as like deeply tragic. Right. Yeah. And so I think. Good comedians, they are aware of that, but they don't really have an opportunity to utilize it on the stage because you don't want to make people sad. But then when yeah. it comes time to act out a sad scene in a show like this, it's very easy for them to channel into that and finally utilize it. 
Yeah, it'll explain like why you did so well. Here, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I even like as well. It just it feels a little bit more vibrant than your average um, storytelling as well. Just for example, are you armed? And then a gap of about four seconds or whatever, and he goes no. And he just goes, why'd you take so long to say no? Like it just feels <laughs> like something normal you would probably point out. And then of course him moving into like, well, because I don't know, it felt like something maybe I should lie about, but I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. It's like yeah, because yeah. it's an incredibly high stress situation. He thinks he's gonna be dead. Anyway, I don't know. There's just a lot of real stuff in this that keeps me bound to it. I quite like it. It all seems genuine. It's well written. Yeah. And their relationship well felt written. genuine. It didn't feel like it was pandering at all. Like it was all really like I bought it. Yeah. Acting was superb. It was, yeah. I bought um, all of it, 100%. Everyone did a great job. <laughs> like, as much as all of that is true, unfortunately, I feel like this is a... Because I've already seen pieces of it, but... You already know people are going to take issue with this because of the fact that it's a gay couple Work. for a whole episode. Yeah. I... Yeah. I... I... I uh, whatever. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, uh, if that's something that's gonna get in the way of you appreciating some great storytelling, I don't know. Like, doesn't like yeah. I, I don't know. It just feels like a neat idea that you have a guy who is looking for companionship, but has created all of the walls around him to essentially prevent all of that. But he keeps him safe. It feels interesting as well, considering that again, the apocalypse here began in two thousand three, and they would have met, and almost you know, it's kind of like the world hits pause right wherever it was at. Because you see yeah. that a lot, right? Cars are all early 2000s. Yeah, that Mortal Kombat tour. I mean, Mortal Kombat was obviously in the 90s, but, you know, like, references and media and stuff kind of comes to an end there. But, I mean, even then, right, the, the context of their relationship in 2003, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it, there weren't a lot of, like, it feels... You know, the fact that they get married at the end, right? It's like, well, you're in a world where, like, whatever rules previously existed about saying whether or not you're allowed to do that doesn't exist anymore. It, it just makes me wonder if that's something that kind of is like an element that can be leveraged is knowing sort of when the world hit pause for them and like how yeah. much that might have influenced sort of Bill's, you know, closed off nature. Like that at that time, it might not have been as easy for him to sort of find love. Now, it's just a thought I'm having given given that it would have been, you know, 2006, seven when they met. And um, had yeah. to wait until the after the fungal zombie apocalypse to be able to get married. <laughs> to be able to live, yeah, to be able to live like honestly and, and fully, right? It's kind of something to think about. I would just go as far as saying there's no reason to desperately make the game and the show fight on this one. Like, no, I don't. Yeah, they're no. just so distinctly just two different concepts oh. that are played out, um, and they both are done really well. It's yeah. um. It, it feels to me like what they are doing, and I imagine it will continue as the show goes on, is there are moments in the game that didn't get a whole lot of time that can get more time because of the format that they have yeah, at their disposal. Show. You don't have gameplay um, to sort of get in the way of that. Well, I don't want to say it like getting, because it almost feels like what they said about Halo, right? Like, I don't want to, video games, it's not that there's limitations, it's that there's different challenges that you have to deal with when telling a story. When you're making a video game where the predominant, you know, thing that you do in gameplay is combat, it's just something you have to think about when you're, like, writing that story is, we need this to lead into combat, and we need this to be something that can organically emerge out of, like, a combat section or, you know, exploration, right, the balancing act. There's not really a lot of time in The Last of Us to do a story, like, in the game, to do that story that we just saw there. It just seems yeah. like it wouldn't quite fit. It would probably be a section that would be not very fun to play because it wouldn't be a whole lot of, like, engaging mechanics to grapple with. And so it's like a story that can be told in this medium. And it's like, yeah, that that's cool that you can tell that story and you can still essentially have it lead into where the game was anyway of Joel and Ellie go there they get the car and then they move on. It's just that the way that Bill, you know, interacts with them or like feeds into their story is just different now because it's, you know, it's it's adaptation, right? This is an interesting adaptation in that it feels like they're very thoughtfully deviated from the source material rather than looking at what the source material was and going, yeah, I mean, that was all right for like the dumb shooty game, but like we're like yeah. television writers. We're gonna like, we're gonna go for a real amazing story here with Halo, the television show. Yeah, it's it doesn't just take hard. what the games were and shit all over it. It it it's doesn't exist in spite of the games. Absolutely, it, it's not. like it's an extension of them. It's an alternate telling of the games. And it, I feel it, like it's reflected in a lot of the choices. That like the fact that they brought the original composer along, right? Like the fact that they brought him along to create the music for the show. It just feels like it's still the, like The Last of Us. It still feels like it's part of this. Uh, I say franchise, right? That includes one game that I don't like at all. <laughs> like it's <laughs> you know, it, it, it feels like a um appropriate. 
adjacent story in a yeah, sense to it has, what was there it in has the game. nods to the game it doesn't say anything that's like uh games aren't those dumb or we we've yeah. we've matured past that or we're, we're a higher form of storytelling i mean just the yeah. fact that um like in this you you mentioned that the car was the same kind of car i'm like well that means you have to have, they had to put work and effort into finding exactly the right well, Chevy, even, even making sure the, costumes, it's the right, right color you know joel's yeah. got the green plaid shirt Ellie's got like the red shirt with the um like gray brown undershirt. There's a lot of instances where it seems like they're they're like, we know what the games look like. I'm gonna find ways to try and parallel. Like even the window, right? It kind of looks like the window on the menu screen, not yep. peeled up and with like, you know, green overcoming every single thing, but it's it's kind of like similar framing. Yeah, it's like a happy version of that. It's a happy window. Bittersweet. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, go with bittersweet, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Because it was a life well lived as far as they were concerned. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it is. I don't know. It's nice to see that the people who made this show, like the writers, clearly like got together, and they didn't just come up with shit and throw it at sc at the screen and then hope that the big budget or the love of the game would carry them through. Seems like they really uh, do want to do some stuff here. They really want to write some characters and sequences, and yeah. I appreciate that immensely. Well, what do you think about the idea that people don't like this because it is filler? I think that only comes from a mindset who think that the only thing that can be worthwhile to watch is a progression of plot as it relates to a specific element of what they want to see. Because this was essentially a story that had a beginning, a middle, and an end that is going to assist other characters in fulfilling their own plot lines. And at that point, if you don't like that, then my question is, why are you watching? What is actually the purpose? Is, a, is the progression of a plot not the means to an end to communicate what characters are like and how they behave, moral lessons and themes. Is it all just, are you, are you so plot focused you forget kind of that plot can be a vehicle to explore other things that are arguably more like meaningful and emotional? Seems like they, they might be sort of losing the forest for the trees here. There's uh, a lot, I think, to gain even with the nuts and bolts, like, oh, did we get plot progression? It's like, well, they made it to Bill's. We got a history with who Bill is and what he means to Joel and Tess. And then they got a bunch of resources and we've developed a little bit more of uh, Ellie and Joel's relationship. And he's set ground rules now for how they're going to do things going forward. They have a car, they have extra supplies. They're moving on. And you could be like, oh, pff, yeah, but that's not worth an hour and 15 minutes. And I'd be like, oh, well, that's, I'm just saying that it's not filler. If you go from the previous episode to the next episode, you will have missed out a huge chunk yeah, of like you'll what wonder, happened. How the fuck do they have a car? Where, and of course, the payoff of, you know, Ellie's gun, where the hell did she get that? Yeah, like we've there done. There are setups and there's, yeah, there's stuff going on with Joel and Ellie here. Yeah. But as you just put it, I, I feel like it's impossible to argue against it. There was a full story in this one episode. Exactly. I'm not sure how yeah. filler is even identified anymore but then you have to get into the reality of like is filler yeah, always bad ads. yep uh, i mean remember well, I by that logic a lot of like virtually all of like star trek and all sorts of other shows were filler there wasn't an overarching plot there was it, it's well, a journey not episodes, a destination but, uh, there are plenty of episodes of a lot of television that is just um maybe house isn't a great example <laughs> the season but premiere the season <laughs> finale of, of house that's like where a lot of the story for the season, you, you can, can say, like the big stuff happens. Right. Supernatural um, season one, I'm pretty sure you can watch episode like 1, 15, and 24 or something, and you've got the yeah. full story of the season. A lot of television was, um, a lot of TV shows weren't very serialized at all. There'd be like a very loose ongoing story, but otherwise it was just... Yeah, it might pop you know, up here yeah. and there. Yeah, and, it's and just recurring characters, they, maybe. What they're trying to crack general, is getting a formula yeah. that people enjoy watching and can watch out of order. That's what the world was back in the day when you caught things yeah, yeah, yeah. The episode, Yeah, the episode on TV was the episode on TV, so that's the one you're yeah, exactly. watching. So. And that's... It's a format that's still reflected in, you know, like those types of shows now, like NCIS, right? Probably still has that same format. But then you got, you know, now we're in the era of streaming and the era of streaming seems to have really brought to the forefront stuff that used to just exclusively be like HBO shows. Yeah. Serialized long, television. And so really long movies, essentially. If what they I mean know. is it's like empty calories and they're not getting anything out of it, that would be, I think, I mean, you're mistaken calling it filler at that point. Because that could still be valid. I, it's just that... Also, in this episode, empty calories, nah. <laughs> that from, that uh, like, obviously, even, but at least even the analogy is odd. As if you don't, you can't enjoy and cherish and savor things if they don't have calories in them. Yeah, what did you know? we learn from this episode? If not that, that's not the way that it should be. 
It, what was that was what Frank was trying to tell and teach Phil. I think one of the mistakes being made in regard to the filler topic is that if Joel and Ellie aren't in the scene, it's filler. Yeah, Unless, yeah. Right? yeah. it has to be specifically hyper focused on these two characters right now and if they're yeah if they're not included Man, i got more joel and ellie than i was expecting from how many people i wasn't sort of... expecting as much joel and ellie yeah got a decent chunk of them at the end and i mean honestly one of my favorite moments is joel realizing that bill basically said make sure to look after tess yep. yeah yeah that, was a that sucks for him off. even if the letter wasn't there and they like they just went to the house and said oh there's a truck cool like if they just found the keys and then they just left it would be weaker storytelling but I would still consider that Bill's story being told in this universe worthwhile. Like I think it was, I think it was very worth worthwhile. the investment of time. I think it's going to match the that point whole life play out. This IP is trying to make, right? It's like The Last of Us, like all people. Yeah, like, exactly. What they've, what they've lost, what they've lived, what they've... Well, know. and the last of what remains of them as people, right? The last of... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, like a more humanity. literal, the, the, the few numbers that remain of human beings, but also what remains of their humanity. Yes, that's right. We're all upset. Well, some of us are upset about The Last of Us too. okay? But like, <laughs> you're, as, you're as good as the latest thing you've made, right? And Neil Druckmann is significantly involved in this. Everyone keeps talking I, about how it's going to go bad, though. It's like, well, should we call that I don't out know. I, when it I, happens? I, I guess it when happens. it happens... If well, it happens, we'll is, call it out. But until the then, more good pretty I don't know, man, though. Three episodes in, they've been pretty strong. This is probably the best one. In fact, no, I'd say this is the best one of the, the three. Um, I would say so, too, yeah. It's just, it, I don't know, man. How many more good episodes do you have to get before you start to get on side a little bit, you know? I'm just well, like, how yeah, many bad ones right does it take so till everyone goes, ooh? Well, I mean, you know, it, it can only I mean, take guys, one, House of the Dragon had a bad episode, but that season was great. It did so, have a bad I episode, mean, and that's true. Yeah. You well, know, so take, far, take what so, you can get, man. Because with this with this show, so far, so good is basically, uh, is basically where I'm at. Yeah, and I'm, I'll be happy to see another one. You know, keep going. I'm still interested. I want to know what happens next. Or rather, I know what happens next, but I'd be curious to see how I'm you adapt it. I'm interested to see how it plays out. Yeah. Yeah. For as much as it's like, yeah, there's a great framework. It's like, well, yeah, but you still got to have all of the talent, you know, directed in service of, uh, of of leveraging it and utilizing it. And so far, yeah, it's been like oh, acting's yeah. been great. The music's been great. The production design has been phenomenal. Like has this, been this, very this show feels so goddamn tangible and the world it feels is so lived in. Oh, yeah. Very believable. You don't you don't doubt yeah. for a second that this is a real place with real people. It's almost distracting with how not distracting it is, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I yeah. totally get what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's authentic. I remember reading a bit about the the production design approach. Craig was saying he has a rule with his sets is that you set it up, destroy it, and then set it up again. Make it look like an apocalypse happened. And then you kind of maybe over design it a little bit, maybe, as opposed to like actually having a real set and then like destroying it in a realistic way and then decorating it with like foliage and like fungal growth. Or whatever and, and you have like... all sorts of places that are just run down and derelict anyway there's all yeah. sorts of places that are just out there that have been abandoned and they've fallen apart naturally yeah i think this has done a good job as well just with their test and uh, this almost message from bill that we'll be getting all the motivation we need to make joel do some crazy shit in favor of ellie yeah um specifically when we get to the cannibals plot line you know because uh, I think one of the lines from Bill is like, God help any motherfucker that stands in our way when we have someone to protect. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing for me. I'll be like, I'm looking forward to see how all this will pay off. I wonder how well they'll do it. Um, I think that was a really solid episode. I give it a big old thumb up the bum. Um, yeah, I good. too give it a thumb up the bum. I would even say two thumbs up the bum. Why not? Yeah, maybe even different bums. I don't know. Experimental. All Just, right, uh, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Cool hat, yeah. <laughs> we'll see you for the next one. That's bye, right. Bye. See you later, everybody. Bye. The fence. The fence will kill the rest of them. What'd you bring me? Are we doing a little intro first? I mean, I um, always have to be the one that says hello to everybody, so I feel like one of you guys should do it this time. Welcome to the EFAP show, everybody. Whoa. Thanks.
Thanks so much for introducing <laughs> us. Da, 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 da. Rag, yeah. smaller, fringy. I'm joined by my guests. Yeah. To watch TV. <laughs> right. I so want TV. So we've all been doing for so long in life, and yet they keep making more of it. They haven't stopped. They were making it before I was even born. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we're going to try this again. It's like, really? I was considerate of them spending all those years building up a catalog of things for you to watch when you would eventually exist. Oh, I thought it was more so like they just keep putting out new ones, and they're like, this time, this one's about people going through struggles and it's like uh-huh yeah oh, I've seen that before. Okay. wow is that I'm what people sure. go through okay. it's like no 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 this one's different it's zombies you're like oh, oh okay <laughs> wow I, okay but let me guess the people are the real monsters Ooh, oh, I, I saw, <laughs> oh, I saw wow, a discussion about that um because oh, wow. i've seen there have been takes on uh, on episodes already episode uh three was reviewed by ben shapiro and people were like i don't think he realizes the last of us refers to and then they explained a bunch of things and then other people were like yeah that's the same as the people realizing the walking dead was referring to the human humans, not the actual zombies. And everyone was like coming over themselves about how much they'd interpreted it. And I was sitting there like, oh, I thought that stuff was obvious, but all right. Yeah. It's fine. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the, the title The Last of Us specifically because I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. It's like doubles up. It's like not only talking about the last of humans, but the last of the humanity they have. We've talked about this a couple times, and it's going to be relevant in the show as it goes forward, I'd imagine. But my God, everyone likes to use anything they can to assert how much more intelligent they are than the next person, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I understood it. I bet you haven't even read the book Understanding Themes by Dr. Ergen Faud Schiesen. Like, no, I, I haven't. I felt like the zombie kills eventually got in the way of The Walking Dead, you know, where it's like every episode needs an ob obligatory killing of at least one zombie, where it's not, it doesn't really have like a narrative purpose in that episode. It's yeah, just like, like they, a, they require it's zombie. It's ticking boxes. I think that, I zombie think that encounters. was like actually, yeah, a requirement for that show. It might have been. You wouldn't want to bore people zombie. by not having zombie encounters, would you? Yeah, and <laughs> maybe they were right because that show ended up being like the biggest show in the world for a time. You know, it did. Yeah, it's know, a good point. Right. Maybe there's something to that for sure. Well, in terms of getting people to watch it, I guess, in terms of artistic integrity, you should let people do it. You, um, <laughs> you, guys yeah. know. you guys know about Big Brother, right? That show? Yeah. yeah. I've heard yeah. of it, but yeah. I've never yeah. seen it. Did you know they made a special where, I think it was a couple of episodes, it ran in like, I want to say like 2006, I mean fucking ages ago, but it was um, a zombie special, and it was like a movie, or rather a TV show in terms of the quality I think that they did, and the idea was, it was like fiction, it wasn't like reality show or anything, where they run a Big Brother episode, and like, I think, I mean, a week into it or something, a zombie infection hits the UK, and so everyone in the house doesn't know that's happening, and then um, I think they even had the presenter, who at the time was Davina McCall, like she's like, terrified running in there, and I think she's been bitten or something like that, and I just remember thinking, like, that could be fun, couldn't it? Like, I'm mm. kind of, like, you know, like, Love Island, or I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, you have that sort of shit happening, but then also a zombie apocalypse in the outside world, and so they actually have to go from doing these, like, silly survival things, where it's like, oh, how many bananas can you get? You know, if you get more points, better feast for you and your... Blah blah blah. It's like it actually becomes a survival circumstance, and I don't yeah, know, it might be potential there. Well, if it was just like a zombie reality show, the reactions wouldn't be as fun or genuine. But if like you have something like Big Brother that's supposed to have nothing to do with zombies, and then you introduce a zombie element like that, like everyone is like, "What? What's going on?" You almost want to. Like that... it, it would be too unethical and high risk factor. But if you actually had a normal Big Brother episode, everyone's filming, and then you high makeup put in a, an actor into the room that's an, pretending to be a zombie just like slowly mm -hmm. walking towards him. And you have some guy, like maybe one of them is in on it and he walks up to him and is like, it's just a fucking actor. And then the guy like goes, Bleh! and it's like, you know, they have blood <laughs> packs and he's like, oh, run, run. <laughs> like <that's, laughs> but then, you know, if you have just one guy who's like, it's a fucking, I'm going to kill the zombie. And he starts hitting it. And you're like, no, 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 I am an, I am an actor. I'm an actor. <laughs> Please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah. Not long ago, there was a story about yeah. a bank high or a, a casino heist, you know, that took place during a zombie apocalypse. And that's that. That's really interesting. Oh, that sounds like a great premise. Did you just yeah, come up with that? Because I don't think yeah, anyone's made yeah, that. Because I, I would have heard about it. Because that sounds so good. I was just thinking, like, wouldn't it be cool to have like a totally played straight casino heist movie, and then like a third or halfway through it, it just boom, a zombie apocalypse just breaks out. Like, wouldn't that be cool to see like a, a similar ish idea? <laughs> I don't think any director would waste it. an idea like that. Yeah, if you have that idea and you you know get the funding and the actors and you know the production team to make a movie like like that, surely you wouldn't waste that opportunity and ruin that idea for years to come for everyone else. Nobody would do that. 
Crazy. No one would do that. Cool, that that's, be... that, that'll be done soon, probably. That I sounds need idea. Cool. Any day now. Anyway, the Lost anyway. of Us TV show, we've done one, two, three out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you could say we've done the foundational part of this show. We're now moving into developmental. I made that up, but that could be how it works. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe one, two, three is groundwork. Two, three, two, two words, numbers. That's the one I was looking for. Four, well, five, six. It feels like those, uh, those three episodes were the groundwork, right? The backstory, then sort of of the status quo in this world and then yeah premise guess, explain the, characters the inciting incident and the thrust for joel to go on this adventure and then more material to further inform like thematic material that's going to be relevant throughout the yeah. season and now it's like this is the adventure the adventure has begun basically i have been on record yeah. on open bar saying that i am actually relatively critical right now of uh joel and ellie i think that they've not quite done enough yet but that could be no. made up for in this episode i've heard they have Hopefully. some stuff to do so i'm excited to see what that may be they got a working vehicle they drove off when we last saw them anything could happen now well, it's just it's the two of them now that's the main thing there's no mm -hmm. test there's no bill it's it's just the two of them so just it kind of forces those characters to interact wow. it's a joel can't just use tests as a means of keeping uh distance between himself and ellie who don't you guys ready Through that yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah whoa 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 number one in the hood will we get an opening scene Ooh. No. No. Okay. No teaser this time. <laughs> I guess they may be done with those then. Mm. That's that's a shame. I was liking them, yeah. Well, yeah, I like the idea. <laughs> that, yeah, it opens up with the before the event happens, or if you sprinkle in how the outbreak happened, like all over the world, like that a similar scene to the first episodes, but maybe a shorter one, and it takes place in Bangladesh or Timbuktu. Well, and a government POV like in America, right? That would be, be cool. Oh yeah, uh, like a soldier's POV. That would be cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. A guy who's called up to be like, "Yo, you got to shoot these people," and he's like, "Sure thing." Oh, see, I wouldn't be able to resist following the life of a normal soldier on a normal day, and then he gets given orders that are kind of insane sounding, and then he meets some zombies, and imagine a whole episode of that, and do you know how it ends? He walks up to, he shoots a zombie, sees two people, like, oh, it's Joel and, uh, yeah, and Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Hey, it would be cool if we made the guy a whole-ass character, okay? And then, <laughs> yeah, and then it turns out he's really shit at shooting things right in front of well, him. Well, see, I was actually going to say maybe we could go as far as giving reason for why he just... He, maybe he's been through three experiences in that day alone of people he tried to trust and were bitten and everything went wrong, you know? Don't play with guns, young lady. One in the chamber. <gasps> Look, Rex. Yay, they did it! They did it! <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if they were actually gonna <laughs> remember that. Was that from the game or something? I can't remember. Oh, no, it's just that a lot of films and TV shows don't remember that, like, you... Unless oh, you right. I was going to say, the yeah. what you would say there's just like, it's just from life. It's that we, we cover so yeah. much media where this is the complaint. Guns are often not um, guns. They always forget about the chamber round, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they think that you can click it multiple times without a... Yeah, and... Because you can't pull the trigger anymore. The trigger's already been, you know... Pulled. It's you almost you understand to... how this shit happens because so many people who portray guns in media have only got familiarity with guns through media. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, Which, by the way, uh, like, you know, yeah. hands up. I don't, I don't know anything near enough well, about guns, but I would probably hope to hire someone who does. You know, the big pet peeve is when they call a magazine a clip. It is pretty much every gun that is in like a TV show now. Well, well here's the thing: so many people clip. do that in real life. I can't even like can't even fault it. Anymore. Yeah, it's like, I, they're wrong, they'll always be wrong, but if yeah, someone strange. in the world does it, I'm like, yeah, that's what people do, and yeah, oh, people look. get it wrong in the real world. We have to do this every hour? Gas breaks down over time. This stuff's almost water. Back in the day, we'd drive 10, 12 hours on one tank. They're addressing how gas breaks down over time, too. Yep. And he's saying yeah. that the, what we're siphoning will only work the last time. Good for you! Good for you, show. Yeah. That's good. That's that's a common complaint we have for shit in post-apocalypse. Look at the technique he's got there as well, where he doesn't have to, you know, cough up like Otto, cough up all of the, the petrol. Otto, why don't you get some more gas? Here's the credit card. Ooh. And the mint for afterwards. Start the bus, Otto! Start the bus! <laughs> Damn! I shouldn't have eaten the mint first. I should have used the mint first. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? It's a siphon. It's when liquid travels against gravity because pressure. You don't know. I know it works. <laughs> you just said um, it uses like pressure to counterbalance 
gravity that just says you don't know how it works. Like I don't know. That sounds that is how it works. Yeah, that you, sounds you pretty on area, point. Uh, yeah, you literally essentially just like blow it out in a sense. Well, I think she got the sense he was kind of reading off a page in a way, where it's like that's something he remembered reading about it. He doesn't actually understand the oh, she got the a physics at work there. Okay. This is your fault then. Okay. We need to lighten the mood. Ready? It doesn't matter how much you push the envelope, it'll still be stationary. It doesn't matter how much you push the envelope, it'll still be stationary. <laughs> What is that? It's a joke book. No pun intended. Volume 2 by Will Livingston. <sighs> Let's keep going. Volume 2. Look, you get it? 2? Like T-O-O? Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> what did the mermaid wear to her math class? What? An algebra. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. What did the mermaid wear to her math class? Nothing, because she's a slut. An algebra. Uh, Aha! Aha! I stayed up all night no. wondering where the sun went. And then it dawned on me. Feel free to wait in the truck. Uh, okay, but just know you can't escape Will Livingston. The conflict for him right now, at least it comes across this way to me, is that he will do everything to protect her, but doesn't want to get close to her at all. Yeah, that seems like what's happening. And that's another good beat to add to that, I think. It must yeah. have been some truck. Yeah, they used to stick big ass plows on them and clear the roads for their tanks and such. I want to see a tank. You will. You probably will. Here, this make you all nostalgic. This is actually before my time. Oh, they've right. done this now. Okay. They're doing it. Right. I thought they'd already sort of used their moment for this, but there you go. Got something else. Oh my God, they Sir. are doing that joke. Sir. Light on the reading, but it has some interesting pictures. Oh, no, no, no. Put that back. That's not for kids. Light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Ellie. How would he even walk around with that thing? Please get rid of it. Hold your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh. Why are these all stuck together? Um... Why are all these pages stuck together? Uh. I'm just fucking with you. Bye bye, dude. I'm just fucking with you. Bye bye, dude. You know, I initially thought they would, but uh, in light of our episode three discussion, I do agree that this doesn't feel quite appropriate now that he's gone and he's not quite the asshole that he was in the game i think it, it was um, it's still way better to put it in episode four than three right that was yeah, yeah that was they wouldn't. A, a bit of a divide in the tone oh yeah because this this is much chiller than episode three yeah yeah and she was i wasn't sure if they were going to do that scene she was obviously joking there's not actual like right well they look a lot further away from boston now they look like mm. they're in the uh the plane no i meant sorry that that could have been from any point in bill's life what I mean. Oh, sure, sure. In the game, they go to Pittsburgh now, but I don't know if the show's no, they, treating it as the same uh, spot. They're skipping Pittsburgh. They're, uh, I think they're going somewhere else. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. This, the, the adaptation of a game to TV show, where do you squeeze and where do you extend? Yeah. Loves! Well, it depends big on the yellow signs with a heart the, on them. Uh, are they going to follow the seasonal sort of structure of the game where you got the summer section, which is pretty long, and then by autumn, that's when they get to Jackson. So I'm still very much appreciative of how much they've nailed the world in this. Oh, yeah. They look great. Everything, like, looks. Look at this. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And seamless as well, like, use of visual effects. Yeah. That's enough for today. The direction and cinematography of this show overall reminds me a lot of Breaking Bad. You got a lot of like steady, well-composed shots, really nice wide shots. The use of cold opens sometimes, like with yeah, and then they two. they take advantage of times of the very still cameras on moments that are very like yeah. atmospheric or um even oppressive. Yeah. I'm so glad they brought the composer from the games and let him do it for the show as well. Just makes you all the more baffled why they didn't do that with Halo. It's so game, hard not to compare this to Halo, it really more is. More iconic, yeah. potentially. I don't want to ravioli, say Ravioli, like, Ravioli, give me the Curioli. <laughs> it's just great that they didn't forget him, they brought him. That is 20-year-old Chef Boyardee Ravioli. That guy was good. I actually agree. 
Get us to Wyoming by next morning. So can we start a fire? I'm freezing. Now why am I gonna tell you? Wow, now? so they've they've traveled quite a distance then. The smoke. No, fungus isn't that smart. I was actually about to say I doubt infected would people? understand people. smoke. Yeah. But people will, yeah. People. People? So what are they gonna do, rob us? Well they'll have way more in mind than that. Okay. Actually it smells kinda good. Well that would be Frank's then. <laughs> Bill stinky. Himself a rifle. I don't know. I feel like if I was in there, I wouldn't bring a bolt action mm. rifle. I'd bring something semi automatic. Bolt yeah. action requires you to like do the whole like like reload thing instead of just doing pulling the trigger each yeah. time. Is there any it's reason you would pick a bolt action rifle over? Uh, range, right? Like, usually no. bolt action. No? Okay. Nah. I mean, They're... like, the only time that like that might factor in if you were like. A, an actual marksman sharpshooter, but, but uh, virtually all the time, all... you're going to be the limit of the gun's accuracy, not the gun itself. Plus, they're less prone to, to jamming, aren't they? Potentially, but if the gun's well taken care of, then I, I definitely would. Uh, some uh, maybe he else. just wants to do some 360 no scopes, like with very the... true, <laughs> sweet ass kill cams. Yeah. Can I ask you a serious question? Yeah. Why did the scarecrow get an award? Why did the Scarecrow get a promotion? All right. Because he was outstanding in his field. That'll do. Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> you dick. Did you read this? No. <laughs> Look at that little, really little smile. <laughs> I like that, yeah. This is how to do it. You're doing the also, thing. Yeah. Good job. I'm sleeping in the truck. Will you go do that, Rat? I like the yeah, outside world. maybe I will. Wow, they planted a whole tree for this show. There's a few of them. <laughs> There's no way anyone knows we're here, right? No one's gonna find us. No one's gonna find us. Oh, that's just she's worried. Well, it's just she hasn't had encounters with people who don't live in the, the QZ. Yeah, she doesn't have bandity types. I imagine she hasn't yeah, been whereas, to Yeah, whereas... He is very familiar. He's been yeah. one. He was one. What's that light out there? It's the moon. It's, it's very right. bright. It's very localized. It's like the Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis! This time of day- I'm sorry. <laughs> Even you were like, I can't do it. I'm gonna let the show be a show. You see, like, all that ah, studio lighting. You, like, oh, you, wouldn't, like you wouldn't see a fucking- like Well, what that. do you think that's a consequence of? I like that he's, uh, he, he ain't sleeping. Yeah, he he's, he's that paranoid sleep. about protecting it right now. Poor guy probably didn't get that much sleep. But he's not gonna yeah. let anyone hurt him. Uh, I love that they've actually like gone out and shot like on locations, yeah. wilderness. Oh, what the fuck is that? You don't like coffee? The thing, man, everything's so uh, just just gritty. It's real. It looks like it's there. I could punch it in the face. Yeah. Nothing yeah. looks like CGI. Great Nothing locations. makes me think that it's CGI. Great production design. It smells like burnt shit. Look, coffee does a thing. That's useful. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's our... It'll be near a settlement. Probably close to another city out there. Ain't too many of them in Wyoming. Cheyenne. 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 Really? Cheyenne. Why isn't he with you? Long story. Is it longer than 25 hours? So he enlists in the army right out of high school. Being in the army it didn't make him feel much like a hero. The outbreak happens, he convinces me to join a group, which I did. Mostly to keep an eye on him, keep him alive. That's where we met Tess. And then Tommy meets Marlene. It's kind of listening. You, yeah, uh, uh, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I just realized I hadn't said anything because I'm actually too. like, I want to listen. No, she talks me to join in the fireflies. Same mistake he made when he was 18. He wants to save the world. Pipe dream. Yeah, fireflies, all of them. Well, and, and, and we just got a huge thing for Joel just does not believe the know, world can be saved. It's, it's down to individuals now. I mean, you gotta try, right? You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. You keep going for family. That's about it. I'm not family. No. Your cargo. But I made a promise to Tess. Oh, there you go. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Right. I'm not even tired. If you want to grab more sleep. I'm not even tired. 
<laughs> it's a it's an old it's an old meme, but it's a good meme. I did like that beat in the game. Yeah, I'm glad they kept that. It's a good way to yeah get us to a new place. Oh, I wonder are we gonna do the 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 encounter that they had him. I'm in really in hoping they do. I really like that encounter. The guy pretending he's hurt. <laughs> yeah. A job, um, job better. We know where this goes, so that's obviously laying groundwork for his decision relating to her. The only thing to hang on to in this world is family, as he just said. Perfectly normal characterization, but it's going to have some consequences the further we go. And yeah, I just, you know, he is no less jaded than um, the Joel in the game. He's just not as, he just doesn't seem as harsh. Yeah, I'd say so. He seems a little bit softer. Because that's the thing, a lot of people say, like, he ain't the Joel from the game. And I'm like, no, he's a bit different, I feel but that's like fine. He's, he's a bit different, but I mean, he's got a lot of the same core motivations. Well, yeah, and I'm curious how, how they're going to get this man through a lot of the harsher scenes that Joel has to go through in the game. I wonder if they'll be changed or if we're going to just see... Oh, uh, yeah, like... Specifically, what happens during the winter section? Um, yeah, when he's trying to save him from the because uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't see why this man couldn't still end up doing those things. Well, I mean, we saw in episode one, right, when he beat the soldier to a pulp. Also, well, what people like said he's... about that was that it wasn't as much of a cold decision that's pragmatic and useful, done for a reason, blah blah blah. It, it was an emotional one. I'm curious um, if we're going to sure. get the um the payoff of him being like. All right, in order to get what I want, points I need to... the map, to... and then point yeah. to the, you know, map there, and you better be the same spot, the big trick. Oh, they, it's, yeah. We can jog right around this tunnel. Take the next oh, I feel, they're doing it, they're doing the, yeah, I think they're well, doing uh, it. Well, I think it was a quote from Neil Druckmann saying that, um, they're only going to change things if they think they can come up with something that's better than what they believe is in the game. Right. But it looks well, like I mean, we might I be heading for a one-to-one -to -one with the game. <laughs> Well, maybe, right? I can imagine that it won't be, like, remaining episode yeah. will be nothing but action. There'll be conversations. Because the idea here, of course, is that it looked like he was thinking to himself when he saw that blockade, like, it was done with purpose. And Specifically. Uh, yeah, in order yeah. to funnel people into the off people ramp. Here, yeah. Like what, yeah, that's what happened in the game as well, when they couldn't yeah. get through on the, uh, on the, the freeway. And look at that. Little pile for all the people that may be coming through. Or it could just be for zombies, who knows? Is that the QZ? Who the fuck is Vedra? Please help! Put your seatbelt on. Easy! Please! Holy help! shit! Help! Are we gonna help him? Put your seatbelt on, Ellie. Well, what about the guy? He ain't even hurt. Are we gonna help him? No. Go! <laughs> Alone in the secret by Oh Lord, if you hear me, please my hand. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, Maybe he should have just ran that guy over. Well, I, it looked to me like he was trying to avoid giving him a clean shot. Oh yeah, fair enough. You see that hole? I can squeeze through. When I say go, you crawl to that wall, and you squeeze through, and you don't come out until I say, okay? Look at me! They're not gonna hit you. you stay down, you stay low, you stay quiet. Mm -hmm. Need to be topping that off. Feeling got one shot left in there. You motherfucker! Are they gonna do the uh that payoff now? This is irrelevant to the game. It feels like we're setting up that she's gonna have to do something. Yeah. I was wondering, there were three guys, I think. Yeah, here we go. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's over. We're not fighting anymore. I'm gonna go home. I'll tell everyone you're good. I don't know what to do. My legs don't work. 
My mom isn't far. If you can get me to her, we can be friends. I didn't know. I'm Brian. I'm Brian. What's your name? I cannot expect I Joel to let this guy live. I'm Brian. Nope. No, I certainly sure wouldn't. What's your name? You made your bed. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You can have it. It's a good knife. Yeah, I believe you. Get back behind the wall. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please. No one asked you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're gonna stop. You're gonna stop. That was well, that was just a great scene. Yeah, that was a great scene. And uh finally I can compliment Bella Ramsey's performance. Finally, uh, yeah. yeah, she was she was great. This episode, yeah. I've been liking her a whole lot more. I have too. I feel like she's uh, em embodying much more of Ellie, like from the games, the personality. Yeah. It's the fact that it was missing. I need more vulnerability from him. We're getting it. Yeah, the tearing up behind the walls really well done. Yeah, yeah, and just uh, I really liked Pedro Pascal's stress in that fight when it started up. I get the sense that it yeah. wasn't. It was more so about her than it was about him. But also just again, we're doing the thing where like encounters with a handful of people are like too infected are really stressful. It's, yeah, there's yeah much you get more, the sense uh, of, yeah, like one, you know, one misstep and, you know, things could really go south. Exactly. And just what it all like, means, because he's familiar with all this, but she's learning all of it. That's right. So, yeah. So, like, hearing I a mean, guy course, begging for his mum, like... This is what it means, right? To to kill someone. It's well, something it's that she's everything never... he was talking about, right? You haven't seen the world. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, you can feel sympathetic for these people, and maybe they are good people, but look at what just happened. Like, they were gonna kill us, but nothing. What else do you want me to say? I don't know, the truth? Henry Burrell. I wonder if they're setting up Henry and Sam, yeah. That would be next. I wonder if this is the cell where my brother was beaten to death. No, you were wronged. This has gone too far. Now, you mean. Now that you're in the cell. But before, people dying was okay. Ratting on your neighbors to Fedra. They put a gun to my head. Have I satisfied the necessary conditions for you to talk? I delivered you. He's still in the city. And I think that you know that too. You think I won't do it? I'm your doctor. Well, see, I don't know the full context of this, but it's kind of interesting already that he's saying that Henry gave up the locations for her, or at least information on her brother. Now she's asking for information that would lead to the death of that guy, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the, whoever the, doctor is he's uh being forced to do the thing that he would have been punished for doing if he had done it that's uh that's tommy's no, voice actor it's not a federal vehicle but they were heavily supplied oh right could be mercs yeah, they brought is. people back they didn't leave him behind that's cool he's got a look to him hasn't he will he live he does. he does have a look will he live i don't think so no way <laughs> what if i had a doctor no these are dead you need a witch doctor baby <laughs> Yeah, in the voodoo. Arise, chicken. Chicken, arise. Arise, chicken. Arise. Chicken, arise. <laughs> arise. Arise. Arise, chicken. Arise, chicken. It looks I, uh, like Joel stabbed that guy right in the heart. Yeah. That's good in terms of just a smart move. Don't don't waste ammo, you know? Yeah. I was going to point that out and I forgot. Like, he was like, you know, here's my knife. And it's like, thank you. I will use this right now. <laughs> yeah. Rip that guy, I guess. But see, oh, this is this is just how it goes, right? Um, you kill... Because uh, these people are very clearly, like, they've got issues with Fedra, as well as Henry and Sam. They've got, like, civil shit going on, but they would have had setups for any potential threats coming in, and they've, they've hit the wrong people at the wrong time, and now they've lost people, and now they are angry at our people. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it all... That's how it always unfolds. And this is is way better already than anything you usually get, and, like, like how people look at The Last of Us 2's unraveling, <laughs> retcon unraveling of, like, that conflict between the Abby team and the... And the Joel team. I think that's the biggest problem. If only they knew they were making The Last of Us 2 when they were making The Last of Us 1. They could have made it much more yeah. coherent. This show does have that benefit, so I wonder if they'll change it. A little bit, maybe. As soon as we don't hear a truck, we move. Are you okay? I'm all right. Are you all right? Yeah. The thing is, is I didn't hear that guy coming. You shouldn't have had to have... Well, you're glad I did, right? Well, you're just a kid. It's not like you killed him. <sighs> I'm not good at this.
this. Yeah, you really aren't. I mean, it was my fault. You shouldn't have had to, and I'm sorry. It probably speaks so I can fucking help myself with copyright. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just really good. Yeah, it is yeah. really good. I'm just kind of focusing, looking at the actors' faces and, you know, what they say. It's really impressive. I was thinking that, you know, this before the show came out, everyone was super worried, but... Yeah, I don't know, man. Four episodes. Four for four, I would say. I don't see how they're gonna fuck this up yeah. for the rest of the few minutes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> and just the... He's so sorry that that part of her innocence yeah, is gone true. now. And now and the, he's immediately yeah. teaching her how to actually... Yeah. It's almost maybe a recognition that... Well, yeah, she it, as, may well have to do this again. Yeah, as much as it's true that it's reckless to provide someone a gun, she just saved his life with one. So now it's like, uh... he knows well, what I it think, does. I think it, he knows. Yeah, yeah. Just he's very practical well. about it. It's like that was the first thing he did when she did save him was take the gun off her. Yep. Yep. Like, All right, give me that. You put it in your pack. Yeah, Actually, imagine. I think this I think this beat is better done than in the games where Ellie shoots the guy and saves Joel and Joel is like angry completely no gratitude for the fact that he's obviously just about to get killed and had Ellie not done anything he absolutely would have died and you just hang back like I told you to Well you're glad I didn't right I'm glad I didn't get my head blown off by a goddamn kid You know what no how about, hey, Ellie, I, I know it wasn't easy, but it was either him or me. Thanks for saving my ass. You got anything like that for me, Joel? We gotta get going. Lead the way. Something on your mind, Ellie? <sighs> I wasn't trying to disobey you back there. You were taking a really long time, and I thought... maybe he's gotten into trouble. It don't matter what you thought. I need you to listen to me. I do. It's just that... <sighs> Whatever, Joel. Someone would probably say in defense of that, he's still desperately trying to remain distant and cold with her at that point in the game, or at least it's breaking apart. In this, though, they've got an angle that I really like, which is he feels guilty that she's had to take a life, or the equivalent of doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, she remember, she didn't put the pistol in her pack, it's in her jacket. I know. Yeah, because he would like it so that she pulls it out in absolute emergencies while she's going to be like, no, I want this on hand, which I wonder if that'll have consequences. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, again, like, reactions and stuff, when she shot that guy, they made sure to show us for very clearly that she did not enjoy doing that, and she's just been tearing up thinking about it the whole time. Soon after, you know, not understanding exactly what she's getting into with all the bandit types, but yeah. I mean, Joel is fucking consumed by, like, trying to do this job properly. I feel kind of bad for him. Because part of it as well I was just thinking about is, like, the the issue he has is not she's not just the effort of whether or not he gets to like it, but she's also of an age where it's like, does he have a responsibility to raise her? And what I mean by that is, like, any and all interaction, like the, the porn mag, for example, right? You, that's too old for you. Like, well, what do you care? I'm just cargo. I'm a person to be delivered. And, right. and he, he has, like, this level of responsibility of, like, well, it's inappropriate for people your age. And obviously that'll just keep... Going on and on. That's the, the implication, right? Must be where Henry and Sam. Oh yeah, definitely. I imagine next episode is going to be all about Henry, Sam, and these guys. That'd be my guess. Just dropping us the setup first, and that'll probably be a whole adventure. And then episode six will be when the big thing happens with Henry and Sam, maybe. Well, maybe end well, of episode five. I don't know how much time they maybe have. Maybe the end of episode five because they still got to get the Tommy stuff, and then they got to do the the winter section. Yeah, we've got yeah, so much stuff to do. These episodes are going by fast. I mean, there's only like eight or nine over overall. There's nine episodes yet. Oh! Ooh, is this the... Is it the bloater? Is this like a, a fungal growth or...? Oh, because there was that clip in the trailer where something is rising out of a hole in the ground, right? Right. Yeah. Well, Maybe that's the bloater. <laughs> I was about to say, is this an emergence hole? Fucking like Gears style? But I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're mixing up your franchises. But, uh, yeah. It... Because, wait, I'm trying to remember... Oh, I, oh, I wonder, uh, what are they doing here? She's so obsessed with getting Henry that she okay. wants to focus their efforts on uh, something that you could just let go compared to this clear and present threat. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. Well, because... Uh, and he, he's like, he ain't so sure about that. This yeah. is the thing, I already feel like I understand her mostly. Like, she, she's just your oh, yeah. standard leader she's for a... by, by vengeance. 
well, that and just the fact that, like, you know, she's not strictly evil. She's she's um, oh, yeah, she's been sure. led down a lot of these harsher choices. This is the thing. I, I feel like this is the way to go. You have a lot of characters and a lot of other significant antagonists. They're all reflections of Joel. And yeah. then uh, relationships are always going to be reflections of Joel and Ellie's. And, of course, like, any big criticisms you can have of a lot of characters will likely be like, well, Joel did blah, blah, blah. Joel did. Joel's also like Which that. I feel yeah, like... Joel did that. Last of Us 2 was supposed to try and point out like the consequences of that reality. I just I'm trying not to talk about it, but I have to. <laughs> it's, it stole my investment in this IP, and this is building it back up again. Actually, I think they'll meet Sam and Henry at the end of this episode. That would be my guess. Could be, yeah. I wonder if they'll do the same thing as the game. It's quite a um, precarious inter introduction, you could say. How did you know it was an ambush? How did you know? Know what? About the ambush. I've been on both sides. I've been on both sides. It was a long time ago we did what we needed to survive. You and Tess? So, uh, there are a lot of people? I'll take that as a yes. Take it however you want. Did you kill innocent people? Come on. Come on. Give me a minute. Get up, you lazy ass. <laughs> lazy ass. 56 years old, you little shit. <laughs> Hi. Good job, dude. I like it. I like it a lot. Hello? This is the kind of things I like to see. What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? I don't want someone sneaking up on us while we're sleeping. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be sleeping in eyesight side of the door, though. Yeah, because... Like around mm. something, or around the corner, or the, the, the back there. Yeah. Maybe behind the couch or something. When we were talking about hurting people, what did you mean it wasn't your first time? I don't want to talk about it. Z doesn't want to talk about it either. I'm just saying, it isn't fair. Your age. So it gets easier when you get older? No, not really. I've noticed you don't hear too well from your right side. Is it because you were shot there? Probably more from shooting. So if you want to keep your hearing, you stick to that knife. Did you know diarrhea is hereditary? What? Yeah. It runs in your genes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that is so goddamn stupid. You laugh, I didn't laugh. <laughs> Jesus, I'm losing it. You're losing it big time. <laughs> Another good moment there. Interesting. That's the best one of the four. Got better again. I'm thinking I it agree. is. Yeah. I agree, actually. Yeah, we got a lot of good work for these characters think, in this episode. Yeah, I think that episode really gave us what we needed for these two. Oh, so um, much stuff has been filled in. Uh, I'm very happy yeah, with that. <laughs> definitely yeah. happy that it took that direction and we really focused a lot on Ellie and Joel. And I think, I think they did a really good job of it. It was well timed and it. You know, I, at this point, I can believe that it, you know, it's not too soon as well. I think what happened there is it's like, oh, this show's going to be good, isn't it? Like, for <laughs> yeah. I mean, four, I mean, four is beyond a pattern at this point. You got four, yeah, four good episodes and a lot of clear, like, intentionality behind the writing yeah it was good television there were a couple of things i think that have been missing for a couple of people um i've been wanting both uh pedro and bella 
to be pushed a bit acting wise and uh, we just got a decent dose of that in the whole episode obviously yes. more yeah. binding the two of them together having the exterior be pretty cold and hard but also being uh, worn down we just did all of that in the episode those are examples are just reasonable and intelligent choices being made by characters throughout I love the fact that there's loads of just tidbits about post-apocalyptic survival that he would know and he's sharing with her like I said I like the efforts with he doesn't know what to do in terms of what to allow her to be exposed to in, in the world because he's he's almost got a responsibility to actually take care of this child that's growing up outside of his job as a smuggler the gas breaking down or how siphoning works and then like explaining to her the the, the, the glass or the smoke when they were in the, the forest like there's many different layers of how they're uh, improving their relationship and um we had pieces of that in the other episode but this one felt like a fucking you know a shotgun yeah, blast it, of a lot of it yeah you get the sense of this is what you know if they just kept carrying on and on and on this is kind of how they would behave and it was it was just well paced in terms of how they interacted where they still kind of draw their lines of things they don't want to talk about we got the survivally bits we got the hiding from people bits we got him you know taking control and staying on uh, staying on track with her making sure that she's kind of the the focus of his attentions um I think this was really well done. I like a, I like a great deal of it. I'd be surprised if people don't think the uh, Bella Ramsey's got um, a bit more clout now, as in like as in that certainly, she's got some certainly value. with me. I was I wasn't impressed before this at all, but this episode really, I'm 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 really down with it now. I think uh, she's doing a really good job, and I think what they're telling her to do is very good. Uh, the certainly the other half of it that you can't forget. I just I feel like I'm what we're really seeing here is. It's like the value that can be derived from using television as a format to retell the story is to the amount of time that is afforded just gives them a few more opportunities to build up these characters and their relationship and, and give like important moments in the game a little bit more time to breathe than they might have had before. I like the delaying of having more clicker stuff for now. Yes. And then I, I feel I like very soon we're going to get a heaping serving of that with whatever's under the ground there. I get the impression like that uh, the next episode is going to be a bit expensive explosive that would be my guess yeah. i'm just so ready for more of it um uh, yeah, yeah 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 absolutely i want to see more because funny enough it's... seeing it in uh muted like i already enjoy you know the guy was like begging her not to take that second shot and he's explaining it and she's not taking it she's looking a little bit sympathetic and then he just sort of looks over at joel as he's spotting about to stand up and it's like yeah good luck convincing that guy the one you were just trying to kill like it's it's so over yeah. for you sort of thing the little, right. dare I say, micro expressions uh, all over the place. It's like it's something that um, you can get in video games. Definitely can, especially with the technology that the place is at now. But when you have a, a full-on actual human being doing a top-notch performance, it's just like yeah, this is obviously a power you have with uh, TV. You get to record it straight into the screen. And um, oh man, just Joel being like, just go stand behind the wall, and then her just tearing up, listening to that guy just has to be killed. We've got no choice. He has to die. Lots that was a great scene. Yes, there were a lot of great was. scenes though in this episode, which is yeah probably the reason why. <laughs> well, we did a uh... we did a mini arc thing. She first tells the jokes, and he's like, "Shut the fuck up." He even says like, "No," and and you get that yeah. strict impression of like, "Yeah, this is." He knows what this means. I we refuse, tell jokes. Uh, I find them yeah, funny. Exactly. We can bond. It's like, no, it's not happening. All the way to the end, where she tells what, and he just he can't not laugh because whatever he's human and it's it's the whole thing she's cracking through him she's restoring his humanity yeah uh, it's part of what is so uh, great about this relationship and how um it looks like they're getting there i like the build up of her firing the gun in the game when she saves joel it's like a surprise reveal where like it's on the gunshot or right after yeah. but this it's like you hang on ellie and it's like oh shit i'm doing this like i don't know that if reaction. i'm gonna be the same after this but i yeah. have to yeah. Well, because, yeah, she's she's got a couple things to balance at first, right? Do I use the knife? I could use the gun. And I've got to get through the wall. I got to, like, all these different things happening. She's clearly uh, dealing with all of it. And then I don't think she knows that she did the right thing when she shot him as well. Yeah, I like that she paralyzed him. And it's like, oh my god, his legs don't work forever now if he's going to get out of this alive. Yeah, like, then... she's dealing with having done that to him when Joel's sitting there like, he's dead. So, you know, this is... Yeah. And then that follow-up conversation where even Joel is like, it's not like you killed him, That's, you know, but like, it, it, the reason Joel's saying all that shit is he recognized pretty easily this has had a huge effect on him, and it's not something that he's supposed to prevent stuff like that from having to happen. The whole reason why, you know, you could argue this another reason why she doesn't get to have a gun is that she'll never need to have one. Yeah, despite her trying to hide how 
devastated she is by it, I think. Which is what he we sees, needed. Yeah. I'm, very, anyway. yeah. I'm really happy that after it all happens and she saves Joel, he's not angry at her for doing it. Like, he's very rational about it. He says, no, keep the gun, because I know that it actually might help. Just keep it in your backpack, you know? It, it's just a very rational course of action to take, and I like that. Well, and it's, yeah, um, I feel like in Lesser Media, he'd be like, well, you shouldn't have had that gun. I told you not to have it. And that's all they would have focused on, and I would have been like, ugh, boring. Yeah, well, it's, it's because there are a few things happening at once. It's like, thanks, yes, but also, I failed. You shouldn't have needed to do that. And also, you're feeling things because of this choice that you made. It's uh, yeah. it's a few things going on all at once, and then you basically get to explore a good chunk of that in their subsequent scene. Yeah, I in suppose his irrational anger in the game at that moment is a bit justified because this that scene in the game where Joel's about to die is a bit more disturbing to watch. Like where he's holding the guy's he's holding, holding Joel water. underwater. <laughs> Shot the hell out of that guy, huh? And he like pins yeah. his hand down so he can't grab the gun. It's like, oh my god. Well, yeah, and, is... and you can argue he's not going to be very hyper rational in that moment. It's all very stressed and strung out right after that's just happened. Yeah. Meanwhile, here, this this is a different version, and he's able to very much understand, even through his own experience, like, so you've just done something that's going to affect you significantly, you're super young, I remember what it was like, all that kind of stuff, and, and just, he doesn't know what to say, because he's not no fucking training for, like, how you're supposed to talk to somebody who's just taken a life. Yeah. She highlights that, and so this conversation is really awkward, and he just cuts through the shit and just says, I'm, I'm sorry, you shouldn't have had to do that. Yeah. It's not even about consoling her necessarily. He's just trying to get out that, like, I never should have let that happen. Fuck. Yeah. With a case like this where you have pre-existing material to work with, when you're adapting it, there's the opportunity to distill and simplify scenes. Like that uh, beat where the truck crashes in the game, it's a much bigger set piece. There's a whole bunch of enemies. It's like a big fight. But then yeah. in this, it's just like three guys because that's all we need for this scene. To get all the beats across, we just need to boil this down to three well, as was mentioned, right, basically. this seems to be something of a system they probably have set up and they probably have shifts, right? It's just whenever um, another car comes in, we can fuck them up, take them hostage, and maybe even kill them or bring them in. There's obviously something going on with this whole area, but the fact is, like I said, they, they just they hit the wrong people. It's going to have you know big old consequences, but that's kind of this world, and that's what everyone warns about. It's like the further you go out or the different places you visit, people are just not ready to trust you. They're going to kill you because they expect you to kill them. And then what mm -hmm. happens? They get killed by you because you're expecting them to try and kill you, and so you kill them. <laughs> yeah. But to be fair, they shot first, so fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's you, yeah. That's, you get in a fight. Well, and and this is the Why thing I was thinking about. Away? It could be that had they, you know, gotten out of their car, and they're like, oh, "Are you okay, man?" And then he pulls a gun on them, and then he's like, "Don't move, hands up," you know, on the floor. And then they eventually get incorporated and spared and join this crew. That could be how they get new people in. The fact mm -hmm. is, like, you don't get to decide the the way that people join, and so people may just try and fucking kill you. And that's right. what this world is. And I just appreciate that. That's just, it's good as uh, supporting how dangerous it all is, but it's also just big for. Ellie to have to go through and like I said that scene come across to me I think he would have been a lot more calm if it was just him Joel like he'd be like I'm killing them or they kill me that's just that's how this works but knowing like I can't die because I have to take care of Ellie yeah it just uh, raises the stakes for him as a character and you know for us even to yeah. the point of like uh, when they're in the forest and he's like uh, she says no one uh, no one's gonna find us question mark sort of in the forest and he's like no one's gonna find us it's not even about whether or not they would it's just that it's a matter of him trying to state I will protect you no matter what it is my job Mm -hmm. And I uh, I just appreciate that they're making that very, very strong. And it's um, even throwing in the whole, um, just... he wanted to save the world. It's a pipe dream. The Firefly is the same. The lot of them, they're all fucking wrong. There is no saving the world. It's like... Well, as it makes you wonder, are we going to see Joel as he starts to open up uh, to Ellie and um, come to really care for her, that maybe he'll even start to lean towards the notion of, especially if she starts to adopt the attitude of wanting to save the world, right? It's like that conversation with everything that we've done, everything we've been through, it can't be for nothing. Like that mindset. Yeah. I, I imagine that they'll actually have that verbatim and it will just be a situation where maybe Joel's like, hmm, you know, maybe you've got a point and then, you know, you get the, the reveal of what's about to happen and then he just abandons it straight away. And, and yeah. it may be something that they actually clash on. Maybe he starts to see that Ellie you adopts can, that oh. attitude. And it's he's gonna be like, 
That'll be the I, most controversial on. episode. Yes, it will. I know. <laughs> because they're probably not going to follow the game. They'll they'll make tweaks. Uh, no. I think literally gonna, down to individual be... words being used are going to have huge effects on the discourse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know. So far, it's been pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what else to It really to has say. been. And well, this is the thing, though. Really I, don't, I don't mind if they do change it so that well, it's the Fireflies are a lot more... Um, if the Fireflies were a lot more altruistic, and the, the cure is actually in stone, they say, like, we just need to harvest what's in her brain, and that is it, and it's done, and we have all is prepared to create the cure, you could push it to the point where it was the world or her, and you could still maintain what I think is the point of The Last of Us as an IP. Possible. But I suppose I'm also worried about what they're going to do with the Doctor. Are they going to let us know? <laughs> are they going to have yeah. him save Zebra in episode 9? There are things that should be changed when you're doing a thing like this i mean when you got this all new f serialized episodic format you look for opportunities to condense events like the the truck crash that happened when it as it does in the games but the beat where she uses the gun to save joel fr from like almost being killed that happens way later yeah. in the game but they saw an opportunity to like well let's just do it here and then we can get that out of the way it isn't, it's not forced in like, you know, making it happen quicker than it, just because it happens later in the games doesn't mean it's forced in this case that it's happening quick, more quicker. Well, and I hate to, is episode three not vindicated somewhat? We got huge payoffs for the fact that they had the car, the gun, and how many instances were there in this episode of Joel doing something that relates to his almost getting to the point of insecurity in, in that she, she, she matters more than anything, right? Like the failure mm -hmm. with Sarah, the failure with Tess, Bill telling him it's his job and the relationship yeah. he had with, with Frank being like parallel. The fact that she said, no one's going to find us in the forest, right? And even Rags pointed out, I was like, of course not. And then he stays up all night on watch anyway. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's that's Joel right now. Is And, and I, I feel like the job of episode three is, is come through already. And we haven't even gotten to the big payoff of this whole season. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we still got a lot more. Uh, we got a lot more story left. But after next week, it'll be halfway through, which is kind of crazy. It feels like it's flying by. When you watch the four of them well, together, you've got the package now. Yeah, exactly. Patience. It's a whole season of television. Well, it reminds me like, you know, so many people were very scared that Tess was going to be in it for ages, like she wasn't. And then it's like, are they even going to do a payoff with like more, more Joel and Ellie? Where the fuck are they? And it's like, we've got it now. There it is. Oh, well, now you got yeah. a whole episode that's very much was focused on. You only had a little bit of stuff to set up the main conflict for the next episode here. This was a very focused Joel and Ellie episode, Yeah. Um, which was obviously needed. But I mean, yeah, at this point, it's like, man, I feel like we've done a lot of work so far. We're in a really good place to keep going with the rest of the season with more of the plot stuff if you, and you know, call it that like more of the main plot beats from the game like that lady is going to be our it could be that she's knocked out next episode as an antagonist but i they've, believe that yeah. they've given us you know a, a quick and simplistic sort of like this is who she is already so i'm, I'm curious what the next episode is going to focus on probably henry and sam yeah i like the reveal of them at the end i like that that is the episode cap because we know like they have a beef with the whatever the name of the organization, I don't know if it's the WLF or whatever, but like, you know, like they have a problem with Henry and Sam. And then at the end, you see that they're holding Joel and Ellie at gunpoint, but you're thinking like, well, they're probably going to work together. And yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate both so, of you. But I, I do quite like the reveal of those two characters in the game. There's a nice little sequence of events there. <laughs> Leave him alone. Oh. Easy, son. Just take it easy. It's all right. They're not the bad guys. Lower the gun. And then everyone's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody just chill out. Yeah. I like that uh, beat in the game a lot. But this was fine. Oh, I mean, dude, I'm looking forward to the idea that they will have their conversation, they'll calm down, then they'll team up, and then we'll do... Lots of things can be achieved, certain decisions will be made that identify the fact that this isn't a team, this is two teams of two, and the, yeah. and then we'll get the other thing that'll happen. I'm trying to remain relatively spoiler-free here, because I don't know how much Rags remembers, nor how much people who are watching this remember. Lots of great potential to come, is, is the way I would put it. Really strong episodes. I'm still hooked, and that uh, cracked ground thing is really cool. 
it's like oh what's yeah, that gonna be I'm, well yeah i'm just like you're you're actually giving me a setup here that i want to see resolve i want to see what happens with the things that you presented me yeah it's not i'm not rolling my eyes because like oh let me guess da, 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 will happen it's like no I, I really want to know i think you've got something in mind yeah it's like a little s nuclear warhead of sorts they have in that room i love the discovery on it and it looks so creepy and then they're just like holy shit and they back out and close the door <laughs> let's yeah, not go they back seem, in there it seems like they have some level of familiarity like they know what it is right yeah I certainly fucking don't. <laughs> I have a feeling mole people infected are gonna crawl out of there, and if we get them led by a bloater, I think fans will be like, "Yeah, it's the yeah. bloater." <laughs> yeah, you're doing um, game things in this game show. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I think we got uh, a lot of the beats that were required. They've adapted with respect and care. They've got Joel is like. Talented and cold where necessary, I would say. Um, but he's also, like I said, warmer than the game, and I don't think that's a downgrade at all. I think it's just different. Even though um, there are plenty of moments where he's, he's perfectly warm and chill with, with Ellie, certainly by this part into the storyline as well. Do you know what's not right? Left? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Would you play this before? No. I had a friend that knew everything about this game. Apparently, there's this character called Angel Knives who'd... What was it? She'd punch a hole through your stomach before kicking your head off. <laughs> I was never a big fan of these things. Ellie was so fucking confident and smug in the, in the first three, mostly. It's really good to drag her into something that's really fucking hard to deal with and watching her actually have trouble with it. It's like, good, needed that too. Just the fact that they're helping each other. Uh, banking on the setups in episodes 1, 2, and 3 all at once. And um, I, like I said, 4 and 5, I can't imagine it's not going to be fucking engaging. It's just that everyone's panicking about where it ends, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey, <laughs> alright? And so far, so good. I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's so far, good so, so far. good. Definitely yeah. impressed with it. Alrighty. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you for episode five. Yeah, we mm -hmm. will see everybody bye -bye. later on. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. They put a gun to my head. Desert Eagle can shoot through anything. What'd you bring me? Hi, welcome, Last of Us, episode five. Ain't it, ain't it exciting? I thought you were going to go really, like, information-based. You're like, hello, episode 5, EFAP, Last of Us TV the, show. The problem was I jumped right in into it, and I was figuring it out in real time. Like, mm -hmm. what is the tone I want to go for here? Am I going for goofy, or am I going for serious, or am I going for something in between? And I'm not sure what I settled on there. Well, as is usual with these sorts of... Things I say as if we've done this one before. This is actually the first of its kind in terms of a format because it's different than the Hill House one. Very different than like Mando Kenobi. It's like complimentary. I don't think anything compares well, to the yeah, way we've been doing this. But which of course, I guess makes it kind of uh, appropriate as the proper inaugural EFAP TV, you know. Except Velma. I'm weird and no one likes me. <laughs> like Velma popped out right I, before. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to pretend that this was the beginning of Velma. Yes, Velma was just a sin that arrived around the same time. Well, what I was going to say about that is, is is an interesting dynamic with this one, especially because we're not just being complimentary and trying to give it room to breathe where it requires it. I, I mean that in both how we analyze it, but also how it's presented. I actually wanted to start with that. A lot of people have been bringing up, like in in both complimentary and criticism, the um, the cuts between the show and the game in these edits. What criticisms do they have? I'm legitimately curious because that is insanely helpful for like me who remembers very little of the game. It's been a lot of compliments, which makes sense, but uh, the criticisms include like you're taking away from the experience by like randomly cutting into different media instead of the same one. It's like you not random. It's, it's far <laughs> from random. Well, it's um... literally the show, the scene from the game that they're either trying to somewhat redo or base their thing off of. Uh, so I wanted to explain, there's like three big reasons. Number one would be, uh, yeah, for the sake of looking at how faithful this thing is or how it compares to its source material. And you might be like, you don't do that with other stuff. It's like, we don't do it with things we're not that familiar with. That's, that's just how it works. Um, been this way since the beginning. We talk about how faithful a thing is. 
if we have the chance to be able to talk about it, we often don't because we don't know the source. That's just a reality for most people. But remember, how faithful it is does not determine how good it is. We've always been on that position, but we've always said, hey, man, it's interesting to have the adaptation conversation. Like, oh, did they change this and this? Like, why would they do that? Do you think that that change matches the thing they're creating or does it take away or is this a mistake through rushing and, and compressing or is this something that they expanded and, you know, fixed up or whatever? We've had plenty of those discussions and I think that those clips help people who aren't familiar. Secondly, it is helpful dramatically Automatically, you have no idea with copyright of all things you may you may not have thought but that that is like one of the primary things that was really helpful if I can show you a full scene of what happens in this story side by side with the game you get to consume almost the whole story from the uh, the TV show without it being angry and shutting the whole thing down so that's another reason why it's super useful but then I would say third and finally um I think it is quite entertaining to to watch I think it actually does add to to see these too much. I try to build them in a way that doesn't, like, you get the similar payoffs as they're running next to each other while simultaneously matching for, for copyright, like I said, as protection. But I think it works, but I uh, I just want people to know it's there for several reasons and it can't go away anytime soon. Nor can I, I think it's make really it helpful. smoother. That's that. But look, I'm going to resurrect something, even though it would never really truly die. I just kind of didn't do it for the other ones because I was, I was just busy getting these things done. But do you, you guys remember a little thing called Comment Showcase? Yeah, oh my god, da -da 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 I do. I do remember da -da 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 -da. Comment Showcase. It's a thing that just got a name really doesn't need one, it's just us looking at comments. Because I saw a consistent set of comments about uh, episode. So, like, the vibe, I think, was that we were too nice to the show in episodes one and two. Episode three, you, everyone's familiar with the discourse over that one. It's nightmarish, it's all over yeah, the place. so good. And I actually feel like we happily did a decent job at the end of episode three going through the major ones, like it being filler, boring, irrelevant to the main plotline, irrelevant to the main characters. I think we gave our takes on all that. Episode four, there are criticisms, and there are things that people feel we did not cover as well. So we're going to just check out a few of them, probably take it in the little turns. Topic number one is Kathleen, the lady who is in charge, seemingly, of the Kansas City uh, uh -huh. rebels. Uh -huh. Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, we'll just go left to right, nice and simple. Frankie, do you want to read this first one? I found the leader of this Kansas City group to be very disappointing. She's clearly not a proper leader, ignoring dire cordyceps related problems to focus on her own vendetta shooting an unarmed prisoner during an emotional episode who is a doctor and will most likely help heal people in need or without the threat of death, and setting up ambushes and getting weirdly upset someone would escape and survive it. She doesn't have any charisma or natural leadership skills. She's just a lady in charge because she's the most mad about losing her family, it seems like. I just don't understand how anyone could take her seriously. I get the leader of the group wanted to kill the doctor but she had a situation where she was reminded of the possible need for a doctor and shot him anyway. There was a reason why being educated was considered a valid defense in death penalty trials for the last few centuries. When doctors are worth their weight in gold, it's not a good idea to kill them. Keep them prisoner by all means, but it seems like a stupid decision even if motivated by emotion. Lady up and killed one of the most valuable commodities in Apocalypse, a real doctor. You keep those pukes locked up, teaching babies everything you know until they die of old age. If he done bad, then you lock him up underground, teaching anything that can move and isn't infected. That said, I find it hilarious that they have Crazy Mommy shoot a doctor in such cold blood over a child, considering what 2 is all about. Sure, every dumbass intellectual tripped over themselves, demonizing Joel, and with Cuckman desperate to rewrite history, to make Zebraman the messiah of the apocalypse, but I'm sure this will have no bearing on anything and will never be referenced. So, it seems there is a consistent problem with the idea that she killed a doctor and that she seems to be overly emotional and she shouldn't be leading. Well, I mean, the show is very clearly trying to tell you that this was not a decision that was made based on rationality, that she did this, when she was at least convinced herself, Henry and Sam, I assume, were still out there and killing her people, and that made her very upset and angry. She has some sort of a very emotional you know, connection to them, and that's why she shot him, as far as I'm aware. It's not much in the episode, but it's there. So she makes it clear that the doctor is someone who ratted out people to Fedra. Like, yeah, just to clarify he... for anyone listening, the situation is in Kansas City, Fedra have control, and they boss everyone around to the point where they likely did some horrible, horrible things. I'm assuming we're going to get more context on that. Um, yeah. Including, but not limited to, torture and kill uh, for information about rebels trying to breach the system. And uh, there were people who worked with Fedra to sell out their friends and family for whatever reason. Again, 
again. With who Sam and Henry are in the game, I imagine we're going to get a reason for that. I doubt they're going to leave it just that he just sold out his brother and the brother died. That seems like it would be unusual. By the way, the, <laughs> the theme of what I'm saying in this opening is going to be we need to fucking wait before we can judge all these stories because they've not been told yet. Everyone's jumping the gun and that's been what's happening throughout this whole season. But I think we're going to get a reason for Henry and Sam doing that, but hey, we may not. With her, she expresses that she's got some serious like love for her brother, as you can tell, and she wants to kill Sam and Henry for having led to his death. Now, I don't know more than that, but the doctor didn't lead to her brother's death. He just led to other people's capture and death. And it seems to me, with the aggression she has against Fedra and their control, that it's funny because uh, Gary brought it up in Open Bar, I think, after we talked a bit about it. He said, like, even if they're a doctor, you got to be fucking careful as hell with someone like that if you don't trust them. They can subvert you in all kinds of ways, especially a doctor. They can get, they can still kill and make people live depending on whatever they want. If she just doesn't trust him, all you need to know is that it's enough for her to execute him. And that kind of, like, cold attitude is um, something a lot of people will flock toward for leadership, depending on what she's done in the past. But the thing is, as you can tell from these comments, a lot of people are like, how did she earn the role? Why would people have elected her? It's like, we don't actually know. Yeah. We don't we have don't a lot of know. information we, on her. How many, how many minutes of nothing. screen time did she get? Like five minutes, maybe? If that, maybe five little. minutes. When he pleads with her that he's the one that brought her into the world, she has like some a decent bit of acting there for someone who's brand new. Clearly there's more dimensions to her that are going on, but it, as, as Fringy Obviously. points out in the episode live, she's overwhelmed with vengeance. And of yeah, course, people the whole be, like twist, right, is that she is going to fail. Like her narrow focus on getting revenge to the detriment of to the exclusion of these more present problems is going to have serious consequences for her and her group. That's like the point, well, and obviously. This, that last comment references how like she's making the same apparent mistake that uh, like that Joel was making. It's like, is everyone going to comment that? It's like, I think this episode is going to be about that. So that last comment struck me as odd. It's like, you do sort of recognize that the show is painting her as an antagonistic force, right? She's, she's probably going to get killed by the bloater and she'll probably die yeah, in a probably. scene that is like her choosing revenge instead of... Focusing on Pretty the much. infected. Yeah, it's, it'll it's, probably it's... come to a place where it's it's probably going to be the easy setup. You're going to have a bunch of people from disparate groups who are in this area together. And then you have, like, you know, bloater, a bunch of infected coming. And it's like, well, we could all work together or we could fight and then yeah. we're all fucked. Which is, also... you know, ties obviously into broader themes that usually happen in post-apocalypse stories about how all of these divisions that people draw between each other probably should fall away in the face of a crazy existential threat. But people can be stubborn. And we don't know how popular she is. She might be holding on to authority by a thread. There might be a lot of people who do not like her being in charge. We don't know if other people also make decisions or if she's only in charge of a certain branch i find it all a bit awkward where it's almost like it sometimes seems like what's baked into it is listen to her voice it's not very threatening that kind of sort of read of the character it just strikes me as a little bit odd yeah um like i don't know why it's so hard to believe that somebody like this could end up being a leader I, I guess I'm just a little bit perplexed by it. Well, yeah, that, if that's the challenge, if people are like, can you explain any environment in which this could be possible in a post-apocalypse? And um, a Drinker did on, on Open Bar, he was just saying like, well, society hasn't collapsed for them. They're building something there. She, if she's got the right qualities or she's proven herself in whatever way, if she organized them to destroy Fedra, then yeah, they're going to put a lot of trust in it. All she needs is a selection of people that um, are powerful, do hold influence there, that do think she should be in charge. That's enough. And that can happen with anyone. But the mm. big thing for me is just like, can we please have a little bit more from her before we, uh, we decide this is absolutely oh, yeah. nonsense? Right, because again, five minutes, maybe. I want to find out a bit of her history. Her motivations mm -hmm. for like why she's doing all of this. I want to know. I'd be it'd be cool to know why she's in power. I don't know if we'll get it. And uh, same for Sam and Henry. I want to know how they interact with her. And I think that's what this whole episode is going to be about. What the whole thing is going to be is that for as disarming as she may appear, she's probably going to be quite ruthless. I mean, she's willing to like, just like shoot people and kill them. Well, I mean, we got like that already. That should be which enough I to think give you an is easily years. coming from the fact that that's what Fedra did to them for twenty years. She's that kind of character it comes across to me. She, uh, someone that I was thinking about was, for anybody who's watched it, uh, House of the Dragon, the kind of character, the women in the world of Westeros, a lot of them speak softly, are calm, but they will kill you in an instant. And then they have plenty of guys around them that respect the, the decisions they make and sort of work as their uh, right hand, their fists, so to speak. They're enforcers. And if she's that kind of character, it'd be cool to see. I don't really mind. I'm I'm game for a lot of different things. Uh, I don't have a screenshot of this one, but I saw a lot of people saying it. Uh, I didn't manage to grab it in time. It was um, how fucking retarded that they put all that effort into making Joel smart enough to put glass down, and yet he's attacked by surprise. Dumb. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. 
So <laughs> that failsafe isn't 100% effective. Obviously, well, Ellie even said, like, are you sure you're going to hear it? And we don't even know, you know, who the, you know, the, the people who get past that. They don't know if they're aware of it. They might have seen it and gone around it. There is the broad counter, just... and then there's the specific counter. The broad one is pretty much what you've done there. And, and yeah, like this, you can subvert traps. That's the thing. Yeah, traps are not guaranteed to work. Um, well, it's not perfect, but it's something. But the specific one is super interesting. The POV thing, they're not unwilling to do uh, the big POV film. So I'm assuming we're going to get Sam and Henry's uh, POV. And That'd be my they guess. don't have to because I know how it can work, but they might show they put something down to make it make less sound. They, they move around it. It would be cool if they acknowledge it, but I don't think they even have to. The cool detail, and this was pointed out a couple of people in chat, I, uh, sorry, in comments, I didn't actually notice. It was highlighted that um, Joel's right ear is uh, fucked, basically, from overly shooting. I've noticed you don't hear too well from your right side. Is it because you were shot there? Probably more from shooting. He doesn't favor it, he favors his left. And so if he's sleeping on his side, which he is in the scene, he goes to sleep on his right ear, meaning his left ear is open and out. When he's woken up, he's sleeping on his left ear, meaning his right ear was up. Point being, he turned over during his sleep and his, his less favored ear was the one he was relying on. Which I think is kind of yep. neat to put together. Um, that is that's little, something they point out. That is a neat detail, yeah. Can't, I don't think you can blame Joel <laughs> for turning over in his sleep, right? That's just something that you do. That was a really nice touch, and I think also it's conceivable they could have come th in through a window or something. Um, not necessarily I've, that door. I mean, they've, they've been escaping uh, these people for however these long. They must be careful with everything they do. They and remember imagine. that the big thing as well is that they are... Uh, his main... Like, Joel doesn't know about Henry or Sam. He's worried about these guys. And so the logic of going up there in the first place and setting those traps was to be safe against those guys, not other people in the, the city, you know, that they're not aware of as agents that are moving around and are very good at getting around safely. It's a pretty good system that he came up with. I, I don't find it, uh, it's find it weird where it's like, ha, it failed. It's like, yeah, I guess they do sometimes. Yeah, I'm just, I'm yeah. to be honest with you, it's kind of, get around it's kind of good we have different results instead of just they always win or anything. Consistent results, mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't provide her with a gun. She took it from Bills, uh, and she's also killed before. Preferred the game version to be... To be. And uh, the second one, if... Uh, you spend a lot of time discussing that Ellie was changed by having to shoot that guy. She mentions more than once that she's done it before. The writers probably shouldn't have included that, but they did. I think she says she's done something before she's hurt someone before. I don't think that killing a person or whatever she's done in whatever context she's done is going to change the fact that she had to do what she did in that scenario. She uh, also didn't want to talk about it when Joel asked her about it. Yeah, my, I would say that our major points are just that her acting and the writing shows that this had a huge effect on it and Joel recognized it. Whether or not she's killed someone before, it still had a huge effect on it is what's important. And then uh, just, I'm not sure what the, the whole, like, he didn't provide her with the gun, she took it from Bill's. Uh, did we say anything different? Yeah, I, I mean, we saw that scene. Where do in we episode think three. he got? Or, of course, we know, where else we do know we, that she we think it. she got the gun? She from. got the same yeah. gun that um, Frank took out when he went outside to defend Bill. He's from the same place as well. So yeah, it is that very gun. Cupboard, yeah. Um, yeah, I know she took the gun. And then saying um, preferred the game version. I'm not sure exactly well, what part you prefer, but uh, I prefer the show version for sure on that one. Specific scene. If it's the specific scene of her shooting the guy, then yeah, the show's better on that one. Yeah, I think so. Uh -oh. But we will. But it's a scary thought, isn't it? Well, that's the thing. I'm, I, I've shat enough on how the, the game does things better than the show, but I think there are times now where there's the show doing things better than the game. But we got this one. I guess I'll read this. Here I go. I completely disagree that this was better than in the game. His cruel words and treatment give Ellie a time to stand up for herself, while reinforcing Joel's view of her as a burden, which makes her arc, uh, his arc more impactful because he grows to view her as a daughter. He's already treating her like a fatherly figure in episode 4 by trying to shield her from the horrors of the world. In the game, he made sure she stayed behind because he didn't want a liability and needed to protect his cargo. In the show, he doesn't want her to be traumatized and obviously protecting the cargo. A small difference, but it has big impacts on other characters are viewed. I don't see Joel as a hardened, jaded man that doesn't give a shit about strangers. His arc will be less impactful, and I'm not okay with that. There's a lot here. <laughs> um, it is a lot. It is a lot. His cruel words and treatment give Ellie a time to stand up for herself while reinforcing death to So I assume they're talking about the game version. They are right? indeed. The scene where he oh. says to her, like, And you just hang back like I told you to. Well, you're glad I didn't, right? I'm glad I didn't get my head blown off by a goddamn kid. That's almost meta, where you're appealing to 
what his words allow her to do as a character or would allow her to do as a character when in Joel's perspective, that wouldn't really be a reason why he said those things. What they did in the show was they had Joel essentially recognize that she did ultimately save him and he doesn't get angry at her for doing that. He gets very he becomes apologetic to her uh, that she was put in a situation like that, that he shouldn't have allowed to happen, which is a different way to take it. But I think is ultimately really, really excellent and comes across as more fatherly to me, actually. Well, so that's um, part of the criticism. Well, I, I guess he's too fatherly. Right. He should be. It's too fatherly, really? too early. That's well, that uh, seems too to be early. The, the claim yeah, there. that's the thing. I don't well, think yeah, this is too that's... early at all. I think we've already done. No. Quite a bit of work. Yeah, so we're in episode four. Well, so someone I want to bring up is a while in. this whole his cruel words and treatment give Ellie a hard time to stand up for herself, uh, give her time to do it while reinforcing his view of her as a, a burden. They actually did this in episode three. Nobody made you go along with this plan. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. Don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. He's like looking at it almost like annoyed because that's almost expected that this whole thing wouldn't have happened if not for this new mission they had that was thrust on them because of all the shit that happened with Robert and uh, Marlene. In a way, you could see it as though if 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 Ellie never existed, Tess would be alive, and she cut through all of that immediately, which I think shows some level of emotional Ellie intelligence on her part. To, uh, to stand up for herself is the important part, though, here. Yeah, and then, of course, like, in response to that, he's gonna see her, which he does at that point and has done as fucking this, this thing I've got to deal with. But at the same time, she is a kid, and we've talked about how they've been chipping away at that, be it through her jokes or her commentary on anything, her way of trying to interact with him, what Bill has said, how she reflects Sarah, how she reflects Tess, and then like having to worry about what she should be exposed to and stuff. I think they've they've done all the beats they require. And the thing is, you might want to replay the game. He's already similarly as fatherly to her at this in the similar timeline, I would say. Now, now the safety zone, uh, do, do you know how to switch it off? I do. Okay, you just... You gotta respect it. This is not good. Joel, I'll be careful. Okay. Yeah, because you've got to think about where these events take place in the context of other major beats, because the really important thing with the Henry and Sam beat is that's the thing that makes Joel want to get off. You know, he, he doesn't want to really do this anymore. He wants to pass this off to... That's part of the reason why he wants to pass it off to Tommy. He doesn't want to deal with, the, with, like, this feeling of um the peril that she's in and how culpable he's going to be if she gets hurt or killed. That's one of the things that's informing it anyway. And in terms of the timeline, you know, episode four is about as close to that as uh, the payoff was in the game as well, to which one might be able to say, it's like, well, maybe he should be a little bit further along in terms of warming up to, uh, to Ellie by this point. I think one could even make that argument as criticism of the game, because it part of what be. I like about the show's version is, yeah, you shot someone and saved me, so you take the gun off her and then he's like, okay, fine, here is the gun, this is how you use it, use it for emergencies. Like, that seems the most reasonable development. Meanwhile, in the game, he takes it off her, says she did something wrong, and, and then she's, later on, is just like, you're an asshole, I, I didn't break your rules for any other reason than I thought you were in trouble. And she says, uh, whatever. And then after that, he's like, okay, I need to go down there and do things. Here's a rifle. Keep me covered. And it's it's like you're supposed to gather, I think, from the subtext in the game that it's like, you see, he does trust her with guns now. And it's like, yeah, but nothing was given back and forth between the characters. It was more so just, um, you know, you shouldn't have done that. I saved your life. And he's like, mm. and then gives her the rifle. Like, OK, while the conversation in the show I found to be way more meaningful. And this is someone who really likes the story in the game. Just saying. I just well, think it's, it was uh, it's kind of the problem that I have with the comment is there's not much of a it's like it's it's more so just pointing out how it's different from what the game had and then sort of consequently will be less impactful without much consideration for how the changes that were made to this payoff here will feed into the arc that they're sending him on in this show which may be different than what was in the game well, like um, there's not much consideration for anything that was gained by doing it this way it seems to almost be being treated like a strict loss yeah which is a bit weird right considering that it's like well surely you would have to acknowledge that what's been created here in terms of more elements of a feeling of he failed and so she had to do that and then loss of innocence or you know something along those lines like that that as a dynamic there's got to be something there well, right so or is that is that neutral is that of no value at all part of what seems to be said in this comment is the um that's something you would gain like a fatherly expectation of trying to protect her from particular whatever experiences that you, you should protect her from someone engaged with some that's a fatherly thing it's like no, no i'm pretty sure that is just a basic humanity thing I if you're say. moving as an adult if you're moving a, a human child around different places they're just automatically this happens in real life if you see a kid fucking around with someone about to eat like something off the floor you as a 
face and like, oh, uh, you shouldn't be doing that. That's actually, yeah. Whether or not they're cargo. And so like having those elements, is that's part of why The Last of Us is awesome. It, it chips into him with some other things that surround the idea of becoming fatherly to it, and then it will generate that, that relationship. Oh, and of course, by the way, that I'm just not because in the game, he made sure she stayed behind because he didn't want a liability. So this is that Ludo narrative dissonance coming back in. Ellie is an active participant in combat. Yes, and not to mention right. that uh, you can't even make that argument for the comparison because he gives her the rifle almost straight after that. Yeah. But that's a big one, actually. She actively participates in combat. She'll, like, throw bricks at people. She'll stab people with the switchblade, like, in close quarters combat. So, like, Joel is clearly pretty comfortable with having her be in the fray. Yeah, he doesn't keep yeah, her, like, out I of mean, the whole area or anything. Almost, in fact, that actually seems like it could present a serious problem. And then, uh, um... At least in facilitating the argument that you're making about like the arc that is going on and so when they say a small difference but it has big impacts on the kind of the characters are viewed it's like i think i agree with you but i'm obviously gunning for the positive effects i'm like that is, these are small good. changes yeah. but they're having really good effects and then to say i don't see joel as a hardened jaded man that doesn't give a shit about strangers so first of all joel joel, joel cares about strangers very much yeah he um, helped henry and sam not only that he he is so hyper aware of the average person that he doesn't trust basically anybody until he's in situations where he is essentially they've proven themselves by circumstance like henry and sam they could yep. in the game have shot him when they met but they don't and that's quite a bit already for him to trust them then they find out that they're they're similar in that they're both being hunted by the local like rebels and so then they slowly connect and yeah he um he goes on limb for them a decent bit so i would say game joel cares about strangers and so does show yep. joel so I, I don't agree with I that know, part. I then Game Joel and Show Joel are hardened. Of course they are. But, well, we how would we rate hardened? He executed a man by stabbing him in the heart. Like, yeah. I, I think As that makes you hardened. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I mean, killing those other guys as well. Whether it's the game or the show, I think Joel is absolutely intended to be seen as a hardened, jaded man who's somebody who has been a smuggler in this hellish world for 10, well, I go at least 10 years. I want to go further than saying he is. I want to be like, what is hardened? And it relates to like being able to do these really harsh things with uh, barely what seems to be barely any kind of emotional effect on you. You're that far along in experience now. Yeah, you know what needs to be that. done. On the subject mm -hmm. of jaded, he literally says, "There's no saving the world." Saving that it can't be saved, and that you have to. It's much more tight knit in terms of your priorities. So I would say that he is hardened and jaded. And you're wrong on the statement that either of them don't care about strangers. The the point being made here is that the show the show is like actually pretty good um, <laughs> so far. Well, yeah, and the whole his <laughs> arc will be less impactful. Can you please wait until his arc is over? No, just wait until it's over, and then we'll see. Yeah, because uh, I think they've got lots of pieces in place that could make it really strong. I don't know. It just feels like um, it feels like even this far into the show, it's like a lot of people aren't willing to give it a chance. Let it well, sort of play out. On that note, Rags, read this last comment right, we're covering. Right. Four is beyond a pattern. The show is going to be good. Game of Thrones had four good seasons, but after that, I get you want to be optimistic, but the reality is a four good episodes is just that, four good episodes. It's more likely the show will be good, but it's still very possible they'll Hill House Midnight mass it up, especially considering how the two-second part of what they're adapting went. I'm just saying, be cautious with your optimism. So, um... um before seeing any of the show, I probably would have said it's going to be bad. Then someone would be like, it's made by the guy who made Chernobyl. Yeah, but eh, Neil Druckmann, though. It's like, Neil Druckmann made The Last of Us Part 1, at least with a lot of people. It's like, yeah, but look what he made recently. Okay, all right, fine. That seems like it's relatively reasonable. You can say it's going to look looking bad. Watch episode one. It's like, that was pretty solid. Uh, I mean, it might be okay. Watch episode two. It's really solid. You're like, uh, I don't know. still fine. Watch episode three. You're like, damn, that was even a risky move, and you managed to nail it. Uh, I don't know, yeah, sure, maybe. Watch episode four, really solid, and filled in a whole bunch of blanks we were looking for. It's like, at this point, it's like, well, I would just be lying to you if I said that I thought it was still going to be bad. Of course, I now think it's going to be good. I felt the same way for House of the Dragon. Felt the same. I would have said the same for Hill House and Midnight Mass. As we were watching it, I'd be like, this is going to be great. In fact, Midnight Mass, <laughs> after a couple of episodes, I would have said, this is going to be fucking amazing. Well, I think it's, it's relatively straightforward, right? By the end of season four of Game of... Well, I guess before the finale, right? Because that's where you think it goes bad. If somebody yeah. went into season five with the expectation that it would be good, nobody would say that that's unreasonable. Yeah, I think because, the reasonable like, position right now is that the show will be good. Yeah, because the other one would just be assuming that it's going to completely collapse based when all of the input so far has been 
positive. We've had loads of standard setups and payoffs. We're running characters in a very consistent way. They seem to care about how they build their world, and they seem to pay attention to, like, ammo and gun limitations, as well as human limitations for a lot of things. Characters have made some pretty clever decisions here and there. I'm not going to say it's flawless, because it isn't. A lot of it's um, in the detail on the production standpoint. Um, but when you see all of those values being repeated, you're like, all right, I think there's, there's good reason to assume that this will be repeated in the future episodes because these were all made together. I don't see why yeah, not. Yeah, if I was um, going to guess, I would guess that it would be good. But, uh, you know, you can appeal, and rightly so. It could be anything. It could be a disaster that we're about to see in episode 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That could be. But yeah, it could be. could be. Doubt it, though. I just don't think it will, yeah. I think uh, if we're going to be betting on one thing right now, it's that the show will be good. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be the safest bet, I think. And if someone right. said "aha," turned out to be bad, I'd be like, "Safest bet at this point was good, though." I don't, I don't. What would be the "aha"? I'd be like, "Well, yeah, but I'm pretty happy with a lot of the the coverage so far and the dissection and analysis of the show." There's not really any motivation for us to be nice to this show. We've been kind of rule to the last of us ip for the past few years i was not expecting this to be this good and of course there were all the comments beforehand about video games and adaptations that were pretty frustrating as well yeah like um it, even though this is probably one involved. of if not the best uh, uh i mean if it stays at this rate, if it stays at, i mean the fact that we've had four good episodes puts it really high up anyway i guess the more relevant question would be how does it stack up to arcane by the end Oh, well, that's the thing. Arcane, I, I feel uh, like Arcane's Arcane a different thing. Now. Faithfulness, low, but quality oh, high. Right, sure. This is faithfulness, pretty high, quality high. high. I doubt I'll like it as much as Arcane by the end, but you know what? Arcane's I'm happy to be surprised. Yeah. Well, it's just Arcane. Arcane, is... Arcane had a ton of moving Ooh. parts. Um, that's it has top a lot tier. of characters. It's a tough one to be. A lot of characters with great arcs. In any Whereas case, very, you guys yeah. ready for us to watch episode five? I am ready. I am yep. so ready. I'm actually a little bit excited for this one. So... The record. I've not really heard much complaints for this one. Mostly just praise. I don't praise. know anything. So. Yeah, I don't know really either. I've been trying to avoid. Uh, the assumption we have, of course, is that this is just going to be the conclusion of the Kansas City arc. Yes. Everything here. Yeah, Henry, Sam, and Kathleen's function. stories will likely end in this one, or maybe continue. You never know. Kathleen yeah. seems to me like the kind of person that will die this episode. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think we'll be the bloater. That's I just want to see the bloater man squish someone's head like a, like a tomato. I want to see the blow to go, woo! Yeah. Definitely done away with them uh, opening scenes, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we were wrong about that. We kind of thought that that might continue forever. It might just be now. We don't get any more at all. Because yeah. you never know. When are they going to make the first of us the prequel? The last of <laughs> them. The first of us, the precursors. Well, not legacy. It'll just be the precursors. I sure do love freedom. Oh, Freedom's, is this? Freedom's great. This, this is when is... they beat Fedra. Yeah, I assume so. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Fedra. Be <laughs> Man, there's a lot of people here too. Yeah, there is a lot of people. Yeah, I'd have to imagine this is gonna be building up who these bad guys are. Oh, this seems maybe this is a bit much, fellas. This is this is definitely uh, not okay. Oh, come on, guys, use your words. <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know, maybe Fedra, we're really bad. <laughs> really bad. Oh, so, yeah, this will be Henry and Sam. You'll receive a fair trial. Yeah, nope. sure. If you have to will. assure me that that's a thing you're going to do, <laughs> then I'm like, oh, yeah, we're already past me believing Oh, Jesus you. Christ, just dragging a dude. Yeah, this is this is encouraging about your free, fair trials. It's almost like a Looney Tunes death full of knives like that. <laughs> yeah, the, seriously, this is the way to do it. Start off with these guys, give them a... Gotta get to learn them. Well, especially if this is the only episode we get with them. Well, it's a big if. Who knows? Blood smears all over the walls. See that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I see Reassuring. <laughs> Hurts the ambience. You know, Perry, I used to be so scared of these people. Did it feel good? Betraying your neighbors to Fedra? Watching us hang? So that you could get medicine, alcohol, fucking apples. How does it make you feel now? We could put you on trial. You're all guilty, so that's how that'll go. Where is Henry? You're informers. Inform. Kill them. He's with Edel's team. Well, he was a lot more discreet than you fucking idiots. Where are they? He had a place to hole up in the open city. Ha haven't you heard? Kansas City is free. I swear, I've told you 
everything I know. Of course you have. You're a rat. I don't think they're ever going to let rats, so to speak, ever be uh, non-prison or non-killed. Well, yeah, some... the perception would be that if they've done it before, they can do it again. It's not even just that. It's like a, um, you chose that when we were at our worst, right, so right. at our best, yeah. you don't deserve shit, and you won't get shit. He's not my seventh priority, Perry. Is that what he is to you? No. Right, so this whole time, he's sort of just been like, hmm, about this vendetta. We are not really putting them on trial. When you're done, burn the bodies. It's faster. Oh, that'd be yeah, the body this pile. Yeah, this is exactly what we expected in terms of the way that she conducts herself. She's clean and ruthless. and ruthless. Yeah. And it's simple math to her. You betrayed us, you got us killed, you got us hanged, now you mm. get hanged, sort of thing. Uh, yeah, she's gonna be a vengeance character. And like, you saw what everyone was doing there. Apparently her executing people is not out of the fucking realm of usual. Yeah, they're not acting like this is something that she just came up with that day, or that yeah. moment. It seems like, like yeah, Fedra were doing do. it to them for years, and then they did it. Do you see what they were fucking doing it to, seems like, to be the rules. Them? Yeah, that's the rules of the game, apparently, is just how everyone's operating. I'm wondering if, uh, is it that Sam is deaf, or that they're using sign language because it means they can communicate without, you know, making a sound? I don't know. Seems like it would be... Oh. Well, I guess we're about to find out. Oh, it's... Oh, is it's he the guy. Is he yeah. Edelstein, then? Must be. Oh, Edelstein grunting, there you go. <laughs> oh, so when we caught up with him, like, he had just been captured, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because this was the room that they found in the episode. Right. I barely made it out as is. So we're fucked on food. Ammunition? Empty. Yeah, so is mine. So we'll sneak our way out. Tunnels? Tunnels? Why go to the trouble? You can kill yourself right here. I think we can make it 11 days? So that's how long we have to figure it out. He's scared because you're scared. I wonder if we're going to get some parallels for these two. I get ourselves established in some little, you know, things they like to do. Well, I remember when they uh, encountered uh, bonding. Joel and Ellie, he kind of had, he'd like drawn on kind of like the, what were they saying? Super Sam, the superhero kind of Yeah, persona. they were both drawn as superheroes. Makes them brave. Makes them feel, yeah, brave. I wonder how you do italics in sign language. Yeah, I guess. No more food and everything. You gotta leave. Yeah, they were mentioning that they needed to figure out a plan to leave here within um, the 11 days. Yeah, but, um, 11 course. days, assuming that it was the three of them splitting the food. So it's probably been, you know, around that. Well, it's been 10 days, they said before, so it must be 11 oh, gotcha. now. So they need to move out to... the food. They I don't, don't know if they have out. an escape plan yet, though. Doesn't seem like, like they do. I mean, guessing... whatever plan they might have had might have been ruined by them doing all these patrols. Also, the death of... Uh... Edelstein. I like that us spending so much time with these characters right now is helping even out the distribution of screen screen time across all characters. Like the the Bill episode up until now felt like very uh, unique in its its lack of Joel and Ellie, but now we have an, right. another episode like it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, and I like think getting carried through. If yeah. this story is kept to the game story, I think this one's gonna go over way better with people. Yeah. I think um, one of the benefits that they're having with the show is that because the game has a fixed perspective on Joel and Ellie, because of them being player characters, means that you can't really have scenes like this in, in those games. Yeah. Whereas here, you can have the, uh, you know, just episodes yeah, this... on about Joel and Ellie because it's not a fixed perspective show. If you want to get to brass tacks, technically speaking, this is all unfaithful right now. This isn't in the game. Right, because this but... is a story that we didn't get, but it's good story. I like well, it and, a lot. And I think people, most people would say that it is faithful so far. Uh, well, well, because I, it's, 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 we're yeah, making a distinction between like disfaithful and unfaithful in a way where if it's not contradictory, it's one thing. If you're adding supplemental stuff, it's another. Yeah. Oh, that'll be so Joel. This... So a question I was going to have was the nature in which they got to Joel and Ellie. Right. And yeah. if it and is as simple as they followed them, then good. <laughs> yeah. Because it looks like that might happen. There'll be one more yeah. gunshot to here, right? With Ambush. the shotgun when he busts her, yeah. Yeah. Well, two more shots. Oh, you're right, yeah. And then a oh, yeah. uh, series of screams. Ah. Maybe they cut so... before. <laughs> 
Mm, yeah, they probably did. I guess they're thinking we'll follow these guys. These are these are not friends of our enemies, so yeah, I'm enemies of our enemies people. will hopefully be our friends. Oh, it's Ooh, not a bad idea. Job. Oh. There you go. It's addressed. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's what I mean, guys. You just gotta wait. <laughs> like... Remember what to do. Yeah, and I think this show, with the quality we've seen so far, certainly did deserve the benefit. Thank I you for pointing that at me. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I Don't like point that. the gun at me. Like, no, do not point the gun at me. Doing their best to avoid it. Oh, all right. That was here pretty expeditious. Yeah, now we're here. Yeah, that was quick. Eyes on me. Okay. We didn't hurt you, so you don't hurt us. That's right. So we're fucking tall, man. That's just the way he sounds. He has an asshole voice. Joe, tell him he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has an asshole Everything voice. Is Everything is great. Dude, dude. <laughs> Everything is great. <laughs> dude. They've really got so little choice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They can't get these hey, two to help them. Did you guys try anything? Yeah? My name's Henry. It's my brother Sam. I'm the most wanted man in Kansas City. Okay, I pegged him for Although a right while. My guess is you're running a close second. Well, yeah, that's about how I'd expect that to go, I suppose. Yeah. He says, thank you. I guess you don't have one, so... This means a lot. I'm Ellie. I'm Joel. You wait. We didn't kill each other. Let's call this a win-win and move on. Let's call it a win-win. <laughs> Y'all came up here to get a view of the city and plan a way out. And when the sun's up, I'll show you one. All right, we got someone you want. Hey, all him. right. And Joel is a very capable man. Well, yeah, it looks like that's where they're drawn to him as well, right? Yeah, you're right. You would have saw yeah. him shooting. They've been tortured and murdered people for 20 years. Oh, there you go. You know what happens? Rape, right. tortured, and murdered for 20 years from Fedra. That's why these people are fucking crazy, then. Yeah. I'm a collaborator. I don't work with rats. Yeah, you fucking do. I know the city, and that's how I'm going to help you get out. You seem capable enough, you're armed. And wrong, and wrong. I never killed anyone. And pointing an unloaded gun at you is the closest I've ever come to being violent. Oh yeah, that's right, their guns were empty, remember? Ignition? Empty. Yeah, so is mine. That's right, they are empty, yeah. Doesn't it at all feel like there's just all the blocks that are required are getting built? Like, one by one? Yeah. Like, yep, information <laughs> required here, got it. Information required here, got it. Wow. <laughs> Oh Alright, ready? Oh. Ow! <laughs> a blueberry hurt you? <laughs> it's been a while since that boy even cracked a smile. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. She doesn't seem bothered by all this. So where were you heading? So how are we getting out? And now you can uh, do some character the, stuff. That's, that's the binding element, these two kids. I haven't heard that in a Get long more. time. Yep. And Joel's still very... That is the jaded element of him. He's struggling. Yeah. Whenever nice things happen, he's like, nah, nah. Highways. Downtown. Us. They got people posted all around the inside perimeter. If we get close, we get caught. I can't remember what like toy or something that's from. I want to say that it's slightly well, familiar. I I know that kind of toy. Yeah. Bunch of buildings, yeah. yeah. Drawer, which is pretty pretty clever. I like that. Is it done with magnetism? I can't remember. Yeah, they're magnetic filings that are drawn yeah. to the surface with the pen. Also, um, it's just worth saying. I think the actors for Henry sound pretty good so far. Yes. Yeah. You notice anything strange? About this city. I mean, no infected. No infected. Where are they infected? Oh. Yeah. There's yep. infected. Fedra drove them underground 15 years ago and never let them come back up. The Fedra guy that I worked with told me that it's clean, completely clean. They cleared it out, all of it. When? Like three years ago. Hmm. Okay, maybe there's one. <laughs> Did you see that he like frowned at him, then looked over yeah. and be like, no, no, no good. <laughs> you ran into a clicker. Two of them. And you're still alive. You're the right people. If well, it's bad down there, we turn if it's around, the best option. Oh, that's your great plan? No, that's my dicey as fuck plan. No, that's the problem. Yeah, you can't stay here. They're going to help us escape. Right? I mean, it feels to me like Joel would find it so much easier to fuck this guy over if it was just him and not this other kid with him, because it makes it much difficult yeah. to treat this, these people as non-genuine. They probably yeah. are. You need to get out of sight. 
I, I, I think it's just weird. Showing that age there, Joel, as well. Yeah, he's tired. Get your gun out. Where she left it. I'm not sure from that expression if he knew and he was just like, yeah, I know you put it in your fucking pocket. I know you didn't listen yeah. to me. She seems pretty happy to be told to pull it out. Yeah. Plan is good. Plan is good. We've been down here two seconds. We don't know anything. That's kind of a pessimist. I'm not, not my dad. dad. Just point your light forward. This is just you and your daughter. We're not leaving. I'm on the camera. I promised someone I'd look after. Be ready to run. Because most of this hasn't been like the game so far. Oh yeah, it's quite different. The thing is, we got the sewer sequence. I guess is that this is what we'll be doing instead. It's similar enough. Yeah, pretty spoopy down there. No. Hey, you don't know what's in there, man. Doesn't surprise me at all. I think Joel is generally protective of children. I think a lot of people just naturally would be. Well, I think it's, if someone wanted to say like, well, there's some people who aren't. It's like, well, Joel, obviously, it makes sense that he would be. He's been a father. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, a lot of people at base are, anyway. I heard about places like this. People went underground after it's outbreak a nice day, set. built settlements. What happened to them? Maybe they didn't follow the rules and they all got infected. <laughs> That's straight out of the game, that uh, picture. No way! Four, five, six, eleven. Ah, so cool. Jor, survive. Endure, survive. Fuck yeah, man. Keep it down, we're not out yet. Oh, come on, can we just rest here for a while? Wouldn't be so bad to wait the light out a bit. Safer in shadows when we pop back out on the other side. Makes it the same, Don't sir. Hey, Sam. Yeah. Stand with us, Cole. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, where's the back? <laughs> yeah! Did you see that? Let's keep it down, buddy, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that makes Not sense. very jaded, though, is he? Yes! What's what I mean? I don't understand. Like, if someone hadn't even played the game, they would be like, "This Joel guy, man, he's like a he's like a downer in every environment." It's like, yes, he yeah. is. That's that's who he is. <laughs> Nothing is ever safe. Nothing is ever e like. Look at that. Collaborating to take care of him. I shouldn't have said what I said. It seems kind of cruel to send a whole army after you for that. Sam, he uh, he got sick. There was one drug that worked, and it belonged to Fedra. He was gonna take something big. So I gave him something big. That one great man. The leader of the resistance movement in Kansas City. And Catherine's brother. Well, that's probably why she's in charge. That yeah. Would, uh, yeah. She and taking. why she oh, has wow. a big bone to pick here. Yeah, and that kind of like, man, oof. And that's why she's ruthless. And that's why everybody yeah. is the way that they are. This guy apparently was fucking great. I am the bad guy because I did a bad guy thing. Man. Almost like you guys should have waited. A little bit. Could you imagine dealing some significant damage on behalf of one person, Joel? Could you do that? It's pretty good as a seed to set up for later on. Yeah. It's just they're just doing the work they're supposed to. The whole season is yeah. gonna build up all with all these different environments and characters doing their different choices, and then he's gonna have his. This is Kind of The Last of Us 2 in microcosm, this story. I like the cycles of violence. Well, I mean, she's Abby and Henry is Joel. Why are you talking to my mom? We didn't know where you were. When Michael and I were little, this room seemed so big. Michael told me that this wasn't a room at all. It's a big wooden box so that nothing could get inside of. He said, as long as we were together, we would be safe. He was so beautiful. I never was. He would be horrified by the things I've done. And if you've come to tell me that Michael wouldn't want me to hurt Henry, that he would want me to forgive. Your brother was a great man. We all loved him. The last time I saw him alive, he told me to forgive. 
And what did he get for that? Where is the justice in that? What is the point of that? He didn't change anything. You did. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> like, we, we've got everything. Yeah. yeah. This is very well done. This is everything. Yeah. She's clearly... Yeah, it's everything we needed. She relied She's on her whole no life illusion, yeah. for her brother. Her brother took care of her. Her brother made her feel like a good person. He was taken from her. Now he's gone. And yeah. so she'll do anything to get revenge on him, even though that's not what the brother would want. And she understands the context. She does. She's choosing this, and it's going to fucking backfire at her. more or less on board anyway, because they all liked him. And they yep. and, and, and they, they, they did like him. He was well. a decent leader or whatever for the morale, probably the personnel, but she's the one that actually made change happen. Well it's the, the often the dichotomy, right? The principled idealist and then the the, the realist. Uh... Yeah. Who makes things happen. We and yeah, that was just you needed only one scene to do it for her, and that was that was it. That's everything yeah. we need about it now. Well yeah, it feels real awkward now that saying like, you know, her being the leader here. The previous episode wasn't about, about her. It was a setup and oh, now it's about her, isn't it? That's how it works. Right. Yeah. This <laughs> scenario oh, looks geez. similar. Oh, this looks to like something. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to Wyoming. What? It's a huge state. It can fit two more people. <laughs> yeah. Huge yeah. state. Maybe we just call this one a success and say our far farewells. No, he'll change his mind, trust me. This is how it goes. He's like, no. LA never ever ever <laughs> happening. And then I'm like, I'm gonna ask you a million more times. And he's like, Whoa! Yep. Sniper. Yeah, there it is, the sniper. Where the fuck is that coming from? Shut up. That sounds like the sound effect of nearly getting detected. You hear that? Go! Yeah. Oh yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. They're like it's a shame about this bright ass moon. <laughs> it is very bright, isn't it? Stay here. What? Get out! <laughs> Fucking sniper. What do we do? Did you see where it came from? Somewhere down the street. Stay here. What? If you don't move, he's not gonna hit you. Right now. Y'all stay here. No! Before you start. I need you guys to keep him busy. I'm gonna go around, try to get in the house through the back, and then I'll take him out. I'm gonna go around and see if I can't get the angle on him. But if you go out there, he's gonna kill you. It's dark and he has shit aim, nobody's gonna kill me. Then he's gonna kill us. Okay, hey, be careful. Do you trust me? This is one-to-one -one with the game, right? Yeah, Pretty much, you yeah. go around the side to ambush. I mean, it was during the day in the game. That's the only difference. Yeah, there. yeah. Matt, it is very bright. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit... Br this is bright. This <laughs> is very bright. Well, yeah, like, but yes, no the moon can movies. be Like, yeah, most... The moon, moon, the moon can be bright, sure, but, like, come on. <laughs> well, it's just a common thing in shows and movies, right? Where like it's you blue shift it, or I, this is a bit different. Well, you commit like, like support dick and make it so you can't see shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would actually be night, but they put a very high wattage light way up on sticks. Slide it over to me. And then stay up here for another hour. That's all you have to do. Please don't do it. Please. All he had to do. That would be hardened again. Ah. Uh, oh, he was, and he would have called them by now, right? Probably. Yeah. Fuck. That's yeah. how they did it. Okay. <laughs> nice. Because yeah, they're gonna have. I was wondering if he was just a lone old man sitting up there. I was actually gonna say, <laughs> why the fuck is there a lone old man? It was like, oh, he's a fucking. Run! Oh, here we go. Clear them. Jesus. Oh, Gotta get him in the face. 
I'm glad he's missing though, because people do miss instead of just getting, you know. Oh, any chance? Ah, damn. We're both taking right with your team. Take the time with this one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the way you do a payoff like that. Yeah. Panic shots and then like, okay, breathe. Jeez. Oh shit, man! All we're missing now is an obvious zombies, I'd say. Ooh, is that gonna be the rumble that wakes him up, or...? Maybe. Mmm. Is this... unrelated to the... the little hole they had back in that other place, I guess? That was just evidence that sure. they're underground, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't see how anything else would save them. It would have to be a horde of zombies. Up there. Fuck. Two and two! Round the back, take him out! Dead end, Henry! You wanna step on out? Save us some time? I'll come out! Just let the kids go! Sorry. The girl is with the man who killed Brian, and well, Sam's with you. You don't understand! But I do. I know why you did what you did. He's just a fucking kid! Kids die, Henry. They die all the time. You think the whole world revolves around him? That he's worth everything? Man, I wonder what that's yeah, relevant yeah. to. Holy when shit. You yeah. Get yeah. ready to take him and run. Yes. Do it. Henry. It ends the way it ends. Uh oh. That'd be a hole. I wonder if he's realizing what this is. I'm wondering, yeah, if Joel knows what this is. I think they all sort of realize what, yeah. Oh boy. Oh fucking boy. <laughs> Dude, awesome. <laughs> oh, and look at that. It's actually the amount of bullets is making a difference, but there's just so yeah. many of them. That's many. Yep. And once they scatter around, it gets harder and harder, and now you're just gonna get people getting picked yeah. off, isn't it? Oh, he's looking stressed out. Yep. Damn. Nice shot. Gotta have tight aim now, yeah. Where's that bloater, though? Yeah. Where is he? Well, it's crazy too, right? Because every person they kill by biting then turns into one, right? Uh, Eventually, well, right? I mean, or how quick well, is they, it? If they kill them, they're dead. And I think it depends on where they're bitten. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn, look at that. Christ. <laughs> Run. Find cover. Don't look back. Run! <laughs> I think he was going for a sidearm there as well. Oh, that's his head off, yeah. Why you gotta- why you gotta do that? Oh, <laughs> look at that man! He is selling that fear. And stand there. She can. That was pretty neat. Jeez, we're in really confident, aren't we? Yeah, those are some close shots. I guess they're literally closer, at least. Oh. And yep. Yeah. She's good. <laughs> Someone's gonna yeah, eat you, lady. Water's, water's coming. Alright. And there you have it. Hi. Arc complete. Story finished. That is the point being made. That's what you get. Bye. Well. That's it for them really does a great job of showing just how fearsome they are, you know, how, how yeah. bad it is when they show up. Yeah, and it looked like they were starting to run over to, they just go back to Kansas City, right? And there's going to be plenty more people to eat there. It's going to get overrun. Okay. Yeah. It seems like the big thing as well that makes them super threatening here is that they're more organized, whereas in the original, there's no, like, seeming 
like yeah, which know, seems network. to be the network idea. Yeah, which which helps, I think. I think it helps make them more threatening because it's not That's about just fun. randomly bumping into them and then you get in trouble. It's it seems more so the like there's a potential to be overrun. It's like comic books, eh? Endure and survive. Endure and survive. That shit's redundant. Yeah, it's it's not great. <laughs> Look, I don't know exactly how I'm getting to Wyoming. I'm probably walking, but. Last I heard, he was in Wyoming. We get there, we find him, we find the fireflies. You know, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. What are you saying, man? <laughs> Sounds like a good plan, man. Yeah, I think it'd be nice for Sam to have a friend. I'll tell him in the morning. Uh, uh, Silence, uh, Springy. Section one, five, Taking stock of all the food we found today. I see. And how are we doing on canned peaches? Did Henry send you? No. Why would Henry send me? To make sure I'm not fucking up somehow. I'd say we all did pretty good back there. Especially you. Like, can you hear me? I read you. Okay. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. Do I not look scared? Okay. Well, have a good night. How is it that you're never scared? Who says that I'm not? What are you scared of? Uh, let's see. Scorpions. Scorpions are pretty creepy. Uh, being by myself. I'm scared of ending up alone. What about you? Those things out there. What if the people are still inside? What if they're trapped in there without any control of their body? Is it still you inside? I'm scared of that happening to me. Okay, first of all, we're a team now. Okay, we're gonna help each other out. And second, they might still look like people, but that person is not in there anymore. My blood is medicine. Henry says that they've moved on, that they're with their families, like in heaven. Do you think that's true? I go back and forth. I mean, I'd like to believe it. But you don't. I guess not. Yeah, me neither. I promise. I mm -hmm. promise. A serious talk, I almost forgot. There. If he doesn't know about it, he can't take it away. All right. I'm pooped. I'll see you tomorrow. I guess that's the impression she may have gotten from the fireflies. Oh, not of the palm. You're doing the thing. 
I mean, this voice thinks it's just fucking mixing blood right now, which is a general no-no, everyone. That is a general no-no. Yeah, if you get anyone's blood in you, you need to uh, get medical attention immediately. BSI, body substance isolation. Unfortunately, this is something she may have concluded because she's not from, like, Fireflies obviously deliberately didn't tell him much at all about how she's holding the cure. Or maybe she knows it's BS and she's just trying to make him feel better in the moment. No, I think she genuinely believes this may help. Yeah, look if at you her remember, face, they, I think she... they only told her the nature of her importance right before they handed her off to Joel. And so they may have just said, like, your blood is the key to the cure. That's probably why she thinks this should work. And then, of course, the first thing she did when he showed her was look over to the other room because if Joel finds out, he will shoot this kid. Mm. So he'll stay awake with him to make sure he's immune too, right? Damn, that smells good. Good morning. Where's Sam? I let him sleep in for once. Oh. Well, if you want him to join us, you can go wake his ass up. Mm. Okay. Sam? <laughs> Shit, he's turning! That's my fucking brother! Screw it! Shit! Gotta go, you're right. Are you okay? Oh my god. Sam? Oh no. Sam? Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Henry, give me the gun. What did I do? Henry? <gasps> Henry, stay there. Henry? What did he do? What, what, what did I do? Sam? Henry, give me the gun. I'm gonna get that gun for me, okay? Oh, okay, okay, easy. Give me the gun. Is this your fault? This is nobody's fault, Henry. It's all your fault! Give me the gun, Henry. Give me the gun. Henry! Henry, no! Yeah, that hit pretty much as hard as it does in the game. Which way's west? Off they go to Wyoming. Well, that was a really good episode. I like that a lot. I don't know, I guess it's five in a row I'm now. Glad, was there I'm anything that we too. asked for that wasn't in there? That was basically everything that we expected and wanted, and, and maybe a little bit more as well uh, in a few places. It's, it, it, it's, it is becoming increasingly clear with each successive episode what we're building up to thematically. Like, all of the seeds are being planted with all of these stories. Like, G very deliberately. That lady, she was just perfectly characterized. She's yeah. She's doing the thing where you, when you decide there are no choices in the world, there are only um, what happens as a result of this other thing. Like, you, you make yourself an object in the world is, is, I think, the philosophy behind it. And that's what she is as a character. She's decided when she talked to uh, with Henry, right? I know why you did what you did. It was to save your kid. But 
you know, fuck you, maybe a kid should die. Why did my brother die? Like, how does that, how does that work? Fuck you, you die now. That's that's just it's the dominoes. And it's how everything fucking works in this universe. A lot of the time at the core, there's some good decision that was made. Or at least a decision that was bad that was made for good reasons. And then it's just like, yeah, well, repercussion is I fucking kill you now. Actually, okay, hot take. I think this is The Last of Us 2 done properly, this episode. Uh-oh, careful. Yeah, kind of. Uh, you know, the... <laughs> The, the how it you know the, the whole self destruction element and you know it could lead you to be you well because this was what the they kind of tried to do with the uh the WLF and the the other guys right yeah, was part that of they were embroiled in the fighting that they collapsed where in this case it was a bit different than that because we've got like you've got like this very fundamentally personal conflict that is kind of like playing out here but then it all like in the face of the existential threat th there's a choice before you you're gonna let this go and like work together. Uh, or are you not going to do that? And then we see what happens in her case. One of the, she held on to it, so she died. One of the larger gaps in The Last of Us 2, as far as I was concerned, always, was that we never got to see Abby address the reasons that Joel did what he did. Part of the reason that happened is because the writers weren't familiar with the reason of why Joel did what mm. he did. Well, they, they hadn't figured it out. They weren't, or they changed their mind. There were yeah, they changed it. They um, forgot about them in the interim. It fucked everything. She is hyper familiar with what he did and why. And yeah, she's like, she and now care. you die and your kid dies. That's what happens next. That's what I think was missing for Abby. The only problem is, well, as soon as you do that, it turns them into a villain. That's what they are at this point. Well, an antagonistic, yeah, especially to to uh to you know our team, right? <laughs> she, the thing about it, right, Henry's Henry Henry choice Henry. is I I essentially get this guy killed in exchange for saving my brother. It's like that's a really tough thing that all of us would have difficulty, and that's that's part of the bigger mm -hmm. point of a lot of the hard choices made in the Last of Us universe. Hers is it's done. There's nothing you gain it's by killing done. them anymore. But now I exactly. But I have to. Wants that's to. what I'm doing. It's worse. What happens uh, next? Yeah, what exactly. You did. It places her firmly in the role of villain. A villain whose logic you understand, but a villain nonetheless. And what did they yeah. do to it? Um, they had her strung out right till the end, trying to get her vengeance, and it got her killed. It got everyone it got killed. killed. And it got everybody killed, and it's going to destroy that whole city. Yeah, all yeah, because she might, desperately yeah. deserved- well, because she couldn't let it go, because her brother was right, and they didn't listen to him. The brother had it figured out. He yeah. got it. He nailed it. Um... And I guess in a certain sense, you could be like, well, I guess it's really sad then that Henry having to make this choice, I guess, ultimately led to this. And it's like, yeah, I guess it is really sad that that's, that's what happens. But that's what happened in the story. We are building up with all of these stories, perspectives on like the choices that characters can make in the apocalypse. Like the difficult choices about what people choose to value and how they choose to conduct themselves. And it's so clearly deliberate, especially after this episode, it's so clear what they're building up to. Like now, especially with having that change where Ellie knows that, um, that Sam got bit and that she made something of an effort that she thought she could do at the time to try and save him. And then it doesn't work instead of in the game she didn't know. And then it was a surprise. It's, it's like you're kind of sowing the seeds a bit more of her really being motivated to, uh, to, to, save to, make, everyone. This, to make this cure happen to save people. Because in this instance, you tried and it didn't work. Not that the game didn't have that as an element. I guess it's just that this scene really like brings it to the forefront, which of course, and, and then of course, still having the same stuff with Joel, right? That this experience is going to be the thing that is like the big push to pass Ellie off to, to, uh, to Tommy. Yeah, because enough, enough dealing with this, it's so fucking hard having to meet people, care about them, watch them die, and, and to die. struggle yeah. to trust whether or not you should. All this stuff, like, Joel, man, Pedro Pascal does such a good job this episode of convincing me he's fucking strung out. This is so much to yes. deal with. He looks really yes. exhausted, emotionally. Emotionally exhausted, yeah. He's just um, and, and by the way, goddamn, they did some great work with Henry and Sam there. One episode. Yes, that's, yeah, one that's episode, all they got. They did an excellent job. It's kind of, it's just, it's a different journey, but it's the same format idea of giving them a lot of focus for one whole episode. They, we get this start, middle, and end. And, uh, and then how their story feeds into the story of Joel and Ellie. And I love this, um, this raw human shit happening where... You, you might, I think, uh, uh, when when people watch a TV show, they might try and like break it down logically in in an erroneous way. I would go as far as saying this same thing happens in the game, but basically when they burst in and Ellie's being attacked by uh, Sam zombie, so to speak, and Joel is immediately like, "Fuck, I need my gun," and then uh, Henry's like, "Fuck no, you're not shooting my brother." And it's like he's look like, and it takes him just a bit, and then he ends up shooting him himself. Like, cause it's- And then there's that moment of de of like, starting to realize what's happened, right? It was like the heat of the moment, the the choice, and then takes him a little bit of time to realize, oh. Yeah, it's just like- uh, I can't do this, like, I can't, I can't, like, I can't do this. It was his one job, and he failed. 
That's how you would feel mm. about it, right? It's the same for so many characters. Yeah. That's how they feel. It, it fucking drives them just, nuts. Sam was the most important person in his life. I mean, and look at the choices he made to save Sam, and then Sam dies. You know, that weighs on him too, right? He made the choice. Well, and he even he says, did what did I do? In like, mind. in that moment, yeah. I killed Sam sort of thing, which applies yeah, on multiple exactly. levels. It's really good storytelling. Um, <laughs> there's just no... No, uh... No other way I'd happily give it. this that's, episode that's excellent really as a as a title for um, quality. This was really strong. There's a couple of problems, I'd say, but um, well, small it's generally plot scale. stuff, right? Of like nonstop headshots, <laughs> like that Joel was pulling off. Yeah, I would have preferred yeah, some more really misses in, in that rad. sequence. He got, yeah. he got really but, good. But with that's that. the thing when it comes to when it comes to character, it's it's really, really, really tight. This episode was really strong by way of character. We got so much, and it's Rag said it. I'm glad he said it first, but like, yeah, I feel feel pretty vindicated. Yes, are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, kind of. I mean, like I said, they're five now. Uh, yeah, now we're five all five in a row. Just, a lot of our expectations ones. about what this episode was going to be were realized, and particularly with regard to uh, it's Kathleen, right? The yeah, Kathleen. Um, I mean, yeah. what doesn't make sense we, about we, her at this we, point? Yeah, exactly. We got it. We we figured it out. We we had and, well, they even gave us the so and, her and brother. All of the, yeah, exactly. her brother he earned the, the role on a personable and social level and bound everybody. Probably gave them morale. She's the one that came up with the plans and executed them, likely because she's much more ruthless. The, the commentary is that the characters were two halves mm -hmm. of a whole that's what that's like yes that's and what they when, were together when he was lost when he died the only thing that was left was the vengeance the ruthlessness no forgiveness no mercy and look what it no did compassion and then the consequences that everything gets destroyed because there are some pretty present themes in the last of us about like the interpersonal relationships but then of course more of the challenges right of like well how much is one person's life worth to somebody what are they willing to do does it mean you know are they willing to commit to saving one person's life when they know that that may well you know endanger or cause greater harm to a larger number of people like those sorts of just... things but in the case of her right it's a good reflection of of like what that path led to it leads to destruction not just of her but everybody it's everywhere like why did that emergence hole fucking happen it's like well because joel shot the shit out of the driver and they crashed why did that happen because he's protecting ellie more than fucking anything right now. Why is that happening? Because they're trying to attack them lot for having killed the brother that she loved more than anything. And why are they doing that? It's like, well, Henry killed the brother, technically speaking, because he tried to protect the one thing that matters to him more than anything. Yeah. It's, it well, all comes back to that. Last of Us 2 cycles of violence, but way more effective. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm sorry. Episode. This just. But this was what they were going for. The... Maybe if they have time now and they can reformat and rethink everything, they can redraw and refigure out and how to tell the story. And actually create a Last of Us story that functions. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, Could how do imagine... I not have some level of confidence after seeing these five episodes? No, that's you're wrong, Mauler. It could My, turn to shit. At any I will moment. forever be worried about episode nine, but yep. I'm really not that worried about the next set of episodes. They could fall that's apart, of course. Yeah. In the I same am way. Not expecting it. In the same Anything way that they set the mark quite high. Well, they, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm just I'm so happily invested. <laughs> it's just this is just a gosh darn good show at this point. I'm enjoying watching it's it. It's a very good show. Uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to talk during it to actually be able to turn well, this into a video. Be paying attention, paying attention, and and becoming immersed in the story. Yeah, and, and the journeys of these characters. You know what? Getting a little bit oh. tired of seeing this around. It's got to stop. Oh, oh All my right, god! So here we go. <laughs> How do we judge? How good acting is. All right, it's it's tough. As we've talked about before how it could be a little bit subjective, but a lot of the time there seems to be general agreement on the best and worst. That's something to start with. I think there's probably three major things, right? Like yeah. one, um, well, the general is convincing you of the emotion they're feeling, right? That's the easy sort of thing. The thing is, yes. What can what can we get closer to maybe being able to prove? Because me believing an emotion is really down to me a lot of the time, rather than, like individuals. I mean, so their ability to pull off different people. Right? Like, Pedro Pascal, I think, has proven this with all the characters we've He's seen him play. He's got range. Yeah. He's got there's that kind of range. range. Then there's the range of how many emotions and states of being can you pull off within a single character anyway. And then mm -hmm. I think the third one, which is often one that a lot of actors don't get to show off because of the writing or the direction, but how do you perform under great pressure? Having to perform I something... I the extremes. Yeah. The extreme. So... Bella Ramsey has been shat on forever for being really shit in this well, show. Well, they gotta stop. 
they have to stop. Um, yeah, she's the first really, two episodes really, I was really good. pretty meh, but I think they finally gave her. She she really has proven that she could be a great character. Yeah, episodes uh, episodes four and four five. five. So really, if I was that. to go with those three formats, right? I can't say to what she's like playing other characters because this is the only character I've seen her play. Okay, like uh, mm -hmm. well, I've seen her play um, Joanna Mormont, I think, for like five seconds in Game of Thrones. So I don't think that counts for much. But you know, like the, the beginning of this episode where she says uh it's a weird fucking tone man that's just the way he sounds he has an asshole voice joe tell him he's okay she's doing stressed and assertive there i would say you could say disbelief and frustration when he he doesn't do what she says everything is great dude fuck and so she has to sell those like emotional states then you got um she's done like rage in episode one people from fedra you hear me let me out or you're gonna pay motherfuckers and when she killed the guy like shocked Stunned. When when uh, Kathleen was just eaten, like that was that was a shit ton of shock. The, the camera hung on uh, Ellie for a bit there. I think it's just she's watching someone getting eaten alive, of course. Playful and like childlike stuff she's done with Sam in this episode. Endure, survive. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> I don't see any weird movements. Steve? And then a lot of the playful stuff she's done with Joel. It'll still be stationary. When she was, like, tearing up behind the wall. <laughs> and when she's talking about, with Joel, about the life she's taken and stuff, you could call that, like, that's, like, trying to portray vulnerable and, like, haunted, shaken. What we talked about how she's uh, assertive and sticks up for herself with the whole. And you made a choice, so don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. Like I said, it's sort of like emotional maturity, but also being able to portray someone who isn't gonna allow herself to be sort of trampled over. Which I think a lot of people said was like a, a trait they were hoping to see. Ultimately, I'd say that that's a pretty big selection of range of different emotions. But then you've also got like the absolute shock and horror from. Um, that ending sequence. I think that was it for me. After seeing that final scene, she's 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 solid now. I actually like her as Ellie. Oh yeah, I think so. It's weird because you are right in the sense that we can all pretty much align on who the great actors are and who the terrible actors are. The big Very old gray Very accurately area. across the spectrum. Yeah. In the middle, it gets kind of gray, but I think the broad swath of actors, it's generally agreed upon which ones are good and bad. Even though there doesn't seem to be any sort of super hard criteria, you know, are, are they able to convince people most of the time? Are they able to emotionally move people most of the time? Are they able to make you forget it's an actor playing a role most of the time? Seems to sort of be what is, you know, the thing that unites us on that. The term acting is funny to me because when it's done right, it's not really an act in a way. Like the emotions are real. They usually, it's a, real a lot emotion, of actors yeah, will. Pulled from a less than it's making the real thing in an, in, a, in an artificial way in a sense yeah you'll have a lot of actors who uh, unearth something from their past like the saddest moment in their life and they'll bring that energy into it like i've been on film sets where i've observed i saw this one day i was i saw this actor he was stood in the corner of a hallway and he was like crying like he's, he's like really sobbing yeah i could see his shoulders kind of moving around i'm like is that guy okay and everyone's like dude just leave him alone he's he's amping himself up for the scene he needs to get into this headspace and it's like oh okay that's there that was his process i feel like that's some people aren't they don't quite need to do that where they have to go into the corner of a room and and just block themselves off from everybody some people are better at channeling that negative energy some some people can do it quite quickly um, everyone has their own process, but the emotions are real when the job is done right. I think that, that there would be one or maybe a selection of a couple of moments in that final sequence, but especially that last reaction she has to um, a lot of this show, they seem to be playing with a lot of like how humans react is complicated to a lot of things. But um, the fact that she goes to like scream, but it cuts off because it's like the gunshot plus the friend of yours committing suicide, but simultaneously it's all over. <laughs> And they did that with the uh, zombies too at the end when it was all rowdy and there was the lights and they were screaming and everything and they just cuts to them in the hotel and it's just dead quiet. I imagine to help with that scene, like you think usually like if the camera's not on you, 
then they wouldn't have to set up certain things like whatever the camera is not seeing. They probably had the guy who played Henry there falling down, even though he wasn't being filmed, just so the actress could better put him, per, her, herself in the situation where she's observing somebody kill themselves. It'd be a bit different if somebody with a script was standing there instead. It's like, okay, now cry, Ellie. Yeah. They probably actually had Henry falling down, pretending he's dead. Oh yeah, and she just he stares at the body because... We just went from what was a pretty good environment to everything falling apart entirely. Yep. Yeah, the night before, things were great. I mean, we I have this friend who's my age, close enough. We've got some traveling companions. We were able to, you know, none of us are hurt. Things are, like, legitimately really looking up. Like, this is probably the best thing that's happened in a long time, all things considered. I know, uh, uh, Pedro, Pascal, great in the episode. Same for, as we said, Henry, Sam, and uh, I think Kathleen was pretty good as well, the actress for her. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. Didn't get a lot of her, but I was convinced in her, her villain origin scene. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And we needed it, so thanks for that. <laughs> like, this room feels like the whole episode was just filled with stuff we needed. Just tell her the story. I'm pretty strong as a so to speak, half-season finale, I guess. I'm a fan, and I guess six, seven, eight, nine. we shall see. We are uh, past the halfway mark, yeah. That's so right, we are. the majority of the story, at least by slim margin. And yeah, so far, so good. In fact, just saying so far, so good might be a little unfair. It's been, like, the last few episodes have been pretty great. Yeah, I've been very, <laughs> very pleased to the point where before we start an episode, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to see what happens next. Well, I'm excited this to keep watching it already. at this point. Oh, yeah, looking forward to seeing it every week. Well, three was the favorite for me, then four. And now five, so and now it's probably five. Yeah, we I imagine a lot six, of great work in five. Six will calm back down. Probably we'll we'll. Have well, a... that'll be the uh, probably the Tommy episode. Yes. Yeah. Which uh, I guess but... the yeah I guess the question will be how much of uh, Tommy's story because they've got the the change here right where Tommy's got his own sort of uh, troubles and, and problems going on seemingly and I, I guess the question will be I wonder if we're going to see any of that uh that backstory that Tommy is not so fond of of his time with Joel during yeah. the uh, the intervening years because he did not he does not like that time I imagine episode six they'll bring back the teaser. Again, maybe, 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 yeah, maybe, maybe we'll like, see what... like the direct aftermath of uh, Sarah's death, like what Joel's looking like for those first few days, or the maybe we'll slot, ahead a bit more. The teaser slot really comes in handy with anything that it's, it's like such a large time jump that it would it would mm. be weird if they're all like connected together back to back without that buffer of the title sequence, like that flashback to Jakarta. It's good to have the teaser slot for a scene like that. But you don't always. Yeah, it's a good it. for a cold open. It's good for a uh, thing that is markedly different from you know what the main story is or a different time, like you said. Yeah, so I can see them bringing back the teaser for a flashback with Joel and Tommy, and then title sequence back to the present. Well, and I guess the question is as well is are we going to see Tommy's time with the Fireflies? We got that. We're going to have Ellie and Riley, presumably. We've got. Uh, uh, that's got to be coming eventually, and then of course you've got the David stuff. There's a um, lot left uh, for them. There's to a do, lot so. left, and I feel like they've uh, they've sown a lot of seeds. They've done a lot of good work so far. Now they got to bring it home. They got to they got to nail the landing, stick the landing. When um, it's crazy to me to think that we're going to be watching episode what like eight ish around when Mando starts <laughs> the and contrast. I swear to between... God, we're going to have like he's going to be like, I would like to buy some cheese. Some, spa some blue space cheese. I can bring you in one. Uh, I can bring you in Dude, cold. this is the way. It's going to be such a this stark is, contrast between. This is the thing, guys. We got to savor the good when it comes because we're going to. The sludge begins eventually. You know, the sludge is. It's starting up real soon. Ant Man. And then. Man back doing into Ant Man. Star Wars. The sludge, the sludge shower. Mandalorian. Return. Yeah. Well, it's because. Yeah, because the beginning of the year has been pretty solid by way of media from video games and you know uh, television and films it's been it's been really good and i guess it's more broadly it's like i don't know guys maybe give the show a little bit of credit <laughs> it's very clear there's a lot of trust issues with naughty dog and neil Druckmann projects that's why this is happening yeah I understand, sure. but um we're and, here to judge it for what it is time. not for who made it yeah um, it's what we always do and so far so good as as free said is an understatement so yeah so far so great in the game sam doesn't show ellie his wound and it, like you're saying, Fringy, it's a surprise when she wakes up. In this version, he shows her 
and she would she be so sure about her blood being the cure there on the wound that she would be comfortable sleeping in that room she wasn't like, comfortable sleeping in that room she promised to stay awake with him and she fell asleep that's right she was in the chair wasn't she yeah, yeah like, you look at the way she up. was sitting she didn't intend to fall asleep but that's just what happens right you close your eyes briefly and then you're asleep but uh it's also yeah you just have to believe she was sort of naive enough to think that it's as simple as a blood transfer and she can cure a person or um, at the very least maybe right that she's gonna at least try something even though it's obviously probably not gonna work yeah if it I is think... naivete in that case like that's fine i was just curious about it well, like, what so... exactly what was going through ellie's head what she were was... the writers thinking there we can all agree that she would try it i think it would be in character for her to try it and then she was going to keep an eye on him and if things got worse do something but obviously uh, and and you know i think the reason why he didn't try to it attack her earlier is the is, is the idea that he's actually deaf so he's just sitting there with no necessary interaction oh or well well because in the game it was uh he was standing by the window um but that was because ellie wasn't in the room with him but yeah i think it's just she didn't mean to fall asleep yeah of course right. yeah and then yeah i can see that yeah great episode i mean fuck i was riveted man like oh, i'm more. uh give me and we, we didn't pleased. see infected for a while, but now they came back with a force. And when they were all they're all running out of the ground like that, it's like, oh shit. Oh, I figure people will like this episode for that. The yeah. army of zombies right. versus the soldiers. Yeah. Bloater. Bloater we got a nice bloater kill. Poor whatever his name is, getting his head torn right. off. That was cool. Yeah, which is, you know, it, it always sounds weird, but that's neat that they gave him that role. He got to do a couple things. Oh, yeah, is, yeah, Tommy's VA. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson are meant to be in it too, and we haven't seen them yet. So we've still got more. Oh, and I think, uh, I'm not sure if Nolan North has a role as well. Why wouldn't they bring people back? Why'd they just... <laughs> well, you have to, this is the thing, guys. You kind of have to assume this probably Neil's doing. Probably. I'm just like, hey, well, they were, you know, they were part of the game. So can we give them something? In any case, think... that's episode five. <laughs> yep. yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Doodle yeah. Pip. Cheerio. Goodbye. Bye, boy. Bye. Bye. Run. What'd you bring me? Welcome to EFAP TV, The Last of Us. Season one, episode six. It is. How, six, how are you? Isn't it? How are you all feeling about that? After oh, the, this one, we will be two thirds through. Two thirds of the way through. Yeah, close mm. to the end and the beginning. Six episodes. Funnily enough, we know what payoffs we're heading for. Except yes. Rax only knows about mainly one of them right at the end. But there's a couple yeah. in between that you'll find interesting. But yeah, we just Maybe. got done with that fifth episode. Oh boy. <laughs> What a ride. Wow, episode five. Wasn't that a TV episode it show? It was. Oh my goodness. And That's one of the episodes of all time. Without further ado, let's get right into Comment Showcase, shall we? <laughs> so, okay. Here we go. Kathleen, kids die all the time. That one infected little girl. And I took that personally. <laughs> Surprising we didn't point that out. A lot of people felt that way. They're like, how did you not make that connection? It's like, oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I suppose that is a connection. Books about, you know, kids die all the time, whatever the fuck, and then a kid killed her. Possibly because she was listening and was offended. <laughs> children are dangerous. Children Destroy are dangerous. Children. That's the point of the, the episode, right? Every murderer was once a child. Destroy all children. I keep wondering if I should read these in an annoying nasally voice to like straw man the, the person <laughs> writing the comic. Well, do Chad, Endure do and Chad, survive. Do Chad voice. Do Chad voice. Endure and survive is how <laughs> I watch this TV series because I want season one to be a faithful adaptation and season two to be the opposite. I'm sick right now, and that kind of helped with my chat. Voice. It did kind of help. Again, it made it a little bit bassier, or <laughs> a little bit more texture, I think. This yeah. is an interesting observation, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Very. I think that this is going to be something that uh, EFAP ends up referencing till the end of time in the adaptation argument, because a lot of people do not want season two to be accurate to the source. Now, if being accurate to the source is good, 
That means yep. you've got to fix your system mm, up a little bit. That's right. We, on the other hand, as I've said several times, Probably I like fine. comparing, but because uh, this show is different to the game, it is. It's different enough mm. to be warranted as saying different, even though in a lot there's a lot of similar beats. Yeah. It is similar, and it is different. And it's fun to talk about whether or not that change seems better or worse, or fit better or fit worse with what they currently have or what they might have in future. Well, oh, Mahler, it, that's an easy discussion. I'll tell you what it is, all right? It wasn't like the game, so oh. it's bad. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> see, we, we took care of that. Real nice and easy. That wasn't hard at all. Well, you know, I think Very someone smart. else will they will be saying the opposite if they actually went against season two <sighs> in or rather game two in season two. But Imagine Mahler, there was no bigot sandwich. What if they get rid of the bigot sandwich, everybody? Would you be happy about that or sad? I no. would be very sad because I would want to see how this bigot sandwich compares to Tonald's bigot sandwich. I think that's fair. Not only did Joel turn over in his sleep, he also didn't get any sleep the prior night and also climbed a whole bunch of stairs. I bet he'd be out like a rock. I did forget to mention that when uh, responding to the comments last time. He'd also been awake for two nights. But when you were yeah. awake for longer, it makes you more tired, uh, I think. That's a science thing. I, I can mm -hmm. confirm that. We checked. More awake, more Bio tired. Good Biology stuff. facts. You'll die of sleep deprivation before you starve to death. I'm a bit disappointed the crew didn't talk about how Ellie fell asleep when Sam asked her to stay awake and has to live with that guilt that she left Sam alone, as implied by the I'm sorry at the end. We actually didn't really talk about the I'm sorry at all, and there's a couple of things to say about it that I kind of regret that we didn't, but you know what? That's just a reality. A lot of things happen really quickly, and comments like this can help us open up a conversation that maybe we didn't have, but most of it, I would say, is, you know, Sorry she couldn't save him. Sorry it didn't work out. Sorry that uh, he, he died alone almost. Sorry uh, that in a way that their meeting kind of caused his death in a way. Certainly that it led That's there and I think she would see it that way at least somewhat. Sorry it all ended up this way, yeah. Um, Lighten with subtext. That sorry is seen by Joel, and he stares at it quite a bit, and you wonder if maybe it's the there's a, there's a bit of an implication there of you know sorry all the efforts she made to bind them together and the 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 attempts to open Joel up. What did it lead to? Like pretty intense heartache. That was, uh, that was rough, what happened at the end with those two. Something I can't remember if we did talk about it, but I certainly would have liked us to. That Ellie sees this as a failed attempt to save someone from a horrible fate, and thus it will likely egg her on to the position of wanting to save people. Meanwhile, yeah. it'll do the opposite for Joel. He'll see this as like... Uh, that was Proof that you it's it's not worthwhile to do this because everything is doomed anyway. It all falls apart. All the effort we put in disappointment. We nearly died like several times, you know, and, and for what to have some friends to have some fun moments. It's like, is that really worth it? You might even say at that point that Ellie would be further to the degree of chipping away at herself to help other people while Joe would be like, never sacrifice anything about ourselves for other people. We're the most important family first, that sort of angle. So if that's what they're building toward, that is a good step toward it. And that is all, I think, nailed with just the I'm sorry on that little pad. So um, yeah, it's, claps it's the a good, show. Good job. Good point of discussion. But uh, sometimes things slip through the cracks in the flow of We do. We try. <laughs> we try. Yeah. Like I said, hey, the but comments can pick us up sometimes, so thank you for that. That's, right, that's why yeah. comment showcases here. The only major critique I have of this episode is Joel not checking everyone for bites as soon as they made it safely to the hotel at the end. Everything I've been shown so far tells me that he wouldn't risk skipping that, especially after seeing everyone grapple with zombies. I'm not going to say that like the person who wrote this is necessarily not applying that to the game, but I imagine it would also apply to the game, right? Um, yeah, and so if we skip that conversation, that it's it's uh, he Which, does the same yeah, mistakes in the game, that. then it relies strictly on what we've seen in this show. We've, I don't think, ever seen him check anyone for bites. Not even Tess, after they had separate encounters. I think that you could mm -hmm. argue he trusted her, he trusts Ellie, and that he would trust even Henry and Sam. Well, that everybody understands what happens... And you could think that they would be willing to disclose that. Yeah, like it might it might have been something he doesn't think about necessarily. The thing about it is, if he had said, like when they get to the hotel, they all sit down and then he pulls his gun up and they're like, whoa, what the fuck? And he says, show me your arms and legs right now. I don't think that would be out of character, but I'd be surprised. No, I'd be like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could, yeah, all right. Yeah. And I suppose you could say part of it <laughs> is that if he's going to make them show as to whether or not they've been bitten, then they're going to expect that of Ellie, right? And then she'll yeah, be like, oh, I, I have. Have been bitten, true. and then they'll be like, "What the fuck?" And uh, that could cause some issues as well with uh, uh, him trying to keep it quiet. So that's um, I think I could believe both, but I can understand uh, it, this being brought up. 
especially with how careful yeah. Paul is. Yeah, yeah. Not an unreasonable to uh, think that. I find it fitting that they give OG Tommy's voice actor the bloater's signature kill. Yeah, I thought it was kind of neat. <laughs> I think we said at the time, it's like, it's a really weird thing to say, but yay, <laughs> that he was in it for that long and he got his head ripped off. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> first time I think you've actually gotten to see it properly because every other time it cuts off before it rips Joel or like Ellie's head off. Before so... it gets too graphic, yeah. You see a little yeah, snippet of yeah, like, exactly. oh my God, Where that's horrible. In this case, they still show up, but it's kind of in the background a bit blurred out as well. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It, yeah, that's, it is kind of funny though. It's like, oh, yay, the bloater ripping someone's head off. Woo. I <laughs> like everybody wanted to see that. <laughs> the backstory for Henry really made his scene with Sam and how they ended up hit hard. Henry was a rat for a terribly heinous group and got what's her face brothers killed and basically ushered in a ton of extra suffering for people around him to save his brother. And seeing him process that and then make the last decision is just fucking heavy. Good stuff. So, yes, that that's basically would be my praise for, for This that, is the change, is that... right? Like, he's not... Yeah. That's not what, how it goes in the game. Uh, they came in with a group of people, and they all got killed, except for Henry and Sam, who escaped. And then Joel and Ellie bump into them. They survive together. Henry's a bit different. He's like a hardened survivor. He's kind of like Joel. And uh, Sam, I guess, kind of like... Ellie, they're, they're very much reflections. While in this, it was a little bit different, and they're playing on different aspects of the character journeys that they're going to be going through, right? Like, the fact that Henry made a choice to have other people suffer in favor of his brother, and then he described it as, I'm a bad guy because I did a bad guy thing. Like, who do you think we're talking about? What do you think this episode's all about? And someone else right. is going to be dealing with this yeah. soon enough, and has dealt with it in the past in his life. But um, to have everyone who suffered along the way as a result of his choice to d defend his brother, and then he shoots his own brother in the head, the actor has to have all of that on his face right before he just fucking kills himself because he can't deal with it. It is an incredibly rough scene. An extra, an extra layer added on top of something that is already like obviously tragic. Yeah. But to add that extra element of, of the other things that are going to be weighing on Henry as well, that is a... I basically agree. Like, the backstory makes it a heavier, uh, heavier scene than it already was. I think so too. It's a, a very sensitively written scene in the game yeah. at, as well as this. At, like, there's so much going on in that one instance in that one character's head. I mean, also the mocap actor, but the guy in the show. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very hard thing to do. They did it quite well. Uh, you completely ignored the bit in the game where Joel says, and just so we're clear about back there, it was either him or me. That's his acknowledgement and thanks to Ellie that she was right. Ellie even says, you're welcome in response. So the edit uh, was to prove the point, which was the initial reaction, and then I showed the rifle part to prove that uh, uh, against the comment that was provided, he doesn't trust her with guns still, and that's why he's angry. I, I showed that point to be like, no, he does now. That, that, that's, that's definitely come through. And so then we talked about how it's uh, a subtextual sort of thing to grab from the scene where he's angry at her, that he is happy that she saved his life. So... I don't know why you've brought this up, is basically my conclusion. It's like, we already said that's what's happening in that scene. We just said that it's uh, way more overt because it happens straight away in the show. The part that's missing in the game, as far as I'm concerned at this point, is the, um, didn't want you to have to do that. Because um, I did show the clip as well of when he says, uh, trust her with the guns from now on. I don't think you would draw from that that he doesn't think that what she did was the right thing. Funnily enough, I was going to put it in, but I couldn't find an example. But I saw plenty of people saying which is the opposite criticism of this, that, what, you're criticizing it for being too subtle now? It's like, uh... <laughs> I think there's a fine line between having characters say the thing versus not say the thing, and which is better when one could be implied and one could not, but I don't think you can even draw out of the scene necessarily that he feels bad that she had to kill someone. This line, just so we're clear, it was either him or me, to me, is him saying you made the right choice, which I already said you can get from the fact that he starts having her have guns straight away after that scenario. The part that's missing is the, uh the guilt of a, a literal little girl having to end a life because Joel wasn't fast enough or quick enough or good enough against the enemy, which I think is a really cool angle to take. Yeah, I agree. The, the acknowledgement really is the gun being handed over. Yeah, I think, if anything, you don't need him to say, just so we're clear, it was either him or me. We, we already have that. Trust me, I, I'm pretty familiar with the game. I'm not trying to lie about it. <laughs> like, or ignore it. Right. I still, I don't know about uh, John and, and Free, but I still think the game is better right now out of the two. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm not sure yet. I'm a fan of the show, but uh, the game is better, I think. Yeah, I, I think the game is better, but um, it'll depend definitely on how it ends to answer the question. I think yeah. that's my problem right now is it's, it's not complete yet. It was very considerate of the child clicker to ignore the rules of clickers in order to kill Kathleen. Right up there with the Hey You Raptor from Jurassic uh, Park Lost World. <laughs> every 
Street Ninja Zombie from the Resident Evil films. Um, I assume they mean that Kathleen was silent and staying still, and uh, the clicker jumped on her despite not having any vision. As someone who's edited this episode several times, as I do with all of them, before that happens, the zombie... Is, is obviously chasing, I assumed anyway, Ellie, because it's the one from the car. So it got up to where Ellie was, and then I think you hear Kathleen say stop or hey. Stop! Right after yeah. that, the clicker That's is enough. crawling toward her. You see it in the background just before Ellie points it out, and then just before it gets her, you can see it. As far as I'm concerned, the clickers have a lot of stimulus in terms of noise. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll be drawn to any particular one. They all just go for one. Uh, it might work this way in the game, right? Say you're staying still, and you're three meters away from an infected, and then you, like, stamp on the floor. It'll look over at you, walk over to you, and if it gets within range, it'll just attack you. As, as though this is the last area I heard the noise from, I will go for this area. I think that happens in episode two, that they jump on Joel that's when the, he... That's just the way that the clickers that work, is, is that they'll just be standing around, and then sound, it's like, oh, sound, I'm gonna go to the sound. And then, of course, if you're, like, running around, then... That would just follow where that running is coming from. Kathleen made noise. Uh, if you want to argue she's not making as much noise as, I guess, the gunfire in the background or whatever. It's like, at that point, I think clickers can react to whatever noise is, is their preference. I don't know that it... Say they had, like, noise at 10, 20, and 30. I don't know that they always go for 30. Yeah, do they have to go for the loudest noise? Or do they just stick with the one they had first? Or the one that seems to be closest to them? Perhaps it was only partially turned, and some parts of the eyes were not covered in mushroom tissue yet? No, I'm pretty sure it was fully a clicker. Uh, I think so. Yeah, same like it. So hold on, uh, when this guy says rules of the clickers, he's talking about the blindness thing. Yeah, he's and saying the implication sound, is that sound. Kathleen shouldn't okay. have been attacked because she wasn't making any noise, but like I said, she does shout. Yeah, I, I don't see the issue there, really. Neither do I. So the next up is, uh, maybe the writers just needed it to kill a character who was standing still amid a whole crowd of people making more noise. She did make a noise, and I don't think that they've said the rules are as long as there's a louder noise, that means that the clicker will go for that. It'll never go for any random noise. It'll always be the loudest noise. In fact, that seems like it'd be really weird because at that point, wouldn't they all go to the same place? Uh, yeah, why? If, if there's a noise in front of you that you're pursuing, it's really close, but you just hear a loud noise elsewhere. Why would you give up what you're doing to go get the really, well, it's, really it's, loud it's, noise? It's almost like um, there needs to be like a recognition that the infected in The Last of Us, there's like some semblance of um, behavior. There's like an objective that the uh, that any individual infected has, which is essentially to create more infected. I think um, it's safe to say the you could have your fictional species thing they only ever chase the loudest noise but that's not what we're dealing with in this they don't just chase the loudest noise that's not what we've seen it's especially complicated when they've added in the element of of almost like a hive mind kind of working that too yeah that it, that it can pursue different objectives in a sense not only is it about loud noises here but like She's sp speaking English to somebody. Like, I don't think anyone else in that scene, in that instance, is, like, speaking in sentences. Not that to say that, like, the clickers can understand English or whatever, but they're probably honing in on sounds that don't sound like other clickers just going raw. Yeah, so they, yeah, no, that's like, a great point. If if they were distracted only by sound, then surely they'd start hitting each other. Right. It doesn't really affect the outcome, though. So at worst, it's an oversight. Any other infective could have killed her here. I think yeah. you could argue that, but we don't need to. It's terrifying how not only is EFAP becoming what they hate, but there are so many fucking comments here sounding creepily like TLJ shills. What the fuck is going on? And that's got 10 likes. Which is a little bit disappointing, but here we are. What the um, fuck yeah. is going on? Instead <laughs> of saying TLJ shills, you could have just said you disagree. That, that, that could have been your no, rationale. No, that's the only explanation of <laughs> TLJ shills. All I would say in response easily is, like, you're just the opposite. If yeah, you're like, call us I don't biased, know what I meant to do with a comment like that. It's like, I disagree. I think that we're trying to apply the standards that we've always applied and developed yep. over, you know, many discussions about media. Just trying to apply it here. You just disagree with the conclusion, which is fine. But like, yeah, I always find it really weird when it's like, ah, uh, losing their way. I'm just trying to like talk about the show. Like that's, well, no, I, I, I think it, I just think it's good. And this language, by the way, that they are creepily like TLJ shills, which is terrifying. Are you okay, my dude? It's terrifying what? to you that we've been talking like, about the show this way? By that. TLJ shills, they just been person advocating for thing I don't like. That's all. Which you're allowed um, to do. I mean, it's... Uh, 
ultimately, it's about like the arguments, right? Like, it it's should not be the conclusion, hopefully. But yeah, you're right. We, we've had plenty of controversial, hated, and loved things over uh, the past at five this years. Point, yeah, feels we've, weird we've that TLJ is the only reference you got. <laughs> like, you should probably well, update. Yeah, I mean, like, you guys said. disagreed with us on Bly Manor, a fair number of you. You guys disagreed uh, with us on Mando season two. We are not forgetting that one. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> Mando <laughs> season one. Yeah, that was so yep. shit. No, Mando shit, it always was. Was it now? <laughs> As obviously a bit of a, an outsider to the, the community and everything, like maybe I'm missing something here, but I, I don't know why he's throwing The Last Jedi in there. When, uh, when The Last Jedi was coming out, it was like a very fractured, I guess you could say, discussion where there was like basically a shit ton of praise and a shit ton of like criticism. It, it wasn't like a film where there were a lot of people who were like in the middle, like it was just fine. It was a very polarizing film. And... Right conversations that people were having in defense of that film were often very frustrating because the arguments were confusing and weird and seemingly inconsistent a lot of the time and bizarre. I guess that's what's being applied here, that the arguments that were putting forth for why we yeah, think the um, show is solid I will uh, say it, like hyper illogical. Some of it's disappointing because uh, we can clear it up I just never thought we'd have to, right? So take, for example, uh, okay, and uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you're familiar enough with the film, John, you'll remember, but the opening of TLJ, the, the First Order have arrived, the heroes are escaping, they're all onto the Radis, their enormous uh, capital ship, and they're about to escape. The ship attacking them is, I think it's the Juggernaut class for, for the First Order, and they have this cannon on there that can just fucking annihilate any one target it goes after, even like the shields won't be able to stop it. And so Hux targets the planet base when the ship is about to escape right in front of them. If they blow of the ship they can then and it by the way recharging takes i think like 20 seconds maybe a minute i can't remember how long but you hit the ship right you destroy that and then you recharge and then you hit the base on the planet that seems to be the most reasonable thing to do to annihilate your enemy and hux chooses right. the opposite he goes to the base and he kills nothing and then but by the time they recharge poe destroys the ship and so they can't and obviously the criticism is wow if he had gone for the ship it would have been over that would be the end of the movie right um, pretty simple. A lot of people who liked TLJ were like, fuck that, he's arrogant, of course he made the mistake. And that doesn't uh, really make right, sense. Yeah. It's like, his arrogance made him shoot the planet? It's like, it's like a non sequitur, it just doesn't explain the behavior. If, if he was arrogant, no. surely you would just go for the ship. It's like, we can get him. Because arrogance almost implies like, you think you, you were able to do something when you can't actually. And so if the argument is like, he thought he could take him out both out, so he went for the base first. It's like, yeah, but why wouldn't you go for the ship first? You still haven't explained that. And there's nothing. He, that gets into some tricky territory of like, I've thought about this a lot, like this idea of like writing characters like dumb deliberately mm -hmm. because like you've set up an, like an irrationality in them as opposed to like just dumb writing where you're not putting enough thought. Well, so uh, this is the counter example, right? They see that and they're like, yep, accepted. Good argument. EFAP on board, 100%. Kathleen then shoots the doctor because she links him to the people who sold out her folks who got hanged and beaten and tortured. And so she kills him. And they're like, oh, so she's allowed to make a stupid decision for emotional reasons, but Hux isn't. And it's like, right. well, no, but that has a through line. Like, she hates him because of the decisions he's made. And so she kills him despite the value he may hold as a doctor. Like, that right. actually that's has so a connection. True, as opposed to, like, Hux is arrogant, therefore he shoots a target that there's nobody there, instead of the target where the people actually are. Yeah, because if he did shoot at the Radis, and uh, let's say he shot too early, like, and the guns weren't fully charged, and so they only breach the shields, they don't actually destroy the ship, I'd be like, ah, oh, okay. And you go, yeah, he was arrogant. He kept, he was like, fire, fire now, fire! And they're like, it's not charged to it. He's like, fire anyway! Fuck! Like, we can't let him escape. <laughs> You'd be like, I could, I, I could believe that more. I could believe that more, yeah. Um, but they didn't do that, of course. And so, yeah, you get, I think that's the angle that people are going for. And it's just like, yeah, these aren't the same arguments. But I guess that's our job is to now clarify that. And um, I just hope you're not getting terrified by us praising the show. I wouldn't want that to happen. Yeah. Hey, you know, hope maybe he's make... actually quivering under the table right now. You don't know. <laughs> hope he's okay. Oh, don't worry. In the fetal position, week, uh... walking back and forth. Don't worry. We recently covered Ant Man and the Wasp and said that was pretty poopy. There you go. Back to normalcy. You'll be all right. <laughs> uh, yeah. What bothers me about Kathleen in this episode, this is still Chad, by the way, specifically <laughs> is that they give us a scene that humanizes her and grounds her realistically, parentheses, her brother is kinder than her and she knows it. But then it flips and it's revealed that she knew the whole time why Henry did it, yet she never has a moment to at least waver on the decision or consider. If she killed Henry anyway, she could have looked conflicted, but decides she has to kill him because she doesn't know how else to make the pain go away. But they only not do this. They not only do this, 
I don't know what. <laughs> they even make her doable down. Doable? <laughs> du- sorry, sorry, double down. And want to kill Sam too, just because he has ties to Henry and justifies it as, quote, kids die all the time, yet she leaves her entire town vulnerable to kill for one person. So this is a weird comment. I'm not entirely sure, yeah, but I wanted to make sure it was little. covered. The first thing I thought was interesting is she never has a moment to at least waver on the decision or consider it. That's exactly what she does when she pulls the gun on him. She waves. She, she's yeah, not she does actually away. a bit, and also and, she can cons- she's considered it for a long time. It yeah. Seems like he's done a lot of considering about it. And I guess he was saying like, if only she had killed him, then she could have looked conflicted. And it's like, well, she looked conflicted anyway. She was conflicted, but she was going to commit to it because she sees it as a um, a domino effect. You killed my brother, I kill you and your brother. That's how it works. I'm not sure what the end is there. It says um, because he has ties to him, justifies his kids die all the time, yet leaves her entire town vulnerable to kill for one person. I'm not. Sure. Yeah, like I don't see why those two would be linked together. She definitely did not want that to happen. That is a result th- of her mistakes. I think when she says that about like knowing why Henry did it, like it's Henry is hidden behind the car at that point, and she's just trying to get him out. So well, like, and she, she'll she's also be quicker to gun down. She's also partially making a point that I think is somewhat fair. It's like adults and kids die. Everyone dies. Like, why does that mean that you get to kill my brother? That too. Yeah. For sure. In isolation, kids die all the time, therefore it's okay for kids to die is not a good argument, but it's not quite what she's saying. The entire point is that she knows it's irrational, and there's no point, but revenge is her number one priority. It's like, yeah, she is very irrational, um, and she seems to have a pretty strong awareness of it, but has decided that she's committing to it, sort of thing. It's not the plausibility and rationality. I know why she's doing it. It just makes the scene trying to humanize her pointless, and was a wasted potential character beat that could have been added to that bedroom scene. Plausibility and rationality, it's like, those you got from that scene. That's what that scene yep. did. It told us exactly why everything works the way that it does. It told us why she's in charge, told us who she was to her brother, told her who her brother was to her, told her why she's going to do this, and it gave us an awareness that she knows the options, she's aware that she could spare him, but she won't. Yeah, I don't know, I really don't know what the confusion is, it's very clear. I'm not sure either. Yeah, Obviously, I included I that one because I was like, I find this really interesting, I feel like it did all of the things it was supposed to do. Which takes us... All right. To the episode itself. Y'all excited? Yeah. You know, I miss all Modoc avatars. Whoa! Bum, 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 bum. I'm sorry, I associated directly. So many years of watching Game of Thrones. <sighs> no teaser for this one. No, yeah, we, th- we thought maybe no, they'd bring I think, back. I think huh? they've, uh, they've stopped doing those. Yes, they did. That's done a so. shame. Though, if we were to guess. The structure, the Riley episode, that's gonna have to be. Do you think next time or the time after that? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of because uh, we've got probably you could argue probably four or five episodes worth of game left, and they're gonna have to crush it a little bit. Yeah. So um, I think they've been making good time. It's surprising when you go through like the game footage, so to speak, how much of the sequences are like defending yourself against random encounters, which this game doesn't, uh, this show doesn't really have to do. A lot of the time, the action right. scenes of this are very specifically happening to prove some kind of point. Yeah. Or develop a very like wider plot. Thing. Here we go. <laughs> Three months three later. Months later. Yeah. All right, that's a three-month jump. Durr. I don't think that's how it's pronounced. I think oh, it is. My bits. Yeah. Is this Joel? Wait, they don't. This probably isn't. Joel. It might be. I don't know. I don't think mm-hmm. they're going to be stopping in a cabin at any point, are they? Unless they just came across one. I don't know. I guess fell we'll down see. here for a bit. Oh, crossbow. Yeah, it's probably not Joel. If that was a crossbow. Who this? To- Tommy, maybe. Oh, new guy. Oh no. Secret. Asian man. That's kind of neat. And the gun. That Who the hell are you? Just someone passing through. Take the gun out, two fingers only, put it out of reach. Why did you shoot him? The gun's all the way over there. He didn't hurt me, by the way. Yeah, I got eyes. <laughs> okay. You made him soup? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's cold out. It's cold. Oh, well, I ain't seen him. I haven't told you what he looks like. He look anything like you? A bit. Then I ain't seen him. He's got a girl with him. Can I come down? No. There's like a thousand. Who's this little psycho? Never mind her. You got a map. Why are you lost? You must have missed all the street signs in the enormous fucking because forest. Because you have to actually Ooh, know. Me. Yeah. 
It's the thing that games forget. We're Just because you have a map, here. you have to know where you exactly are on where. the map. And your answer better be the same as your wife's. Ooh. Do you tell him mm. the truth? Wonder if yeah. you'll use that later. Do you tell him the truth? Yeah. Are you telling me the truth? Yeah. I like these two. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're charming, aren't they? They feel like they've probably been married their whole lives or whatever. Not bad to have some levity here after the last scene. Yeah. Well, you came here before you were born, Sonny. Get the hell away from everybody. I didn't want to. Yeah. You've come this far, then you know what's out there. So you haven't heard the name Tommy? Nope. What about the fireflies? We get those in the summer. Not the bugs, the people. There are firefly people. <laughs> there are firefly people. <laughs> oh God, what has this infection done? <laughs> Best way west. Yeah, go east. Here. That's true. It is a globe, so mm. uh, it is a long it's way though. The Why they call it Death bodies. River? If your brother's west of the river, he's gone. You're not gonna scare us. Scared him. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just wants his bro back. Never heard of the fireflies. Joel, are you okay? Joel? Shut up. Holy shit, are you dying? Okay. Okay, okay. okay. I'm fine. No, no, but are you? Because just a reminder that you're dead, I'm fucked. Shut up, fine. Okay. <laughs> just a uh, cold air. Oh, that little expression. You can try and make a joke out of it, but seriously, if he dies, like, this, she's got nothing. She got a rabbit. It's gonna be easy. To do is cross the river of death. Whoever plays the rabbit is doing really good. It's very convincingly dead, yeah. Totally bought into the character. The whole, like, the head bobbing back and forth thing is just like, I don't know if that's a CG or if they actually acted, actually did it because it's painful. Incredible. Start. It's too close to dark. Caves along the river. We'll set up camp there, cross in the morning. Good. I'm starving. Should have stolen two rabbits. We can get our own rabbits. Are you going to teach me how? Look at these landscapes. These vistas. Yeah, it's real nice. America. Oh, what's he doing here? Oh, I should repair back yeah. together a bit. At this time of year, in this part of the country. Yeah, I was about to this say. This specific <laughs> show. Do I have auroras in, in Wyoming? I, I don't actually know. I don't know if it's north enough. Maybe it is. I'm just not sure. Localized entirely within your cave. Uh, yes. May I see it? <laughs> no. no. You're by fire. You're plenty warm. You should spit it through the fire and light her on fire. And then it explodes. Kills all of the everything. Ew, you're not even gonna wipe it? Ew, that's how you get cooties. Yep. It's so gross. Stupid child. Would appreciate alcohol. So I've been thinking. No, because it does taste nasty. Let's say mm -hmm. we find the fireflies, it all works, then what? Like, what do we do? Well, it's we. Okay, fine, whatever, you. You can do anything you want. Wonder what this episode's gonna be about. Where are you going? What are you doing? Maybe an old farmhouse, some land. Come back to see these guys. Cool. Sheep. <gasps> He's Welsh. I would raise sheep. They're quiet. Do what they're told. Yeah, yeah, okay. I like <laughs> yeah. the idea that he's been thinking about that though. Yeah. Or else to look what up. I read everything I could in the school library. Like Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Jim Lovell. But you know who my favorite is? Oh man. Sally Ride. Sally fucking Ride. Setting up her uh, interest in ever. Space for Real, really, which comes up in Last of Us 2. Yeah. This is a good seed for that scene. That scene is a scene everyone really likes in that game. It yeah. Work, the vaccine. I tried with Sam. I knew he was infected. I rubbed some of my blood into his bite. I know, I know it was stupid, but I wanted to save him. I like how he like, almost well, said it's something. It's more complicated than that. Yeah. If she says they can do it, they can do it. Yeah, because you know, it's, it's a tough thing to handle. It's like, what do you tell her when Let's she tells you that? Do both. She's probably like, what the fuck? You're it's mixing sweet. blood? It's like, oh, but she's a kid. She doesn't really... And she just said it's stupid. Moon. It's like, eh. yeah. Sheep ranches on the moon. Especially... Oh, well. Told me how she tried to save it. It was just dead deaths on her mind. So it's the last moment, really, to do some... Uh... Hey, idiot, that's not how science works. <laughs> on the moon. I woke up early. You were passed out, so I took second watch. You gotta wake me up if that happens. You can't do things like this. But I can, because I just did. Check my six, I looked for tracks, I found the high ground, and I kept watch. Like you taught me to. All of this so far, by the way, not in the game. No, wake this is all new. And it's pretty good. I like a lot of it. All of it is chipping away at the big old wall between them. Yeah. A bridge. Wow, it's like they went to a place where it had snowed. 
and everything. No, this is CG, I think. I guess they are getting pretty good at it. You can see how the snow... Yeah, some of the scenes, the snow doesn't quite track onto the trees where they're trying to... Yeah. A little wibbly-wobbly, yeah. Yeah. Snowing uh, earlier on in the show than it was in the game, right? Tommy's stuff was in autumn, and then yeah. winter yeah. was... Uh, well, I guess I don't want to say because Rags doesn't know. And we're getting so, so yeah, close to it uh, now, we'll probably not say anymore. Well, it seems like they've condensed condensed that together. They've yeah. made it all occur around about the same time. I'm learning how to whistle. You don't know how to whistle? Shh. Does it sound like I know how to whistle? No. Shh. Seriously, though, how the fuck do you do that? Talent. Whatever. You True. should teach me how to hunt. Oh, can handle the shooting. Not so sure about the dressing. What's the dressing? The part where you take the guts out. Oh, yeah. Is Ellie the kind of person that would be grossed out by guts? I can't remember. Damn. I guess not, right? Mm, Probably why not. Yeah, yeah, but who Is it the dam? Yeah. So that made electricity? Don't ask me. I don't have a clue. <laughs> Just admit it this time. I would have believed you. Hydroelectrical. <laughs> it moves stuff with the water, turns motors or whatever, and makes electrics. Motors, like Modoc. Yeah. Machine only trying. What if this is the river of death? Um... Or... Ralph. Way too many rivers of death. Yeah, why can't there be rivers of life? Or just just very apathetic rivers? Water is the life giver, they do say. Do you know there's water in all kinds of things, like Ribena? You guys have Ribena in America? I don't know. I don't know what that we is. We got it in Australia. This is, uh, this is bad. Maybe. We ain't looking for any trouble, we're just passing through. Drop the gun. Must be Tommy's gang. Gang of Mishfish. This is the horse gang. You could tell by the horses. <laughs> what well, we call ourselves. Back. I thought we just talked this through. How about you shut the fuck up? Okay, easy. A lot less plot armor in the show okay. compared to the game, Joel. You can't just kill everybody, okay? You've been near infected? There's no infected out here. The hell there ain't. Last chance for a bullet. Oh. If you're infected, he will smell it and he will rip you up. Oh, great. So dogs are immune? I... I guess so, yeah. I guess, yeah, dogs are immune. Be chill, doggo. Man's best friend. Wow, I love the, the way it checked there. It was like an actual... Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Let me have a look at chat. <laughs> like I said, just move on. Now her. <laughs> oh, he... He don't smell that immune blood. The dog's like, yeah, she's infected, but she's immune. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, and then dog. they're like, oh my god, a talking dog. <laughs> what are you doing out here? Just looking for my brother. It's all Love the look more. on Joel's face there. He's just like, oh, fuck. Well, that whole thing was... Gonna... It's great, because yeah. he's just trapped. He can't do anything. Yeah. Joel. Well, she probably knows Tommy. Tomothy. Thomas Edison. Edison. Ooh, he invented inv the Lelkin belt. <laughs> English is overrated. <laughs> They have the red handkerchief of peace. Let them pass. <laughs> it's been passed down from generation to generation. So those will arrive and be like, I lost the red handkerchief. It's like, then you can't get in. <laughs> the please. red handkerchief has remained silent to your pleas. I told you we should have come up with a secret knock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackson. I love wood. So yeah, this is wood. a well, little different it's from the quite game. Bustling. It's looking very bustling, isn't it? Yeah, I can believe it. It's been so, 20 years. Plus now. Just well, for FYI, in the game, it's the they're at the dam, which is trying to be repaired so that they can power their local town. We do see this place from a distance at this point in the game, but we don't. Yeah, go that's there. right. Okay. You know what this means? This could be the return of bigot sandwiches. It could. This, oh. this is this is where the Last of Us Two starts. Tommy! He's my goddamn brother, Tommy. Holy shit! <laughs> How you doing, baby brother? <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Let me look at you. <sighs> what the fuck you doing here? I came here to save you. You get that brotherly hug in there, boys. I love that disbelief. Like, are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> We thought he was dead. He was pretty sure of it. Aww. 
I seriously, I've heard people say that uh, Pedro Pascal is like a plank of wood in this. I just don't get it. You're wrong. But... <laughs> You're wrong. How can... You can't say that after that. I mean, you've already had plenty of stuff up until this point, but after that, no, no way. Yeah, that's unfair. Actually, Adam, this is fucking amazing. Manners, woman. Sorry. Ellie, let's mind our manners. Yeah. Water, pumpkin pie. What? Oh my god, is that Dita? Oh shit, really? That's probably Dita. <laughs> oh dear. Mm, that's a big setup. That's a loss of his two oh, characters. Two arms. Well, you got a couple of 90 year olds shitting themselves out there. They say that you leave dead bodies around? Those are the people who tried us. A bad reputation doesn't mean you're bad. Not always, at least. Holy fuck. That subtext was pretty thick. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your hospitality and all. That was super text. Would it be nice to have a moment here, maybe just for family? Would you mind if you fuck ah, off? Ah, <laughs> he doesn't realize. Because that's Maria. Maria. Is yeah. Family, actually. This is Maria. Be nice to her. She sort of runs things around here. Ma'am. Thanks for not blowing my head off. Would have been embarrassing, considering you're my brother-in-law. We all gotta get wrangled up at some point. Oh. Oh shit. How do you solve a problem? I get it. Joel, say congrats. Yeah, Joel. <laughs> congrats. Dude, that was Joel pretty was well like... done in terms of just like, I don't like this lady, make her go, and it's like, I can't. It's like, oh. It's always Christmas <laughs> in Jackson. That section was already a gated community, so we built the rest of the wall out from there. Stop most of the raiding parties, but we still find pockets of them. Could you imagine that you wouldn't have a lot of raiders if you're out in the middle of Wyoming? Yeah, if you're a raider, you're not looking to probably go out to. It's so the funny no because like this moment in the game, you just get attacked by like a shit ton uh, yeah, of raiders right away. Well, it's because yeah. they needed a shootout. <laughs> yeah. How do you keep this place quiet? It's not advertising what we have. Saying off the radio. House of Worship. Oh, ah, that's gonna come up in a moment, yeah. I think. Motherfucker, yes, I thought is. you were dead because you did that. Look at this face. This place actually fucking works. Oh, sheep! Oh, look, sheep! Hey, Joe, check it. <laughs> Ain't it funny that they've got, like, the, the little uh, mist coming out of their mouths because this is real? Yeah. yeah, that's, it's, yeah, you're right, yeah. It's just so appreciate that there's actual, like, <laughs> yeah. stats, you know, and environments yeah. that they're yeah. in. Actual shooting outside. Places. Real sheeps. So, uh, communism. Yeah. I get, again, all filmed in Alberta. It is that. Over literally. here in it's Canada. Communism. We're communists. Right. Communism. Nah, I didn't like that. It is that, literally. This is a commune. We're communists. <laughs> Wait, Tommy didn't realize that. I mean, if you share everything, then yes, that would be a commune. <laughs> he looks so depressed. He's like, Wait, we're coming? No. <laughs> That's really funny. Pretty much untouched in so three, but I just got the heat going in it. Could do worse. Oh, trust me, we have been. We've been doing fine. Well, I'll take Ellie over there if you two want to catch up. Was that like a defensive line of like your. We, I've Maybe been taking fine. care of us. Maybe? Mm. Probably, yeah. Doing the best you can with, uh, in a very difficult circumstance. Yeah. Ice, you can't just get that anywhere around here. Doesn't grow on snow. You're fucking old. Easy. It's gonna happen to you, too. Doesn't seem like you yeah. age much. Take him. You, on the other hand. Are you the bartender? Thanks for still giving a shit about me. He is now. I like that it's a big block We're of ice because it is getting carved off of a big old <laughs> even left. block of ice. Christmas trees and bake. Pretty decent setup. So how's Tess? She's fine. All right. Ooh! Damn. The kid? I can't remember. What, does Interesting. He, does he say Tess died too in the game? Yeah. Uh, they don't talk about Tess. I don't I'm think they do. Uh, yeah, I don't think so either. Here. I don't remember. So you know where they might be? These fireflies? You know, they got a base down at the University of Eastern Colorado. The uni. It, it is severely fucked up between here and there. I made it across the country. The two of us can make it from here to Colorado. I'm not going. What, because your wife won't let you? Joel. Is that why you stopped messaging me back? Marie and her crew found me. They're good people. Rules. I'm your brother. Yeah, I'm aware. They're very protective of this place. And for good fucking reason. I mean, folks find out we're up here. No, I heard. Wrong people might show up. So is that what I am? Those things that you judge me for. I did those things to keep us alive. We murdered people. And I don't judge you for it. We survived the only way we knew how. There were other ways. I'm trying to find you these last few months. I'm going to be a father. Man, think of the, so I just gotta the be layers careful. of conflict that adds. 
Yeah. Does that come up in um in the games at all? Does he yeah, ever have a kid? I'm scared to death. No, I don't think I don't think so. Oh, I interesting mean, this, change. This like uh, a different as well. It was a lot yeah. more heated in the game. In fact, he even says it wasn't worth surviving. Um, like that was his perspective. Well, they almost that, come to blows as well, don't they? Uh, yeah. But then the writers show up. I bring you the cure from mankind, and you want to play the pissy little brother? We ain't back in Boston. You lay your hands on me again, it won't end well for you. The hell is that? We're under attack. Just because life stopped for you, doesn't mean it has to stop for me. Go grab some supplies and be out of your hair in the morning. Yeah, because we're probably not going to do a big raider encounter in this episode. It's going to be characters talking, characters talking, characters talking. Mm -hmm. Which is fine with me. Yep. Yep. We got lots more to do. <laughs> No, we need an obligatory zombie kill in every episode, like The Walking <laughs> Dead. Hmm, I'm wondering, actually, are they gonna make a change? Hmm. Uh, so, the impression I'm getting is that the more connected he's become to Ellie, the more he can't bear the idea of losing her. I'm stressing him and out. it's reminding him fully of Sarah. This is one of my favorite tracks from the game. Yeah, and this is a good use of it. He be struggling. And again, that scene played out differently, almost specifically because he's a less harsh Joel. Joel in the game, with their conversation with uh, Tommy, he's basically like, you'll do it for me, and you'll you'll fucking listen to me, and that what we did was important, I did the right thing. Like, he doesn't take well, any yeah, sort he, of... yeah, he basically says, this is how you're gonna repay me, is it? Yeah, like... yeah. meanwhile, this oh, show, uh, Joel is much more, I think, in tune with guilt, to the point of... Yes, um, it's that way. ...feeling sad as fuck. Well, I guess you would need something like that. I think every grandma had one of those little flower glass wow. things. You get this given one it. once you hit age like 60. Yeah. Once your kid has a kid and you're a mom, <laughs> then you just get one. The stork shows up. Sarah. That would be Joel Sarah, XS03. Yeah. Oh, good. This is more game specific wardrobe here too. That jacket she's on. wearing, that's her like winter outfit. Yeah. It's uh, super fucking purple. Eggplant. That's not really that purple, yeah. actually. Shoes aren't too big? Uh no. Where's my other stuff? Rag pile. Who's been cutting your hair? Uh world class salons. <laughs> Let me get my scissors. <laughs> oh whoa, no, I'll trim. Just trim the ends. That's that's nice. Shave like it so you don't have to deal about washing it, okay? That's just an old no. thing to do. I was an assistant district attorney. Uh, it does cut yeah, down on the amount of, uh, yeah, as a long mm. hair haver. It definitely, uh, oh slows the showers down. I always like doing you could even, like, turn it into a whip. You can. You can go, ah. So if anyone ever sneaks up on you in the shower, you can just um, spin around, it's smack them in the face kid. with just your Kevin. dick. I'm sorry about your kids. It's okay. I'm kid. Just Kevin. Sarah was Joel's daughter. Ah, uh, that's how she finds out. I guess that explains Did Joel well. mention Sarah to her at all before? Look, I'm not gonna ask I don't think so. No, I don't think there are clearly things. You Tommy did it too. Are you worried about him? Tommy was following Joel. The way you are now. Wow, wow. Joel's Maybe fault I'm again. Smarter than Tommy. No offense. Thrown under the bus. The only people who can betray us are the ones we trust. Mm. You know, come on. Grab your super fucking eggplant coat. Where are we going? <laughs> the movies. We're gonna go watch a movie. Watch a flick? A flim? Wow, put on Star Wars. <laughs> Open turn in a movie. Tonight's show is The Last Jedi. <laughs> Let me off the hook or what? This ride to the university, is it a suicide mission? No. It's dangerous. Prepare and do what you do. It's quite the crew you got here. Yeah, they're good men. This place gives them a second chance. Gives us all a second chance. You've had people go that way and come back? All of them. What is this? She's immune. So why'd you leave Boston? I've been on quite the adventure, little brother. I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. She got infected, but she didn't get sick. Tommy, I saw her get bit myself. That was months ago. Months. From the beginning. Hey, that's cool. That that looked like it was deliberate. Like he was There's choosing between panicking and telling everybody sure, and getting a quarantined fireflies. or to trust Joel yeah. and let him explain. He's got everything to do with that little girl. 
Well, go on then. She's immune. Immune to what? Oh, come her. on. I know I've seen her breathe enough spores to take down a dozen men. And nothing. Tess got bit. She made me swear to take the kid. It was her dying wish. What the hell was I supposed to do? Now, I wouldn't have believed it neither. But I can show you. All right. I'll bite. You know, she saved my life there. But she had to shoot him to save me. Because I was too slow and too fucking deaf to hear him coming. Why bring her here? I was supposed to deliver to the Fireflies. The way I figure they're your boys. <sighs> you finish the job, you collect the whole damn payment. I haven't seen a Firefly in years. But you know where they are. I saw a man kill his own brother to save her. Well, I just watched, and today I thought that dog was gonna tear her apart. I couldn't move. Now, I'm not asking for much, Tommy. I just want some simple gear, enough to set me on my way. I'm not who I was. Lately, there are these moments where the fear comes up out of nowhere, and my heart, it feels like it stopped. What makes you think I'd do this for you? This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family now. And I have dreams. What kind of dreams? I'm failing in my sleep. It's all I've ever done. It's failure. I'm just gonna get her killed, I know it. I know it. You ain't talking about some walk in the park here. Jesus, boy. Have Maria get some of your born-again friends to do it. They got I... families too. Tommy, I need this. I have to leave her. I mean, it's why you took off on me, right? To make up for the things we did. You want some gear? Sure. But I ain't taking that girl off your hands. Well, here's your chance. To bring your kid into a better world. You're younger than me. You're still strong. You said it yourself. You'll come back. You have to take her. How you gonna repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Took care? That's what you call it? You can't tell anyone. Tommy, you're the only one I trust. If anyone else sees those bites on her, what's under her skin, they'll shoot her. I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me. It wasn't worth it. It's the last thing I'll ever ask of you. I swear. I bring you the cure from mankind, and you want to play the pissy little brother? We ain't back in Boston. You lay your hands on me again, it won't end well for you. The hell is that? We're under attack. I'll take her out at dawn. This feels like a smarter and more honest approach to get what he wants out of Tommy, like, than in the game, where he was just so, like, hostile, because there was too much, like, bad blood on a brotherly sort of level. It's all I do. It's all I've ever Like, it's like, I can't do this. I'm fucking scared, and I'm getting old. Like, I need help with this. Yeah, I think this is strictly better. Man, look at this plank of wood. Yeah, he can't, he's just, he's so flat, isn't he? Even in Wonder Woman, he was very good. He's always been good. The he's only thing I don't think he was very good in was Mando. Mando. Yeah. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, in the game, Joel, when he gets here, the big conflict is, you can detect this throughout, is he's starting to see Ellie as Sarah, and he can't fucking handle it. He's done. He doesn't want to have to deal with all that again. So he wants to palm her off to someone else, not deal with it, get out of here. And uh, he's pretty aggressive with Tommy, in terms of like, you complete the fucking mission, you're a firefly, you owe me favors, this is what it is. And then Tommy's like, you made my life miserable. And he's like, I kept you fucking alive. That's the environment in the game. And then, um... Ellie finds out, she runs off, and she's pretty pissed with him, and uh, he eventually, they have, I'm not going to say what happens in the discussion, because clearly that's co to come in this episode, that she, he's convinced and carries on with her, because he, he does like her, and ultimately he doesn't actually want to lose her. It seems the dynamic they're going for in this game is that he's starting to see so much of Sarah and the relationship that he is fucking panicking at the fact that he's going to be the thing that doesn't protect her and she'll die because he can't can't do it. I'm just starting to realize how much that all slots into place. All of these interactions, the biggest dramas and the biggest close shaves they've had, they're all making it worse and worse for him because he, he just doesn't see himself as good enough to look after her. And so that scene is him just fucking falling apart. He just said he has dreams every night. He doesn't remember like the specifics. All he remembers is the feeling that he fails. He just fails Sarah every time and she dies. So it's just haunting him. That's that's going to be what's happening with those panic attacks too. He was and told then, by those... Uh people that, you know, he's heading to the river of death, his brother's probably dead, and then he walks outside, has the panic attack, and she's, you know, doesn't know what's going on, but the, the reality is he's just thinking about how it's only a matter of time before she dies if she's with me, and that's why he's trying to palm her off to Tommy, a younger, smarter, more efficient, smarter in the sense that he's got 
more uh, knowledge of the area. The comparison is laying all of that on Tommy very clearly, like just completely breaking down and sort of bearing a soul out to Tommy. Uh, like for that to be the thing that would encourage him to actually consider doing this feels like it's a really strong motivation. Um, yeah, he kind of... I think the game has a sense of obligation to the world, is more of a motivator than specifically helping out Joel. I think he says that to Maria, like, I have to do this, and I think when he says he has to do it, it's like, for the greater good. Because yeah, he which... still kind of believes in the whole cause of the Fireflies, whereas here, it seems like it's going to be way more, I have to do this for Joel. He's more familiar yes, with the Fireflies, still... he's more familiar with the area, well, and it's to it's, save the world. Uh, it's it's like, like Joel says in this conversation, you know, like you can bring your kid into a better world, that's yeah. a motivator, it's just that this is added in on top in a way that feels much more uh, impactful than, I, I think this is better, is, well, and, is kind and of it's... where I'm at. It's just, what a, what a neat idea that instead of him uh, aggressively pushing against the relationship developing, which he had done in this season at different points, we're now at the point where he's like, no, he's fully on board, he understands how much he feels for her, how much this relationship's important, and no longer feels like she should be with him, because he's, he's dangerous in the sense that he can't protect her, he's failed too many times. Like, referencing that time where all the guns are on her and the dog's there, as much as there's not much he can do, he's still... It's the same thing every time. It's not his fault that Sarah was killed, but he feels but that way. He has a perception about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, what really could he have done to avoid that situation? It's like, I mean... It's not his fault Tess died. Like yeah, but nevertheless... And so it's just given him this trauma guilty. where he, he's convinced that uh, he cannot take care of her. He's not good enough to do it. Really interesting yeah, change. That is an interesting change, and I like it. Yeah, and, yeah, and just, good. man, that performance too. Uh, yep. Pretty excellent. Yes, good. it is very excellent. Good point, so I'm, I agree. I'm, uh, I'm real a... happy with uh, Tommy's actor as well. I think he's doing a great job too. Yeah, he's good. Try and remain Our as spoiler-free as possible, but when it gets to a desperate part of this storyline, the, yeah. the old Joel will come back. Yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. That's awesome. It'll be very satisfying to watch if that's the way they go with this. Right. Especially to show him so vulnerable with his brother, but then when you challenge or threaten things he loves, I could totally imagine something else will happen. And it, it's funny how they use that line about like the map detail matching up on those two people that they found in the cabin because yeah. that was such like it's a, a great definitive setup. part of that. Yeah. yeah. I'm re I really hope they use that. I can't imagine they wouldn't. It's such a good scene. Yeah. Ellie. Oh, look at that set design. That's like right out of the game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that dialogue is too. Is this really all they had to worry about? Boys. Is this really all they had to worry about? Boys, movies, movies, deciding which shirt goes with which skirt, deciding which shirt goes with which skirt. It's bizarre. Get up. We're leaving. Come on. And if I say no, it's bizarre. Listen, uh, why are you here? Do you even realize what your life means? Huh? Running off like that, putting yourself at risk? pretty goddamn stupid. I came here to talk to you. No, why are you still here? If you're gonna ditch me, ditch me. Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want from me? Admit that you wanted to get rid of me the whole time. What exactly did you hear? I have to leave her, you have to take her. Tommy knows this area. Oh, fuck than... that... Well, I'm sorry, I trust him better than I trust myself. Stop with the bullshit. You know, I stood up for you today because I thought... What are you so afraid of? That I'm gonna end up like Sam? I can't get infected! I made this decision for your own good. You'll be way better off with Tommy. I can take care of myself! How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better with Tommy! He knows the area better than I do. Do you give a shit about me or not? Of course I do. Then what are you so afraid of? Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And I'm not her, you know. Maria told me about Sarah and... No. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. Don't say another word. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people, too. You have no idea what loss is. You have no idea what loss is. 
Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. Everybody fucking except for you. Don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. So don't tell me that I'd be safe with somebody else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Now come down. We're going our separate ways. And we are going our separate ways. Get it together. We're not alone. Well, that was pretty much nailed as well. I, I think I have a preference for the way that it was that it was all done in the game in terms of the framing. But I mean, it's basically one to one, so it feels like it's very minor. Yeah, it didn't feel forced at all either. Really well implemented. Pharmacy. Surprised they didn't keep in that um, Tommy and his girlfriend slash wife having their uh, fight. Both. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's about to happen. Maybe he hasn't told her. That would be bizarre mm. if he. It, it, uh, it's weird to get to this point without having told her. Is... Yeah. He probably has, but oh well. I mean. Say goodbye or something. No. I came here to steal one of these horses and go. You deserve a choice. I still think you'd be better off with Tommy. Let's go. Okay. In the game, he just says, it's fine, I'll do it, basically. Yeah. Similar tone. Yeah. What are you doing? Your wife kind of scares me. <laughs> I don't want her coming after you. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town, let's discuss it at least. Yeah. Tell me my mind's all made up. General direction. Head southeast till you hit I-25. place for you here. Both of you. Counting on it. There's a place for you here. You know? You good? I'm good. Adios, little brother. You know, both of you could go. Just saying. Adios, big brother. I mean, it may well just be that the perspective is I'm not gonna endanger him on this one. I'll, uh, I'll do it. Maybe, yeah. Or you want to stay, you want to stay here? I mean, count of the know, misses, yeah. on the way. And yeah, Maria as well. They've established a Fireflies broadcast from the university, right? That's why they're going there right now? They had a, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, think it's just, it's, I think it's the lab. It's the same setup as in the game. That there's Which, a lab there. We are running right. out of episode time, so I don't know how much they're going to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it seems like that would be probably a logical endpoint in what happens in the game. Well, yeah, I think we know how this episode's gonna end. No, I think that there might be a difference in in, uh, in the, the, the nature of it. Why that comes about? Yeah, I'm hoping for an improvement, and I will talk about that when we get there. <laughs> Deep breath in, slow breath out. You squeeze the trigger like you love it. Mm. Gentle, steady, nice and slow. You gonna shoot this thing or get it pregnant? It isn't gonna work. It doesn't aim right. You dick. Haha, <laughs> women suck with guns. <laughs> yeah. Take that, gamers. Oh, another song from the game. Oh, look at that oh, shot. Oh, look at that shot. It's gorgeous. That's pretty pretty. Nice. Look at that I'm one. Walking on sunshine. Well, oh, look at these landscapes. That would be funny if they set up the fire. They're like, we're going to go all the way over there and put up a cabra, okay? So you guys just sit here and talk. Back then, there were basically two main ways of looking at things. Some people wanted to own everything. Mm -hmm. and some people didn't want anyone to own anything at all. Which one were you? Neither. The capitalists versus the communists. Which was <laughs> Pretty much. Houses, stores, that kind of thing. We were called contractors. The contractor. That probably <laughs> is the name of the movie, actually. The contractor? <laughs> Almost certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. It, yeah. Everybody loves contractors? Eh, Love depends. me some contractors <laughs> for doing all my contracting. Look at these silhouettes. It's called a turnover. Turnover. Like an apple turnover. But 
if you make it Why to learn about sports ball? I feel Talk like, um, I feel like yeah. the, the show has emphasized more than the game probably could, like how quiet things would be a lot of the time. The game has plenty yeah. of quiet moments, but there are so much quiet moments of just there's nobody around. There's not many people in the world at this point. I'm, I just want to once again appreciate the, the world they crafted in this show. It's really cool. Yeah. Man, things seem pretty chill and happy. It'd be sucky if something bad yeah. happened. Yeah, right, and then the episode ended. Oh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. It'd be that a real shame, weird. wouldn't it? All of the big horns. What does that mean? That's a giant ram. You guys were like some idol worshippers. <laughs> when it came to sports? Hell yeah. It's kind of cheap. Oh, see? You step closer to your dream. Hmm. Oh, they made it to the uni. Uni, uni. People would live here and, like, what, go to classes and stuff? Yup. I think it was just as much about partying and finding themselves as anything else. Figuring out what they wanted to do with their lives. What they wanted to do with their lives. What about you? What do you want to do? So I've been thinking. Mm-hmm. I don't want a sheep ranch, actually. I mean, if the deal is I can do anything. That's the deal. Right when I was a kid, I used to want to be, uh... Singer. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> shut up. Why is that funny? <laughs> shut up. I'm serious. Sing something. Uh, no. You gotta sing something now. No. Come on, man. I'm not gonna laugh. You're already laughing. Yeah, okay, Joe. Come on, hon. I won't laugh. I don't think so. Joel, please. There's two actors in that horse doing great work. Are those yeah. monkeys? Must be from the old labs. <laughs> Look at this goat. <gasps> Twenty First things later, monkey. First time seeing a monkey. Oh, are those monkeys? Yeah, a whole mess of them. Firefly. Here we go. So how come the zombies didn't infect the buildings yeah. and have zombie buildings? God. That's true. Yeah. Living, yeah, what the hell? living buildings like in Antum Man and the Wasp. No. Oh. Maybe we should go back and ask the monkeys for directions. Monkeys are intelligent. Yeah, we're, we're, we're monkeys, right? No, we're ape. You're apes. You're great apes. No, that's monkeys. right. Humans are great apes. No such thing as an ape. You're thinking of uh, eight, that. which is the or great past eights. tense for eating. The, the, and also the number eight, I suppose. That too. That too. But it's all monkeys. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Return to the monkey. Reject biomedical facilities. Return <laughs> to monkey. Was this some kind of apocalypse? There are definitely doctors here. They just left. Maybe not all of them. I'm just uh, giving a casual look to the floor, seeing if there's any rebar. Mm, I don't see any. Rebar. I don't see any protruding rebar. I sure hope there isn't any. It's <laughs> a big set of spikes like in Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Joel lands on him oh. and makes the same animation, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh jeez!" Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like loads of My dollars rings. fall out of his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie, gather up the coins. <laughs> the Ellie, that's hell. <laughs> Monkey. Jesus. These three clickers. Get them. Maybe in all that research they turned into fucking monkeys. Well, maybe in all that research they turned into fucking monkeys. Just keep searching. We'll find something. Really he looked kind of depressed at that thought. Looking for the others. They've all returned to St. Mary's Hospital in Salt Lake City. You'll find them there. Still trying to save the world. <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh! Hmm. Weather. Salt Lake City. Uh-oh. Do you know where that is? I know the city. Is it far? It ain't close. I mean, on horseback. What? Fireflies? Get down! Oh. And there we see a raider, devoid of any individual personality, and hell-bent on being aggressive and rude. At the back. Avoid this species at all costs. <laughs> I do like that you can kind of hear the mu- it's, it's the sound do, effects yeah. of, like, the video game of getting detected. Mm. Right, yeah. Surely they'll be waiting at your horse for you to come back, right? Uh, I guess- Well, it depends if they the saw horse. the horse, yeah. I mean, you know, you might you, you want to get out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah! 
Like the expressions on both of them because they both know what it means. Like not not a oh no you've been stabbed more of a oh shit. Oh man, Joel. I'm gonna need you to pull. Okay. Right, you ready? One, two, three. Yeah! Oh! Let's get to the damn horse. Go! Get back! Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Joel, you gotta get up. You gotta tell me what to do. I can't fucking do this without you. I don't know where the fuck I'm going. What the fuck I'm gonna do. You gotta get up. Joel. Joel. There's our little cliffy hanger. Got to see what happens to Joel. So what I was referring to was um, something of an issue I take with uh, the Last of Us game is that Joel falls, I think it's like three meters or something, onto rebar and it goes through his whole body and it shows a pool of blood forming that is fucking fast. He looks like he's losing shit tons of blood and it's mm -hmm. gone like right through his whole body uh, and it's really hard to believe that he survives it. It's kind of... It's a serious injury. This one is also serious but it's not quite as crazy. Yeah, this one I find is easier to believe uh, that he can survive uh, this one. Yeah. Yes, I, you can survive this but you'll also, yeah, pass out from some... But he's, in a, he's yeah. in a bunch of trouble and also the fact that the fight happens and it's like, yep, gotcha. Oh, that adrenaline's wearing off. Yeah. Ah, uh, yep. Uh, though I guess somebody might say that it's like, man, pretty shit timing that like when you were there, you, you had that little group of writers show up. Yeah, same same thing as the game. These are these are same normal storytelling right, issues you usually get with a lot of, of just, just people showing up at the the times that are optimal to facilitate conflict and drama. Yeah. Yeah, and you could even say, lucky it was just the one that followed them and attacked instead of attracting the... Mm -hmm. Like, if it was all four at the same time, they'd have been dead. Yeah. And after he falls on the thing, the game still makes you play as him for a little bit. And it's oh, very, he, yeah. uh, he bleeds for sluggish. a long time. <laughs> well, it's yeah. just a slow walking sequence, which is always fun. In a right, game. but no, it's, it really it's good... gives you the sensation as a player that he is in super bad yeah. shape. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and I will I say, know, I like, know why they did it, but, yeah. a benefit you get with the sequence is seeing Ellie do a lot of the work you usually do, and you know Joel having to just desperately watch. And th I think there's a point where she almost dies, and he has to just watch it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Uh, but she yeah, managed to yeah, take out a guy. Though the one thing I remember is she kills a lot of people in that sequence. Because the kill count in the show is a lot less. Like Once we're talking again, like... an encounter with like four people is really scary and dangerous, whereas in the game, four people, it's like, that's like nothing. <laughs> that's barely anybody, you know? But yeah, I don't know. What can I say? I like a lot of these adaptation changes. I think I'm a lot of this makes sense for the show. Worry. I still think their performances are, they're, they're proving themselves really well, both of them. 
I feel like at this point it's just a massive cope to pretend like that they're not they're not doing really well in terms of the performance. Uh, yeah, I think so. This is clearly is clearly good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just feel like yeah, if you're not given this a uh, chance and if you're just saying it's bad or saying oh Jules not acting or that all the changes are bad changes or it's not like the game then I don't know. I just I feel like there's a lot of stuff worthy of, you know, praise here. Well, it's no Walking Dead, but I suppose it's all right. No Walking Dead. <laughs> it's no Army of the Dead, but uh... I imagine um, <laughs> people may be scared by the fact that we've got over Last of Us two references in this episode. It's like maybe we all know maybe it's on the way. Good. We know it's coming. It will come. But I mean, surely I guess if if it's gonna get set up, if it's gonna happen, right? If it's well, look how many changes happen. we've made to Last of Us one, and they there was no reason for them to change it in terms of pleasing the audience, so to speak. So mm -hmm. um, I think that there's a good chance they'll change the Last of Us two. And if you've got several other creatives working on the show, they might be like, oh, hey, you know, Neil, probably not going to have this 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 happen because that doesn't make as much sense. There's a possibility that'll happen, and there's a possibility that through changes that it'll it'll be better. But the thing is, we, I don't think we're going to be dealing with the Last of Us two before this season ends. It's not. They got uh, time. Not substantially, I don't think so, because now we only have episodes seven, eight, and nine, and so it's like we know that the last one's going to be all about the fireflies. We know that we've got the one of them is going to be a full the, flashback. Which, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if that's I the next think one. one of them will be. The next one might be the appropriate one, actually. Yeah, I in fact, in fact, I'm thinking about where episode where the the Ellie storyline, like where the logical endpoint is, is an episode, and it seems like you wouldn't do that and then have the flashback and then yeah, ne do... next episode got to be gotta be the Ellie backstory. Yeah, and if you make 80% of it the Ellie backstory that basically has you understand how much she's lost in her life and how much she cares about people, and then you end it with the knowledge that she's managed to repair Joel, so to speak, and then set up maybe a couple of things that was going to be about in episode 8, then you do episode 8 and there's a payoff in that that I'm very much looking forward to how they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then we will all be stressed out waiting for episode 9. The whole world <laughs> over. That's going to be the stressful one, for sure. Um, but as for this one, it just feels like another really solid episode. Yeah, I, I mean, and so many changes, because like, I was just going to say, those those two guys we met at the beginning, they were they were fun. I liked them. And, uh, yes. Yeah, I liked them too. A little bit of There's levity. The, in the middle of, yeah, I like the, out there. When the guy the gets in and she gives a look, it's like uh, an implication of someone's in here, and he recognizes that, but it's, it's too late anyway, because Joel just immediately says, drop the gun. But I like that he says, why didn't you shoot him? And she just goes, the gun's all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they seem mostly chill uh, and fun. And, uh, like you said, uh, they've set up the map thing, which I think was a really good choice. A lot of smart, carefully considered decisions in regard to introducing elements from the second game and condensing things. The first game, the seasons are quite important because it kind of serves as the narrative framework of the whole thing. Like you have these four big distinct chapters that are separated by seasons. Uh, but here we just kind of skipped over the autumn season, just the season. Like obviously the events that happen in autumn in the game. Uh, that's like the whole finding Tommy at the dam thing, which is not the Jackson camp or is it? they don't go um, to jackson they, okay like jackson is off in the distance but they don't go back they don't spend any time there right but they take the opportunity here to set up the jackson location which i thought was a great idea yeah why not get i think they're gonna the make way. the story more cohesive because they know lost of us 2 is on the way we'll have right. to judge it when it arrives yeah uh -huh. like i said there are tweaks that i consider improvements here and there not including but not limited to the rebar <laughs> But also just, um, I find the sequence with him and Tommy, especially that they have several conversations, to be uh, more convincing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still like it in the game. And I still, this is the thing, I simultaneously am like, Pedro Pascal is playing the character Joel, yes, but they are different Joels. That's not a problem. Yeah. Um, this Joel feels more haggard by life. Nothing's working quite like it used to. He's getting on and uh, he's so fucking tired of all of the shit he's had to go through. While the game Joel feels more like, I've been through so much, it's made me like a Terminator. It's very compelling to watch, um, especially when he gets to the point of threatening people that he he loves and expresses love in a very um, sort of limited more manner, while this Joel feels like he's more open to being vulnerable about his emotions. They're slightly different men, but I, I very much enjoy both characters quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I like I'm, that I he's more likable here. In the game, he 
and this part he comes off as a real jerk well you know he's... who's a bit of a jerk in the game at this part which i'm kind of glad they cut was uh ellie finds out that he's planning on leaving her here or at least palming her off to tommy and she runs off now because it's a video game you go after her and you have to fight like scores of bandits between where she was with you and where she went and like it's a game right so you kill them all and you're like fun game stuff now cutscene again that's emotional character stuff but it's like yes but that is an event that took place that means that's, that that's what it's like ellie how the fuck did you get past all these guys and secondly we all just nearly died getting back to you because you ran off because yeah. you're having a temper tantrum that is fucked up and i think like he even brings that up and she's like oh i guess we both disappointed in each other and it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> it's and, and and the fact that they're even there I that many you. bandits I, I don't have to deal with ellie doing that on a whim and causing that amount of danger and you know trouble and then uh them coming back this change makes it so all that's gone like i said the uh the rebar going through him when i show the clip you'll see how intense it is and the amount of blood loss wow look just, at all that blood look at it oh look my at it go. goodness there's Whoa. so much look at how much blood there is my that's goodness really and of course incredible. that's oh when goodness. he's been stabbed and then he gets yanked off the rebar which is gonna tear that wound even more i'm just saying I love The Last of Us, all right? But I think even when I was streaming it, I was like, I don't know if you would have survived this, but okie dokie. While in this show, uh, the wound he's got, I can very easily believe that he can yeah, be patched I can believe up. he can survive through that. Yeah. He'll need to rest a bit. And, and this is kind of what I'm getting yeah. at in terms of improvements. There are definitely flaws and definitely changes uh, that we've highlighted before as well that, that, are, that are bad. I just hope people can accept that there are at least... I feel like that one's categorical in terms of an improvement. But have you considered an argument that I'm not aware of, but you might find in the comments? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we'll have a comment showcase next next time and see if uh, people have other ideas about what was taken away slash added through this episode but i was quite happy with this one as well um i think five yeah, is still like my fave one. but i really like this one yeah this one i don't think this one's uh top and five but that's okay it's just laying down more groundwork for it feels like again we're, we're being very deliberate in terms of laying down the groundwork for the choice that Joel's going to be making in the finale. Because you mentioned it earlier in the, the the whole thing of like just the perception of Jackson versus what Jackson actually is based on the accounts of the old couple feels like that. I think you even signaled it. It's like ooh, it's like yeah, uh, it's an interesting one about the nature of perspective which is going to be relevant in terms of Joel's choice. It just makes me a little bit less terrified about what's going to happen in the finale, I think. Well, yeah, and um, I think the, uh, it's going to be hard for them to fuck up the flashback episode, and then they have a really great blueprint for the cannibal episode. And yeah, it's all and down, it's, we said it's all down to that last one. I feel like the rest of it is pretty easy sailing for them. Yeah, and it may well be that the finale makes or breaks it, but I guess I'm, uh, I get the impression that it's, it's, uh, it's been thought through. You know, in That's terms come across of that way. And, and you know, you look back, and this is something that you really do have to, to consider. Now, I, I've been made aware of a lot of what's going on with Picard, right? Um, for those who don't know, for those who are completely unaware, Picard season one and two are horrible stains on existence. And Picard season three looks like from uh, the very mouth of Gary from Nerdrotic, from Drinker, from Robert Meyer Burnett, from Dave Cullen, from several others, that the new season is actually good, that it's worth seeing, which sounds insane, right? Like, imagine you had a trilogy from the offices of Disney and someone said, well, The Rise of Skywalker is actually excellent. You'd be like, what, for real? Like, how? Like, uh, yeah. just, just how? You, you're following on from continuity of blah, blah, blah. But they've seen, I think, I'm not sure if all four of them have, but the, the, the four of them have seen a lot of the season while there's only one episode out. I've seen a lot of people sort of reviewing episode one and saying like i'm out because they clearly haven't changed xyz they clearly haven't led to this this that they, they've done this 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 and it's interesting because i happen to know a couple of things that are going to happen and a couple of things that uh <gasps> people are like oh they haven't done this so i'm out and it's like oh they, give them give them mm. <laughs> Hang on. Patience. And I think it was either episode three or four's coverage where I was like, fucking hang on. Let, let, let this season do whatever the hell it's going to do. And I mean that with The Last of Us now. Isn't it interesting to look back after seeing this much and to be like, you know, Joel and Ellie don't have enough time together. You'd be like, no, they do. Especially do. after yeah. these three episodes. And then it's like, uh, you know, Frank and Bill, they had way too much focus. And it's like, in retrospect, it's like, the longer know. the season goes on, the less amount of time they'll have taken up in the season, relatively speaking. And like, when you take it as a package, I know you watch them episodes by episodes, so you're only going to have these opinions, right? And it's like, well, then you're going to have to acknowledge once you watch it as a whole thing. And revise uh, it. As a, uh, yeah, yeah as it's going to have to be revised. When you say you've only seen three episodes and thus a whole third of the show being devoted to two characters that aren't the main ones is a problem. It's like, I guess it would be under those very specific filters, but, you know, we were never going to see them again. I think like we spent time with um, Bill... And like we spent time with Henry and Sam, we're probably going to get a bit of time with, like, David and his gang. Yes. 
Um, and and probably Marlene and the the Fireflies. This 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 uh, is what yeah. I mean. I'm this. Let's just put it this way: this episode didn't surprise me, other than the um the change with that conversation with Tommy, right? But a lot of it doesn't surprise me. But I'm I'm will I'm expecting surprises when we get to uh, the Cannibal episode and the last one in terms of like every single line is going to be so important. We'll get there when we get there, I guess. How long now until the show is just over? Is it three weeks? Well, it'll be three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Three episodes, three weeks. It's been a fun ride. That's right. I hope it doesn't and end then, with me uh, saying, "Well, I don't recommend this." <laughs> like, yeah, I, I hope not. I hope, I hope not. But so far, so good. It's something that if they manage to maintain it to this level by the time we hit the end, I would happily recommend it to a lot of people. Um, it's a good way to consume yeah. the story of The Last of Us if you're not into playing games at all. But hey, maybe this will usher in the death of the superheroes dominate everything. It's the era of the video game adaptation. Mm. Starting with something like this, moving on with Gears of War, God of War, Tomb Raider. Get us that Dead Space TV show. Do it. It would be really mm. good. Lots of stuff you could do with it. In any case, that's episode six. Thanks for yeah, watching, folks. We're getting there. And we will see you next time. Yeah, Thanks, see you guys. later, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hello and welcome to The Last of Us, episode 7 out of 9. Is that, something so that, close. nine. is that something they confirmed, that there was originally 10 and they squished 2 into 1? Was that something that... I don't know, some shows now like to do that. It used to be that there were 13 episodes, then it got to 10, and now some people do like 8 or 9 Back in my day. Back in my day, it was like 22 episodes a season. Oh, the good old days. And it's funny because there would be more what people call filler. But the fact is, if it was good filler, it would add to the connections all the characters have. Well, I guess what happened was that HBO and stuff was kind of like, and British shows, I suppose, to some extent, kind of set the idea in people's minds of like, less episodes means better, which is kind of a logical thing, right? It's like, well, you're not stretched more to concentrated, thin. You yeah. more time per episode. More, yeah, more concentrated. But thanks to a lot of these bad <laughs> Disney and Marvel shows, less episodes are starting to feel correlated with the worst quality for some reason. Well, yeah, there's loads it's of really filler. Weird. It's kind of funny. I went straight to talking about filler, which kind of implies you're right about like the perception of it all. When mm -hmm. there are shows we've watched that are 22 per season that have way more plot, way more quality. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Um, I believe I read that the premiere episode was originally split into two, and then HBO told them to combine them into one because they were afraid not enough people would stick around after where the first episode was originally supposed to end. Right. Um, they wanted I heard to, it was get, to put in know, more Joel and Ellie. Right? Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to get them going on their journey, like outside the zone for the end of the premiere. Mm. As far as I know, the numbers have gone up. Uh, with the more of the shows come out. It'll be really curious to see the conversation again about the big decision Joel's going to make at the end, uh, be it now in TV format. Obviously, pending exactly what changes they may or may not make. Still, be quite interesting. Potentially. I believe, before we even talk about preamble for what this episode may be, we should probably do our wonderful, our epic comment showcase. Comment showcase. Here it is. Is that the right oh, theme tune? Did John I did it. Right John got it. It's all right. Um, we made it. It's a great um, theme tune. It's very catchy. Oh, um, wait. Showcase. Da 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 here we go. Hi. Regarding the rule of the clickers, I guess the EFAP crew are not aware that in both games, the clickers you can use echolocation when they click, meaning even if you're completely still and silent, if the clicker faces your direction and starts clicking, it immediately detects you. Or, well, it takes three seconds to find you if you're in 10 or so meters away. If a child clicker is looking at Kathleen and Kathleen's completely silent, the child clicker will attack Kathleen by the logic of the game. That is something we didn't mention at all, which is kind of bizarre to me, because we all know this, or at least I'm pretty sure me, John, and Freeney would definitely know this, having played the game so much. We just never use the word echo location at all when we're talking about it. I don't know why. I could have sworn we've talked about this in earlier episodes, like episode one or I two. I thought that we had mentioned it, yes. The whole thing with the clickers is that their eyes are covered by the cordyceps, and consequently they need to use echolocation in order to find enemies. The obvious thing in the game being that, you know, when they each fill a different slot, the runners can see you, so you have to worry about line of sight. With clickers, it's much more about... Yeah, they, they, yeah, clickers are a lot stronger, but with clickers, because I can't see... 
it's much more a game of sound because I even had like the focus mode where it was about detecting like how loud you are so you need to like sneak and, and sort of crouch walk around the yeah. place and it means that yeah like if clickers see you like if you're in the line of sight you might be okay if you're moving slowly enough and quietly enough but it's true I don't know why we didn't mention it it's just another reason why it's all right that that clicker attacks Kathleen okay She's dead. yeah I, yeah <laughs> yet another <laughs> reason wasn't. there you go mention now I find it funny, haha, <laughs> how the show glosses over the fact that Tommy, going radio silent thanks to his wife, is what drove Joel to go on the journey in the first place. Dude created a domino effect that got Tess killed and loads of other people killed. Was the goal with the, the initial car parts to get a car to get to Tommy, was that the idea? So, yeah. in terms to... of trying to figure out the timeline, I think it was, I think so, yeah. In which case, yes, I think that the episode had a job to do and it didn't, which was uh, address the fact that he went radio silent on someone who desperately relies on it and will take drastic action when he doesn't hear from him. And the reason seems to be, we stay radio silent to avoid attracting anyone here. It's like, that's great and everything, but I'm your brother and you owe me more than that. Like. The, that didn't happen, I don't think. But there had to be some other option at Tommy's disposal to, uh... I guess well, the reason if, why if not, not, he needs to have that moment where he's like, I'm fucking, I'm sorry. I'm just, so, like, yeah, a, it'd be, be worthwhile to reason. have it. And, uh, I guess yeah. it's this comment, I think this comment overplays how much of that is on Tommy. Um, um, it would be cool to have that be said to him and see what he says back sort of thing, though, at least. Right, because he probably would be like, well, how how can you put that on me? Like, how could I have possibly known about all of this? Well, yeah, and um, part of uh, what happens in the episode is that Joel talks about how it's like, it's why you left me, isn't it? Which is, I guess, how he now sees the radio situation. Not one of, like, negligence, but one of, like, I this is my chance to get, yeah, abandon. Yeah. It's half and half for me. I think it would have been cooler to maybe have it be a bit more of it, be like, uh, you know, I searched for you. I, I did everything to find you. Then he's like, I didn't ask you for anything or, or something like that, you know? Well, it's some drama. It's a, yeah, it's it's a drama. well for drama, so worthwhile. Alrighty. Fringy. Fringy. Tommy says, I have to do this for the greater good because he believes in the cause of the Fireflies. In the game, Tommy sees how concerned Joel is for Ellie's safety after the attack on the dam and suddenly understands what Joel meant by saying, Tommy, I need this. He needs his brother to save him from the possibility of reliving Sarah's death if something was to happen to Ellie. Well, yeah, but I'm pretty sure we talked about this in prior episodes. I know what the game's doing. I think they're trying to imply that you made it seem as though Tommy's, like, 90% of his motivation is for the greater good as opposed to other more personal motivations. Well, okay, well, so to clarify, because I'm pretty sure I mentioned it before, the whole big relevant part with the Henry and Sam plot in the game is that that is, like, the moment that kind of reinforces in Joel's mind, I need to offload Ellie, like, I don't want to be dealing with this anymore. It just gives him more of a thrust to be like, well, Tommy, you knew the Fireflies, you were connected to all of that, you can do it. I mean, obviously, there is that whole notion that Tommy is, you know, concerned about Joel and everything, right? Because, yeah, in the scene that plays out, when he sees that, I think Tommy says, God damn it, like, I need to talk to you, Maria. And then they have the big argument, and then they go off. So, yeah, it, in the game, it is definitely more than just because he believes in the cause of the fireflies but i'd still say that statement bears out true right he says i have to do this for the greater good like that is part of why he said it yeah i, th I think i would concede it's the primary it seems to be anyway i um, think it is the main one because there's the connection to the fireflies while in the but, I mean, show of course there was, it feels it's like much more about the Joel. personal connection the yeah. fireflies are not very relevant at all which i think I would guess was the point that I was trying to get at. Am I doing Chad here or the, well, actually, kind of voice? <laughs> Why don't you just switch between them and it won't matter what the comment is before you <laughs> read it? <laughs> don't know why they made Tommy a father. Why would you want to go on a mission with a kid on the way? He was willing to do it, and he is going to go on an even more dangerous one in season two. Ellie provides the possibility to cure the infection, so helping her is helping his kid in the long run. <laughs> That's exactly it. They will add more depth to his character, because leaving Maria and his kid both would be an even bigger decision that he will have to make. Plus, seeing Ellie kill a pregnant Mel and seeing a pregnant Dina would be an even bigger psychological hit for him. Well, I so, had not thought of those things, yeah, so that is interesting. The first thing we say we, when they show that happen is we comment on like potential story potency and that's what that decision is. They've done that because it's going to create more layers moving forward. And so the only problem you might think it highlights is, well, then why would he go anywhere? He's got to protect his wife and kid, right? And uh, it's easy justifications. You just have to have the character believe that this is going to be the most beneficial decision to his wife and kid. Yep. People have gone on dangerous missions and done dangerous things and, and have fought for dangerous causes if they even if they have kids or have part kids of why the way. joel wants him to go is that he believes that he can handle this sort of back and forth mission to where he's going while joel's not sure yeah. he can and there's a lot of reasons to believe that one psychologically but there's also just he knows the terrain like he knows the area 
I do find it a bit of a shame that they cut the escape so short after Joel gets stabbed versus the game, with how close Ellie comes to dying a couple of times during the sequence in the game. It's basically show Joel's worst fears almost playing out right in front of him, and it would tie well into his actions from here on uh, in her defense. Probably the I think one that thing one's complicated. I would have liked maybe to have kept somehow is that I quite like the imagery of him bleeding out, fading out of consciousness, watching her narrowly survive an attack, because it, 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 as yeah. they've just said... However, we'll say Ludo, we're going to be getting something pretty strong like this in episode 8, I would imagine. I think she's fighting a fair number of people during that when they're walking back to the horse. Yes. Um, whereas obviously the show is much more low... Scaled down, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Very much scaled down, which is probably plays out more logically in a live action show. Yeah, it can have more of a punch potentially too when you scale certain mm -hmm. things down. I thought it was common knowledge <laughs> to never pull out anything that has punctured your body. Don't pull out, guys. Moore's David Attenborough accent is top notch. Also, I have no experience or knowledge of this at all, but wouldn't pulling the knife or whatever had stabbed Joel out to make things worse? I thought you were meant to leave things in until there's a safe way to remove them slash to prevent blood loss. It just seems strange to me how he randomly removed the object and then he bleeds suddenly got so much worse like why would you do that in the game it obviously made sense because he was impaled on something but this is so different i prefer the rebar over being stabbed there's an actual reason to take it out he is pinned with it as for the stab in the show he shouldn't have pulled it out it's basic medical aid to not take something out if you can try and stabilize it say by wrapping it tightly to you to keep it from moving around and leaving it in gives you a higher chance of not bleeding out. Oh no, I got stabbed by a thing. I should totally pull this out and let myself bleed like crap. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a smart move? No, no it wouldn't. Stop doing this. Ah! <laughs> At least in the game he was stuck on something so he had no choice. So... Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, I was playing okay. Atomic Heart and I had people back and forth think a, a big bunch about this. We got some experience maybe on this with, with rags here about, about wounds, but then there's also our uh, basic knowledge when it comes to these sorts of events. The reason we didn't comment on it, apparently, is that the four of us had a similar uh, perspective on this, which was that Joel, in shock, pulled something out that he thought was going to be a lot shallower than it actually was. And uh, you do that in that environment to immediately prevent any possible infection, or at least further infection than it's already there because it's a it's an old piece of wood that's stuck in him it's really bad if it gets into your, your insides so to speak i don't think especially judging from his reaction that he thought it was anywhere near as deep as uh, it ended up being well it was the snapped off handle of a wooden bat right yep that's, what that's it was. right okay yeah and there's just a really long shard of it that was inside and he didn't think it was of course the fact that he didn't feel that was it clearly that's right the thing i didn't adrenaline. That's how I took it when I watched it. I was like, oh, fuck. He, like, obviously he was hoping that was uh, not as bad as it actually was. As we sit around watching this in the comfort of our own homes, on our chairs, in our houses, and we're not pumping, you know, full of adrenaline, and we're not stressed out, and we're not in intense pain, and we have not just killed someone with our hands. It's easy to look at someone else and criticize the decisions that they make in those kinds of moments. Um, he was obviously in a very stressful situation, so him doing that, I think it... If you survived this long in a post-apocalypse, you probably would have come to understand the whole concept of, you know, like, leaving something in because you don't want to bleed out. I just think the fact fact that when it actually happens to you and you're in that situation I and, think that's a good argument yeah and, I and think you look whole... down and it's i mean what it when, it's the, when you look down and it's in you it you might not be thinking about that you might think like oh shit this thing's in me i have so... people fighting over it in chat and uh, one person said the whole fucking point is you're supposed to wait until you're in a safe place before you yank it out so that you can pull out the the to come blood and then someone else said no the whole fucking point of not pulling it out is that you can get to hospital where they can sort you out because you're already going to be set for antibiotics they'll take care of it this world does not have that this world doesn't even necessarily yeah. have necessary safe places so to like they're being chased by bandits but him pulling it out has reason behind it and he's in shock oh, and, and what does it look like if you're on a horse that's galloping and you've got a giant chunk of wood stuck in that's your gut. another thing that happened so so in chat said obviously you shouldn't have pulled it out because having a wound just open like that on the horse is going to crush and open blah, blah, blah. and then someone said how is it better with the wood in that he's on the horse yeah bouncing up and down while so, the yeah. horse is running what i'll say I feel is, like the reality is there are no great choices here in no terms and, and of what to do uh, all the que the question is, can you believe he would make that decision in that moment? And my answer is yes. I don't really absolutely. Have I could. Him. Yeah. I if you're in that. a situation like that and you're with him and he pulls that out and you got to get on that horse, you want to be holding something, putting a lot of pressure on there, and you want to keep that 
you know, kind of still and you want to make sure that you can kind of sort of seal it back up as best as you can. You don't want it to just have blood flowing everywhere because that's not good. And yeah, I still think it's I'm sorry. It's just uh, even if we counted this strictly as a flaw that he pulled it out, I would still count it better as the, than the game because the game when he just should have been dead. Just throwing this comment into the wild because A, haven't seen a comment bringing it up. B, I'm curious and would like to explore and dive deep. And C, why not? At 3340, where the dog is sniffing out for infection, it gives Ellie the pass. Mahler and Rags briefly infer that it's because of her immunity. I think it is a reasonable interpretation to make. Ellie's immunity, from what I understand, is rare and special, so there may be effects we don't know about. Having said that, does it seem convenient or lucky that her immunity has this effect? There might even be an argument that it is plot armor. On top of that, the system the posse uses to search for infected seems a bit contrived as well. They have guns, and they clearly don't mind using up their bullets or making noise since the guy says, quote, last chance for a bullet. Why not order the duo to strip to check for bites? I think the series may have ended if that happened. Perhaps this moment with the dog was meant to set up part of the later emotional conversation between Joel and Tommy, where Joel feared Ellie would be ripped up. However, I do wonder if it was worth the cost of having the dog. Is there a way to write the scene where the tension could still be present, but still have something more logical than a dog search? I don't really take um, any issue with it. I don't have any issue with it at all. So we know that the time it takes between getting bit and someone turning into an infected is at the most, like if they get bit on like the ankle or something, it's going to be like, what, 12 hours? Pretty quick. So, so the, something like that. Yeah, yeah so most, it's, it's going to be a day. Probably not. It, there's not going to be a lot of time. It's a it's a very quick onset for this kind of an infection. If they have a dog who's doing it, dogs are really good at this sort of thing. And if they have a dog who's doing it, then they have experience doing this in the past and they believe the dog to be pretty accurate and it's shown itself to be pretty accurate. And I think it's a matter of what it's actually smelling. It's probably smelling the wound itself when it's smelling people because again it's not like this is a a long process if you've been bit by it the bite and the wound leave some kind of a an odor that's on the outside of the body because of you know the bite and that's what the dog is probably smelling but ellie's wounds have been healed for months and I don't think that the presence of this, whatever it is in the blood, we don't have any reason to think that it's perceptibly different to, you know, regular blood, especially when it's inside of her. Maybe if Ellie had big open wounds, but, you know, even then I doubt it because the wounds wouldn't be like infection bites or anything really here. Um, Pretty sure the commentary even says like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's science fiction, right? Like, whatever the immunity is, it may just manifest in a way that means that she's immune from the dog noticing. Uh, I suppose it really is the question of, is it that unreasonable or ridiculous that they would use a dog to search? I don't think it's unreasonable. Like, no, as as Ryan just said, if it now, works. Right? If it works. And even compared yeah, to stripping them, like I would rather use the dog. The dog is pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like the dog <clears> is better because the dog can just instantly, especially if it has a reliable track record. I mean, we use dogs now, right, to search for things. Yeah, we do. They're dogs pretty good. Are... And it truly really, is yeah, they're really up to the right. It is the middle of winter. It's truly up to the writer whether or not dogs can sense it in, in things, slash uh, whether or not the dogs are even immune to the, the virus. They've obviously chosen uh, one of two options on both of those. And then we look at what we got, which is that we got the tension with Joel being really, you know, scared about what was going to happen to then feed into the scene with Tommy. One scene I dislike in this episode is with the sniffing doggo. If Ellie has traces of virus left from fighting off infected, why did it get super friendly? Conversely, if she isn't a carrier, why did it approach her so much more antagonistically than Joel? I get it, that's how the show creates, dispels tension, but doesn't make much sense to me within the show. Well, you can easily headcanon that the dog thought it smelled something, maybe, but then didn't. Maybe. It could have just been just that's how the dog was feeling in that moment. We have no real clue. The dog made its choice. That, you know, she was cool, and we don't know what the the traces of this virus would, if at all, smell like. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't see this as being contradictory. It's just, uh, just some choices made to have the scene get a bit more tension that doesn't, you know, contradict anything. 
I like in the scene where Joel is teaching Ellie how to shoot. His main critique is that she keeps flinching. Then, when he takes the gun and shoots the dummy, he doesn't flinch. But she still does, even though she's not the one with the gun to show that. Yeah, she is flinching, and Joel does know what he's talking about. It shows his experience with a weapon, that he can recognize someone else's shortcomings with it and try to teach them. Knowing how to do something, and then knowing how to do it so well that you can teach it to others are on two totally different levels. I just thought that was neat. There's a couple of neat things that happen in, in relation to that in the show. Also a couple of flaws mm -hmm. here and there, but hey, you point them out where you can. Speaking of... Fun fact, around the time Joel and Ellie cross the bridge in this episode, it is possible to spot the filming crew in the corner. Really? I, I double-checked, and this is, this is true. <laughs> I the you would. big wide shot where they're heading across oh, the Oh, yeah, wow, the look bridge. at that. Yeah, right, oh my see goodness. that? Look there at it that. is. There they are. They're right down there. There's that oh, bottom wow. left there. Uh, look at just that. Just a big crowd of people. <laughs> it's like, that's, oh, uh, that's awkward. All right, well. Hey, Joel it's, and Ellie, I, look, <laughs> survive. It's a uh, bird's eye view, right, over yes. the bridge? All the Jackson people, they're, they they come across these two people in the wilderness and just like a film crew following <laughs> them in the middle of the apocalypse. We're filming a little documentary. We've been going for 20 years and our whole point is to stay off the grid and not connect to the world in any way. And you're like, oh. Everyone that they meet goes along with it. They don't bother. They act like yeah. the film crew's never there. Like all the raiders and even the zombies and everything, they know. So they just ignore the film crew. The old couple at the start had seriously some of the funniest dialogue I've heard. She gives so little of a shit and probably knows that lying and being hostile would just make it worse. Her husband clearly being annoyed at her decisions makes it so much funnier. Nice with some proper and appropriate levity and a very dour series. <laughs> Yeah, I really like. I'm that very episode. sorry, by the way. I'm not. I don't even like. I'm just fucking around. I don't know no, no, offen no offense. No offense to the commenters. These are fine comments. I did really like that scene with the old couple. They were neat. Well, so yeah, the way I, like I imagine it happened was she was just sitting in there doing a thing. He comes in with a gun to her and says, "Like, don't make any sudden movements." Blah, blah, blah. And, and and she's just like, uh, "Am I dead then, or what are we doing?" And he's just like, "No, yeah. no. I'm just. I just need some information. Then I'll leave you alone." She's like, "Okay." And then like they wait for the husband. Eventually, she's just like, "Do you want some soup?" Like I could totally <laughs> see that happening. It'd be really fun. Yeah. While I do largely agree with you guys' analysis of the series, it does feel like you guys have given way more grace to projects you want to be good and much more credit life of things you want to suck what do you mean want to be good and want to suck it's not a thing for us we take but everything I as it comes say, we want we want that, everything yeah, to be good so <laughs> yeah anything. ideally if everything could that'd be nice but i'm pretty sure you guys can just look at the way we talked about this show before it came out we were not that optimistic no we shout on it quite a bit um we were we, doing we memes were about the last of us too honestly about uh about what the show was going to be but i feel like at this point it's basically won us over by being pretty consistently quality i will never stop referencing how in batwoman the second they gave us a good scene we all shut the fuck up and then praised it yeah Yes, that's right, the scene with uh, Luke and, and that guy. Yeah, I, I've referenced yeah, it before and again. Like, how do you think that happens if all we're looking to do is clown on a show? The goal is not to be bad faith no. in, in our coverage, like, ever. Yeah, like, we want good stuff. I don't like these sorts of observations of, like, oh, you guys are just giving this one so much leeway. It's like, man, I really don't feel like that's the case. Make better arguments. Feel like it's, that's it's what I'm going to keep saying as... back to this. Make well, make, make some arguments. Make an argument at all, I think, is what I want, instead of just saying it. Yeah, because obviously all we have to say in response is, oh, no you. I think that you guys go way too harsh on things you don't like, and you're way nicer to things you do like, in you know, opposite to us, I guess. I wondered this about Batwoman and the Resident Evil movies. You don't need to wonder about those. You're okay. <laughs> I guess the thing is, the Batwoman's an interesting one because it's like, so when you go to watch Batwoman, you know it's going to suck, right? It's like, yeah, we're ninety nine point I mean, what, what nine percent confident, and yet we still yeah, point out like, if we think it's doing good at anything. And I guess yeah, because the they had that one good be, scene. That's right, one good scene in two seasons. I think they've had I, like I guess instances had... of acting and moments where we've been like, oh, that looked okay, you know, like choreography mm -hmm. maybe, but most of the yeah, time, yeah, it's just yeah. shitty. Because obviously, we expect it to be bad, and we expect that that badness is going to be really funny and worthwhile to point out and observe but i mean if a good scene shows up if something is commendable then it ought to be commended if you feel that way then you'll have to prove it provide a similar point that they let pass in things they like but did the opposite uh in things they don't like the last of us 2 versus god of war ragnarok when they talk about how the games emotionally manipulate you using the death of a dog so I'm hoping that the commenter is pointing out, it's like, that's an example. Uh, the problem is, it's like, am I meant to read that as a thing where we let it pass in Ragnarok, but criticize it in The Last yeah, of Us? 100%, 100%, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think the point yeah. there is that EFAB are biased in favor of God of 
Ragnarok, and so they allowed we, we a manipulative about, scene. Though. We it's did, we Fringy. Talked about we it. talked about it for so fucking long. We talked we about it on our coverage, talked and we talked about it in response to the synthetic our... mad video who made the same yeah, point about like... Last of Us. We gotta speedrun it a little bit, because this is the thing. It's okay. our job. Oh. We gotta explain this stuff. Yeah. People apparently didn't understand, so we gotta do it again. The purpose in The Last of Us 2, and how killing a dog was supposed to achieve something in terms of writing. It's like, what happened? Well, isn't it sad that Ellie kills a dog that was friendly to Abby earlier in the timeline, and you were happy with this dog, and you know this because of a scripted fucking fetch sequence meant to make Abby come across as more likable, but also to just make you be like, oh, cool, a dog. And then it's really sad, because <laughs> you you kill that dog as, as Ellie. Isn't that sad? It's like, okay? And so this is an attempt to humanize her desperately, because this takes place soon after she's killed Joel, and you're playing as her, so her playing with a dog is supposed to make you be like, oh, I like dogs. Okay, Abby isn't so bad. And then to have Ellie kill that same dog, you're like, oh, Ellie, oh. But it's like, what? Well, except That's... remember, it was the other way around. The dog dies first, and then you find out, oh, oh I don't, look, I'm not talking about happy. how it's, I just mean like, what we're supposed to take away from it. It's well, the dog you played well, yeah, fetched it, with. Isn't that fucking sad? That's, it's, that's it. It has no layers beyond that. That's, well, I say it's transparent, it it's pathetic, and it's an attempt to jumpstart likability in a character. I have yeah, no sympathy throwing... for a fucking creature exactly. that tries to kill me just because I played fetch with it earlier. I don't even know, like, it's a, why would earlier in timeline, later in uh, game? Continuity? Or... Yeah, continuity, that'd be it. Look at cute dog, and then how cute dog likes Abby, don't you like Abby, and then don't you hate the, the dog had to die sad. Do you remember the controversy over that, too? They promised no one would have to kill a dog in the game, and then they had to. That was oh, the dog right. they had to kill. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jeez. All right, yeah. Now, maybe someone in the audience is thinking, what? That's the exact same thing as Ragnarok, though. That right there, what you just said, that's the same as Ragnarok. So, okay, in Ragnarok. The primary purpose, I think, of the event is to show Atreus, like a character we've known and fucking hopefully liked, for 50 hours dealing with death. This is going to feed into the major- Dealing with the impermanence. The impermanence of life. The major plotline is going to be his ability to deal with his father's incoming death. And a big old chunk mm -hmm. of foreshadowing that his desperation to prevent death can lead to much more drastic decisions, such as hanging out with Odin or sympathizing with Asgard. Those are going to be significant elements of the story, and it's all going to come from his fear of losing his father and his fucking disdain course, for allowing people he loves to die. We see in the scene contrast pretty sharply with Kratos' awareness of what's happening here and basically acceptance that this is what's happening, that Fenrir is dying, yes. and that Atreus needs to accept that then, uh, and deal with it in a it prompts the soul to enter the knife, which has major implications on the plotline later on. Major All of this gets yep. us to the bear payoff and everything in between. You also have this event being incredibly important to Kratos. Like it's it's a representation of his basic approach to grief, like Fringe just said, as well as uh, Atreus's. And it's consistent with what we know about him, but it's still a refresh. You even have um Mimir about like how it's like, oh man, you gotta you gotta be more opened up. You can't just be so closed off. It's like he's the two opposites at that point in the story, right at the beginning, in terms of how they deal with this sort of thing. This prompts the big blowout the big conversation that atreus has with kratos because he's like we got to start training we got to be prepared and he's like we can't keep fucking hiding and then fairy fenrir's burial gets to the point where atreus discovers new abilities and he has to be able to control them it strains the father-son dynamic it's which stretches and reforms throughout the whole game showcases both characters res like responses to grief generates the opening plot line thematic. builds up significant yeah. portions of the i guess you'd say deuteragonist plot line being atreus close yeah, to halfway yeah, in the game and then it sets up the major payoff in the third act in several ways for fenrir and on top of all that it's a fucking amazingly acted scene. And it's an event that no yeah. human being really has any issue with relating to. The death of a pet. Most people understand the pain of this. And so knowing who Fenrir is, is not important to the scene. It's knowing who Atreus and Kratos are, and what it'll do going mm -hmm. forward, and what it tells you about them. It has so much purpose, and the fact that people feel so much the dog's dying is actually blinding them to seeing what is actually the purpose of that scene. They see the dog dying and they close their brains off. They're like, oh, it's just fucking emotional. It's like, no, no, no. There's so much happening here that's going to play into things later on. We're forgetting that fundamentally the goal of a story is to essentially evoke some level of emotions from you. Like it's, it's, it's trying to get you to feel a certain way at specific times. That's not a bad thing. No. A lot of it comes down to how purposeful it is, how well executed it is. And I would hope 
that there would be a recognition of the major differences between these two scenes other than dog died you're meant to be sad about that like yeah. that is some of the most reductive like analysis of what was happening in Ragnarok to then compare it to like the last you know of what? us 2 maybe like, we're insane. wrong you gotta, like, maybe, maybe we're wrong about the last of us 2 and there's more going on with that dog that we didn't realize that you can connect in the same way that we did with all those things in Ragnarok right but we call mm -hmm. it manipulation in the last of us 2 because the dog is fucking wheeled onto the stage to be cute and hopefully make you feel better about Abby and then it's killed <laughs> in a QTE thing by Ellie and it's meant to be sad because you played fetch with it. It's like, that's it's, pathetic. It's really, not, it's really not anything more than that compared to, again, how much is to be gleamed and drawn from that scene in Ragnarok and everything that it feeds into for the rest of the story. You can't be saying that, like, these are exactly the same. This shows the or, like, bias of EFAB. It's like, what do you mean? The effort. I don't know. I feel like it's showing the bias of you. Like, yeah. I don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> oh, you're just not damn. recognizing what these are. I'd say that first and foremost, like, you should be able to look at basically anything, including things that suck, and try to be able to, like, present good faith under understanding of what the objectives you can glean from like what's happening in a scene and then to explain you know why you don't think it works or anything like that i feel like that needs to apply here what are they trying to do here beyond just make me feel sad even to downplay like making you feel sad like it's valid to try and extract some emotions from you as a as a player or a viewer yeah i don't know like that's kind well, of hilarious that, that would even be said we talked about this in the stream this is what i'm saying it's like, annoying but acceptable when someone says i think that scene sucked explain to me why it's more meaningful than i think it is like okay but to do it after we've explained this twice come on and to then not only bring to bring it up and say ah see this is an example of efab's biases because they like god of war ragnarok so why do you think we like it, it <laughs> yeah i know it's what's well, just like i don't know what's the difference between letting it slide and having a reason for it like in your in your view Watching the comment section slowly turn against the panel with each episode has been an interesting experience. I would say as someone who keeps an eye on the comments, it's been flowing in all different directions at all times. They have ignored many things they would have otherwise called out and have called out in many different shows. Such, Such as, as they've been so effing effusive in their praise for the show that when Molly said he still prefers the game, parentheses at the beginning of the video, it sounded like a lie, lol. Like going on and on about how your hot wife's twin sister is just to turn around and say, but I still prefer you, lol, 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 lol. sounds disingenuous. So they're unhappy so would... because they don't believe me when I say I prefer the video no, game. Here's the problem that Mola's going to face. We're talking about the show. Exactly. He doesn't get to sit down and explain in detail like everything he likes about the game because the game is coming in and out of our discussion. You know, while we're going through the show, we're watching the show. Go watch my stream like, on The Last of Us. I'll tell you everything I like about it in there. It's I feel like, like it's so obvious. We're talking about the show. We're not talking about the game as much right now. So like Mola can't lay out all of the arguments like from beginning to end of the reasons why he prefers the game to the show at any given moment. I have a preference for the the Joel with a tougher wall that's being broken down instead of him being, his wall is softer to begin with. I prefer it being harder to begin with. Again, that's just a preference. It's not, I don't think it makes a character better or worse. I prefer Joel and Ellie's performance in the game to the to the show. The show they've had to sort of convince me while in the, in the game, I, I was into it straight away. So, and that I think I could argue more than just a preference. I prefer how the story's paced in the game than the show. Uh, I'm fine with the show's pacing, I just think the game's is better. I'd have to go into more detail to be able to argue that, but I can't right now. I prefer the amount of time I spend with Ellie and Joel in the game, and uh, the fact that it's a game is, is kind of the benefit it gets here, which is a little bit unfair, but hey, that's just the reality of uh, mediums. I get to survive as Ellie and Joel uh, in all of the gameplay and so it like it can almost run subconsciously in my mind that they've spent a lot of time together and been through a lot of things together and that can help me bind them in my own mind as well there's things that happen in the show that don't happen in the game like i'm pretty sure joel doesn't barter with one soldier that just so happens to be the one he bumps into that night i'm pretty sure that's a change that uh we were against joel's like aimbot in episode five was it the, um, uh, that's not that's not something anybody everyone pointed that out. I was like yep that's not good Joel like <laughs> didn't take anywhere near the amount of resources from Frank and Bills that everyone would thought to be reasonable I can't think of many arguments against the fact that he like he only took the rifle and that was it it's, it's that's really weird at least that's all I think we, he took some tins but it's just like you'd, you'd think he would have taken more than that did they ever try to even distract the clickers in episode 2 I think that was something I was I was highlighting it's like because you get to do it in the games all the time it's kind of fun it just seems like something if you're familiar with clickers which they are they should know to try throw a, anything across the other side of the room sort of thing it doesn't even get referenced um 
when Tommy for some reason ditches them in episode one when he really didn't need to, right? That's 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 just a categorically uh, that worse was, change. That was good. Yeah, that was. Different. I remember that we felt that the scene as it played out with uh Joel being confronted by the the soldier just played out in a way that seemed to be more awkward than uh than it did in the game. Yeah, yeah. We, we... Like sense of place and the slope and everything, like it just didn't flow as as much. We just talked about earlier how it would have been better to have address the uh the whole like he didn't talk to him on the radio anymore like that that that's something they added in and then didn't i think uh, do enough to work with um the tess's choice to use the lighter instead of a grenade which would have been like yeah, just a way better, better fucking choice way more consistent joel didn't take anything in that building right when he when, it, when there was loads of guns and ammo on the floor and he didn't take any of it he just had what he had with him which is another just like what the fuck are you doing uh this, these things like I don't, I don't know if necessarily i want to say all of these things but i don't think these things happen in in the game. Do you remember when they replayed the 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 clip of him oh, and Sarah? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's like that was that, that was, that was a bit embarrassing. You don't need to do that. Right. Joel didn't take the shotgun that he got off that kid that he killed. It's just because there's so many of these things that have been listed uh, <laughs> as part of. Yeah, part well, of and there you go. All of those things. I'm pretty sure I either considered to be lying, non-existent though. or better in the game. You're a and then lying, I, the funny part is I didn't need all those references, I don't think, because I've already highlighted the primary draw of this story is those two main characters. And I think the performances and the relationship are superior in the game. I need to see this through to the end to be able to say if I think that definitively. But the thing is, I, I don't think that it's like this wide gap between them. I just prefer the game. Well, because if I were to say right now, I haven't made my mind up. I'm basically waiting until the end of the season to see what I think overall in terms yeah. of which I think is better. So, like, if someone asked me which do you think is better, I think my answer right now would be, I don't know, get back to me in a couple of weeks, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll figure it out. You know, there are things to be critical of that are, like, in the show and the game, just to, because this, this, I'm kind of coming back to the whole, like, we're apparently so hyper-biased in favor of the show. The fact that the luck of the Raiders turning up at the uni at the same time as they did, it's like, that's, we that's might pretty have. lame. Yeah. yeah. We're pretty fucking hilariously lucky that the sniper can't shoot for shit. It's dark and he has shit aim, nobody's gonna kill me. I know, you could be like, oh, it's just an old <laughs> dude, right? And it's like, I mean, that's still lucky as fuck, man. They all could have died. They didn't know he was there. He could have tagged any one of those four, but he didn't. I think when they decide to like move through the city, they just commit to that building because they want to get a higher view of stuff. When they're like, "Oh shit, it's probably infested." It's, I think Rags was like, "Is there no other option in this city? Is that it?" It's like, "Well, we got our set piece to do." And it's like, oh, "Okay, yeah." And, and how like only one raider attacked Joel in that in that sequence? We said, "I remember us saying these are all off the top of my head." I can't remember. We've pointed out way more flaws than this, but I, I, I'd have to go through all the episodes. The point is, this is kind of annoying. I would say that we categorize as best we can based on everything we're seeing, and we're doing all of this. Like, off the fucking cuff, live reaction, straight away. This isn't, we all get to watch this twice or three times, write a script, correct it over, and have it proofed by friends or something. And, the, and I think the best thing we can do is then check out people making arguments in response, and that's what I feel like we're doing, and some of them are good, some of them aren't so good, I don't know. The best people come up with is that we're biased because we like the show, which is a really weird thing to start pulling, but they've only started pulling that in, like after the first four or five episodes coverage, because if anyone had said anything about our feelings for the show, it would have been negative. So it feels weird that that's the choice of bias, when obviously if we get to uh, motivation mine in the opposite direction, what are we gonna say? You all hate it because of Last of Us too. Mm-hmm. You hate it because of Neil Druckmann. Constructing a motivation for you is way easier for us than it is for you about us. Like, you have to say that we like it too much. Like, oh, okay. Well, you don't like it too much. <laughs> like, there you go. You don't like it enough. If you want us to join you in that horny hatred, you gotta give us arguments and they gotta be good. They can't be just, you're being too nice. I just hope we get stuff that's a bit more substantive, which we had plenty of in this episode, and I'm going to grab them as soon as I see them. It's a defense against criticism, but I said I like the game more. Do I just lie and say that I don't, so that they don't think I'm being disingenuous? <laughs> I guess that's the better scenario, I don't know. Nothing. People are still bewildered by the idea of something being properly adapted and are struggling to move on from the mindsets of previous worst shows to call out imaginary criticisms. Yeah, I think that's kind of mm. true. You got to assume there's at least someone here who's a little angry at this IP, and that's what's fueling a lot of the criticism, right? Maybe somebody? <laughs> the show has a lot of things to praise, though, so their praise is pretty understandable. Well, I would hope that the understandable praise is understandable, as in, like, we're not trying to praise it for no reason, or desperately, we're trying mm -hmm. to praise things that we spot that we think are good. So, you know, yep. let us know if we fuck that up. Maybe they just missed those things. It's easier to miss flaws in things that you like. And I think that would be best accentuated by the crew being spottable in the show. None of us saw that. Probably wouldn't have seen it on fucking five viewings. But there it was. And I'm happy to be like, oh shit, that's a fuck up. But obviously the scale rises and there are other things that we don't necessarily spot that uh, can be drastic. What's in terms of flaws. 
If you don't like this, you're a toxic fan. That's how this EFAP sounds to me. Bit All of right, a so reductionist down. view. <laughs> I don't know why you're trying to almost couch it in the lens of like the way that showrunners will talk about, I don't know, like fans who disagree with the... I assume you might be referencing when like Rag said, if you think that the acting's bad, you're coping or something like that. And I'd just be like, we never called anyone toxic for not liking the show. And nor did we ever mean that to be the case. You're hearing things that aren't quite there. You're allowed and to not like something. That's fine. We want better discussion, all right? So... Do away with this shit, the whiny shit. I don't want any of this. Talk about the arguments, all right? They're better, they're more interesting. Yeah. And when you say that we're making, when we're screwing up, just put in one example so that we can at least latch onto that. And please don't choose no, the we, death we of the like dog in God of War Ragnarok no, after all the time we spent explaining it. You have to abandon it. that. <laughs> you, you got to abandon the dog one, all right? Don't do it. Uh, and so I wanted ends. to say, like, I don't recall any of you referring to any buddy is a toxic fan regardless of whether they had a good argument or not and whenever they do have a good argument you're i find that you're quite happy to respond to it and engage with it that's you know, the goal and um, acknowledge whether it's a good point or not very do you remember um there was a there was a person who loved last of us one and there was like a clip that went around the internet when last of us two came out where he was once joel died he like ejected the game and chopped it up with a scissors and he was like, <laughs> he was like tearing up or whatever. He was very fucking furious, personally pissed off. And that's the thing I recognize with a lot of media, you will get very personally invested. And so the residue of the fiery insult people had felt from The Last of Us 2 is just bleeding all over this game. And whenever there's a reference to The Last of Us 2 or a change that seemingly seems in favor of it, people are ready to fucking pounce on this thing. And if yeah. you have people like us being like, you should calm down, this stuff is actually pretty good, we can come across as uh, crazies to them, which, well, all right. That's something I but, <laughs> like, like, I get it. I get it. Whatever feelings and baggage you might be coming into it with, owing to, you know, attachment to the series, which, I mean, most of us here have. Mm -hmm. If we can do it, you can certainly do it. Because, I mean, and especially here, because we've got such a mixed bag, right? Because uh, Mola uh, and I have a lot of experience with all of the games. Mola rags and I don't like The Last of Us 2. John likes The Last of Us 2. It's like a real, it's a, it's a real amalgamation of different perspectives and experience with the series. So I certainly don't feel like what you're getting here is an echo chamber. At the very least, it wouldn't be an echo chamber. Or you wouldn't expect it to be one based on all of the perspectives that are feeding into it. Yes. And however this was going to turn out, like I came on here, I was happy to. But I expected that I was going to be like the one liking this show and that you guys probably maybe wouldn't care for it. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I just thought like, uh, they didn't like Last of Us 2. Maybe they won't like this. Maybe they'll screw this up. But it's been a pleasure to realize that we're kind of on the same page, I think, with this show. And if we weren't, that that would be okay, too. But it's, it's, well, they're just I just think it's a cool lot of that similar, uh, we're all like, giving sort of values with storytelling. And yeah, different arguments. Yeah. The whole premise we're all of giving our, credit to the praise where it's deserved, I think. The whole mm -hmm. premise of this yeah. IP of EFAP is to just break things down and find the things that are there and then draw them to conclusions and other people hopefully can see them or find flaws in them or see things that bolster them and then they talk back and forth and reach some kind of conclusion. Like I said, depending on how, how charged the media is, because like I said, this is not our first controversial opinion. Like I said, it was really weird last time that they referenced TLJ when it's like, Man, have you, can you think of all the crazy <laughs> things that have been said between now and TLJ in terms of hot takes from us? Like, oh yeah, and that was a hot take, by the way, TLJ. So saying TLJ is bad, that was that was one of the most polarized discussions on media ever. Uh, yeah, it really was. Times are changing, but also they don't really, in a way. And the Last of Us yeah, TV like, show is just like the next in the line. Bad. But I still think it's very good. So uh, let me know if there's things I've missed, uh, or maybe things that you think were very erroneous about the arguments we just made, or we'll go on to make about whatever episode we're dealing with this time. Because um, I enjoy checking them out. A preamble, what we've come to understand from different, like, next time-ons or assumptions about the structure of the show. The way The Last of Us game happened was that... Uh, you know, it all released and then it got a DLC, and the DLC took place between two parts of the game. And that remain, I guess, relatively a spoiler-free. I wouldn't have assumed you'd think Joel would die in that moment, Rag, so... Especially with you know exactly when and where he actually dies. <laughs> the point of the game is that you deal with Ellie for a while, and then uh, Joel does wake back up after she's given him some help. And so they show us in the DLC how she managed to at least begin getting him back to health. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get flashbacks with her life before the Fireflies, before Joel and, and stuff, uh, with a certain character. And it looks like that's what they're going to be doing this episode. I wouldn't be surprised if we're dealing with the same format as the Frank and Bill one. It's probably going to be full focus on uh, 
at least Frank history. And Bill. Yeah, but that's my guess. The way they did it with Frank and Bill was a starting and ending scene with Ellie and Joel. So I wonder if they'll do that for this as well. Um, yeah. Well, the way they've been building these stories is that the story in her history is going to relate directly with Joel, and uh, I would imagine that it's pretty easy to draw it from the game anyway. But we'll see how the show does it, I suppose. Fungus growing. A dog could smell these credits. Well, could it? Is it the Probably. wounds that it smells? We went over this. I don't know. It's been telling people it can detect it, but really it doesn't. It just gets rid of people it doesn't like. Yeah. I think that uh, we are doing the same format of seeing what's happening in the present day story. Right, because we're in snowy times. Yes. Not to say that this is the first time there's been snow in the history of this world, but, you know, <laughs> but there's the blood there, so... Look, until know. we see anything that contradicts that information for you, we will, we will maintain <laughs> that this is the first snow on Earth in this... In this how will IP. they deal with this? What's all this white stuff? That would be pretty Cold fucking weird, wouldn't it? First time that happens in all of human history. Really cold water. They put snow on that horse. And he was like, I'm gonna get rid of it. <sighs> He's like, yeah. I think I've had Animal enough of abuse. this. So this is already different. He's awake. You gotta help me. Come on. Leave. Shut up, Joe. Take the gun. Joe, shut the fuck up! Here you go. Here you go to town. Here you go. She'll probably go, but then she'll go grab something. I don't think she's intending to leave Joel at this point. I think she's just like, so I'll go, either. but I'm just going to go get a first aid. Oh, no, I'm, I'm I'm suggesting that the, the payoff will be she doesn't, of course. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a surprise I, I, to anybody. I'm just saying, I don't think even for a moment she was thinking, like, I'm going to just leave Joel I'm willing here. to believe there's 10% even of her brain being like, if I leave, get on the horse now, I can get back to the Tommy people and live a nice, happy life. Do I really have any chance of saving Joel here? Th that might be a little little whisper in there. Back! Sure, that's fair. Look at your pace. I'm not running doubles again because- Oh no, bully character. Is this the house your lights flickering right now? In the gym? Yeah, I like guess so. Maybe the power is really spotty. Yeah. I think it's consistent here. That's a nice detail, <clears throat> yeah. She got hit in the face. That's called abuse. Captain Kwong. I think he was in The Expanse. What's going on? Yeah, I think that's what I recognize him from. It's funny because I recognize him and I'm like, what from? And it could be that, yeah. Two paths ahead of you. A mug on. path. You keep acting like a grunt so you get the life <laughs> up at dawn, walk the streets, walk the wall. You take shit orders from your patrol leader, who'll probably be Bethany. Oof. And that'll be your life from now until you catch a bullet from a firefly or fall drunk off a roof or get your hair caught in a moving tank tread. Dang, they, they have There's the other cut path. your hair. Oh, look, it's the Naughty Dog! Poor. We're cool in the summer, we're warm in the winter, and best of all, when you're an officer, you get to tell the Bethany's of the world exactly where to shove it. See? You can be a bully to bullies. Yeah, that's right, Why but you can work within the system to bully people. Yeah. You could become a Kwong all of I your own. This is uh, Fedra she's with, right? And this is yes. cool so to have a guy be like, we're what keeps things sane and cool and in order and people protected. It's it would fall to chaos without us. Like, yay, yeah. Fedra aren't strictly assholes. We're not. Regardless of, yeah, like that he has some conviction. You want to take the mug way or the Kwong way? Go the Kwong way. Go Kwong. Because obviously there are Fedra outposts or locations where they all went fucking nuts, apparently, like Kansas City. Well, yeah, because you imagine the amount of coordination just deteriorates over time. They start to become more yeah. independent, more fascist I guess. Well, some of them, yeah. Don't give her the Walkman. Oh my she has to earn it with Kwong points. You have to turn in <laughs> 200 Kwong points and you get... You don't just get a Walkman, you get your Walkman back. For every individual yeah, piece of trash she picks a... up from the floor, that's one Kwong point, so... It would be a Walkman because of the 2003, right? That was when the apocalypse started. I mean, <laughs> no, no iPods yet, I guess. Yeah, is it? I don't they actually had, remember like, the portable CD timeline. players, right? Uh, well, iPods right? might have been like right around the beginning there. Yeah, they were definitely portable CD players. So uh, I had a yeah. Walking Man. Did you guys have a Walking Man? I did I not. Did. I, I had a little CD the, player. Uh, further reinforcing all of the space stuff with all these posters. Yes. Yes. The moon, oh, science fiction space. films. Hmm. This, this is my case. corner. That's your corner. You stay on your side of the room. You know, it's got, if you could see music by uh, Jerry Goldstein, if in a space, it'd be so funny if they had, like, there was a name in that credit they didn't notice was someone who's worked on this too. And they'd be like, does that, is that a problem for <laughs> continuity for canon? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I'm only 10 Kwong points short of a CD player. Go collect some trash. 
be a good yeah. citizen. You can every pound of trash, you get a Quang point. Every pound? I said for every individual item, but now you've made oh, it that's, much more that's difficult. Oh, that's pretty excessive. This is a world full of trash. We gotta. He, I mean, he's Quang giving a down. for two hundred Quang points. She gets back her Walkman. That's not costing him much of anything. I know. But it's not about him. So I'm saying the good stuff costs you like 10,000 Kwong points. Ooh, yeah. like, But that, that'd that be really good stuff, though. He has his little kiosk, and he's got Kong like a big point. fluffy teddy bear that's like 5,000 Kong, Kong, Kong no, points. No, that, that would be crazy. <laughs> Riley? <gasps> Ow. Ow. <laughs> I landed on my hip. What the hell? I thought I was bitten. I know. It was kind of awesome. Riley! Where have you been? What the fuck is wrong with you sneaking up on me like that? It was a joke, okay? I thought it would work better. You're not gonna kill me, are you? I haven't seen you, and I don't even know how long. 45 days? Well... 46, technically. I thought you were dead. You've been gone for three weeks. I should fucking stab you. No, I appreciate your mercy. All this time, I thought you were dead. Yeah. Here. Look. I'm fine. I just ran away for a bit, that's all. If you're going through some shit, you're supposed to, I don't know, talk to your best friend about it. No way. Still no roommate? I had to sleep under Liz for three years and you know how bad that girl smelled. Who gave you the black eye? Tell me where you were. Give me a name and I'll fuck him up. It was Bethany and I already fucked her up. Where were you? You're a firefly. <laughs> you still have it up. I joined the Firefly. Oh, fuck you. I'm not in the mood for this, Riley. I'm really not in the mood. What? What are you doing? I'm making sure I don't get caught with a Firefly in my room. Relax. There are no soldiers on the entire floor. You're a Firefly? Jesus. I told you I'd fucking do it. Talking about liberating the QC is not the same as... Fuck, where did you even... Slow Here, congrats. Hey. Are we cool? Are we cool? Come with me for a few hours and have the best night of your life. No. I disappeared and you're mad. Yeah. And I owe you an explanation. Let's get out of here and I'll tell you all about it. It's 2 a.m. and in a few hours I have drills where we learn to kill fireflies. It's almost morning and I have military drills. You know, where we learn how to kill fireflies? Get dressed. Turn around. You're so weird about that. Put some pants on and let's go. If you're thinking about hanging in the park, we can't go there anymore. It's a new patrol where they just butt in. Well, we're not going to the park. I'm so dumb. Oh, come on. When have we ever gotten into trouble? Guards? No. Uh -huh. Because Fetcher's fucking stupid. Ready? This better be good. Probably not the best it's joke, stupid. but hey. This is, yeah, this is why you spend your Quang points frivolously. Save you do them. Not save, you don't save or invest your Quang you points. Dead. You're supposed to, I don't know, talk to your best friend about it. Yeah. You can get, you can get therapy for a thousand Quang points. Man, you are not letting that Quang like one go, are you? <laughs> it was Bethany, and I already fucked her up. Oof. Yeah. Where were you? I stole her lunch money. Her Kwong points. You're a firefly? Jesus! I told Does you the gun prove it? I guess so. Do you guys remember? She's from Wrinkle in Time. Yeah, that's where I know that film. Oh, from. okay. That film's really good. It's an excellent film. She's really, it's really great. It's definitely not a one out of ten. I can't tell if you guys are being serious. <laughs> you not? Is that a good? Is it a good? Film? We have an EFA oh. movies on it. You can go check it out if you want. Yeah, it's a, it's great. For what? Oh, she's getting a new dress. I don't like this dress. I'm gonna get a new one. I'm not finished yet. Oh, she's turned herself to ribbons. <laughs> this is what it's like to chew five gum. <laughs> the movie. Oh my god! What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs>
turned into a salad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so weird. Aha. We're not going to the park. <gasps> Where are we going? Hey. Where are we going? I don't know. Should I trust you? Of course you should. With your life. Dweeb. But you're a firefly. Which means I cannot trust you. Your trust has been revoked. No. Uh, because Fedra's fucking stupid. Be nice to Fedra. They make the trains run on time. That's true. Not that Man, that was real close. Okay. Rocky start. That was Can very close. Though? I guess that's just how it would go, right? You'd hear it before you see it, so. Yeah. And I'd be real awkward if the car just, like, reversed back. And yeah. Or it stopped. <laughs> oh, no, I saw something. Stopped at the, the alley and just went, We can see you. What are you doing? You put Carol away. You can't fight everything and everyone. You can pick and choose what's important. Oh. Are they teaching you this at five Fight everything, years? everywhere, everyone, everything yeah. all at once. Fuck I know that movie. Fuck Carol. Carol. Yeah, I hate um, Carol. Carol. Carol should have used her quang points to get a fucking clue. Wow. Firefly lights are better. <laughs> wow. Yes. One point for the anarchists. We prefer freedom fighters. <laughs> How many floors? Like two. Like two? So two. Well, three's like two. Similar so to be two. Okay. Could be one. Like a one floor building. You'd be like, it's like two. two and that would be accurate. Like you. I was a tag at all. Oh, there's seven? <laughs> A seven's like a two. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Is he dead? Yeah. He doesn't look alive. No. No, this, this guy wasn't here yesterday. Oh, so we should leave. Well, I mean, there's no reason to assume he's infected. Well, even then, like if people have been through here, or if the cover's blown, or the place has been found. Well, it's just a dead guy. You think this is going to be like how she got bit or something? Oh, no. We don't have to be doing not, that until not here. end of the episode, yeah. probably. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is the... I don't mean this guy specifically. Oh, right, because you... The answer to is yes, yes, yes. I don't fucking know how she got bit. You're gonna find out. Take those pills. Oh, no. Oh, he's a what? fat boy. Bye. He's a, he's a chunky boy. I guess, because of the, the water leakage, I guess you could probably argue... That just seems funny to me, I don't know. It does. Especially when they took the bottle away. It weighed less. <laughs> it's like... His spirit from the other way is like, fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> he didn't like, enjoy the company. He had to go. <laughs> he only paid me for three minutes. Bum, 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 bum. Remember, drinking when you're underage is bad. That's right. We do not condone this kind of reckless behavior from the youth of tomorrow. We, unlike Naughty Dog, do not intend to encourage underage children to drink. That's right. Some things should only be reserved for the sanctity of adulthood. Like drinking, oh, pill popping, or monopoly. And prostitution. In Monopoly. They kind of made me swear not to let other people handle my sidearm. I'm not to handle my sidearm because I'm such a fucking firefly. <laughs> hey, this is what we call peer pressure. I don't know. Here, you take the booze, I'll take the gun. This is very irresponsible yeah. of you both. I started dating some firefly dude and was like, ah, oh, this is cool. I think I'll be a terrorist. Yep, that's it. We're getting married. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you kiss me really, under the. Uh, Rusty 7-Eleven sign. Okay, um, At night, least you gave up on making the Quang points joke. What? Why? How would that? Would you kiss? Well, you think you could trade Quang points for kisses? The Quang don't roll that way. Why did you even bring up the points again, Molo? You knew what was going to happen. I did. Well, that's why I did. I, de I defended the Quang points. Quang points are no joke. If you wanted, you're in. That's it. No word initiations. Nope. I said yes, and now I'm a firefly. That, that seems very insecure. Everything. Not like they, not like insecure, like people are insecure, but as in like not secure. I get what you mean. Like it's very quick. I assume. What is the vetting pro? Well, like? the implication of his story though is that they've known about it for a while. Right. Presumably they've done checks on it. Well, yeah, you'd figure that if they've lasted this long, that they would have a, a pretty thorough system. Oh boy, it's like Uncharted. 
doing some jumping across rooftops. I was like, gonna say it's like Kenobi. Oh yeah! No! Uh, yeah! No, Call this it's uncharted. platforming elements in the same way that these games often have stealth elements. Yeah. Oh boy, the Atomic Heart platform oh, was actually, great. Oh, actually, maybe it's, it's more like uh, Assassin's Creed 2. It's like Venice rooftops, but it's Boston. Or like any game where you walk across buildings. That's right. Bring our own population. Uh, Fireflies blowing up the storage depot didn't help. Propaganda yeah. bullshit. Yeah? Should Propaganda, huh? Anymore? Not when civilians are around. That's propaganda bullshit. Aha! It's okay you don't know everything. I agree to disagree. <sighs> I feel like you'd be easy to see up there. The mall? Yeah, pretty much. You out of your fucking mind? They sealed that place off for a reason. It's full of infected. If it's sealed off, then why isn't it sealed off? Good question. So it's not sealed off? <laughs> and so the conclusion is... Bedra lads be using it for fun, or they don't want people to know? Is that the idea? I guess there's a lot of things that you could infer from that. Well, they should still be pretty fucking careful, I guess. <coughs> Hopefully they will be. Slime, yay. Connected that block up to the grid. This place got connected too. Not that they know. Oh. They, they wouldn't know? Why wouldn't they know that? <laughs> Ow. Pay attention. Yeah, don't shine lights away. Especially since you can find out just by right, taking a casual glance. Yeah. And why wouldn't they have searched this place if it's literally in their own city? Yeah. And also, if it's full of infected and, and not sealed off. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of information here that's not seeming quite right. Like, so yeah. it's full of infected and sealed off, but the Fedra people have never been down here and they also don't know there's electricity feeding into here. Because, like, it seems like it could be a massive problem if it does have infected and it's in the QZ and they're not keeping an eye on it actively. And it's a it's a mall down here, right? Yeah. Resources? Yeah. I'm sure that I mean, plus the Fedra in Kansas City kept the infected from coming out, so... Assuming that would just well, my, be yeah. anything that you do. The only argument I could buy as to why Fedra aren't here is because it's filled with infected, but clearly it isn't. Yeah, because otherwise there would surely be a lot of utility no, in, in a dream. place like this. And especially now that all the lights are on, surely this might attract the attention of Fedra. The lights. We're fine. You saw outside. It's like a big bunker. No one can see shit but us. I just don't understand yeah. how they could conclude Fedra don't know that electricity fed into here. That's just weird. Well, I mean, of course they would, right? They just understand how the grid works. <laughs> Most people would understand how the grid would work, I guess. I would have thought. Was the in the game? Wh where was it's the like the, sh the shops? Was that in the QZ as well? I think so. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Okay. I mean, it's it's funny because all they needed to do was say, yeah, it's sealed off and it's uh, I don't know, going to be checked out eventually by Fedra more than likely, so we can have our fun with it before they do that or something. Yeah. Electric stairs. Stairs that move. Can you believe it? Oh, and they're playing. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. They're playing uh -huh. the song. Uh -huh. yeah. And also, I, I like that. I like that she thinks that escalators are cool. They're kind of cool anyway. Cool. <laughs> they are, but especially if you haven't really seen them before. Yeah. You've never automated travel. I wonder if they'd work after twenty years of being not hooked up or something. Hmm. What's well, the thing, right? Is this place been untouched for twenty years, or no, people no, ransacked it? Or? Well, you, it, it probably was. Like, it probably hasn't been for twenty years, right? If it's in the QZ. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. This, this, my understanding of this place and how it relates to Fedra is very strange. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm just yeah. Because like, if it not has been wall. cleared out, then why would are they telling people this infected here to scare them off? But then that doesn't match the whole they don't but know that electricity is coming here. But also, to what end? Why would you scare them off? Like, what does it matter? I don't know. Yeah. Is it just because it's like a big area that would be difficult to patrol and maintain? Because is it of because all of the... they're super fascist and they don't want people having fun? I guess yeah, the best argument I can make allowed. is that I imagine that overseeing a shopping center would be tough because of all of the hallways and all of the individual shops and then all of the rooms within those shops. Like, it'd be hard to keep track of. As much as I guess I'd agree, it's still more space. I, yeah, that's I get that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's kind of a steel man. I'm not I'm not sure that I'm satisfied with that. Looks uncomfortable. Yep. Well, <laughs> it's not comfortable at what? all. And sometimes they are kind of comfy. Ellie, it is very comfy. I have to say. Ba, 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 bo, 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 da, da, da. Things remembered. Gap. Oh, oh they could fit through that gap. Give me your hand. Might be carousel time. Come on. Blood brothers. We're blood brothers. She just thunks, hits something. She's not actually really like guiding her well. She just hits a pole. Just one of them 300 pits here and she just walks her into it. Now uh, bye bye. Almost. There she is. 
Oh my goodness. A carousel. It's the carousel. Now I'm almost curious as to why they wouldn't want to make sure this place isn't sucking up energy. Like, they'd want to close it down. Especially in a place that is, yeah, resource scarce. Yeah. All of a sudden, uh, an entire it... mall getting electricity, sucking it from the grid. Old, and they'd have to know out. about it. Yeah. I want to ride the horses. Can't believe that they used to drive <clears throat> spikes through the middle of horses and coat them in yeah, that was really plastic. Cruel of them. To, We've yeah. moved on since then, okay? That was past mistakes. They had different We're morals back progressive then. Progressive people now, yeah. This is before the horse uprising of 92. You're drunk. No, we should we should stay sober. You shouldn't drink and drive. You shouldn't drink and ride. You that guy that, that guy died from drinking drink. that, you know. No. Oh my god, I can't uh, I wanna ride the pony. <laughs> this is cute and all. I hope something happens soon though. It's a little Where's um, the zombies? A little slow on events. Yeah. I would even say yeah, it's a little bit slow of... on conversations too. It's mostly just them having fun. Yeah, just sort of hanging right. out. There should be a bloater on one of the horses right behind them. He's like, rawr. <laughs> He's riding it like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Yay, horsies. Did you really leave because you actually think you could liberate this place? Don't say it like it's some no. type of fantasy, Ellie. They've done it in the other QZs. Yeah, we could do that too. We're like the future. You know, she's saying do it from the inside. We could be running things. You could be running things. You know what Quan gave me? <gasps> Points? Sewage detail. No, sewage detail. Oh. Uh. Standing guard while people shovel shit. That's what they think of me. Why? Someone's gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, someone's gotta do it. First what off, you, you get this whole standing around well, all I mean, day holding uh, a gun is I mean, probably... She doesn't, she doesn't want to do it. I mean, that's it. <laughs> hey, man, we've all got a pitch in, okay? You, you don't even have to do, I guess do it. You I'm, just I guess stand I'm there watching. That she, uh, I'm, I just want to hear more of her reasoning, I guess. I would have gotten it back then, too, you know? You know, you're the one thing I miss from that fucking place. Because I would, I would assume that in terms of her motivation, that might have just been the thing that made her go like, ah, you know no, what, actually, I believe enough in the fireflies, I'll do that. Rather than... Well, so, you know what? I guess the weird part of me is like, what? that's what they think of me, and it's like, I mean, do you, what, 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 are you just like scoring low on your, like, raids and that they need... It's not like they hate you, I assume. Well, I mean, maybe it's, they don't want her to be like an officer, right? They don't, because maybe they don't believe that she is, uh, I guess, as in lockstep. I think that would like, be a better reason. I just didn't, I wasn't sure if that's what she was going for, as opposed to, I just don't uh, like that job. Yeah, I get you. Like, if they put her on sewage detail because she's clearly a, a, a bit of a wild card. Be like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see why that would annoy you. Wait. <laughs> on yourself? That's not how you don't. You're, what's your left hand doing? I think she was trying to put both on her head. Didn't really wow. work out. Who messes that up? Okay, yeah. Get out. Okay, okay, sorry. That's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool rabbit. He is. He is a very. Right. Look at him. Look he's wearing him. sunnies as well. He's a very cool rabbit. He's affirming people's didn't they, confidence. Didn't they not print in the game? Oh my god, I can't believe it's actually gonna work. <laughs> I know. Hit retry. <sighs> okay. Oh, come on! Fuck you! Maybe if you put it up here. <sighs> oh. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> what just happened? I think we broke it. <laughs> I think we did too. They gave it to him in the show, huh? I think they well, break the machine in the game. Out, Oh, it's just taking to... time before it fades in, right? Yeah. Or is it not? I think, I think it's, it's just, just a, an old 20-year-old machine that's been oh, sitting okay. yeah. there. They really should replace the ink in that machine. I don't know what they're thinking. Yeah, I mean, that's no, the main... lack of the management of the shopping center. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, this place really is a huge drain, isn't it? Is it, it? an entire- Whoa! An entire <laughs> wor working arcade? Oh, yeah, because remember she saw the arcade in, um, in the- in the place that they stopped over at. Uh, she just saw outside of Boston. Uh, a cabinet, Mortal Kombat yeah. 2, yeah. Which I think she had a poster for in her room as well. In the game, so that's, she can that's play. right, yeah. Mortal Kombat 2, And then Kombat Tetris, too, yeah. and maybe and then Street Tetris. Fighter 2. Yeah, look uh, at all these arcade games. I think they had a fictional Frogger. game in- Woo! In the game, they had like the where she plays as someone called yeah, Angel maybe Knives and the licensing, right? Yeah, the, the interesting thing about that is like it's clearly Mortal Kombat, but like not Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. I Art. guess they got Mortal Kombat for this though. Oh, Daytona! You guys remember USA. Daytona? Oh yeah, yeah Daytona USA. Yay. Yeah, got to insert coins. I'll just cheat you away to this stuff. You got any Quang points? Wow, now he's doing it. <laughs> 
It's making a comeback. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm taking it back. <laughs> I'm, bring, I'm, I'm bringing back Wong points. That lucky that that's the way that it is. Did someone already break it? Oh, apparently she spent an hour breaking it open the day oh, before. Oh, okay. That's a well, lot of Quang points. This. She planned this whole, uh, this whole day out. Rahas. Oh, Rahas they're, they're gonna play Mortal Kombat! That's, yeah, that's Mortal Kombat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is 2023, like in our world, so they could have just found an old abandoned arcade and just, like, fixed the quasi fixed it up well there's a couple of changes i would have made i i can't buy that this place is drawing that much energy and that fedra don't give a shit and that nobody yeah. has this yeah. is like a bunch of working arcade machines and all that sort of stuff how do i play smash the button there's so many of them i now you know what i th i don't know that that is how you play mortal kombat smash the buttons yeah button mashers always win i was gonna say button mashers is everything. Yeah. no yeah. skill whatsoever <laughs> Wow, you got fucking wrecked, loser. Yeah, she got yeah. yeah like... Flawless horseshit. Flawless. Wow. You didn't hit her I think, once. I think you can get by mashing buttons. I had this exact game for Sega CD. <laughs> you can definitely yeah. get by, well, you, but you can get by. It's just you know <laughs> that high level play. Yeah. Do a fatality. Do it. She knows it. <laughs> Good old more combat. His bones in. Well, turn him into a pile all of, him of bones. In and suck the bones out. Oh yeah, she freed his skeleton. Yeah. Now he can be free to no explore the world. No longer in his world. flash mech. I'm free! So she's been there a few times, which means that it's... I guess it's been like this for long enough that it wasn't like just a couple of days. There's another part of it that could help believe it, right? Having it be active it just for like a half hour, hour even, but it's been longer hour. than that. This is, a, this is an ominous This is our man. spooky this shot. Is yeah. This is our scary shot. Whose POV is this? Is it someone noticing the bright ass lights? It'd be the oh no, spooky music anything, and spooky right? lighting. Every story has an S. It's funny for a moment that you're like, what's wrong with Rebecca? Why is Rebecca the doll a bad thing? Is that, are we doing the three good? <laughs> That's a zombie. Yeah. I live. It looks pretty good though. Yeah, money's worth. She has a gun, though. I feel like you're gonna need more than one clicker, but I'm not sure because the game Unless has a lot of them. up on them, maybe. Maybe they're so. Uh, yeah, that could work. Oh no, I got stabbed. Oh, come on. Next thing. I have to wake up and make my bed soon. So, I'll be here tomorrow. I got you a gift. <gasps> what what could it be? Does like since yes. I don't need them anymore, nope. I'm just gonna give you all my Kwong points. Better, better. Oh, it's a zombie. In the games, it is water pistols or water guns. Uh, yes, nacho, macho, nacho. Is this where you've been staying? Mostly. So she's actually like this is her like place. Shut up! You made a second. <laughs> Oh, that'd be the joke book that she, uh, that she had. Right, yes. yes. She had part one, and now this is part two. Uh, well, no, two. but when she was with Joel, right, that would have been part two, is what I'm saying. Yeah, what I'm saying is she had part one in this episode on her yeah, desk. Yeah, I saw that. So that's why this is, like, yeah, a meaningful gift, I guess. How does a computer get drunk? It takes screenshots. That's not bad. What are screenshots? I don't actually know. Okay. Uh, oh, they don't know what screenshots are? Oh... These are pipe bombs. These are not good. You shouldn't have these. No, they're not mine. <laughs> I swear. They belong to the chef. These kill, kill people. <laughs> it's to kill buildings. The evil buildings. Oh! Well, that still doesn't account for Fedra. Yeah, that's true. I guess I'm just like, that's that's something. Like They yeah. were putting pipe bombs in the tacos. You. You're just some new scrub girl. No, no, no. Were you no, going to no, blow me up with your little pipe here. bombs? You made bombs, but I already said like you sort of did that before, but now it's confirmed. They're sending me to a post in the Atlantic UC. Tonight's my last night in Boston. Subway. Eat fresh. Which is not going to happen. It's very unlikely that you will here. be mm -hmm. eating fresh at the local subways at the mall. But it says eat fresh. That's true. They've become liars. <laughs> Sandwich sellers and liars. They go together and like between a those subway. two buns is nothing but broken promises. Low calorie lies. I wanted to say goodbye. 
this is the music that plays in the confrontation between Joel and Ellie, but they didn't play this song in that scene. So I do really like the track. I do really like this track. Hope nothing bad happens in here. This creepy ass hallway. No, this yeah. is the nice hallway. I think all that's happening is she's making, yeah, that she's making a choice to go back. Poor loser. Didn't even commit. No spine. It said ominous music is playing. Riley? What the fuck? That is kind of messed up. Surprise. That's the second ill advised joke you've done. The fifth wonder. Give me the book. Give me the book. I came back for you. You said it was my gift. I'm not leaving without yeah. it. <laughs> you did say it was, yeah. I traded no in for no maybe backspace. some... Quang points. All of a sudden you're alive. And you give me this night. And now you're leaving again. Forever. To join some cause I don't even think you understand. You don't know everything. You don't know what it was like to have a family. To belong. And I want that again. Yeah, but they're so kind of a crazy family who blow things up. What I think they are, but they chose me. I matter to them. Mm. Mm. You're my best friend. You're my best friend. And I'll miss you. Where's that zombie? <laughs> if I remember correctly in the game, she says she's going to be leaving, and then Ellie convinces her not to, right? I remember someone's convinced. Oh, werewolf. I just, I can't remember who. Like, whether it's Ellie to go to the Fireflies, or with or Riley to stay with Fedra. I think Riley says she's committed to go, and then Ellie's like, she just says don't, and then she's like, okay. And she, yeah, she takes off her, um, her tag, her, like, Firefly dog tag. Oh, right, okay. Put on your furry costume and dance. Oh, well, I'm, I'm guessing that they might be trying to have this be different to further reinforce maybe Ellie's desire to, you know, help the Fireflies and follow through. Well, yeah, they seem to be presenting the struggle between Fedra and Fireflies to be very balanced in this show world. Or at least more yeah, balanced, yeah. it feels, and that it shouldn't be outright agreed on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Why'd they put masks on? I, I can't see like, the emotions. I feel like they go through those. I don't know. I don't know what the tops are made out of. Well, they. what are in those? If it's, like, um, valuables, I can imagine that glass is strong as fuck. It looks like they're just, like, masks and stuff as a Halloween store. It is a Halloween store, so I can't imagine they have something in there that's that valuable. Maybe have they have, like, relics. You know, like mummy toes and things. <laughs> like werewolf teeth. Like, the real things. What? I'm sorry. For what? No dog tag ripoff in this one, though. Damn, ruined it. Get ready to run. It's probably. It's gonna take like a couple more bullets, and that should be. It. Oh. She's knocked out? Oh, that's not good. She was not good. She was not effective with that firearm. She's gonna she's a very bad fire. Well, it annoys me a little bit. I think he she should have easily killed it. Yeah. I think Oh, you should have kept used the gun. It sneaking up on them when they were playing music loud would have been perfect. But they didn't do that. Yeah. No, no. 
no, 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 no! Hey, no reason someone else can't enjoy that. I guess they went that strong. I like the contrast in their reactions to it. Yeah. There's some more stuff over there you can break. There's more stuff over there you can break. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Wait, I see it, we got two options. Wait, I see it, we got two options. One, we take the easy way out. It's quick, painless. Option one, we take the easy way out. It's quick and painless. No. No, I don't like option one. I'm not a fan of option one. Option two. We just keep going. Two? We fight. For what? What are you talking about, really? It's over. It will be. But not yet. We're gonna turn into one of those things. There are a million ways we should have died before today. It ends this way for everyone sooner or later, right? Some of us just get there faster than others. And a million ways we can die before tomorrow. But we fight for every second we get to spend with each other. But we don't quit. Whether it's two minutes or two days. Whether it's two minutes or two days. We don't give that up. We don't give that up. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to give that up. My vote? Let's just wait it out. We could just be all poetic and shit and lose our minds together. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. Option three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's option three? Sorry. They're both pretty great actresses. Yeah, yeah. performance is as strong as episode. That'll do.
There you have it. All right. That was uh, that was an episode. A whole episode. I mean, um, it's going to be my, probably my least favorite, but you know. <laughs> definitely my I'm, least I'm leaning favorite. towards it being one of the weaker episodes of the season, even though I think that there's some pretty great elements in there. Um, yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I really just didn't, like, there was a couple times where I'm like, all right, something needs to happen now. Like, I get it. They like Mortal Kombat. Let's go. I don't think that was my problem. I think they could have actually reinforced their relationship a little bit uh, better in that episode. I felt like they could have done a bit more. I think the uh, the time we had with them, I would have expected them to do a lot more in terms of binding yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, you basically got a whole episode dedicated to them, and I, I don't feel like we got as much as uh, corresponds with the amount of time that we spent on it. Yeah, I, but I still probably would actually kind of call it a, call it a pacing issue. I, I'm assuming, Rags, you're not just talking about having action scenes, but development yeah just sort of things some some more maybe some more back and forth on the the firefly stuff or the maybe more time with the the fedra people i don't know yeah i, I think just, we could have stood to get more time with the fedra stuff i think we could have the impression i get in terms of their back and forth is that as it's it's like the conversation's getting more and more real right as time goes on at the beginning it's just like fun banter but then as the night is sort of progressing and time is running out it's like it becomes more and more of like a real conversation about the differences between them and you know that there is like this problem here that they need to sort of work through and i kind of like the um, angle that I, I think there's like a mini firefly and a mini fedra agent here the, the... yeah pretty much and that the longer it goes on the more that they're going to start to i guess be more firm in their uh perspectives one way or the other i i guess what i'm i think what i want is uh not more conversation on that but maybe more conversation about other things than that that could have also been thrown into the mix yeah, like what they um, like prefer as people, or like, maybe like their 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 sort of modus operandi is individuals, right? Like, what is it that they, aside from how like they they, they fit into Fedra or the Fireflies, like what do they kind of want from life? I guess we kind of got a little bit of that. I, yeah, I think that's all I want is I just want a little bit more more material for both of them in this episode, which is funny to say when it was so focused on them. It just seems like, in terms of the density of the the character that we got, that it was a little bit thinner here than um than has been the case in other episodes. Yeah, and uh, it comes at a time that's very. I was, I was curious how I'd feel about this, but like you know, peak investment. Joel's nearly dead now. An hour with these two, and it's like okay. Well, I guess the 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 argument in favor of this is meant to be all feeding into Ellie's motivations, the desire to like not give up. Cause yeah, she'll sense, fight for every last up. second she can get with. Yeah, because anyone. what happened with Riley? I mean, obviously, it didn't work out for her but you know ellie is alive and maybe in a position to do some real good in the world because she decided to fight through really difficult circumstance so she's going to do it again well, yeah. so like thematically it's it's cool i just feel like we could have done more yeah I, I think i'm also uh hitting on a preference that i think would be shared by many in the audience it's like which is to focus more on the like the current situation that that they're in Part of it, like, what's funny to, to compare to the game is the fact that it's DLC means that it just, it can't really get in the way. It's something you play at your own leisure. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it's interesting because we more or less sort of came to the conclusion last week that this would be the time for this episode. Um, yeah. Um... I, think the, I think the problem is that I still, I feel like this episode can't come after the the what we're going to be getting in episode eight like i feel like it this needs probably to be is the that best place for it um, yeah it's just that it's always going to be oh, a difficulty kind of... of in the game it is off uh, on as like kind of an epilogue prologue right to like to the main yeah. story i mean not only is it chronological but like it it's a great buffer between joel sort of falling and then ellie being in this state of like oh fuck what do i do now and her becoming a little bit more independent, you know. Well, it sounds and, like you disagree then that you feel like this was that this that this slots in super well. Um, I think this could have been condensed. Um, okay, like right. the the Riley and Ellie stuff, and then I would have liked the third act of this episode to introduce like the David stuff. Right, maybe lead. I think mm, uh, okay. I think that that could work as well. I imagine that that was probably not entertained though. My guess mm. would be that they always thought that this would be a whole episode. Yeah, and um, it's like, how can we tweak it to make it more fruitful then, I guess? It's like, probably what we've all said about the rooftop jumping relationship um... stuff. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't have been like... against oh, involving yeah. more um, scenes in the present instead of just the two main ones. Now, I'm not going to say, in the game, Ellie drags Joel to like a, a mall-type 
place and she searches through it for medical supplies. She goes to a pharmacy at first, which is perfectly reasonable, but uh, I think everything's empty in there. And then she notes that there is a crashed military helicopter at the ceiling and she finds every material she needs in there. I've always found that yeah. to be lame as fuck. <laughs> Which is funny, right? Because if she had found it in the pharmacy, I probably would have been like, well, I guess it's lucky it hasn't been ransacked, but that makes a lot more sense. Uh, like, uh, right. and, and it's a fine. convenient helicopter. Yeah. yeah, and then there's also the angle that she kills, like, I want to say 30 bandits or raiders and, like, 30 infected or something. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, because you're doing the video game stuff. Meanwhile, here, there is literally one person that she kills with. Uh... And so maybe you could have another two scenes and she has to work a little bit harder to get the materials she needs to save Joel in some way. We can so contrive something. Maybe more so in integrate the other component of the left behind dlc which was maybe yeah winter stuff yeah with some tweaks because uh that's a big blast of these two and you're going to need the conversations they have to be very interesting to keep everybody invested right. uh, because the reality is that as an audience regardless of whether you know about the games or not you are going to be pretty hyper invested in your protagonist being on death's door yeah no i think a lot of people who haven't even played the game if they're watching the show one by one i think this episode will come as a little bit of a disappointment but i'm hoping that episode eight will be everything it needs to be. Well, so out of curiosity, what would you put forth as the main difference between this and episode three in terms of what might be the observation of you have this whole story that's running that doesn't seemingly apparently feed directly into the main plot? I think that it's the very apparent that episode three captured an entire lifetime of a relationship while this tried to capture a limited a portion of time yeah. and i don't even know that they spent the time that well well that would be i think that i think that they were pretty effective with the time that they used in episode three to tell the story between bill and frank yeah like i feel like we got a lot of dimensions to that relationship where it feels like we've we explored one very specific dimension of this relationship when i feel like we could have gotten i think i just want a better understanding of who riley is because i feel like after that episode it's like i've got a decent understanding of who she is um, but I, I don't feel like I've got a very great picture of, of like her overall, and the, mostly the, in, in relation to Ellie and the Firefly stuff, but not really much else. Setting justification wasn't very good. Um, no, that was probably the weakest part of the episode. It's just this constant thought in the back of your mind of like, why is this? So they're in the shopping center. It's got power. There's no infected, maybe. Fedra doesn't care about it, maybe. But also you've been here for a while, like just as a, a posting. It's just kind of world building and plot questions, which um, haven't typically been as much of a problem in this this show so far. I did kind of like yeah, though, having a Jola wake enough to know that she had the chance to leave and she chose to stay and save him, sort of thing. Yeah, like that'll this. be super meaningful to him. I quite like the shot where they're yeah. holding each other's hand. That's that was. Uh, oh, dude! Stuff. Imagine in the finale if he's recalling that as well as like feeding in, uh, you know, because of course that would have fed into it in the game as well, but yeah. maybe more of that conscious awareness. Yeah. Yeah, not to say that he wouldn't be aware that she saved him, no, no matter whether he's awake or not, but being awake to see that happen is... Uh... Well, because it seems like there's much more of the, at least from my understanding of the game, my read on it was that he was like out for the whole time, that he was just constantly sleeping, yeah. exhausted, totally unaware of what was going on, and Ellie was taking care of everything. I agree that I wanted a bit more, like, to understand Riley's perspective a bit more. I think it could have done with a scene at the beginning where she's, like, with the fireflies sort of feigning compliance and then well, maybe maybe and then she escapes her, at the very beginning her. where she's like yes i'll i'll sit in my room everything's fine and then she has an opportunity to leave and she escapes out a window or something but before that you see her engaging with her like firefly superiors or whatever giving her giving you a sense of like where she's at what she has to deal with i think what i might want is the fedra her with fedra see what she was like at, uh there so maybe uh, she, maybe yeah. that does mean a bit of a time jump because of course there needs to be some passage of time but maybe that would be worthwhile i don't yeah. know i feel like there is something to be tweaked so it's kind of what you're honing in on i think i would have liked to fight it, too about like fedra weed out anybody who's going to be changing in any significant way the status quo and then ellie could be like they haven't weeded me out and then she'd be like yeah because you're you're careful with how you say like well, this that, and the other. she's like oh am i it's like you think fedra is so much worse than they actually are and then she could be like fedra do this that the other and she's like you fuckers do more damage than Fedra ever do, does. You know, they kind of play it this sort of thing, but it would have been nice to maybe have three main conversations that run argument. throughout, and then yeah. at the end they realize like Fireflies, Fedra, it's all the fucking same. Like it's it's just a mess. We're all fighting, and that we need to, you know, something maybe a little bit sappy, but yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think the closest we got was the fight with the the pipe bombs. That was like the most we yeah. got, and it feels like we could have gotten one or two more heated arguments about it. We just need I, a little bit more conflict. They, I think they did a lot of scenes of them 
happily enjoying their time together with each other, which is totally good and fine. I just think, because you think about it, it's like playing with the masks, the dancing with the masks, playing Mortal Kombat together, doing the carousel. These all show up, by the way, in the in the game in too, the game. but I don't know, it feels like they knew in the game they had to pace it so that players wouldn't want to, like, you know, leave or pause, because the way they do it is the intercut back and forth between present and past and well, yeah uh, the present the present day is like the combat focused stuff whereas the uh the shopping center was much more story heavy yeah but there's a running sequence in there which is another change by the way it's kind of funny i on one hand i prefer that they don't suddenly have to deal with a horde even yeah, though it is more justified in this because they have the hive mind network thing going on however they went with one it's like okay i can deal with one then it's like ah, oh, but the, the only reason that he got you two is because you didn't handle it very well at all i guess the thing is though is riley missing it's like yeah, maybe she, she doesn't really, get trained very well. It's not quite know? that. Like, it's that she sees him, she goes to aim. I think she tags him three times. Like two to, in the right, torso, one in the leg. To the ground, and then and like, stops run, firing and runs away. And it's like, well, yeah. no, 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 no. Finish but, him. Finish no. him now. Once These are why you have those bullets. What are you, are you saving them for later? Yeah, like it makes no he's sense at all. You keep he's shooting. Execute him at that point. You've got the best yeah, shot you'll ever get when he's on the floor. you got the head right there. And that's what you got to do. And so she stops, tries to run and block like her direction. And then he pushes her, I think. Or tackles or something, and then she just gets knocked out, and it's like, ah, oh, this is a lame action scene. Yeah, it's just more logist action scene, logistics kind of not being great. Could she maybe have only had that many bullets left in the gun? I don't Three? know if that was established, maybe. like I imagine it was fully loaded. That'd be my guess. Okay. Feels weird that it would only have three in it, yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're going to think... give you a gun and a magazine, but we're only going to give you three bullets for it? It seems weird. And you I know feel like what? there, should, there should have been a scene where she takes a clip out, and it's like, oh, I only got three bullets Easy. left. Well, I don't think that's something. what happened. I don't think she ran out of ammo. I think she just stopped well, especially because they have a shot. They the do the, yeah, they do the uh, getting knocked out with the gun. Flying they away. have a shot yeah. of the gun. Flo yeah, which oh, is a very much a show the thing. That they're, they're planning on using to uh, potentially they kill themselves. themselves. Yeah. So that's yeah. true. Yeah. So there's got to be more bullets in there. Yeah. They, she just I've been like, why the decide not to shoot not the zombie again? I was, for some reason. I was thinking if they were going to show that, then like, so are we going to have like that scene? It, and it's a shame because the time code shows on VLC and everything, but I was like, are they going to show the scene where Riley starts to turn, but Ellie doesn't? Interesting you say it. I feel like that's something that was missing in both the game and the show. I, I don't know. That seems like I a really good scene. Been, well, because yeah. what does that look like exactly of Ellie actually being okay, but then Riley gets more crazy. and more deteriorated until she starts turning and they both realize, like, why aren't you? And then it's too late and Riley starts going, blah, 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 and she's like, you know, that would be fucking traumatic as hell. Well, but I, guess, I guess the thing is, is that you would imagine that that's the point where Marlene links up, right? That that. Yeah. And maybe maybe that's what the scene looks like that that Marlene shows up and Ellie seems to be totally fine while Riley is deteriorating, even though they have bites in pretty much the same. Location. Yeah, like if Ellie had to kill her in some horrible moment, and then the uh, fireflies turn up because this is apparently a firefly area, and then they, just, as you said, they just find her and then like you know they pull a gun on her. When were you bitten? And she's like, at this point, it's been like you know, however long, and they realize nothing is spreading, nothing is... And so they capture her immediately and they figure out what they're going to do, and they realize she just doesn't get infected, which links right up with episode one, then, yeah. I wonder if that is, like, because it's almost like, well, it is more poetic if you don't see it deteriorate. It's like, but it does, though, and that's kind of what makes it really tragic, isn't it? Yeah, I Even mean... Even more than how tragic it is that they both got infected, the fact that one of them dies and the other one survives and has to sort of deal with that. I wouldn't want to take it away from but, an artist to be like, I don't want to show that scene, you know how it goes, and it's like, I guess you, it's up to you, I but I feel like it's... I mean, I, feel like I don't really know that. how it goes, actually. Well, I, I think I, something that I because remember at the end of at the end of the Last of Us, how like Ellie gives a speech of you know like Riley was the first to die, and then it was Tess, and then it was Sam. Like that she's the one who keeps surviving. Yeah. Um, like sort of having to deal with that almost survivor like guilt um, that she might have. If it was like that'd be a really good way to reinforce it. Like it's sad. It it would be really sad. It would be a really sad scene on top of the sad scene that was already there. Well, and but you can, you can definitely, through careful dialogue, just have her uh, express dramatically, like, why me and why can't I help you? Yeah. Because yeah. that'll set a foundation it, then. It seems like it's a potential opportunity. It would be tough, I think, from a, like, from a writing standpoint. It, it's you got to be, I think, pretty considered in terms of, like, how you want it to play out and how it would feed into our character going forward. But, yeah, I guess I'm kind of surprised. I, I was almost thinking that that's what we would get in this episode is how it leads directly into her linking up with the Fireflies. But maybe that's just going to be vague. Like, maybe we'll never know. I, I, think, I think that could be a good scene, but to be honest, I'm personally kind of glad that it doesn't go there. I don't think we need to see that scene. It would be so bleak if they did that. 
like to show Ellie just like killing off <laughs> Riley. Like I don't know. Well, I, I, I kind of I, li- I like where like this story Good. ends. They had a whole episode to be happy. Now it's time to pay the piper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some drama coming in episode eight. I'm sure. I was uh, I was really impressed with their performances, though. Both of them. I at this point, yeah, I feel like good. anybody saying Bella yeah. Ramsey can't act is like I'm sorry, you're just wrong. No, she's good. Yeah, no, I'm happy to I say, say she's that good. she's. I th- I'd say she's pretty good at this point. Like she, uh, it feels like she's had several scenes at this point that have really. Uh, I guess pushed her to the extremes of like human emotions. Um, I was the same with uh, uh, the actress for Riley as well. Oh yeah, she, she was, was really yeah. crying there in the end. She was she and, was like t- like bowling. And what I liked about their little story in this episode is that there is an identifiable zigzag with like their attraction to one another. Like the first point is in the photo booth where Riley leans in a little too close and Ellie is a bit uncomfortable. I mean, she likes her, but he, she's just like, okay, this is a little bit more than I was expecting in this moment in time. Like, can you just back off a bit, please? And Riley reads this. She's like, okay, okay, sorry. And then like the next point is in the arcade machine where um, Ellie is like waiting for her to, for Riley to kiss her. And she doesn't probably cause Riley is thinking about, how Ellie reacted in the photo booth and is going, well, I don't want to weird her out, so I just won't. And then Ellie's kind of disappointed. But the problem with that is that in the game, that beat was better because with the arcade machine in the game, it's not working. And it's like an Angel Knives game. And like Riley is like saying, just grab the controls. Just trust me. Close your eyes. And then Riley has this whole bit where she like narrates the game as if it was powered up and working and then you kind of go into ellie's head and it's like she's you can see her sort of envisioning the game in her mind and then like ellie seeing that work that riley is putting in to make her happy that's kind of what prompts her to like wait for the kiss that then doesn't happen and this i feel like it doesn't work as well just with the functioning mortal kombat 2 machine Um, it's interesting as a comparison i guess yeah can see that because it is a lot for a friend to try and generate an experience that you're not even having this is the place just being on and active yeah and then it all culminates obviously with the kiss on the glass cabinet yeah i think there's a lot of tweaks that could be made to improve this one and i think i agree i think this is the weakest of the season yep yeah i agree with that i think i'm there i think i'm there at this point i thought this was fine but i have to agree yeah this was probably the weakest well it's a good it's a good skill flaw i'd say to have i just i'm hoping they can they well, because the floor, the yeah, the floor here still isn't bad, uh, and there's still some, there's still some worthwhile stuff in this episode. Mm-hmm. I've just, I, I want to see the next episode. Give me, I want to, I want to see I, how oh, they I'm adapt still, it. I'm still excited to see how it all plays out. Well, that was The Last of Us episode seven, EFAP TV closing out, saying goodbye, Toodle Pip, Cheery Osif. Yeah, bye, 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 Toodaloo, everybody, bye, bye. You little thief. What'd you bring me? Oh my god, it's episode seven. Oh, we're here. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my god. Uh, you made fucked it. up. It's episode eight. I can just do it again. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. okay. Just, 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 everyone, let's do it again. This won't be in. This won't be in. You can cut no, it out. Of course. Okay. Uh, let's uh, start over. Uh, should I just say eight and then cut it into the seven that I said so that now that's. You should do that so that it will be as seamless as possible. More so than I'll make just it as seamless. Or... So I'll, I'll record it now. So eight. Oh my God. It's episode eight. No one episode will know. Eight. No one will know. No what? Uh, no, yeah, hello. No, what are you talking? Hey, everybody! It's the episode it's really there. It's with fresh. the thing is going to happen. The the I've been wanting to see mm-hmm. for so long. How exciting! I guess you know it wouldn't wouldn't be right to go into the episode without first doing a little bit of a check in with the audience, a, a comment showcase, if you will. Oh, a bit of freestyle there. We got we got our first one here. Uh, All right. Um, even when the game came out, I thought it was hilariously unfortunate that the only person known to be immune to the fungus is gay and won't have immune children. It's, if it's people like, can still have children. You're gonna have to harvest elements and and potentially be able to do that. You're gonna need a big old science team to sort that out. But um, I guess they I mean, mean just no. theoretically, yeah. Unless you go in surrogacy, I guess just standard. 
I'm talking way more than just one or two, you know? Go labs, get get petri dishes, get that thing sorted fully, get loads of a horde of children that are all immune. Then again, you don't even know if it necessarily It'll be like passes. Day breakers, they have all the humans hooked up in the like the blood banks, and it's just taking blood from them. Yeah, why not? Does it necessarily pass to her children? We don't even know if that's true, right? Don't, you don't know. Maybe don't it know. does. Maybe it doesn't. But it's a fair. It's a fair thing to ask. Yes. You know, it's not an un yeah. It's a reasonable thing to ask. I'm trying to remember. They keep it a secret, even to all the people in uh, Jackson, right, Fringy? I don't recall any conversation that happens in that game that wasn't because he tells well, Tommy, she she reveals so like, it to her, Dina, which means that nobody knew, right? That that was a surprise. Yeah. Um. Well, and maybe maybe Maria knows as well. Maybe. Um, yeah. In fact, it's probably likely that she knows, but that's it. One thing to add about the dog: they established in the first episode that dogs are aware of the infection with the old lady, so it makes sense the posse would use one. And that's true. I Dogs just, can sense evil. We've got to mention there, there is that was, scene in episode yeah. one, um, but I don't even know why people are hung up on this one. I can just believe that a dog can smell these things. Like, I, I completely I agree, I, just, I didn't realize I this. Conversation. <laughs> but like, it's just funny that the show even has more setup for it than we even needed to defend that that aspect. But a lot of people that's true. Took but now you it. have an in text reference the dog defeat. looks You've been sus destroyed about the granny and then later the dog is like don't go in there human don't and then she's like i'm gonna go in there and the dog's like yeah it's your funeral interesting how so many electronic devices work so well after 20 years of inactivity and without uh maintenance reminded me of army of the dead where they got a whole uh forsaken casino building running fine with a few gallons of gas I don't know enough about it to know just how much of it would have degraded and fall apart versus stuff like that can be switched back on. Like if an arcane machine is, well, especially if things end up getting rusty, you know. Yeah, because, like well, I'm familiar, as, as I'm assuming you guys are, like, leave batteries into a, in a thing, they, like, bleed and rust, like, a... Uh, well, it's yeah. something that a lot of people don't really think about, is it the, or maybe, maybe I'm just projecting, but, like, the electronic, like, that's, that's a physical thing that exists. And the way that it works is in the physical world, like that these things don't just automatically work like perfectly all the time. Yeah. And in the case of this, right, like 20 years of not being used, not being maintained, who knows about like condensation or just like water that leaks through, like how much damage it could cause, as well as like the broad building itself, you know, like having a functional electricity, you know, system. And maybe it could have been made more impactful that the arcade is all down except for that one cabinet. And it's like, except yeah, for and, and she says, Kombat, yeah. I've been working on it. Like, I managed to get it. Yeah, that could fix. be. Yeah. And hey, maybe that's why she's in the Firefly. She's got some uh, technical Skills. proficiency. Yeah. Boy, that zombie sure was stealthy until seconds before he loudly revealed himself. I'm just not a fan of the whole sequence. Uh, how much, yeah. like, could you imagine how yeah. much cooler and creeper could have been? This reminds me of It Follows. They're, like, dancing and singing and, and or whatever, and just looking away, and the camera's facing so that we can just see the zombie getting closer and closer and closer, and they just don't realize until it gets the easy freebie bite, which frees up, you know, get, maybe hit Riley, and then Ellie's efforts to get it off, he gets bitten too. Simple. But instead we got what we got, and it's like, eh. <laughs> what you'd say is probably the hardest variable to have controlled for in that episode was that sequence. They didn't do it very well. Right. Yeah, it was, and they didn't do it. Yeah. Not showing what happens after they get bitten is a huge mistake for me. The scene would be too interesting to leave to the imagination with too many variables. Does Ellie kill Riley just before she turns? Does she kill her after? Does Riley kill herself so Ellie doesn't have to? Does Ellie keep her locked up and hopes for a cure? Do the Fireflies find them before they turn? Does Ellie lock Riley in a shed to play video games like Shaun of the Dead? Good reference. I think what <laughs> happened, that is a, that's a good reference. I think what happened is they look at like the ending for the episode of almost presenting it as an sense kind of poetic like they said it would be by cutting it off of just them sitting there and then ellie making the choice to stay and help joel i get that as like a thing that they would want to do but i agree with this comment there's like there's a lot that you could pull from like well what actually happens though what what choices did ellie make when she realized that she yeah, was, okay different and that Riley was deteriorating and uh, to know which one of these things happened does kind of change what we know she's been through. Yeah, exactly. Because I, yeah, I think they're different it, enough. It's, quite, it's super, super consequential. Like what choices she could have made and how they inform who she is. And to not provide an answer is like it's not really that you're preserving a mystery. You've kind of just foregone like a really good opportunity uh, to build character. Especially yeah, with how that episode was paced, and I feel like we could have skipped over or sped up a whole lot of it, and we missed uh, yeah, what could have been a really super awesome thing to see how they deal with it.
you could have expanded on what was in the game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Because the game doesn't provide like an answer either as to like what actually happened. I feel like they've pretty heavily implied what happened with Riley after this. This episode establishes that she has never seen a dead body before. Then, later in the timeline, she tells Joel that she has already had to hurt people after shooting that guy. She could be talking about the infected she killed under the gas station, but that particular kill didn't appear to be emotionally devastating to the point where she wouldn't talk about it later. She has also asked Joel if he ever feels bad killing an infected when he knew it was a person before. Seems pretty clear to me that Riley turned and Ellie shot or stabbed her. But while the show hasn't been the strongest in every situation, it has had a pretty constant peppering of significant character motivations and world building through questions, actions, or details in prior episodes. Refreshing! to have at least some level of detail in the writing compared to a lot of other garbage lately. That is fair, that um, it's more than likely she would have killed Riley, but I still would say that that's well worth seeing, um, but I don't know. I, I think it'd be really interesting. Well. That just adds to, yeah, it adds to that line that she tells to Joel later, you know? Yeah, like, I don't, um, I don't disagree with the comments that that's, like, more than likely what happened and that you could infer that from references before. I just think it's worthwhile to see that. It's a really potent character moment. Seeing that one zombie in this episode really reminded me how they are barely a factor in this world. We've had so few uh, extended encounters with them overall. Off the top of my head, it's one, the two in the museum, two, the kiss of death, three, the bloater and its horde, and four, this episode. Then there are smaller encounters like one, Bill's trap killing that one, and two, Ellie killing the trapped one. In the game, the zombies are a constant threat in almost every section, and there are always large groups of them. Even in some supposedly safe sections like uh, quarantine zones, there are always a few in some unprotected place, and it really felt like an infestation everywhere. I just don't think that this, uh, the show is doing enough to show the importance of saving the world by getting a cure. At this point, it seems uh, very rare for people to get bitten. It seems very easy to avoid most of the zombies, as long as you don't go to large cities or just stay in designated safe areas. So this is uh, an interesting point of view, because at first I thought they were heading to the position of just like, where's, where's my zombies and my zombie show? But then they turn around and they say, well, no, it's it's making me wonder about the importance of even getting a cure in this world. You know, like, why, why, blah, blah, blah. And I was just sitting there thinking like, oh, I thought that was kind of part of the point in uh, the game was that like, how viable is a cure anyway? Yeah, The Last of Us 2 struggles on this because if you're already infected, it's over, you're done. It's it's safe to assume that the infected have so much brain damage yeah. that, that they're, they're done. So they can't be saved. And so it's like, oh, well, if we give you the cure, you can't be infected. But like, you see what clickers do to people and bloaters, they just kill people. So like, even if you can't be infected, it's like, well, they're still going to kill you anyway. Um, the reality we, is that like, yeah. a cure... It has some utility, sure, but, like, it, it ain't that helpful um, in this world. Yeah, yeah, you have to be bitten, but not killed not by died. the infected that yeah, bites exactly. you. Yeah, which I imagine is probably a rather small amount of well, people. All you need to do is look at the deaths that happen in The Last of Us, like the obvious non-canonical Joel deaths. It's like, dude, he's dead. Like, <laughs> he's getting killed. Yeah, not, like he's, in he's not getting infected with the hopes of being cured or anything. He's just dead. The funny thing is, though, where I thought this comment was going, I was partially inclined to agree, depending on how these last two go, it does feel like we didn't get much, um, even though there's, there's several examples to speak to. I think this is only going to go as far as a preference. I would have liked some more zombie interactions, and I'm starting I would, to... I would agree with you. So far, I kind of feel like I, I want to see more zombies. I do feel like they're not enough of a... When they're here, they're a big threat, but they seem to be not here a lot. My feeling has changed over the course of the season, because that first encounter that they had with the two in the uh, museum, I was like, that was really cool to show that just two of them is yeah. really scary. But we haven't had any encounters well, um, like that. The Six game seven, has basically. loads of them, and I was just thinking to myself, like, Fine. imagine, yeah, just in the middle of an episode where they're traveling, Joel and Ellie, you have just, like, a, a subway or an area that's, like, a, a corridor type, but it's quite big, and there's just, you know, seven infected just... Just uh, I mean, clickers specifically, fight, and they you know? yeah, and they need to be need silent, to and the stress of the yep. you know like don't touch anything, don't step on anything, and then you know you get your standard like oh one of them's walking right by you oh, and then you're fine, and then you step on a twig, and you're like oh, and then they both like start sprinting, and it just seems like that. Well, it's like, know, we've it, had like it, none of them really. No, we we haven't, um, except for that first scene in the museum. Yeah. Because the next time that we saw it, it was massive hordes, which is, um, it's a bit different from the game. In the game, there's not often massive hordes. I like the things like, we've had, you know, except probably the 
Riley one. I, just, I don't know. I've got a beef with yeah, that. Yeah, that one was <laughs> like, that but, one was lame. But, but I, I, I would get have liked like more. It, it seems like it's a because uh, it's kind of the same with raider encounters because the game so much of it is encounters with raiders and encounters with infected and they were definitely not going to be doing as many as the game does because there's no need to facilitate like combat or anything. But yeah, I guess the longer that it goes on, the more it's like oh, there haven't been that many encounters. No, and we I mean, don't need like big blowouts like the one that we got in episode five like all the time that can totally be reserved for you know big mid-season or like season finales yeah and but my yeah argument, we probably could do what's more infected my more substantive argument for why we should have these is probably because it's another dynamic and layer for binding the two of them together watching how they survive together and then you know the two of them helping each other out and in ellie's like increasing competence would be good as well to see yeah. because you know she never had to deal with these encounters joel's dealt with them all the time and we could even do what we have in the games right where ellie will help by like throwing like an object to distract enemies or like throw a brick at you know somebody that they've encountered yeah i'm really surprised we haven't seen a um, brick or a bottle being thrown like to distract a clicker that, that is kills. an easy reference yeah that happens so easy much reference. in the game yeah yeah but you know again so like i like i said it's just funny to have that thought from the first portion but then the second portion being like you know i'm not even sure cure's gonna make that much of a difference like i'm pretty sure that's what we said in defense of joel when the last of us two shot on him like uh i think it's one of the big defenses is that the notion that it will save the world is a pipe dream and that's putting to one side the logistics of even disseminating the cure and whether the fireflies would want to do that considering that they're at war with the government and then you go yeah they like, certainly wouldn't give it to fedra just right no said right like joel is responsible for all the deaths moving forward after what he did with ellie <laughs> It's just like, you'd have to be incredibly naive to think that a cure would have solved the Earth's no, problems. No, well, so when, when somebody gets killed by a bloater or the Rat King, it's or a like, raider. well, or a raider, it's like, well, yeah, but the or cure, mission, like, that would the have The cure would have done it. Like, it's like, no. Obviously, like, you know, the debate, it's it's kind of like a, a thing that happens a lot. Like, Children of Men, you know, was a similar thing of, like, is the, is the world even, is it beyond saving at this point? Uh, and that film's answer is no, it's not. The Last of Us is more complicated <laughs> in terms of, like, is the world the Us... saving? It's like, logistic it's like damn man how are you gonna do it you know i think the last of us is one of the best ways to explain in a quick format the circumstances required for a person to pick one over everyone exactly. a person can easily be brought to that and the thing is the audience doesn't really disagree with him yeah pretty much like the general perception of joel at the end of the last of us was like yeah cool bro like you know you you go <laughs> save ellie like go get her as well, opposed it's... to like whoa what joel you've doomed the world i don't think that that was a common perspective about that game at all well, and people are worried right that they'll recontextualize it in this show and make him like obviously the villain but it's funny because um even in the scenario that it's absolutely certain that she'll like the whole world will be a utopia if she simply gives up her life and she agrees agrees to it. I can still understand a father preventing that from happening. No, I would say if, if the show actually wanted to present like, yeah, the world will be good, I'd be like, I think that's yeah, that a bad would, right uh, in there. I don't uh, think yeah, that's that a be, recognition of reality. Fucking, well, we're almost there. But we have to see. We're coming, we're so show. close we're coming. to that, uh, that episode. And there won't be any comment showcase for what the reaction is to episode nine, will there? Nope. We'll make a special. Uh, 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 we'll sneak what, in a, a final cheeky comment showcase. Comment the, showcase the extravaganza Whoa. bonanza palooza. No guarantees. No promises. No one is no. safe. I think my big problem is that this is just yet another episode that we don't have Ellie and Joel. If this show was 13 to 15 episodes, I am totally on board with this kind of episode. But the problem is, we only have nine. With episode three not focusing on their relationship, and episode one being primarily flashbacks and setups, we only have six episodes to have their relationship. Episode two has Tess, and Joel is very cold to Ellie. So that's even less. The next episode will most likely be the David episode, so they won't talk too much, which leaves a whopping four episodes where we can really focus on Joel and Ellie. The pacing of this show wants to be Breaking Bad or Daredevil, where we can spend time doing multiple stories, but it just isn't. We simply don't have the time. I don't know, it's just when Joel says that she isn't his daughter in the game, your heart shatters, because you saw their bond grow for hours. When he says it in the show, I was more confused as to why he would really consider her a daughter. I guess they were together for three months, but unfortunately we don't get to see any of that potential development. I think it's being undersold a little bit, here in this comment, but I still understand this perspective. And I would actually I agree that understand the perspective 13 too, to 15 yeah. episodes would probably be like if we knew that we had hit episode 8 out of 15 and uh, that everything had spread further and chunkier and we got more time with them, I do think that would be an improvement, yes. 
I do as I, well. I wouldn't scoff at more time. Yeah, I would definitely wouldn't scoff at more time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's nice to have, you know, like episode three, it's nice to have that. If I could choose with the last episode between having like more Joel and Ellie or Ellie and Riley, I'd rather have Joel and Ellie, you know? Um, I would take in the full episode being Joel and Ellie with uh, her talking about what happened with Riley. Yeah, it just, I feel like we kind of, like, it's feels kind of like a waste of an episode. It's not, but I feel like it, I just wouldn't have gone that route. I feel like not think, enough happened um, for what they committed to. I'd, I wouldn't say it was like a waste of, of an episode. It's more that with the amount of time that you have, you didn't use that time very effectively. Like, yeah, um, the, you could have, you spent a whole you episode on this concept. More, we didn't get our juice yeah, you out could, of it. You could have achieved more with that concept, or you could have shaved down the amount of time that was spent on that to have other material, because we are getting close to the end. Like, we've got two episodes left, and there is something to be said about the game being longer in total than this uh, the show is. Though in terms of, like, cutscenes to, to show time, it might be different. But, I mean, that is part of the story, right, is the encounters that you have. Yeah. Um, like, it's not a clear segmenting between that gameplay and the story. Well, and I guess Mind, to look at the the Frank yeah. portion is developing Ellie and Joel at the same time. That's right, because not in the show the, them sort of as a parallel. Yeah, the show's like developing a thematic element, but uh in terms of like advancing Joel and Ellie, obviously Ellie's not in that episode much at all. It's very clear that a lot of people understandably want to see more of Joel and Ellie together talking, doing stuff. It's the best part of the game. Yeah, I mean arguably the best part of the show too. I would definitely yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd go down the route um, of having just more of them together. The favorite for me is still episode five because I think that was just a really that solid is full very package. Strong. Having yeah, um, that was really good the bouncing agree, of all yeah. four of those characters, having a villain that was pretty well understood and just a polar yeah, opposite to saw, really. a lot of what those characters are trying to run with, but also a cautionary tale. The action scene was just really fun. Of course, there were still problems mm -hmm. in the episode, but I like you know less so compared to how bad it could have gotten. And none of them, like, ruin characters or anything. And, uh, yeah, a lot of Joel and Ellie back and forth thing and stuff, and a lot of characters. Like, that, that, if we had that every episode in the season, I think it would be ready to be a hell of a lot more praise. But yes, I understand this, and um, it'll be interesting to think of the show in as a whole once we get the last two episodes done. These two episodes are kind of critical. I think these two episodes will make or break the show. You know, this will determine whether it's going to be like, yes, that was a great season of television, or damn, you like tripped up at the finish line and that like changes a lot of the material that came before, like in recontextualizing what it all led up to. If so, these uh, next two are like two. the last one, we could have some issue. Yeah, we're going to have some problems. If they are of the same quality as episode five, however, it'd be like, ooh, that'd be a really strong finale. And I suppose yep. the other thing that is looming over this is how are you going to change that final episode in particular? What choices are you going to be making <laughs> in, yeah. terms of, uh, watching, in terms of the, the ending watching. that we're leading to and the next season of television that we know is happening? And they had to have known they were going to get, like, that we're going to be entering into next. The disappointment I have in EFAP's analysis is that they have missed a rare opportunity with this show. Going after Quantumania, Doctor Strange, MOM, basically anything Ryan Johnson writes is elementary. There are obvious issues at every turn. The Last of Us challenges us to dig much deeper. It's a perfect case study and opportunity to better understand the differences between what makes something good and what makes something great, and perhaps walk away with a greater insight on film and story in general. It is a show that mimics a game that's widely considered to be a masterpiece by most, often shot for shot and line for line. Yet people are quite divided. Many saying the show is only good, it's competent, but it is not great like the game. This can't be dismissed by it not matching preconceived expectations because the same opinion is held by a number of people who never played the game. Why is the consensus uh, so unified for the quality of the story in the game, yet not for the show? It's uncommon we get an adaptation that follows an original masterpiece so closely. It offers the same kind of opportunity as the Psycho remake, which, despite being nearly shot for shot, line for line, still fell far short of the original masterpiece. It suggests... There's more to the difference between a film that's good and a film that's great than just the story, script, cinematography, editing, and so on. There are subtle things that aren't as easily picked up on that can make all the difference between something that is good but forgotten and something that lives on eternally as a classic. We have no shortage of bad films and shows in which to point out the flaws. We have many great films and shows in which to praise. But The Last of Us gives us something much more rare. It offers an uncommon chance at comparison and insight into what makes something good and what makes something great that we may not find elsewhere and simply defending and praising this show 
completely squanders the real value that can be drawn from it. I appreciate that you're being, I think you're trying to be like pretty good faith here, but like, that's not a great comment, my dude. This oh. is like reducing all of our analysis down to like simply defending and praising this show when we'd be more than willing throughout our coverage to well, I, I, offer I, and let Genuine criticisms. response. This feels like a comment that belongs on like a different video because, uh, or a different series of videos because not only do we, I don't know if anyone else in their reactions are doing like extensive comparisons to the game and then talking about whether or not we thought uh, different parts are better or worse even down to particular line deliveries and being like oh the choice to like for example we, we've talked at certain points about really tiny changes i know i have done on open bar as well obviously the comparison of how they did frank we did we did a lot on that one it's so, what's quite baffling as i feel like the coverage that we've been providing is much more about digging into the parts rather than the sum of its parts of like oh well you know it has this which the game had it has this with the game had like it's been very much like a lot of times point by point attempts at comparison what we thought was better or what we thought was worse and why it's been thorough like i don't know what to say well so then i was going to highlight like like, this is we watch it and then talk about it. This isn't a Mola video or a fringy this video like on yeah, Endgame exactly. or any kind of and like this deep isn't dive. A, this isn't like an EFAP where we've we've got like from beginning to end everything that we want to talk about in the story going point by point chronologically for hours. Every piece of media is a huge opportunity to do all kinds of things. We're gonna yeah, cover it as like, is our multiverse preference. Of madness. Yeah. yeah, I I don't like the 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 idea. It's like multiverse of madness is elementary. It's like is it really elementary to like have to delve into like all of those intricate like mechanics of like the fucking what was it the incursions well yeah I, and, like the illuminati and their role in that world to like lay out in a manner that is as coherent as you can like do with that it's film. not easy to Why catch shit. that um like when you say america chavez is assassinated by the end of the film i don't think anybody knew what i was talking about when i like decided finally caught that from several digs she has the power <laughs> to save her parents whenever she wants it's like that's something that's insane but most people don't catch yeah, that like do you feel like the majority of people who watch that film would be like yeah i mean obviously like that's elementary my dude like yeah of course that's that's a problem with that film and then uh ryan johnson films they're actually difficult to untangle well heaps of people love those movies and think that they're brilliant and then and saying like you know simply defending and praising the show it's like we don't this is like a, re a live reaction essentially that's just recorded here you well, know, but, it's but just like, I, I want to make it clear, but... we are not just defending and praising the show. That's not true. That's just no, false. No, that's not what's happening. And especially if this was the comment on last week's episode, how could you possibly say that? We that's, thought that that's the our most like disliked episode. We, as in, we, we even <laughs> went into why we thought it was flawed, and we explain what our did, defenses did are, why well, we think what in... we think, and how we got there. That was the episode where I laid out exactly why I think the game is better than the show, and I did like visuals to try to help support the points about. About pacing characters relationships and like choice of i don't know what whatever dramas happen events happen it's like i don't understand this comment just feels like it belongs somewhere else it's because it's their new favorite shiny toy they wouldn't be getting flamed in their comments if they were upfront and honest about their bias towards the show it's honestly entertaining watching their audience pushing back against them well so. i'd say that our new favorite shiny toy was dead space uh, oh yeah, more so than the last yeah. Last. <laughs> and Ragnarok um, before that. Oh, yeah. Ragnarok. Well, yeah, that was the first thing I kind of wanted to say. It's like we like this show, but I don't think yeah, any no, of us love it. I don't love it. No, no, I'm not. I'm not there yet. I don't, I don't love it yet. No, I like if, it. I think it's good. I think it's better than than it's getting credit for in uh in certain circles. I think Secondly, so. I find it amusing about this. I wonder if this comment to I don't know if they know the history of EFAP. This Are is like our here? this is like our 150th time we fight our audience. We do it all the time. Well, like, I, I is, think uh, if, look at it. This it's is a common occurrence. Their audience. The way that this is framed is, is uh, the, he's not a part of. The I get audience. it. Their audience. Himself as part yeah. of the audience. Yeah. yeah. Because the uh, audience but, pushing but again, back is like, man, time. I can't think of a single other time that might have happened. And you know what else is mm -hmm. kind of funny? I'm just thinking about the comment above, right? All this evidence, they, they use the fact that people are quite divided on the show, saying it's good and bad, and that with, uh, you know, understanding why people don't like it, right? It goes beyond editing cinematography they're so close. It's just like, this applies to everything. And um, we've always taken a stance, pretty much. There's, there's, it's rare we come across a film or a TV show or a game where we just go, no opinions on that whatsoever. And whenever we do, that means we've, we've pretty much gone in opposition to anyone else who thinks the opposite which happens a lot seriously a large amount of time like i knew people were disappointed to find out like i didn't think much of uh banshees of inner they were like oh it's like i was like well yeah yeah that's probably gonna be an unpopular take because this mcdonough's films are always really really well received and and the reason and I, I bring I, that I, up is just that's yeah. the most recent controversial take i've had i think 
Yeah, and how many is that this year already? You know. Well, like, and the the best part is, takes. I've got like twenty, thirty of them cooking that you guys don't even know about yet. <laughs> mm, they don't know. They ain't ready yep. for some of them. And also, I just see they wouldn't be getting flamed in their comments if they were upfront and honest about their bias towards the show. Well, I mean, we were pretty upfront about our bias against the show. Going yeah. Into it. <laughs> oh yeah, for ages before the show came out, from the moment it was announced, we went, uh oh. Brace it's yourself. always been. Mm, I did. Uh, I don't understand. I did the same uh, thing with. If you watch me and Nidrotic's House of the Dragon coverage in the first few episodes, I just admit I'm biased against the show. I kind of hate it. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's really mean that you hate it because it's good. It's just like, yeah, well, and I was just like, that's just reality. But it completely won me that's over. I can't say that this isn't the same thing where I went from being like, yeah, this show's probably not gonna be very good to being like, okay, this is this is good. I find it interesting, right, that they said like this was the the chance for you guys to talk about the difference between like good and great. And then I was thinking about all the discussions we've had across these episodes, and I feel like that's what that is. When we talk about like these smaller failings, and yeah. also we've done that before. Like I'm not really sure why we're just talking about Marvel movies. Like you know that we've covered more than Marvel movies, right? Well, yeah, oh, it was just the last. What was our coverage did. of Underwater? If not like this, is an interesting example of an okay to good movie. Yeah, and then we talked about what could have made it great. Mm -hmm. And then, of yeah, course, the many it. examples of films where it's like, so this is like, you know, mediocre or it's sliding into bad territory, but it's not like anywhere near, you know, like the absolute drags of like what you can, you know, get with stories. You, we like, talked when discussing MOM, what could have made that great? Because you can with every single yeah. movie that comes out. They st they still can be great. I don't know, man. Like, I feel like you missed a lot of uh, a lot of the coverage that we've done, like in general. It's kind of the implication of us saying we think this show's good. Here are the ways we think it you know, messes up or makes mistakes. That's kind of the distinction between good and great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The implication yeah, exactly. is if they didn't have those mistakes or they made the improvements that we suggested that it might elevate it to great. Yeah, I, I do not understand the basis for people like this guy saying that, because when he says favorite shiny toy, I think he's saying like you're playing favorites and I don't see what the basis is for saying that you're playing favorites. I mean, after The Last of Us Part Two, I'd say you're probably all expecting it to be not be very good, like you said. But I don't know. Do they think that you're tied to one of the actors, like Pedro oh, or something, because you praised him in Mandalorian we, or something? We, we or, went over this last episode. The best they could do is you like it. And that's your bias. It's like, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I do like it, but I don't know that that's like what I was trying to ascribe here in terms of like a bias stemming from liking something. Am I biased because I like Ratchet and Clank and then I also say that the games are great? It's like, well, you would. You're biased. You'd like it. It's like, which comes first? That it's great and therefore I like it or what? You know, like it's... Yeah. Uh, it how, makes how me think they like... forgot our Last of Us 2 coverage. I appreciate the corrections on a couple of the earlier comments we've looked at and some highlights of uh, other realities, things that we can agree disagree. This was just one of the examples of a greater criticism. I don't really know what to do with this because like most of what it's asking for i feel like we've been doing so you know i guess we'll carry mm. on we, i'm pretty sure we mentioned it last episode just an example we love it. just one too. just one at least well, the person who brought up the ragnarok dog was like oh well, that's, <laughs> that's a terrible example, example but yeah. like at least you tried but and it brought is up at least they example. tried yeah we can, we can grapple with it we can at least explain well, you know what bringing last comment we do have an example it's kind of funny how Mola says, you can easily make a headcanon about this uh, plot problem. So I guess now it's fine if you have to do the writer's work for them. Wasn't that supposed to be a sign of how the show isn't that competent if you have to come up with your own headcanon? I need to cue that oh. scene from Infinity War. What, the face um, that he makes? Or... Where he's just... He just can't believe it. So um, just, I almost yeah. want to like reflexively be like, oh God, no, guys, no, 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 no. We don't want everything explicit. That's where my mind's gone to straight away. You know, like, um, yes. we, we, we yes. want a lot of our favorite scenes of all time will be characters just looking at something or expressing something or even taking an action. And we all get to discuss why they did it, right? Because like, I mean, just, this is just one of them uh, teachable opportunities, I suppose. If you can see this 21 replies, plenty of people know exactly what the difference is. But, but some people don't, so we can go over it. First and foremost, one can mm -hmm. headcanon literally anything ever whenever they want. They can if they want to. You can. Um, to go to an extreme, if someone said, like, um, I love that, you know, Homer Simpson is actually an alien. That, that, that if you watch the whole show, it just makes way more sense. Be like, okay. I don't think much of anything really supports that, and most people aren't going to accept it. It's like, that kind of headcanon, it's like, yeah, you can do that. But headcanon refers to way more than just that. And so, And not all headcanon is created equally. 
to be excessive about this, all right? Why did Vader attack the Emperor at the moment that he did in Return of the Jedi? It's like, if we're all discussing this just after I've watched it, we go, well, because Luke is about to die. He's, he's, he's literally about to die. Or, or maybe because Luke says, um, I think he says, Father, please, among many other quotes. And that reminds him of, of a duty as a father to protect his son. We're like, what else? He's like, uh, well, he loves Luke. And you just can't stand to see him in pain. That's, you know, just like that. It's like, what about finally seeing the Emperor as the monster he truly is? And he has to stop yeah. him. Like, what about he just he's decided this is it. I've, I've had enough. I have to stop the galaxy from suffering. And this is how I can do it. It's like, you could... You could pick all of them or any of them, really. I don't really... Like, if someone said, no, he's not thinking about the galaxy when he does that, you're like, eh, you know, maybe not. Maybe, though. It's kind of hard to say. And if I said, yeah, you can kind of head kind of whatever you want there, what I'm referring to is out of those options. If someone said, well, no, Vader did it because he really likes fireworks and he wanted to throw the Emperor down there and see him explode because it'd be funny. Like, that's that's why he did it. It's like, um... <laughs> and then he's like, no, no, no. repressed. He thought lifting the Emperor up would power him up. Uh, he didn't realize he would die from that. He was hoping he'd live. It's like, okay. And someone else is like, oh, well, you know, they, this is where they play fight. And this time it went too far. And the thing about the first set that I went through is that all of them are supported and none of them contradict anything in the text, I would say. Meanwhile, the later ones I just mentioned, all of them contradict what comes after. So they can't fit. They, they cannot be... You could headcanon it for yourself, but you can't like headcanon it in a way that it can match the world. It can slip right in and actually work. Maybe you could call it soft headcanon and hard headcanon, something like that. But this would apply to multiple sort of things. Like, why does any character do anything? Uh, well, we watched it recently. Why did, why did Elsa try to grab the Holy Grail at the end of The Last Crusade? It's like, she wanted youth forever. She wanted the power. She just considered it so fucking precious. She just wanted to have it for herself. Like the greed or whatever. You're like, okay, yeah, it could be any of them. It could be all of them. And then someone said, well, because obviously she wanted to lick it and then she could fly away. That's, that's how that works. It's the power you get from it. Like, no, I don't think that's true at all. And I don't think anything supports that. And I think that's insane. I don't think you, if that yeah, were and true. Then, and then of course, like, in that example, the converse of like a bad argument would be it's insane that she would even try to do that. She's gonna slip and die. So why would she ever like try to do that? It's like, well, you need to think about who she is. Yeah. And you know, what she values. So it works both ways. Well, that's a great example. Going if you way said too like far to yeah, she's killing herself by doing that. And you go, yeah, but that's how much she wants it. And then you're like, so that's just headcanon. When does she ever say, I really want this? Let's go with the counterexample that they're probably referencing from my uh, TLJ videos. Why didn't Holdo tell Poe the plan? Like, well, back when that was all happening, right, the first thing that people said was, like, she doesn't like him, and he keeps, like, asking for information so brazenly, especially after causing such a fucking disaster. You remember? He got all the fleet destroyed. What an asshole. It's like, okay, fine. I accept that. That's the reason. Let's talk about it. Had he not done it, everyone would now be dead. And we can go through all the details on that, but that's just true. And most people are like, oh, yeah, okay, when you explain how it all works. And it's like, also, Leia could have stopped him at any moment during that whole battle, but she doesn't. Like, that's strange. She outranks him. And I'm pretty sure there's an admiral on board that outranks him too. So why are we all blaming him when we could easily have outranked and stopped him at any point? Especially because all the people in that... Do you remember, like, they're all Already communicating and they're all very happy? They're all like, you know, I'm here, Poe, let's do it, you know. And it was all planned. And uh, Leia's, like, suggesting yeah, they we cut it off. Yeah, they and everything. Exactly. They were already there. They launched, pri they launched prior. They were already on their way. You saw how slow those fucking things are. And so this this starts to fall apart. You're like, is that why? Because that doesn't really make sense. And she likes Poe. She, she, like, smiles at him and says, so he's like a it. good dude and yeah it's like I, 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 she literally tells leia you know i really like him and so then you have people being like uh fine no okay uh she thought he's a mole she thought he was a mole there you go and a lot of people started parroting that because it was like yeah that makes sense there you go and it's like there's nothing that supports that and there's only something small that contradicts it so where are you getting that from and it's sad because like it kind of would be an interesting plot point right if either uh holder was the mole or hux had like you know sent well, over no. false information about how poe was a mole and that there was just a question of his loyalty and that it caused severe friction on the ship. You know, something like that. None of it's in the film. None of it. There's no reference to moles. There's no reference to anything to do with, like, a distrust of Poe in that direction. There's just nothing. And it's like, yeah, but, it, you know, if it were that way, if Hux maybe did fuck around with him, or if maybe she is, maybe she is a mole. Whatever works for you. And it's like, no, none of it's working. You can't, there is no head cannon that makes all of that work unfortunately. Other than maybe if you say, well, Holdo was, uh, she was hit with, like, a mind scanner from an alien 
that happened to be in the area that shot her through like the walls to make her unreasonable. That's my head cannon. When um, it's like what we hadn't uh, we hadn't talked about it in a while because it hasn't really popped up as an issue. But it used to a while back this element of us trying to be objective and how that was often misconstrued or misunderstood as us saying that we're searching for some element of absolute truth or that we can't possibly be wrong in our search or, or in our the process of being objective. And the headcanon talk, it, it, it's similar in a way where your headcanon can be wild and nonsensical and completely made up and have no references or not be based on anything that's actually in the material. Or it could be supported by a vast amount of lines and scenes and what we understand about characters and the plot and the mechanics of the world. And so when your head cannon is really, really, really in line with what's actually in the material, I think it's it has its most merit. This was an issue with uh, one of the last videos that I did regarding Obi-Wan Kenobi's death in A New Hope, where I think that Obi-Wan Kenobi, when he notices that Luke is watching him fight Vader, that's when he decides to let Vader kill him, partially, I believe, or, uh, to a great deal, so that it helps to motivate Luke to do what he couldn't do and kill Vader and stop the Emperor, uh, the Emperor and the Empire. It's not explicitly said in the film, but based off the timing and the expression and the stated goals that Obi-Wan has for Luke and, you know, speaking to him as a Force ghost, I think that even if this is headcanon, I guess maybe it is, I don't know, I think it's really, really strongly uh, supported by the events in the film. So that's just a recent example for me with a different other part of the media. It might just be the sticking point of using the term headcanon because it's like I think so. explicit I think and non-explicit information and how you control the use of it. With all of that being said, it's like, why does the dog look like inquisitive or kind of tilted at a person and then he's chill with them a little bit later? Well, dogs are animals that have all kinds of emotional states for all kinds of reasons. We've never met this dog before and all we know is that it's a sniffer for the cordyceps stuff. He could change his approach based on really anything. Uh, the, 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 any smells coming from any location could make him change expressions briefly or behaviors. You could change it based on the height of the person he's walking up to, the, the weight of them, sex, clothing, smells that come from them directly that don't even relate to cordyceps. Could be he's tired in that moment and he's like waking back up. Could be there's something in the distance he saw. Could be he doesn't like the feel of the cold out of his paws on the floor. Maybe he needs to pee could be hungry maybe the sun is in his eyes in a bit of an awkward angle he doesn't like the cut of everyone's jib perhaps i could go on but the point is in return of the jedi and the last crusades instances you could infer a lot of reasons for vader or elsa's decisions but you can't go much further than what has support you can't you can't go so far outside of it that it starts causing contradictions right in The Last Jedi, you can't actually pick a motive that can fit with the story unless you start to build up other story elements that literally aren't there. But even then, I'm those will friend. like eventually contradict, and so they, they can fuck it up too. For the Last of Us, you can pick one of a hundred reasons the dog can give an expression. I can't even believe I have to explain that. Like, it could be any fucking reason, is my point. You're welcome to pick. It literally changes nothing about anything. It could be any of them. Until we get more information about this dog, see more examples of how he sniffs people, or whatever, we can't even base a consistent attitude. We saw what we saw. There could be any countless reasons for this to happen. Hence why I said, headcanon whatever you want. And I find it really bizarre that we call this a plot problem. It's not a problem. The dog can look a different way and then a different way. That is totally possible. Dogs can do this. Rags, can you please confirm? Definitely. 100%. Every time. Always. What you can't do is say that the dog was apprehensive at first because he's actually a dog mech that's being driven by Joel from the future and that he's come back in time <laughs> in the dog to protect because he killed the real dog that would have bitten and t torn apart Ellie and instead he's driving that dog to protect her in that moment. Because then we'd be like, well, whoa, 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 whoa. If that's Joel and the dog, what, he, t sorry, time travel's possible. Like, of all the things he could be doing, he chose to do that. That's completely incoherent. It can't work at all. Meanwhile, the one that's incredibly simple and has a thousand options, you can go nuts. Should Hopefully. have been a whole episode setting up the dog. It's raised from, from yeah. a pup. And then it sets up like, this is why it can smell these things. And then... Yeah, how did he get trained? We didn't even get to see any of his training. <laughs> it was as well, like, as I was, like, to the first reaction I had, it was like, yeah, we don't want to lose this, by the way, guys, because it takes away subtleties from performances or even events. It's fun to dig into why characters feel 
a certain way or they yeah. take whatever actions they take. We don't need everything to be explicit, but at the same time, you need to be able to draw something. That was the big problem with Holdo. No one could figure out why she did it. Yeah, because it just didn't it didn't make sense. You looked at the material and you're like, what, why? Why though? I'm trying to figure it out. What am I supposed to do? An example I was thinking of, if I'm thinking of headcanon correctly, is um, in Breaking Bad Season 4, you know, when Brock gets poisoned in some way. There's a number of things that could have happened, and we don't need to know exactly which one of them it was. And it's not exactly Leon. laziness on the writer's part. Well, I mean, that, they deliberately omitted bad. it because you could have the big reveal and sinister implication at the end of that finale, where it's like, oh, Walt did it somehow, you know? The hyper-simplistic example of this whole headcanon thing is a character is in one location, and then they're in another one. It's like, well, how did they get there? It's like, they drove, probably. Well, they used which, the right. teleportation machine like, that they yeah. like, their... I'm very yeah, glad. Exactly no, right. We need to yeah. see them drive. I'm very yeah. glad you used that example because this has come up several <laughs> yeah. times over time. I was about to say annually, and you know what? I might commit to like more than annually, where people in our audience will ask us, and we actually answered this question on Super Chat Catcher semi-recently that we recorded, what is the difference between a reasonable inference and just making shit up for the story? And this goes all the way back to an EFAP episode, I want to say two or three, can't remember, where we talked about shut up about plot holes, where Patrick Willem said it is perfectly yep. reasonable to infer exactly what Batman did to get from the hole to Gotham, when um, that would be an example of where is the line between we need more information and we have enough information, that's probably yeah. the best example ever where it just crosses it, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, he is Batman, yes, he's Bruce Wayne, but we've been told he's bankrupt, he has basically, like, no contacts at this point, he's an incredibly broken man, he's in the middle of nowhere, and Gotham's on lockdown, and he has a time limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess there may be a one in a million way he could probably do this, I guess, but, like, good god, you owe us. There are a lot right. of variables for which saying nothing is like, hmm, I don't know if that's good enough as opposed to yeah. a character is in their house and then they got like i don't need to see homer drive to work like i know how he got there he used his car like but if homer's in space simple. you might be like well wait yeah or what? like if it was in a medieval world and it's like <laughs> you you teleported from one kingdom to another it's like well damn man like how long has it been you know like how long did it take you to get from one location to another it's all it's it's a blurry line but there is a line and it's all about reasonable inferences versus, a, you know, writing the story for the writer. I didn't expect mm -hmm. this to come up with the dog's expressions, though. No, I, I, I can't believe that the dog is <laughs> this one that is causing this these is problems. Stickler, like, yeah. why is it so hard to believe that a dog can smell like an infection? <laughs> it's, not, it's not that. It's that the dog looked kind of shifty and then he was okay with Ellie. That was what yes, was brought up as an inconsistency. Yeah, let's microanalyze the expressions that animals make all the time. That's what I mean. Yeah. I, that, that, hence, that's what I said. I was like, head cat of whatever the hell you want. He's thinking about whatever the hell you want. And then it's just like, wow. So we're just going to wow, head cat of the right, plot the problems away. For them, head catting the dog's clear fluctuations and inconsistencies. It's a dog. You can think whatever you want as long as it doesn't contradict any information you've been given before. That's kind of where mm -hmm. we sit on this. Was Vader partially informed by his his rush to kill the Emperor because he needed to pee? It's like, I guess that doesn't contradict anything. <laughs> and it's possible. <laughs> this is taking too long, Emperor. I'm gonna throw you <laughs> off so I can do it. Oh, no, I'm dying. No, oh, no, I guess I'll just pee in my suit. <laughs> this is no <laughs> reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, what I will say is this will come up again, and we'll talk about it again some other time. It could be half a year, it could be months from whenever, I don't know. It's just that there will be times where people feel like we are owed more information and we will feel the, the opposite or vice versa. It is possible. So uh, hopefully that helps you understand. And so, takes us to the episode. <laughs> There's that pensive music. Is this pensive? Um, I think so. There's a bit of that. Yeah. What do you think is the dominant emotion of this this theme? Uh, um, melancholy. I'd be inclined to agree on that. I think it's like a mix. It, it's very sort of neutrally. Um, like you could put it on to many kinds of different things. Like it could be on a a montage where someone's like working on a project, maybe, but they're fr a little bit frustrated. Like someone's died. And so they're trying to finish up a project that was personal to the person who died, perhaps, or someone's discovering, making a making a bit of a sinister discovery, like mm. a detective at a crime scene looking for clues. Like Batman. Yeah. Right. Snow. 
We predicted there would be snow because we saw snow last time. Look at that wide shot. That's a nice shot. That's real water they got there. And I saw <laughs> actual snow. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Uh oh. The tabernacle of God. Tabernacle's a funny is word. With men. Tabernacle of God is with me. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. They could do this in an actual church if they wanted to, right? I do uh, maybe how, they don't have one. How exactly they would scout out all the different places they want, or how much they'd want to keep it close to the game or not. That guy was in El Camino. You're right, he was one of the cops, right? Or the fake cops. Uh, the, yeah. The guy in the shootout, the other guy. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Ah, oh, and you're crying. It's so no funky. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither will there be any more pain. What a great deal. Yeah. Is he going to eat her in this scene? Um, hey. um, 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 um. This could be, they might have adapted the non-cannibal version. <laughs> when can we bury him? The ground is too cold to dig. Oh, we don't bury people here, bud. Oh, There's Troy. Troy. That was Troy? That's the, the ground Rags, that is dig. Joel. Wow. I hope he does his Joel voice in the show. But for now, so, he's going to be frozen. Oh, we may as well... Uh, acknowledge the elephant in the room that um, there is a bit of a twist in the game. You discover this group eat human meat. Oh my I, goodness gracious. And I imagine that that's already what they're implying with those looks after, you know, burying a body. It's like, I'm assuming maybe the community itself doesn't know. Hmm. Mm. That's, uh, because in the game, they're all, uh, they're, yeah. they're all happy to eat, uh, humans. Oh, I guess they're dealing more with the logistics mm. then of, like, they have a supply of food, but then occasionally they do this. Could be, yeah. And they mix it in. Josiah and Martin think they spotted some deer the other night, a couple miles east. He is not doing the Joel voice. Disappointing. Zero out of ten. Well, so it makes me wonder, could you guys have bought him as Joel in this? He's uh, not quite no. old enough, I think. You can age him up a bit. I think the build isn't quite right, but yeah, I agree. Maybe he could uh, do something about that. I don't know, as an actor. I feel like this is indicative of the strengths of video Still games. Good. Like, you can have somebody who's got the right voice and they can match, you know, the Still, uh, physicality in terms of movement and everything. But yeah. even if they don't quite look like what you want them to, it's like, well, it's a video game. You can create an yeah. original person. It's getting intense with that now, especially with uh, Christopher Judge and Kratos, right? Kratos, yeah. So much physical acting. At this point, it's like voice actor doesn't really cover it. The voice actor is kind of downplaying how much they have to do, like with that role, over how much time and yeah. physically embodying the character. Yeah. No slight against Troy on my part. I think that guy does a fucking amazing job doing the voice in the game. Like, oh, he yeah, does. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very, he's very right. good. And uh, it looked like what we were establishing there is that uh, David's got control through the Bible, at least somewhat, and he doesn't the want Bible. Yeah. I wonder if what they're going to try and set up here is that because Joel is near to death, they'd rather actually kill him and, and use him for meat rather than the person who was part of their group. Maybe that'll be the dynamic. Like, who are you with? Because they're not part of our group, so this would be a better trade for us. Mm. Could Maybe. go any direction. You never exactly know. Yeah. Here's a cracker for when you wake up. <laughs> it's a little reward for... It'd be so unfortunate cut. if he rolls slightly and it falls onto the floor and he's like, Connie, and now it's on the floor. Uh, she gets a straw from upstairs and she says, you need to suck up oh, those crackers. Oh, she's gonna go... Or is she... I wonder if she's gonna find a uh, bow. Well, she, I, I think the idea there is she's gonna go hunt something, right? Yes, but I wonder if they're gonna... Right, so no bow, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, especially considering if, if you have never... If you have not shot a before it no i mean of course in the in the yeah. game she uses a, a bow yeah i was half expecting for the episode to open on the shot with the rabbit where the arrow goes through oh it. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the cutest fucking thing i've ever seen in my entire life the bow, the bow implies, like, the fact that she's super proficient with that sort of implies a massive amount of time that she's been taking care of him. Like, it's been Ex a while. Exactly, um, yeah. Whereas here, it's seemingly more condensed because we haven't had the autumn section. We we went straight to winter. Right. Yeah, actually, if I was to guess, I don't actually, I wouldn't even know where to begin in terms of if, if it's been, could even have been just a week, maybe, or even less. It was like, it, it, yeah, it hasn't necessarily been long, which... Hmm. I wonder. Ah, ah. fuck that rabbit Ooh, up! Look at that rabbit. You can tell it's cold too by her face. 
She's actually be very, out the very they're, quiet. Yeah, they're clearly out in the. <laughs> That's yeah, a good reference. A... But yes, you can tell that they're actually shooting out in a cold area. Come on, Ellie, get it together. Yeah. Also, don't get lost. <laughs> like seriously, don't get lost. Getting lost is bad. I will actually. I give you that. Getting lost yeah. is real bad. Yeah. Well, there's the footprints. She can use that to get back. Clicking continues in brackets, excuse me. Clicking. <laughs> it's a dur. Where are my dur, a dur. It might not be real, but if you kill it, it turns into actual meat. Oh, like in Age of Empires. Shoot turns that deer. That's an easy shot. You That's got cute deer, though. It's Oh. nice shot. Decent-ish. Don't worry, it'll bleed. You follow it. Should have shot it in the brain. Shot right through the fucking face. <laughs> Idiot hunter doesn't yeah. aim yeah. to kill, instead aims uh, to make sure they I just love these hit. environment awesome. shots. The, I love that they've actually gone out to shoot in these really beautiful locations. In yep. Yep. Monte. Oh, schnitzel. I don't see anybody. Don't! Drop your rifles! Now! Who's there? Come out! Hello? We just want to talk. Turn and face me. Slow. Any sudden moves, I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for Buddy Boy. Any sudden moves, and I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for Buddy Boy over there. What do you want? You're quite a hunter. We didn't even hear you coming. Turn around and walk away. Okay. Just go. Name's David. This here's my friend James. But... From a larger group. Women, children. I, I won't say it twice. Please, just ten seconds. My name is David. This is my friend James. We're all very, very hungry. So am I. We're from a larger group, women, children, and we're all very, very hungry. So am I. Women and children, all very hungry too. Well, uh... I'm from a large group too. Also hungry. Maybe we could, uh... Trade you for some of that meat there. What do you need? We're not asking for charity. We we can trade you for some of the deer. We have what do you need? We have weapons, ammo, clothes. Medicine. Medicine? Like for infections. We do. Do you have any antibiotics? We do. Back at the camp. Welcome to follow us. I'm back. not following you anywhere. Back in our village, you're welcome to follow us. I'm not following you anywhere. Buddy boy can go get it. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. The deer is all yours. Anyone else shows up. You put one right between my eyes. That's right. He comes back, you get half the deer. Anyone else shows up, I put, you one, put right one right between... between my eyes. That's right. Two bottles of the penicillin in a syringe. Make it fast. Go on. Bring back two bottles and a syringe. It's not code, James. Do as I said. Drop your rifles! You're just trying to no! pitch your voice down to seem more intimidating. We didn't even hear you coming. Turn around and walk away. It's not quite okay, Batman, but it's a little bit okay, deeper. All I ask is 10 seconds. Put the weapons down! I won't say it twice. Please, just 10 seconds. Yeah, my she's overcompensating David. like crazy. This is my friend James. Medicine? Like for infections. We do. No, no, not that in infection. Like... He comes back, you get half the deer. Anyone else shows up, I put, one, put right one right between, between my eyes. I don't know, Troy doesn't seem convinced, does he? Some penicillin. Yeah, he's, uh... yeah, this is kind of like they've done it throughout the season. It's it's close. It's not quite one-to-one, -one, but it's close. Yeah, mm -hmm. fair number of parallels. Ten steps back. The blocking is pretty much one-to-one. -one. Five, six, <laughs> he slips seven, like, oh, whoa, 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 that was 11, damn it. That's why you're out here on your own? Hey, not well, bad. Like, uh, yeah, I like mm, you it's good. It's a four mile round trip back to our settlement. It's going to be a while before James gets back. I have some oil and matches in my pack. We could take shelter, start a fire. I wonder if they're going to do the encounter. Go. I do not know if they want to spend that kind of time on it. I'd like to see it. Well, I think that would be the one opportunity to introduce some infected in this episode. I don't expect them to do it at any other point.
point. Well, because even if it gives you a small, it gives you more of a reason to I push them warm. back in the direction of the settlement. Gives David more of a reason yeah, really to, you know. Idea. Well, if they do it, I hope they give more of a reason. It's kind of random in, in the game. Well, then just like, a, a sudden infected. Yeah. So, what's your name? Well, in the game, it establishes some sense of trust between the two characters, right? Strangers, I know. Yes. Like, yeah, a little bit. There's room for you in our group, if you want. You're inviting me to your hunger club? Thanks. Uh. It's true. <laughs> We're hungry. We're still here. I'm a decent man. Just That's what decent men say. That's also I'm what people job. lying say if they're not actually decent, if they're just pretending to be decent. Yes. This is true. That's the conundrum. Yes. Is this some weird cult thing? I am a preacher, but just pretty standard Bible stuff. What? The whole world ended and you still believe that shit. <laughs> I actually started believing after the world ended. <laughs> I was about to say that might have well, bolstered their beliefs, to be honest. Math. Yeah. Well, I found God after the apocalypse, which is either the best time or the worst time to find him. Hard to say. But when the Pittsburgh QZ fell in 17, I left with a few others, and that's how I ended up with our flock. A long way from Pittsburgh. <laughs> the That's a nod yeah, to the game for we'd sure. Settle somewhere and then raiders would come, mm. so we'd move again. Just like those fucking raiders, they're, they're like ants, and they're just yeah. everywhere. Only <laughs> <laughs> luck had to run out sooner or later. Hmm? Luck? No such no, thing. No Divine such providence. Thing. I believe everything happens for a reason. Sent four of our people to a nearby town to. To scavenge what they could. Oh, those father. are the guys at the university. Well, I was about to say, you should be able to yeah. notice and the numbers there. Taken from. Turns out he was murdered by this crazy man. And get this, he's a crazy man traveling with a little girl. That crazy man was traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for a reason. You see? Everything happens for a reason. James, lower the gun. I do question both in the game you and see? here why he said this to her. Everything happens yeah. for a reason. It's so like... James, lower the gun. Yeah, but look, his eyes are a little bit unhinged, see? Yeah. <laughs> she, kill Alec, didn't she? she didn't kill anybody. Lower the gun. Is he saying it so we have context for that bullet of gun there? Did you bring the well, I like that he's trying to gain her trust yeah, by taking the opportunity to tell the guy to lower his yeah. gun. And I guess like you could argue Ellie sees him. he's explaining how much he has reason to kill her, but he won't. He's like, I'm chill. I'm being nice. Yeah. I know you're not with a group. You won't survive for long out there. I can protect you. Free deer. Woohoo. Actually, yeah. free. That's On medicine. paper, he seems like a nice man, but... It's just those little tells. Let yeah, he's, he's just got evil looking. He's got an evil, you know, look in his eye there. No offense to the actor. <laughs> but oh, well, actually, evil. yeah, I, I even would respect the actor for that. The edge no, of that I, delivery I was like, like was good yeah, in terms exactly. of just being the, unsettling. Oh, has been good so far, yeah. Yeah, I think the acting's great so far. You get that in him. Save him. Judging from that, how long do you think it's been? I do not, not know. Long. Doesn't look like it's been long. Where the fuck do I put it? You gotta get a... In the eye. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew what the nature of doing that is. Yeah, I don't know. I, actually, I, 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 I genuinely have no idea medically. It I have no idea if this is... I don't know if all the doctors out there are nodding or cringing. Yeah, I guess we'll find out <laughs> in the next comment showcase. In that situation, wouldn't it be best to find a vein in the forearm? I don't know. Oh, I, have I, no idea. I, I, I just genuinely have no don't clue know what the medicine actually does or where you would apply it. It's antibiotics, the, right? It's applied directly to the forehead. Or like in the thigh or something. I don't know. Well, because I presume it's because the wound might be infected. Right, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if that's it. I assume it's viable because holy fuck, what a mistake if it's not, you know? Well, it makes sense for Ellie to decide, well, I'll just stick it in where it hurts for Joel, I guess, where the wound is. Well, yeah, specifically to combat infection from that wound, so that's why she's done it, but I just want to know, you know, medically speaking, what would happen if right. you do that. Yeah. If they're by the water, could they, like, fish and stuff? Is that a thing that they could do? All the fish got infected, Rex. Oh, there's zombie fish. Zombie fish. <laughs> there's a bloat of fish out there. Just going, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Is this going to be gross? You ever seen Piranha Double D? It's like that. Piranha Double D. Which one is that? Is that, like, the third, fourth? 
I can't remember. It's, or it's th 3 double D, I think, because it's 3D. That ain't as well venison. As having lots of tits. That ain't venison. Mella, it's, it's not human. venison. It's... Imagine she, like, takes it, just bite out of it, and just goes, this is human, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Yo, this is, yeah. <laughs> I know oh, human. Man, this is going to be a <laughs> chunky-ass meaty stew. Jeez. You don't want to cut that up a little smaller? Especially to make it last, too, right? Yeah. They're going to come in dragging the deer? See, when we're in need, he shall provide, and, and Jeebus provided them a deer. Thanks, Jeebus. I call the antlers. Why, though? It's okay to celebrate. If you've heard a rumor... Oh. Yes. When the sun rises, I'll lead a group out to pick up her trail. Oh, okay. So, I just realized something. It's pretty dumb they sent four raiders with no fucking guns when they all have guns here. Right, as as they all had clubs and stuff, yeah. Whoops. Yeah, that's just stupid, isn't it? And if they had, they probably would have gone, Joel, so... How did they find out that they fa met the two? Uh, well, I'm guessing Troy Baker Told? said something maybe when he came back. Oh. Oh, jeez. That's not nice. Is this a God thing? God wouldn't want us the to The Bible that. says That's... I gotta slap you when you're out of line. I was gonna say, like, wh before David slapped a child, why do they all seem to dislike David? Is because they all suspect that he's <laughs> lying to them about where the food's coming from? I thought it might be that, but I think it's just... I thought it was that too, but it's just a bit just disturbing. Be the thing. And also, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think you don't have a father anymore. But you can still get fucking slapped, so watch yourself. <laughs> oh no, is he about to say it's me? Or is he talking about Jeebus? Oh, he means him. Listen, the problem with this guy is that he doesn't just eat other people. He's, he's got the other thing. Well, it's just the whole- this whole group is unsettling. There's just like a sort of cloud vibe. hanging over them. Yeah. yeah. Especially compared to Jackson, where everything seems pretty chill. Yeah, I want to live in Jackson. I don't want to live the thing. here. I, that's one thing I quite like about the encounters throughout the story of The Last of Us, which they've done in the show as well, it's is that there's all these different of kinds of people, yeah. It's not even a happy cult. It's one of those sad, miserable true. cults. <laughs> so you get like the <laughs> worst of both worlds. Well, I don't know if we're meant to get the sense that they're all off kilter or they're just all kind of mad at David I for some uh, reason. My sense right now is just that they kind of fear him a bit. Right. Because he's just creepy. He hasn't actually and, done anything. He's just really creepy. He has a and he does. He, it might be that he has control over it, but he does provide, so to speak. Yeah. And no one's like talking. No, they're not like being social or they're ha they're not even like happy or anything. Yeah, everyone's very. His his, uh, his meal is much bigger. Than I was about to say, yeah, he's yeah. got way more. Yeah, he gets, mm. he gets a lot. Mm. Which would be like an interesting rule, you know, in the sense of if you are the one who brings back the deer, you get an extra portion, you know, to motivate him to, you know, really go out there and get it. But that's, the impression you know, I get is that he just gets the. He's just the leader. Yeah. He's in charge. Even though he mm -hmm. kind of looks a little frail, or at least a little gaunt, and I think that was on purpose to make him look a bit more, um, you know, scary. Off -putting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh well, appears to be getting better. They should do a Doctor React to The Last of Us. Uh, that probably already exists. I hope it'd be better than like a deer reacts to The Last of Us. That would be very, <laughs> a deer That would be very good. <laughs> yeah. Live deer reaction. Yeah. It's just a deer sitting in front of his computer, just sort of <laughs> looking around. She's not even watching whatever he's meant to be reacting to. When she shoots it, it's just like, nah, fuck this, tins it off. Yeah, I do not approve of this. Nope. No, that's mm. the point. That's the point when he becomes fully, yeah, sentient and just like, you know what? Bury his ears. Very, very yeah. offensive. We always get killed and eaten. That's really fucked up, Hollywood. Crows. <laughs> I assume they're going to do the same it's, thing here. Of It's the spirit of yeah. Jacob. Oh my god, I miss him. We should find out what he's in these days. He's probably in another TV what show. A better TV show. <laughs> this man's not already dead. He's dangerous. Do we bring that girl back with us? She's just another mouth to feed. If we leave her out here, she'll die. Maybe that's God's will. Don't do that shit. I decide what God's will is. No one, <laughs> yeah, no one gets to decide what God's will is but me. Ooh. Careful. I am God. Yeah, he's. It's that's... just Troy Baker's character seems persistently sad. Like, yeah, that's the really vibe the whole time. Joel, Joel, wake up. Okay. Okay, okay. Is he pretending to be asleep? No, no, he's just. Oh, no, up. okay. Right. But if anybody makes it down here, you fucking kill them. You got it? Joel. Let's craft a med kit. Yeah, craft a med kit. You yes. have you need uh you need cloth, alcohol, and that's what, um, and real about ten seconds of your time. 
Do yeah. they have the uh, the pistol? What does she have it? Uh, yeah, they should have a. She should have a pistol. He should have a revolver and a rifle as well. I think. And then there's well, the rifle. She has a rifle. Where's her rifle? Yeah. Or is she ditching her guns? Because yeah, I don't know if it was. The, she's gonna try and draw them off, right? Like because yeah. she foolishly, yeah. being a child as she does in the game, goes back to Joel without realizing. Of course, they will follow her there. Yeah. And so yeah, it's all follows. Yeah, this this is all solid in terms of just it's better they chase her than find Joel. Yeah. yeah. Well, I totally believe she'd do this 100%. Yeah. No, other universe Joel, don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to shoot that horse. Oof. Man, that I guess they'll Dude. leave the horse <laughs> like this. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how was... did he get I guess he cut through the fence or something. Yeah, he took like a shortcut. I was just thinking, like, the potential of trying to not have the horse die for use of travel, but then I was like, actually, these people would probably want to eat it ASAP. Yeah, where are they going to travel to? Exactly. Damn, he was about to execute her? Was he? They clearly said, so that means that they're all in cahoots to yeah, disobey him. Yeah, they said do it. Yeah, they, yeah. All, they all lagged him on. What do you think that is, in terms of, do you, do you think... They don't like him, but they follow him anyway? Well, no, um... Are they trying to spare her? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a mercy Maybe. kill for Ellie because they don't want to subject her to David. I have a feeling that's what it is. Oh, yeah. It was all those looks that each of those guys had that they yeah. focused in on that makes me think that. Yeah. Stay here, go door to door. Hmm. Uh. You so hungry for vengeance? Deliver it. My guess is he wasn't always crazy. But and he's become happened. that way, you think? Something's Something's happened, yeah. So they, they said he went. He was a teacher, and he turned into preacher, which would have kept people together in really hard times, right? And then, as time goes on, especially with that bigger portion of meal, and he's doing... He, we're going to find out what, but he's doing some extra things that clearly they're, yeah, they, like they're vaguely aware of. Festering, growing discontent. Yeah. Jimmy's a bad shot. He doesn't even get to have a scope on his rifle. I hope we're heading toward a particular uh, scene. Uh, I think we are. Now get up, buddy. Attention to detail with the blood there on the uh, on the mattress. Things. Maybe, that's kind of yeah, what I was trying to say. Oh, well, he's dead. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's gnarly, jeez. Yeah, he just because he's low energy right now, he's just gotta just wait. There at him. Damn. That does help it at least. Like we still get a sense that he's very sluggish and like well, he's still... wheezing as well. Yeah. Now we've split the two up. Joel's got to defend himself here and go, like, where are they going to meet? Are they going to meet this episode? Out of curiosity, Rags, does, is anything in your head playing out in terms of what you're expecting to happen? Not really. I think a whole bunch of stuff could happen. It's so I don't have any um, expectations. It's a fascinating sort of dynamic because yeah. three of us know exactly what's coming. <laughs> and it's, it's a relatively famous part of the game. You're a dangerous person. You've certainly proven that. Did you not play the first game, Rags, or not finish it? Or? Not this far, no. Oh, okay. Did you hear me say the others want to kill you? Yeah. But I stopped them. Fuck you. Why don't we just start with your name? Eat shit. Hey, ah, listen French. To me. <laughs> you can't survive Interesting there. name. This is a person who desperately wants to manipulate people but just has no job. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not happening. Or at least not for Ellie, anyway. That part of your life, it's ending. And what I'm offering you is a beginning. But if you can't find a way to trust me, then yes, you are alone. It's funny. Sweet, you mean I can be alone without you? Awesome. He's got a different face and voice to the David from the game, but they have captured the important part, so to speak. Well, uh, David in the game was played by Nolan North, so yes, oh. they, definitely different, different voice. Well, though Nolan North has like pretty crazy. Idaho, their neighbor. Timothy, okay. Nolan does Nathan Drake and Uncharted for people who don't know. <laughs> And Desmond in uh, Assassin's Creed. And oh. Penguin in... Oh, so that's... Ew. Yeah. I hate to say it, but that's an improvement. We're uh, getting punished Joel here. Joel, Joel gets jumped by two people and then sort of wins the fight in the game. Here he is, oh, yeah. trap, which I prefer. Oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh, leave him alone. Oh, you're next. Oh, please. I don't know any girl. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, 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 no. He can't help you. You focus right here, or I'll pop your fucking kneecap off. I like that Pedro's playing this still a bit delirious. Like, uh, yeah, he was yeah. more put, put together in the game a bit more at this where, point. Where? 
<laughs> oh, that sound. What the fuck? Oh, jeez. What town? Silver Lake. You want your kneecaps. That's a thing. It's not a real town name. It's a resort. A resort? You're going to point to where we are and where your resort is. It'll be the exact same spot your buddy points to. I'm going to mark it with the blood. Hopefully oh. he wipes the blood off for the next guy. I feel like That's you should remember how this goes. <laughs> well, not you, Rags. John will. I'll tell you, yeah. I'm not lying. Yeah. Because you're right. No. You would need to worry about that no. if he was going to check. Jesus! No! Oh, right, yeah. No, you're right, Paul. I forgot that? about that he told you what you part wanted. of it. You motherfucker, fuck you. I ain't telling you shit. It's okay. No. I believe him. No. Well, That's why yeah, it's just, just one to yeah. one. It's, it's, it's just it's, one It's really good one yeah. to just say, like, it's it's a clever thing. Like, you know, he's already laid the threat. So as far as he's concerned, he'll probably get the truth out of him first try. He and then, of course, to. it just shows, like, this is Joel. This Joel is scary. Yeah, Joel, uh, gets, very scary. Scary. Yeah. Joel yeah. gets results when, when he wants them. Yeah, when, right. when you're opposed to him, when you're threatening people he cares about, he is terrifying. Yeah. He's bringing back his old smuggler and I just, brutality. Oh my god, I just realized too, like, I'm so tired of torture scenes in TV shows being like, we're gonna, we're gonna shave off a bit of your fingernail, we might just pull it out. He was like, I'm gonna take off your kneecap. Yeah. Like, yes, get to the fucking point, take something they want. Ew. Right. There's an ear on the floor. <laughs> For what it's worth, this is just dear meat, I swear. Oh, gee. <laughs> I trust you. Me up into little pieces. I'd rather not. Please well, these are just one-to-one -one lines from the game. What is it? It's dear. With some human helping on the side? No. No, I, I promise. It's just the deer meat. So now what? You're gonna chop me up into tiny pieces? <laughs> I'd rather not. I taste terrible. I'm all stringy. Judge, judge you? You're eating people, you sick fuck! They Great, now I gotta go <laughs> clean it up by the <laughs> yeah. ear and everything. It's getting in the ear, ew. Specifically yes. by the ear. But I would've told you. I would've told you. so yummy. I love he says that like a point well, of yeah, trust. I would've told sorry, you. We, sorry, sorry, we shouldn't have left that ear behind. So Wait, if you're eating resort, people, you why would you take me? the ear off? But what was I supposed to do? Let them starve? These people who put their lives in my hands, who I expect me to keep them safe, who love me? That's a weird thing to say, that last bit. I don't mm. think your friend would either. Didn't he take another man's life to save yours? He was defending himself. He was defending you. No, he was defending All, himself. Both, both of those could be true you simultaneously. See you see a lot. So do I. And you know what I see when I look at you? I see ears. Two ears <laughs> I see two ears. Me. Those delicious you ears. Mm -hmm. me. You're a natural leader. You're smart. Loyal. Violent. He's trying to butter her up. He is. Not like that, but I mean like, you know. <laughs> Put that knife of yours in your hand. You'd stick me in a second. I think everybody would, man. Violent heart. And I should Very know. violent hands. Violet ears. Do you feel like <laughs> these lines are specifically set up for two? Could be. I mean, we're doing the we're not so different you know, thing right now, so. so. Well, they are, but it's specifically the you're a violent person. Because we haven't seen much of that, obviously, at this point in the, the like, in Ellie's story. What does Cordyceps do? Is it evil? No. It feeds and protects its children. And it secures its future with violence, if it must. It loves. It loves? Cordyceps loves? Okay, this, I mean, you're losing me here. They need God. They need heaven. They need... Ah, he doesn't believe in these things. They need a father. You're beyond that. I'm a shepherd surrounded by sheep, and all I want is an equal. I can tell the others to stop looking for him. <laughs> you can't tell them anymore. They'll spare him. <laughs> I'd be more talking at them than yes, to them at this point, but... <laughs> yes. If he leaves us in peace, they will just let him go. Is that the offer they here, to like, to, to let him go and, you know, I'll join you if you let him go or something like that? It does seem like that. It's like, join me and I will spare your friend. But they would kill him anyway. Man, Joel he's, wasn't. He's, like, legit trying to offer her, like, queen status, huh? Essentially. Yeah. Think of what we could do to get I, I, I slapped the other prospect so she doesn't like me anymore. We'd make this place perfect. 
Like the game did do this as well, I think. No, it did, uh, but th this they've been alluding to something, and they're going to get more of it with it before this ends, I'd imagine. Right. Imagine the life we could give them. Imagine the life we could build. Let's see what I go tell the others now. What am I supposed to tell the others now? Ellie. What? Ellie. What? Tell them that Ellie is the little girl that broke your fucking finger. Tell them that Ellie is the little girl who broke her fucking finger! How did you put it? Huh? Tiny pieces. How did you put it? Hmm? Tiny little pieces? You little cunt. Hey. <laughs> Language. That's a bad word. Very close to the game. This long, yeah. pretty close, but at the I end, was, I, I was wondering if she'd like go along with it for longer. No, nope. Ellie she is, uh, no, nah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's the fine one. Yeah. Man, he, he is really struggling, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, look, it's blued. Blued in the snoo. That'd be from the deer, I suppose. I like that in the show he's playing this like in an, an impaired way. Like in the game, as soon as you play as Joel, you as a player get the sense like, okay, he's 100% now. You know what I mean? Like I can move around. He's I can pretty do all back the things. to normal. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely having to, yeah. He's a little haggard here. Wes. Oh. Do you find this Gross. in the game? This isn't real. That looks pretty I'm immune. Real me. Oh, you killed the one that was maybe. Oh, interesting. Hey, you got one though. Yeah, well, this, uh... is, this is one to one with the game as well. And like, and it's yeah. just as lucky as the game. <laughs> like it's there's a bit yeah. of plot armor there. You oh could say. well. And also, yeah, we're already in the uh, in the restaurant. Goodbye, Joel. Indeed. Yeah. You think that there'd be some cutlery in that kitchen? <laughs> yeah, interesting choice of weapon, Ellie. Oh yeah, well here's a stick. Oh, we're already in the restaurant, wow. Yeah, well, because they're not going to do like some crazy encounters with like Oh 50. no, what an incredibly <laughs> inconvenient thing to have just occurred. I feel like he maybe pulled the kid down before it got to that level, but I That's guess too late now. Done. I would have pulled it down fast. He's he's sort of no way out, Ellie. He's like keeping an eye on it, like eh, it's just lock. fire. <laughs> he's just oscillating keys. between do I deal with this or <laughs> do I? Oh well, man, that fire's getting that, awfully uh, big. He has wow, that fire is burning quick. Yeah, yeah. He's even what? doing the evil man thing where he's like, "I'ma get you." I there is no way out. He's monologuing. What does start the fire in the game? Because I don't think it's that like a stick. I can't remember. Thing. How 
Is all right? Nowhere to go. You want out? I'm gonna have to come get these keys. I know you're not infected. No one that's infected fights this hard to stay alive. No one infected fights this hard to stay alive? That's an interesting line. So, I think this how did you do it? Things to be drawn from that line. No one likes being humiliated, Ellie. You don't know how good I am! Jeez, man, like that's some copium right there. Given you. <laughs> you see, I changed my mind. I've decided I don't believe you. you. Father. So I'm Jesus. gonna keep you. And I'm gonna teach you. Ellie. Oh, don't yell as you're going towards him. Don't do that. Ah, fuck. I knew you had heart. You know, it's okay to give up. Ain't no shame in it. I guess not. It's not your style, is it? You can try begging. Oh. Fuck you. You think you know me? Huh? I thought you already knew. The fighting is the part I like the most. Well, let me tell you something. You have no idea what I'm capable of. There's no fear in love. seems like the uh, it would be between this and five for best i think that was really yeah, really solid that, that's what comes to mind for me either this one or five i think is the best well it's just I, that um these two episodes are the ones that deliver the like thus far the most important payoffs in the narrative i think i, I mean obviously so? for ellie in particular that's like a really that's a really critical moment and hopefully at this point people have sort of abandoned the bella ramsey can't act like angle i I don't get it anymore. That part I haven't was gotten it for particularly, a while. Uh, I would say, it's, it's, as far as haunting, the uh, chopping yeah. someone up to stop not only your own murder, but rape as well. And uh, the look in her eyes as she uh, as she leaves the place as well. It's that thousand yard stare. And then, of course, the panic. And then sort of, you know, it's just sort of calming down when she realizes that it's Joel. It, yeah, these it's, are all... It's, at this point, Bella Ramsey's had several, you could say, tests, essentially, of like how um like in terms of performance um yeah. and every single time like with these major moments yeah it's just like another another great uh bit of acting as well as all of the good acting throughout the whole episode 
Uh, we said a, f- a bit further back, I, well, at least I said about this episode, they've got their blueprint, they used it, and uh, the thing to nail was obviously correcting up all of the ways that everything comes together, because the timing is, is just, everything's slightly different. If different things are faster, different things are slower, and you got to get it's the performances right. It's a lot of the right. same, uh, it's a lot of the same beats. This episode in particular felt to me like the most clear and apparent parallels between the game and the show. There are obviously some deviations between, like, kind of how David comes across He's a little bit different, but it's still, like, a lot of it's the same, and, and the, like, structure of the group, and some of the dynamics that were seemingly coming through. Yeah, like, they gave the us some... Um, it's a lot more uh, overtly evil. The pieces um, of this community, David, David I think... David is reprehensible in both instances. Yeah, he's a son of a bitch. Like, the, the community here seemed to have been... I, I like thinking about all these different groups that we've come across. This one seems like there were, there were good people here, but they've, they've become so complacent that it's just, like, anyone they come across destroyed. enters the meat grinder, essentially. Yeah, they've been destroyed by uh by this this world. David's by, made them rely David. on him. He's like they've all become like weak, scared, and and so you can tell he's probably chanting to them like again and blamed. again, like you need me, I get you the stuff you need, like you know that kind of person. Yeah, how much autonomy do any of these people even seemingly have? They all seem to be completely under his heel. Yeah, uh, which I wonder how long it would have lasted necessarily. I wonder if uh, the more he did what he wanted uh, to with little girls, the more that they chop people up to f- for feed, I wonder if they would have overthrown him eventually. I mean, with how they were after uh, they shot the horse, I mean, it looks like they were really getting kind of um, mutinous. You know, you can yeah, imagine it might not have taken long. Over for him anyway. Well, yeah, and I'm um, just, um, I'm really interested by that whole, like, they were almost about to execute her, but he stops them, like, and I, I just assume it's because they know what's going to happen to her. Yeah, it all it all lines up doesn't it like and and then the 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 daughter of the person who got killed as well like it's kind of an implication there too well yeah the and fact well, he said like you terrified of him she's scared of him well, didn't wasn't he saying something like you know you th- you think you've lost your father but you know essentially like i can yeah. i can be him for you which you know what that means considering all the context we've gotten yeah yeah, he was, uh, he's, he's another pretty strong villain, and, and just a showcase, because we're so far into the story now, of what's left of humanity. That's what I see this story being, you know, about in a lot of ways with a lot of things. Like, Ellie's getting a full sort of taste of all these different kinds of people, getting to the point that it might make her believe that a lot of these 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 horrible sides of humanity can be saved if only they can be taken out of this environment with, like, a cure or something like that, when... Perhaps in reality, this is more so just a realization of the the kinds of people that survive in this environment. Mm-hmm. A whole cavalcade of different personalities, and all of them brought to their wits' end thanks to this scenario. And what what does humanity look like at that point? And her own humanity getting hardcore stripped away. I've always found it just as meaningful as a, as a concept back when it was presented in the game, but here as well. Just that Joel knows how much this is going to have affected her. Sort of thing. He'd, he'd know himself what it would have been like. And the fact that, especially in this show, they focused a bit on uh, how Tommy wanted to abandon him because of the things that he had to do and mm-hmm. uh, all the people they've lost. Just th- there's a lot of stuff feeding into. I think this moment is one of the biggest, obviously, for the season uh, that, that rely on everything else we've known. The fact that he calls her baby girl. Obviously, the last time we heard him say that was with Sarah as she was dying. This is like a crystallization of everything that Ellie means to him and what their relationship is and and how important that is considering everything else that's happened right like all these different people that have come in and out of Joel's life and all the actions he's had to take all the humanity that's been stripped away from him she's a big reason he can have access to things that he thought were lost he thought like the, the a lot of this was over and of course it's bringing him back to a very very vulnerable place that's what uh he talks about with Tommy uh in both the game and the show it's what we saw playing out with Henry and Sam, even though, of course, how their story ended. You know, Frank and Bill having gone the whole way in terms of taking care of each other, relying on each other, and their stories ending together. Tess was another failed sort of thread in Joel's life. And this, this, we were inches away from Joel losing her all over again, right after she had, you know, put everything on the line to save him. And so he catches her in this turmoil where she's had to shred someone who's been that much of a threat to her something that he would have wanted to prevent and protect her from so yeah it's honestly it's hard to summarize everything that's happening uh in these moments on the subtext as we were talking about earlier like uh if we'd had everything longer in this show up to this point i think this probably would have hit harder but to be honest with you, i think they've they, they did everything they needed to do in this episode i can't really fault them that hard uh, outside of a couple of tweaks i may have made like in terms of just some 
stretches here and there. This episode, by comparison, if episode seven was thin, this episode is very dense. Yeah, like we did every a lot. scene feels dense with information about the characters. There's like no scene that is superfluous in this episode. Like every single scene is essential. And yeah, it was one episode to set up material. an entire enemy faction and an enemy leader. And then, yeah, and then to have that all come to a conclusion that feeds into the story of these of these characters of our main duo yeah it was all very tight and then when we got to the part with the restaurant i felt like we're moving really quickly here but then i checked the runtime and i'm like oh no we're about like 45 minutes in here i guess this is this pacing works for this episode um, i think yeah, well, i expected um, there to be more they, time uh, at the end but well, yeah what there. Was they, they skipped like combat to just go straight to the like david conclusion essentially because in the game there's a uh, like a decently large stretch of ellie gameplay but i mean yeah the, that's, that's it's what's... kind of hard to it's hard to justify that you know really like in terms of her killing like 15 people before encountering david What's clearly yeah. been uh, cut and replaced is a lot of gameplay for both Joel and Ellie of killing people. And it's just I was like, just going to yeah. definitely get the point. Joel is still forced to be reckoned with, even when he's in a bit of a incapacitated state. And, yeah, I was very uh, happy with how they adapted that scene as well, yeah. Perfect. The, the game does a thing where it makes it feel a lot longer, where you, like, it kind of shows you Ellie's side of it and it plays it all the way up to like the restaurant bit and then it plays you as it puts you as Joel but then it kind of rewinds time a bit yeah and it shows you like it's quite an elongated sequence of him going into the town and then maneuvering through the town to eventually get to the restaurant and then it catches up with where you saw Ellie in the restaurant felt quick to me this episode but it, I can't like you were saying Mahler I can't fault it for like it, it accomplished everything that it needed to and it was quite tightly bound the whole thing i mean from joel's pov right like he was sure he was dead he knows that she took care of him and then he finds and out that she's been taken dead. and what does he see yeah. when he like first gets there is a bunch of bodies hanging there yeah like and then he finds her a burning building and she's covered in blood it's just yeah it's really solid stuff for the characters not a word i mean obviously they do speak to each other but they don't you know like they're both it's just they're both there for each other, and so they're together again, and they can leave this place and move forward. Yeah, One of the and comments that, that we talked about um, earlier was in regards to the presence of the infected, and there were no yes. infected in this episode. How yeah. interesting is that? Like, I don't need them, but I like them. <laughs> like, They're a unique element that's not in anything else. And it would be really nice to see that element in this show because as much as like the Joel and Ellie stuff is really good, it would be nice to have the unique parts of The Last of Us kind of being more present. So what happens uh, in the game beat. when she meets up with uh, David at first is that they're sitting there talking and then they hear an infected practically just runs into the room. It's just like, blah, blah, and then David shoots it with his pistol and she's like, what the fuck? You had a gun the whole time? And he's like, yeah, I did. Like, because, you know, and, it's, and then they defend the area together for about 10 minutes or so from a horde of just a horde of infective just arrive and uh, you know what's funny is this show has the opportunity to you know she shoots the deer and then it, it you know pans off to the side and it shows an infected there it's been alerted and then through the the network it's attached to it brings several and that david and ellie have to defend themselves from let's say six something like that we could mm -hmm. have that scene but at the same time you know i just want to be honest it's like we didn't lose anything in terms of character by not having that it was just something that may have been fun because like uh she just never trusts david from the get-go she seems to and, and, and it's similar in the game i think ellie just just something something doesn't feel right and i guess the audience would have a similar experience with this man he's just and uh you know i think we can do without it it's not a big deal i mean definitely the the game was trying to do a thing where it's like oh maybe david isn't such a bad guy oh maybe david can help me and joel like from ellie's perspective and then it's like oh David followed us back, followed my footprints. Now I know he's a bad dude. Whereas in this, it's just yeah. like Ellie always suspects the worst of him. And I don't think anything is lost there. That little beat missing. <laughs> I, qu I quite like the character uh, Troy Baker was playing, to be honest with you. The little we got of him. Seemed like yeah. a very conflicted man who's had to do a lot of horrible things. He kept doing them and it led to his destruction. With the burning building and everything sort of being their meeting place that people should have come to investigate. And Joel wouldn't uh, be able to it's, just kind um, of walk away slowly. I think it's a close one that the fire would have alerted people right around the time they're probably leaving. Yeah, I don't see any potential issue, but I if think you, you Outside as well, away. it seems there's a bit of a a bit of a smoke screen not a literal smoke screen uh, uh, you know uh, metaphorically speaking with the snow and the the cold it might take a little longer for people to notice the fire yeah 
I think I would have liked a little bit, like a tiny bit at least, of like Joel having to make his way through a few like hostile people in the village. Well, if I could be honest, on his with you, John, way to the restaurant. If this episode could have been two hours long and we just every conversation's extended and we have a couple more interactions and, and we have the infected, I know for a fact that I'd enjoy it. I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, right. I think so yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh against more episodes. Yeah, if it meant I was just about just to say yeah. a lot of these. I think I that's it. More, that, um, more the biggest problem the show episodes. has is that it didn't have enough time to breathe. You're adapting a pretty lengthy game. The game is fairly long, so adapting it into a season of television, it's like, yeah, you might end up uh, having to shave some stuff down. Well, I mean, they have. They've definitely had to shave things down. Like, all of the core critical moments are there for sure. And, like, the broad sections of the game are there, but there's definitely, you know, things that are lost in the interim. Yeah. The town did feel a bit empty in this episode. Contrasting kind of. with the beginning of the episode, where it did establish a sense of community more so than the yeah, game we had the did. two significant scenes of the community in that in that place. But obviously, they'd gathered there. I guess they were in their respective houses, or they're out looking for deer. Potentially, I, I don't really know. But right. um, I yeah. think I can, it does feel like maybe it would have been neat to have had one or two sort of onlookers being like, "Oh God, what the fuck is it? Oh, geez, just to make it feel like there's more yeah. community uh, tight knit." See, it, it, quite, it came across to me that that's the point of this guy is that he's kept everyone very close and very dependent on him. Yeah, but uh, very solid, um, I think. Yeah, yeah. I really am. I would. Five. I like. I like five more. I think I prefer five, I I like but five I think this is number well. two. Five is such a complete package. That I wouldn't even criticize it. Pacing wise, this one this it could have yeah. maybe used a bit more, but yeah. uh, but I mean, still really are uh, really critical and important character work for particularly Ellie. Yes. I would yeah. say that it, it really goes to show how excellent it feels in a show to have people at real places, proper snow everywhere, they're out in the cold, everything. It's it's very real. The show is extremely yeah, they, believable they really, in terms they really of locations They really ought to win some for production. Like, if the production should be, they should be getting some kind of award at the Emmys. Yeah, yeah they got um, great locations. Nothing feels like a set, you know? Yeah, uh, you feel like they're really there doing the thing. Uh, and you, you really buy into it 100%. All the... You know, the prosthetics and everything look good. That's the thing we have to point out now because, you know, even the old Disney with Disney money still green screens the woods. So it, it makes you appreciate, you know, the right proper real deal. I just love the fact right. that volume was supposed to be their uh, their cheat, but even people are still are like, no, I can see it. I can tell. <laughs> this fake ass shit. <laughs> that ain't no real wood. That's from that's one of them there fakey wood. Hard to get a real tree these days, okay? Yeah. You can't just go out and <laughs> you can't just go out into the woods and film for free. I don't let you do that no more. No, I should um, do that. That tree is not signed man, a waiver. Ain't it crazy though? Everything rides on next episode. Yeah, one more. episode nine. The finale is kind of make or break. One more, and it's not going to be a two-parter. It's going to be the episode. So, is the it going to be the same is, length as the rest? Or as far as I know, it's your standards. This has been like forty to fifty minutes, except for the premiere. Right, of course, yeah, and it's possible to tell the rest of the story, so to speak, in that amount of time. Just um, every oh, line, <clears throat> every action. It will be scrutinized. And, uh, will nightmares be brought to life? Who knows? Are you uh, concerned that they might be pressed for time with this next episode? Um, you're quite familiar with the ending of The Last of Us 1, right? Because it came up so much when we were talking about Last of Us 2. Yeah, yeah. It's the concern of uh, just how evil will they make Joel's decision? Because everyone thinks that well, they're going to make him the we, bad guy. Well, it's just the, the difference is The Last of Us originally there's no way that they were writing that with like clear ideas of what the sequel was going to be because the sequel was like seven years removed and of course the recontextualization of a lot of you know the changes that were made into to kind of like change it into the story that they needed it to be but they couldn't do it this time around two already exists and they're making it for this show and they probably knew they were getting a second season so it's 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 like it's surely going to be different from the game like surely well i think they didn't know they were going to get a second season until after season one was in the can yeah but you but, can edit season but, one you know. to end <laughs> and also set up season two sure so that's and in terms of rewriting it yeah even if they didn't get their second one it's like well you could plant the seeds uh in a way that the first game simply doesn't yeah what, what i yeah. don't want to see is that the fireflies follow through on their deal 
that they're really friendly, that the science shows that it's an absolute guarantee that Ellie understands that and that she agrees and that uh, it, she finds that it's going to kill her and that she's on board with that in, in exchange for something that the Fireflies have already shown they can absolutely disseminate to the world, which would be absurd. You know what I mean? Just knocking out all yeah, of the yeah. arguments and then being like, all right, bye, Joel. And then he goes, you know what? No, I like her too much. And just machine guns down every innocent doctor. <laughs> just like, it's just like, yeah. oof, please he don't do the, that. Uh, guns down hordes of Z zebras herds of them in order to yeah. get to all the doctors yeah well and that's the other and, thing right all eyes will be crazy. on the, the main doctor hold that so is like are they gonna be set up last us too are they gonna be, gonna be like <laughs> hello mr sir we're all very nice friendly people here you, you wouldn't imagine, kill us would you could you imagine if the uh if we actually had a, a cold open and it was him with the zebra could you imagine? Christ. <laughs> oh my God. What a, this is what i mean open. like it'll depend on who writes it i mean our weakest episode was neil alone well so. i'm hoping that they can go through a craig mazin filter and he can be like oh no no we wouldn't do it that way we wouldn't just we wouldn't just show him saving a zebra and then be like look how nice <laughs> this man is ridiculous yeah it'll be like a whole it'll be like a, a herd of puppies not to say of course the writing's been perfect <laughs> it's just that yeah there's just so many mistakes that can be evaded and uh i just i don't know what's gonna happen I, all bets are off genuinely i don't know what they're gonna do exactly because mm. uh, remember Neil was a big part of this production, and so he knows. Yes, he, he, was. he knew when making this, when he was dealing with it, he knew. On set, he was like, all right, here it comes, the scene. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> hopefully, hopefully Greg was there going. Rubbing his hands together like, hmm. <laughs> No, Neil, no, they hated it. They hated it what, so Craig's much. Like, you know what? The lot It's like, what do you think about The Last of Us 2? Neil asked him. He's like, um... You know, like... <laughs> you know, what That's a movie. Kind of anyway. Man, your ideas about the cycles of violence, game. they're just so true. Violence begets wow, violence, please. you know? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But what do you but, think of the game? <laughs> but I have some notes <laughs> on that. He's like, we're going to have to change it when we adapt it for well, TV. You know that. Uh, he's like, yeah. I'm just wondering, because there was that line when David was like, oh, you're violent. The impression I get is that is a line that they're specifically trying to set up, like... Two. That's what I get from that line. Is it trying to right. say, you know, Ellie is capable of of uh, of causing great harm potentially? That that's yep. they're trying to set that up as a, a seed. So I feel like it's safe to assume that if we are getting The Last of Us two in season two, which we are, it's still going to be like the core. It's just it's going to be the same broad story. So it's a matter of what changes are you going to make to that story, or alternatively, what changes are you going to make here? to make that more coherent because I think you know that it I doesn't I think they got they well. know they have to change a lot so that people do not turn the fuck on this show. They still haven't paid off the fact that she can't swim and that's going to no, result. No, they haven't. They haven't. So she's not going to be able to swim and and it's going to cause a problem in the next episode that'll lead to her getting she's knocked stuck out. on an island. Surely. Which means I think I think the 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 odds are high that she'll be unconscious for the decision. It's at least somewhat. Of course, you can change it so that she's unconscious, saved, and then conscious. It's like, you know, you could just do it like that. But, nah, but why go to that effort, problem. you know? Like, why put that in there instead of just leaving it out? So it makes me think, like, surely she'll be unconscious. And then I was like, surely the Fireflies will welch on the deal and boot Joel out. Are they really going to change that? And if you have those two in there, we're golden, I think. Did they set up in the show the fact that she can't swim? Yes. I can't remember that. I will play the clip now. I don't know how to swim. Seriously? You think we have pools in the QZ? No, smart ass. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yep. That's an important setup for one of my favorite beats in, at the end of this story, like in the game, where Joel falls into the bus. And it's like, oh my god, we're right at the end. And it's like Joel yeah. has fallen into this trap where it's like, oh god, it could all end here very grimly. And it's really scary with all the f like water flowing into the bus, and he's like tr pinned at the end of it. And he's like, oh fuck. I I really like that part in the. Um, well, they got what like fifty-ish minutes or so to to tell that that selection of the game. So we'll have yeah. to see what they choose. I imagine we'll see dude. Ellie reacting to giraffes. Like, we got to do that, right? Yeah, I think they will do that. For the giraffe, look, for sure. I yeah. hope they don't look bad. I Unless they so spring for real giraffes, do it. They could, but... You know, if they get actual know. giraffes from Africa, if they ship them over, if they fly them through, if they send them by train and all <laughs> their heads are <laughs> just poking just up. Like they did in like, Madagascar when they're all stuck in the crates. Like, get yeah. shipped over. Yeah, yeah, and he's all bent up in a pretzel and everything. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it'll be like Jurassic would... Park, where it's, what do you call it, like an animatronic thing? Like a big robot giraffe. Uh, <laughs> well, they just have a sock puppet, like a guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> with oh the googly God. eyes on it. They use yeah, forced exactly. perspective to make it look like the sock yeah. puppet is just a giraffe really far away. Yeah. Hey, Joel and Ellie, I'm a giraffe. I'm just here going on my adventures through oh, this shit, city. Joel, they talk. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and Joel's like giving it a revolving. Song. Kill them. Yeah, revolving and he's like, <laughs> mm, I'm watching you, giraffe. And the giraffe's like, I'm watching you, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is a foul mouthed giraffe. Yeah, he's like, yeah, come down here and say that to my face. And don't mess with that guy who's named my zebra friend over there, and it's oh. a zebra song. I swear to God, dude. Imagine there's a scene in the next episode where it's like, it's like everyone's shaking hands and introducing themselves and stuff, and it's like just Firefly Marlene is there, and everything's like, and then this girl walks up and shakes Joel's hand. She's like, I'm Abby. You're like, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, the second, I, man, I wonder what they're going to do for season two. Because yeah. they know. They know that people fucking hate Last of Us 2 story and characters. <laughs> Just a little so, bit, yeah. Oh, man. What are they gonna do? I'm so curious. What are they gonna do is the question. Well, that's the, the thing. If, it was, have to imagine it was lot. adapted one-to-one. -one. John, you'll finally have to have the conversation with us about Last of Us 2. <laughs> you know, in, the first, in the first episode, like everyone will turn on this show instantly. Yeah. It'll yeah. They'll literally it repeat will the apocalypse <laughs> for this IP. Why would you do that? that there are some guys at HBO like, look, guys, creative freedom, yes. Yes. But, yeah. but this is let me make a counter argument to creative like, freedom. Let's call this creative freedom happened. asterisk. Like, guys, Spider-Man, God of War, they all sold better than, Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> sold better than your game, all right? We still have the numbers, and we, we yeah. just have some notes, all right? I'd like to show you some comments <laughs> from fans. Like, the, the, see? Do you understand? <laughs> like, but sorry, all this note like, says is no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are they going to do in the finale? That's, I hope That's it, everything I rides really, on it. I don't know. I I hope it's good, but I don't know what it looks like. I, I legitimately don't know what to expect. I have no clue. Until then, I folks. Guess we'll find out next week. Yeah. Thanks for watching. That was episode eight of The Last of Us TV show. One left to go. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, everybody. See you next See time. Everybody. Bye, Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. See you Bye, next everybody. week. What'd you bring, 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 bring. What'd you bring me? We're finally here. Mm -hmm. We've made it to the end of the yeah. season. Yes, the Episode... long awaited, long feared. <laughs> What's going long on? Uh, yeah, kind of the, the subject of a lot of speculation finale of The Last of Us. Common showcase usually relates to the previous episodes. We'll do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about our fears for this episode, probably, and what I'm expecting versus the what we could be lucky enough to get or very unlucky enough to get. You got the idea. It's the final one. It's really after funny, this. too, because this is it. We're going over to the memes after this, like, in terms of Mando and Gotham Knights. Just like, yep, goodbye, good storytelling. Right, back, yeah, <laughs> back to just we'll meme you. shows. Back to <laughs> meme shows. Where we can just uh, sit back discussion. and relax and make fun of Helmet Man. and uh, Good old be Helmet simpler. Man. Hey, EFAP, a doctor here. Oh, cool, a fellow doctor. Hello, doctor. Usually, hello, hello doctor. And look, all right, usually penicillin is an intermuscular injection, mostly in the butt, because there's a lot of muscle there. But to be honest, as long as it gets in the uh, system, it should work. But injecting it directly into the wound doesn't really help at all. Hope this helps. Love you guys. Stuff, by the way, keep it up. Um, yeah, you bet. I remember seeing the, oh yes, like first of all, penicillin not intravenously, and I was like, oh, okay, so it's that's probably why they had to do it that way in the show. But I also read in the article, just like this says, not sure of the viability of putting it directly in the wound. Depends I, on how deep it was, and I, because it looked like it was kind of over the, the ribs a bit, and there's like kind muscle of, in between yeah. the ribs and stuff, so I mean, she stuck it in there, I, I assume the it would work. But... Like, uh, as long as it gets into the system, it should work through muscular injection. My guess would be, it doesn't matter matter where you put it it just gets in the system regardless like putting it in the wound doesn't make a difference that's kind of my reading so she of, has of to this. hit a muscle is the point that seems to be the point okay yeah well. my specialty is plagues okay not <laughs> muscles david is keeping the non-human meat for himself and is also smirking at the girl hannah as she eats her father unknowingly this version of david is legit evil under the mask it is great Wow. Huh. Uh, he, oh yeah, he, he's uh, he's horrible. Bad they both man. are though. I was gonna they're say both, they, they're it's, both. It's just that we we don't get to see what David looks like 
in his group, like, operating as it does. You well, know, yeah, and you game. don't see Game David feed anyone their father, so... Because that's, no, that's an interesting no. inference, I didn't think about that at all. But that yeah! Would, that would be assumingly true, right? Because they he was cycled in. I, I think there's a line at the beginning of the episode where he says, oh, we can't bury him because the ground's too cold and hard. Like, we'll have to wait. It's like, uh-huh. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a real sinister piece of work. Yeah, and that's hence the looks he's been given by his subordinates because mm. they have to. He has to have people to help him do all that shit, and so they know. Right. The only other person I know in fiction that did that is Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> no, with Scott Tenerman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenerman Chili. Oh my God! <laughs> I made you eat your parents. Nya, 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 nya. On my first watch, I didn't really appreciate how good a David's actor was, but man, he does an excellent job with his voice and expressions. Well done to him. He was fantastic. I think he uh He was very he, good. He struck quite a quite an impression on that opening the second scene with him and Ellie just chatting when the camera really uh tightened up on him and you're just looking at her. It was like, uh, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> like you 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 seem <laughs> off, my lad. <laughs> Um, but He's yeah. very good at nailing the bad vibes. And yeah, I, I yeah. felt like he, um, they nailed everything that's important about David with him, the creepy boy. So, David and his cult have resorted to cannibalism because they can't find wild game. But Ellie, who is four miles away, finds a rabbit and deer within five minutes of going on her first hunt. Lol, okay. It's The Last of Us 2 levels of world building. These people do well because we like them. Those people do bad because we don't like them. It's a big community. Lots to feed, and they were running low on their stockpile of canned food. The deer and rabbit would help, but wasn't like the forest was shown teeming with them, so who knows if they'd get lucky again. David did also explain how he had to roam place to place before due to raiders. He probably had to resort to it before, convinced his more trusted guys of the viability, and now that one of his guys died, figured he might as well not waste usable meat. David is shown to have a weird mindset because of the outbreak. Um, that comment addresses the first thought I had when I read the the original one, which was there's a lot more people. There's like need to thirty feed. of them. It's, it's not necessarily yeah. a matter of not finding deer. It's can you find enough meat to feed a whole town full of people? And they do mention yeah. like they've been going for some time. I, I'm not going to say how long because I don't actually know. I think it may have been mentioned for potentially how long. But how long does a deer feed like thirty people? I would imagine that either the rations, like what each person gets, is many Animal, or it doesn't get very far. Meanwhile, um, Ellie and Joel probably could have lasted on one deer for for a little while. A yeah, a few time, days. Yeah. According to the internet, the average Ohio white-tailed deer yields fifty-two point two pounds of venison. And they do mention they had venison. They had they have forms of meat, and they mix in human with it to beef it up. <laughs> That's a bad use of that word. Oh, well, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that the guy, if you're referring to the dude who walked in and said it's venison, that pretty sure he was No, lying. not that guy. I'm talking about the oh, intro oh, where oh. he says... How much do we have left? Venison. Elk, rabbit. Maybe a week. Two at best. And also, within five minutes of going on a first hunt, we have no idea how long she was out there. That's also true, actually, yeah. But um, the, the, I just, I don't get it. The fact is they are finding game but they're not, they're not able it's to not hunt enough. enough and then the whole like these people do well because we like them these people do bad because we don't like them i don't even know what that means because you could make characters that i could respect that have resorted to cannibalism um it's possible it's gonna be real tough but there are stories where that is basically the only thing you can do to stay alive and it doesn't necessarily involve killing your own team it's just making taking advantage of if anyone dies depending on how you spread out the servings a deer will go a long way but yeah when you got 30 people and especially because there was that part where she got this uh, can slid and they said there's only like five left or something. Only five more left. Hmm. When you can't add things to the meat, you're going to have to have more meat to compensate. So, And, you know, it's not that they all went evil. It's that uh, David's the one that's pushing them and he himself has got a hell of a lot more uh, wrong with him beyond just cannibalism. As much as his role was small, Troy Baker killed it. You can see the uneasiness in his eyes and the hesitation he has when dealing with David. He is clearly his own person and he displays the character very well. I felt uh, he, he did an excellent job yeah, of just coming across yeah. as a guy who's got many years of uh, weight on him. A lot of pain on him, basically. He looks really sad. He yeah. looks really sad all the time uh, and it's sold through the performance. Feels cool when voice actors get uh, live action roles and do well with them. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, he clearly demonstrated his capacity for emotional control doing the voice in the game, so it doesn't surprise me that he. Well, did voice really and well. performance as well. 
uh for motion capture oh mocap mm -hmm. right of course yeah. yeah i found it super bizarre that the rest of the residents just kind of disappear after ellie breaks free and no one bothers to help david out or even assist that being said i still found the episode incredibly enjoyable but am nervously anticipating episode 9's potential changes I feel this episode suffers from being a video game adaptation. In the game, Joel has to face a lot of enemies to arrive where Ellie is. Here he just shows up in the middle of this town with no obstacles. The fact that no member of the community is around to notice him and Ellie hugging in the middle of the street was kind of meh. And the fact that no one notices the building is uh, being on fire dot dot dot. Kind of hard to believe. I'm in love with the acting, though. This one's interesting, because we did kind of talk about it. Apparently this town isn't in, like, the, this this building isn't in the center of town, and there is a, I don't know if I can call it a minor blizzard happening, and this all happens pretty fast. And so it's like, so with those variables, you can uh, wipe out at least a few of the onlookers that may turn up, but I am in the They'll camp probably also. probably be inside anyway, trying to keep warm. If you're not doing anything... And you might just be sitting around inside, hanging out. And the building did burn from the inside out, which might take a while. Oh, know? and uh, I don't um, think anyone should have seen Ellie and uh, him hugging. They were on the out, uh, outer end the of the building, water side. away from the town. Yeah. I think the more relevant point would be that it seems like a bit of a missed opportunity to not have some sort of reaction from a few residents in the town, because yes. wouldn't it be interesting if some people saw it and turned their back on it and left because they knew that David was there? And they that, just I, didn't I don't know about that, because the fire is, is a big danger potentially true, to everybody. True, true, but, yeah, Especially uh, if you don't have a lot of food yeah, and yeah, foods in that building. Actually, I guess... More so that, at the very least, getting the reactions of the town could be interesting. I'm trying to think of how I might try and implement it. Certainly getting reactions, people looking out and being like, oh no, that sort of thing, and, and being like, oh shit, what do we do, and panicking. But maybe one or two guys heading in with guns that Joel manages to see ahead, avoid in terms of them seeing him, and then he hits on the back of the head with the pipes style stuff. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I, I, think, I think you could do that. I think that would work. So. I think... The impression I get in terms of the feeling of bizarreness is that there is a David has a pretty definitive end, but like that community, they don't really have an ending. We don't really see what the resolution is for that community, which I don't know that we necessarily need to, but it almost seems especially because seem, there seems to be innocent people there. Yeah, yeah uh, like they people all who seem are, to be have been victimized um, by David. I think a very few of them know about the eating humans thing. Well, and then there's um, you know the people in the community who have been directly victimized by him as well. Yeah, we just don't know. I guess the story is not really about them, but they were in the story a couple times. There is this element that a number of them wanted to protect people from David, but they couldn't muster up enough courage to just shoot him and kill him so i kind of agree i think that is a bit of a weaker part to the episode that's all mm -hmm. i think someone in the chat for your last premiere said that joel killed everyone on his way to the restaurant that happened. <laughs> well no game, like i think did, to, but... to excuse the <laughs> oh, oh right, right in the right, show yeah. but it, but it would be faithful to game joel because that's what he would do is kill fucking everybody <laughs> i love the idea that, uh... going through each house there's like a little kid playing with toys he's like die you're part yeah. of the problem kid i guess it's interesting the second part comment highlights the difference of the video game adaptation because we've seen it throughout the season you just have less like violent encounters in the show because justifying beyond a gameplay context like the body count of the last of us the game is going to be real hard in like yeah, a live action it's, it's like a, if you're yeah. making a call of duty video game or something like that like the idea that this one soldier kills hundreds of the enemy with small arms is just like that just doesn't happen really yeah the encounters mm. are a lot smaller and there are less of them and so having Joel or Ellie have encounters like they had during the winter section of like mowing through 50 people respectively. Like, yeah, it's, it just was never going to happen. To address the obvious response to that, wow, so you've made it either we get none or all. And it's like, no, 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 just highlight oh, that. I mean, that would be a very interesting conclusion to draw from what I said. I guarantee <laughs> you someone's saying it. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, a healthy balance would have been neat. And we've talked, I think, last episode about how we would have liked more encounters as more well. More zombies. It would have been nice to spread everything out a bit more. I, I'm honestly on the point of saying, like, I think double the size of the entire show probably would have been better. I could have gone for more episodes. Yeah, me too. One of my favorite moments in the game isn't a cutscene. It's when Henry's about to bail on Joel on the bus and Ellie jumps back down. We stay together and Joel stops dead in his tracks looking at her thinking the same thing I am. Oh shit, she's built different. And it's all animated into the gameplay. Um, it's a shame we didn't mention this in episode five, I think. This doesn't show up in this in the show, but it does in the game. But there is something that shows up in the show that doesn't show up in the game that feels like possibly their change. 
So as just just mentioned, I, in fact, play the clip, future me. Okay, we gotta get him up. Uh, I'm sorry. We're leaving. What? What's this bullshit? Hey, now! What the fuck, Henry? <sighs> we stick together. There it is. Beautiful. That's the game yeah. version. In the show, there is no moment where Henry and Sam have a chance to, you know, risk their lives to help Joel and Ellie up on a bus and get out of there, and they instead opt to uh, leave them. Instead, they have a moment where Ellie falls in front of uh, the incoming Kansas City people, and uh, Henry runs out, grabs her, and gets her to safety, and Joel sees it. And I always thought, like, oh, that's an interesting, because that, that's kind of similar to what happens in the game, except they've gone the other direction. And I think the point of that is is to inform later when Ellie is free and clear and Joel has her covered, she looks over at Henry and Sam and then she looks up at him and then back at them. And then he makes an expression of like, uh, fine. And I always got the impression that that's Joel saying like, after what Henry and Sam have done, yes, we will try and save them. It seems to me like that's a different beat that they've ran with instead of uh, this one from the game, which, you know, I, I really like this game one as well. The only thing I don't like in yeah. the game at this section is how Henry saves them. If you remember, they jump off a bridge and they're in the water and then I think Joel gets knocked out in yeah. like rapids, essentially. And then we, we just wake up and it's like, yeah, Henry saved both of you. And it's like, how the fuck did Henry save you both? What if yeah. you can't swim? What if he was knocked out at a very big man? Like to, to the idea that he jumped in, grabbed you both and swam you to safety? Very hard to believe, yeah. but um, no, I, I agree. I, I think this it would have been cool to have kept this moment. If the worry was that it takes away from Sam and Henry being sympathetic, I'd be like, you don't have to worry about that. This is a very normal thing that they do in the game, uh, you know, like a normal human reaction. And they do apologize for it later as like a sorry, we panic sort of thing. I do like that bit on the beach that immediately follows that where yeah. like Joel pulls a gun on him. And it's like, you fucker, you left me behind. Hey, you, you know, you would have done the same thing if you were in my position with Ellie. And it's like, oh. Fuck. All right. I guess we'll yeah, you're right. just that, work together. That whole conversation is really good, too. It's, um, yeah. This is what I mean. If you made the whole show longer, we could have had all of these bits and all of the new additions and uh, fleshed out just bits that needed it. The spores not being in the show really hamstrings a lot of Season 2, Last of Us 2 stuff, which is already super weak. The cure's relevancy is because of the spores, as the crew talked about how rare being bitten and surviving the attack, so the cure wouldn't matter much in the show because the show doesn't have spores. The Last of Us 2 stuff really needs a cure, the cure to be a viable thing. They can't really portray what Joel does as something bad since the cure already has super niche usage in the show, while Ellie's desire to be sacrificed for a cure would be stupid since even surviving an attack from a zombie is rare. All in all, I think the lack of spores really Really, really hinders the story of The Last of Us. So I agree with everything you just said. If the ending of that was really hinders the story of The Last of Us 2. I, yes. This doesn't hinder mm -hmm. the story of The Last of Us at all. That's actually why I think season two is going to suffer because it looks like they're going to make similar mistakes. If uh, this world does not really get changed by a cure, we've gone over this. Yeah. I, and I, that's assuming in the games, the spores being an element, which is more contagious than physically having to be bit by it. Yeah. It, well, well, I it's think the probably main thing what, uh, we talked about getting cancelled out was the spores. I think we were like, yeah, it'll make it so you can walk through spores. Yeah, That's cool. None of them in the show. Getting infected. Infected is it's not going to help you. The main concern with infected is getting killed, not getting infected. Whereas just encountering spores, you breathe in, it's like, well, that's it for you. Whereas in this, the only option is infection, basically through like contact with infected. But I mean, regardless, the same issue still persists in terms of the logistics of disseminating a cure and then whether or not the fireflies would even do it. And then, of course, just all of the ways that the fireflies treat Joel badly uh, when he gets there. Joel must have unlocked the passive skill that increases his strength when in critical health. It's called adrenaline. With that injury, he would have been more likely to be in shock. So, why don't we have a chat about Joel's health? Is it viable, all the stuff that he does with the wound he has? Yeah, I mean, what does he do that the wound would prevent <clears throat> him from being able to do? The most physical thing he does is stab a guy from behind and basically just hold on, hold the knife there. And that is clearly something that he, you know, labors through doing. Of course, if he was to shoot people, that wouldn't have mattered, but we don't see him shooting people. We don't see how he takes out the second guy. The third guy, he sneaks up on and hits with the butt of a rifle. I, I mean, think the, from probably that, the most conclude that he's been ambushing them which is yeah. something I, I mean, really like that they did I, actually yep. i guess the most labor intensive thing that he does is drag those two guys to uh tie him up 
yeah, probably in that happens off screen. I don't know how this these commenters feel, but I can't imagine they're saying this doesn't apply to Game Joel as well. I'm, I, I, I would hope so because Game Joel, I mean, the injury that he's the rebar threw him is really bad. And as if I remember correctly, Joel was in a more or less the same state like during the winter section in the game as he was in the show of being like lying there barely. Able oh yeah, to that's away. that's the day he wakes up, right? But, yeah, uh, I think so. So like, if anything, I appreciate the show going to greater lengths to show that he's struggling. As to whether or not I can fully believe every action he takes it's like i think they've done a lot to show how limited he is compared to normal so i appreciate that as whether or not i know it to be possible what he's doing it's like i guess i i, I can't know for sure i don't know i appreciate the details they added to make it seem like it was difficult like when he executes that first one in the torture scene he like almost lays on him like he puts the knife in and he's like laying on him and the chair struggling to get back up which I, mm -hmm. I like that as well. Like, it's like, yeah, this is tough stuff. Game Joel, of course, <laughs> he, um, he uh, gets around that town. He kills a lot of people. Think, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm mostly okay with both of them. Game. In her moment of rage, fear, and complete disillusionment, Joel rushes in to pull Ellie back to remind her there is a really a safe place, stopping her outburst of emotion and offering her comfort. Show. Nobody comes to her. She wanders outside. Joel sneaks up on her, triggering a fight response out of sheer panic, then comforts her. AKA, why the game is better than a show by a mile. It's a bit weird in the show how Joel just wordlessly grabs Ellie from behind when he has an opportunity to call to her from a distance, compared to the game where he grabs her to stop her from further mutilating David's body, and also says, Ellie, stop, it's me, at the same time. My head cannon tells me that's because Joel is a bit woozy in the head from his wound, thus not thinking uh, clearly. He seemed coherent enough when he was interrogating the two guys, though. I agree, but maybe there's an argument for that Joel wouldn't want to call out to her in case it brings more attention to them. Then again, when he grabs her, I think Ellie yells, let go of me, so... I don't think that's a great defense. I would have had Joel try a few more times to get her attention more discreetly before having to grab her. Ellie's just gone through a traumatic event, which is why she takes a bit to realize that is Joel. Yes, he can control his own volume. He cannot control hers. The argument still stands. Could have whispered it. Joel likely saw her leave the burning building, so my guess is he figured she might have a firearm and attack anybody who got close. Ellie has no reason to believe Joel is up and moving, and she might not recognize his voice in her hysteria, so it's better to grab her than risk getting shot. Yeah, he should have called out, Hey, Ellie, you're the last of us! So it would have made the episode more epic. Ain't this interesting, though? This, the, yeah, the, the, this whole like, back and forth? like they're like talking about things. Yeah, I like it. Like this, this, is, this is what I asked for, yeah. guys, so thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, look at you guys talking I, about it. I think this is very interesting, and um, I uh, I was, when I saw the first comment, I was like, ooh, actually, hmm, yeah, maybe that is kind of dumb. And then I saw the response, I was like, ooh, okay, because this is the kind of thing, it's like, you're Joel, you see the body, you maybe even catch her leaving through the door, like, you when, you're, when you've entered the building, you see her leaving, you, you walk forward, you see David's body, all the blood, and then you're like, oh, fuck, uh, you know, what do you do in that moment, what is the smart thing? And it's like, go, like, call out to her, like, Ellie, Ellie, I'm here, Ellie, or do you wait until you're close to to her so that you can stop her from saying or doing anything that could risk you guys just i was like i think i think i can see joel deciding i should get right up to her and grab her before uh letting her know it's me i, I can understand that choice yeah I, I wondered about that beat too but that the point that guy made about ellie possibly having a gun on her is there i think that's a good point well, something I know, like... i'm thinking about is uh simply a matter of timing though in the game he gets there while that's happening in the show, he gets there a little bit later, right? Like, is yeah. So, and in which case, what would be the criticism that they chose a less potent way of doing it? Well, so this is the big problem we come with with dramatic payoffs, right? It seems that it's built into all of this that it's just better to have him grab her during the killing, but that means you don't get the payoff of her slowing down, stopping, and staring at the body. That's right. They're different payoffs. As for which one's better or worse, it's a little bit complicated. I've always considered when you get to that level, I don't know that I can pick one. I think they're both really good. I love yeah, the fact that I he catches her during, but I also love the fact that she has to sit there dealing with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he could have just come around the corner, or we don't know exactly where he came from or how much time he had to see her. I think it's probably reasonable to say he should have at least, you know, said quietly, called out her name. Having Ellie be on her own for a little bit means that she has to grapple with, uh... 
what's going through her head in that moment in a sense it almost it might be delivering her a little bit more uh in exchange for losing a bit for joel maybe but as for which one's better or worse i don't, I don't know i think they're both great like i i don't take much issue with either and uh, well, i suppose saying though, that if i was shows it's worse by a mile is a bit perplexing yeah that's that's quite a stretch you're not i don't think you're being fair or you haven't recognized the good payoff that the show did give and of course there's alternate ways to have done it in the show that they you know of course could have done but didn't i mean there's nothing that would stop them from having you know like a close up of Ellie's face as she leaves the burning building and then we just hear Ellie being said off screen in Joel's voice and then we see we focus on just her expression as she hears Joel saying Ellie's name like there's there's tons of stuff you could have done but I mean you can only do one of them so what I want to talk about quick before we start up is just what is to be so scared of? And it is pretty much that they make Joel a definitive bad guy in his choice to save Ellie. Now, it probably should be said, you know, the first response I think a lot of people would ask Evap is like, wait, so you're saying you're not allowed to tell that story? It's like, um, no, you can, I think. And we should be able to judge it for its own thing. And what I mean by that, uh, we brought it up before, but Joel, basically everything is set and fine. She, you know, Ellie knows about it and she agrees the cure is very viable. And they explain to him in great detail how they're going to give it out and how important this is and how many lives will be saved. And the, let's make it the most extreme. Ellie may be crippled by it, like mentally, but she'll survive the surgery. You know, like imagine they even said that. And then they were like, and you can hang out with her. You can let her know it's safe and stuff. And you could be in the hospital. And then he's like, no, fuck you and shoots everyone in the head and takes it that would be like the most extreme vision of this and we'd be like wow and then you know he he admits like it's only because i just want you to be perfectly healthy and i hate the world man so you know if they did that it's like so does that ruin the show then and i think i would probably make the argument that i don't think that would be the joel that we've seen built up in the show i i think that would be a little too out of character yep I'm inclined to agree. Right. And so, what's a more reasonable way it could go in a direction we don't want? It's like, well, I think her being conscious is something they could do. I think the Fireflies being reasonable and giving him what he earned by doing this mission and asking him to just, you know, be chill, that, that could be something they do. I'm highlighting these as uh, in comparison with the game where they don't do these things. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, they say, yes, she is going to die from this. And I'm, I'm sorry, Joel. Like, you know, you're just going to have to understand that. And then he's like, uh-huh. And then shoots them all. I'd be like, oh. And I still think I might argue that's out of character. What I'm hoping for is uh, that a lot of it is maintained, honestly. I think keeping the game, because I am familiar with the game's ending, and I think keeping that vibe is the wise way to go. Because the concern is now that we're post The Last of Us 2 being out, we don't want, quote-unquote, retroactively, obviously this is a different continuity, we don't want them to poorly set up The Last of Us 2, essentially. Well, so this is so interesting to think about, because a lot of people are like, well, he, Neil's going to want to make The Last of Us 2 more coherent, therefore the ending of The Last of Us 1 is going to be fucked with. This is assuming that Neil Druckmann himself believes that The Last of Us 1 is incongruent with The Last of Us 2. And he might not. He may not, and we can did all... anybody tell him? <laughs> yeah, we can all we can all believe that uh, he believes. Yeah, it's incongruent, but whatever. I will never I will never admit to that. Or it could literally be that he's like, "You're all nuts. It works." In which case, if this just plays out largely in the same way as the game, we may end up with The Last of Us Season 1 being a really nice package, yep. regardless of what comes in the second season. We'll be able to go beyond saying there's a couple of episodes that are good. We can say, no, Season 1 the is good. The whole season is good, and that it can remain that way, which would be nice. And it's kind of... We've seen some seeds throughout the season being planted, I think, for what they want to do in Season 2, but it doesn't seem like there's been anything very substantial so far in this season that will directly tie into this finale. I, I, I'm not sure what I would latch onto for that, you know? It seems like at this point, the expectation and the want is for it to be as much like the game as, uh, as possible. Yes. I feel like everything else in the season, uh, I don't, I don't feel Joel has been characterized differently enough to justify some kind of crazy ending. I don't, I don't feel that no, at all. I, I agree. So in, in fact, I think it would just feel weird, uh, cause I think they are, whether you like it or not, I do think that they're doing a lot of work to make their relationship really good and to portray Joel as a really good guy in terms of, you know, how he sees Ellie, especially, you know, this, this is the, the last episode, you know, was the one, of course, that this doesn't sound stupid to say, but the last episode was the last one we watched before this one, but this is the, you know, finale. So the last chance they had to have an episode of their relationship ended very squarely in the these two are super together yeah. uh, camp. So to turn around from that and then kind of make him villainous or portray him in the wrong would be an extremely strange creative decision to make. 
What is particularly interesting, though, is that it would be safe to say that TV show Joel is a bit softer than game Joel. Yeah, his default state, I think, is more... It, it's not... They can both go punish or kill mode. Yes. But I think just in, in their normal dealings, yeah, he's a bit he's Hence, a bit softer. they're going to have to, I think, irrelevant of the game, have to justify Joel killing people. They need to have something happen that prompts him to do it. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's and hope I they think do. The longer the season has gone on, I think the more that I'm coming to believe that the finale is going to be more like the game than at the beginning. I think so too. I also believe so. I'm actually kind of hoping here that there's not much change at all. <laughs> like, but yeah, I want them to. I really, I'd like for this episode to be really good. I want, I want, I want a nice, complete, good season of television here. Oh, you guys ready? Yes. Yep. Forty-three minute episode, everybody. <laughs> all righty. Last one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a All cold right. open we back, go. hey. Yeah, we did. All righty. And it's likely for the very reason John highlighted in episode three or four that uh, it's because it's going to be a time Ashley thing. Ashley Johnson. Yeah, that's the voice of Ellie. OG Ellie, yes. And uh, yeah, this is obviously so far back in time that it's suitable to do a cold open for this. This is the thing. I knew she was going to be pregnant because I saw a, a promotional picture for it, and so I knew she was going to be this. So is the idea here, because I don't think we've talked about it, but we can now, that Ellie will be immune because her mother would have been bitten while she was pregnant? I don't know. I know that there was a comic that uh, was released alongside the original game that I think dealt with Ellie's mom, but I haven't read it. That's interesting. It's an interesting idea, right? That's, You'd be like, oh... Because how many pregnant chicks are going to get bit by yeah, zombies, that's... not killed, and deliver their baby healthily? It's, it's also, an idea. I noticed a, uh, a little firefly uh, thing painted on the water tower. Mm. So I'm guessing this is a firefly safe house. Because you could say, it's kind of like Blade, right? Isn't the reason he's a half vampire because his mum was bitten while he was in a womb? I think that's yeah, the story right Yeah, I think right that's now. right. Sad, because uh, I don't think they've ever tried to justify why she's immune in the games, have they? Oh, I think you said we there was a... We never saw it in the game. My Vasa is broken. You need to find yourself She's a weapon. A chair. Push out that baby! I don't know, is that something you want to do right now? <laughs> is it I that zombie? Up, I don't know if it, it might not be up to her. Ah, <gasps> oh, it's the switchblade. That's kind of neat. I don't know if it's the same switchblade, but I assume it is. Man, this is a real fun situation to be in, huh? Can my day get any worse? And then it starts raining. Jesus. The stress, she didn't even know. Yeah. This sort of happened. And there's the bite. Yeah, cutting it that close, I think, is the way you try and justify how the baby didn't turn into a, uh... She fucking told me. Maybe breast milk, after getting bit, could be a part of it as well. I don't think the character should do that, though. Like, they should know. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. What a uh, what a set of emotions to clash together at the same time, though. Um, oh look, yeah, well, maybe. Also, there's a ticking clock. I'm I'm dead, like in a day. Well, and what a performance! She's got life. like three minutes to be in the show, and she and has she to do that. She was excellent. Yeah. Because you know we know her well from Avengers 2012, of course. Captain America saved my life. Wherever any of them are, I would just I would want to say thank you. I think I, it's just funny. That's the only other thing I can reference. Like, uh, I think that she was uh, Ben Ten's cousin in. Is that the yeah? Ben Ten. <laughs> it's just, it's funny. Outside of Ellie's voice acting, this is this is probably the most impressive thing I've seen her do. It's just like good for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm I think just you know the meta back. element of Ellie's voice actor giving birth to yep. the character Ellie in the show. That's pretty yeah, symbolic, that's yeah. Well, it's just I saw, nice that they brought voice actors back. I saw someone say, like, how fucking insulting and detrimental to the whole IP that they had Ellie kill the voice actor for, for Joel. Like, that's so fucked up. In the previous episode, it's like, oh, come on, he's playing the character. He oh, did it really well. Oh, he's that guy. What a weird thing to read into it. I know. <laughs> Neil Druckmann was behind the camera going, hee <laughs> like, <laughs> calm down. Did they say this for Tommy's voice actor? Probably, but well, if, when he got if you're gonna... Ripped off by the bloater. <laughs> I don't we'll see. So. 
our reactions, I was just like, hey, <laughs> like, I never felt that was Craig his reaction Evan too. And Neil Druckmann. Oh, written by both of them, was it? Yes. Well, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you have a bad reaction to those things, surely you'd have a good reaction to the symbolism of that. Oh, Marlene. Come on, Marlene. He's back. He's gonna be in a lot of this episode, I'd imagine. Well, we haven't seen her since episode two. Mm -hmm. no. The one. Or was it just oh, one? Just yeah, one. Just one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. <gasps> the infected broke through a gosh darn window. They're so uncivilized, they never use doors. Point that at uh, Marlene well, with your finger on the trigger, okay? I like how gun discipline oh, is just Oh, she's got a constant got a K bar. Is that like a cereal bar? Uh, yeah, crumbs everywhere. <laughs> Do not eat in bed. Do not only eat K-Bars, guys. Oof. Do only eat outside. So I guess we're still in the past. They're looking for the mother, right? Well, yeah, because this is going to be the how does Ellie get to the Fireflies of Marlene. Because she's going to be close to turning at this point. Oh, damn. She was about to kill herself. Oh, God. It's not your fault. We were delayed getting out of the zone. I know. She's hungry. I didn't want to nurse her. Oh, there you go. Smart idea. I cut it before I was bit. That would be a lie. Four. Take her with you. And plus, Boston. I mean, like if the baby turns, like That's hopefully it won't kill anybody. So <laughs> you should be you should be okay. You ever see Zack Snyder's Daughter of the Dead, Rex? No. <laughs> There's a I'd... zombie baby in that film. Her name's Ellie. I can't. How long have we known each other? You better fucking take this baby. I was bitch. gonna say you better fucking do it. Will you pick her up right now? And then you kill me. I wonder well, if being bit on the thigh would speed up the process because of how big the blood vessels are in your thigh. Well, we saw the diagram. Basically, the closer to the head, the quicker the infection. No, closer to the head? Please. I believe closer to the head, the quicker the infection, yes. Yeah, okay. that's what the page said. Because, yeah, none of this, none of this is in the game, but, uh, no. I think it's a but worthy addition. Marlene did say, Marlene did say that she knew Ellie's mom, or that she, she knew her since she was a baby. Well, and this is just another example of where the TV show can do some extra stuff. Well, just giving, this is just all things to help humanize Marlene. Also, yeah, Ashley Johnson for, what, five minutes... Excellent. Yep. Yeah, very, very good job. And also, Marlene, very good too. Just what a traumatic birth into this fucking world, eh? Yeah. Welcome. That was really cool. We are running out of time, though. Yeah, you gotta get a move-on oh, episode. Hope... We're already yeah, done. Yeah, that's the thing. That was, that was legit short. good. 30 minutes it's remain. Short episode. Yeah, like that, that was... is... That's not a lot of time. Yeah, like that was really good. Don't get me wrong, but this, we have this things to do. This portion of the game, this portion of the game is a fair deal longer than 30 minutes. Yeah. Um... Ellie! Did you hear me? Ellie! Ellie! Did you hear me? No. What? Beefaroni, Chef Boyardee. Oh, cool. No. What? Look. Hospital. This is where we get off. Have you ever played this? Boggle? It's a word game. Mm -mm. If you want to beat me at something, it would be this. Feel that breeze, huh? I tell you, on a day like this, I just sit on my porch, pick away my sex drink. Getting close. Mm -hmm. Hospital that way may be the one we're looking for. Got it. Boggle! It's a boggle. <laughs> played this? Yes. Boggle? What's wrong, Ellie? What's on your mind? I wonder. Right. You seem uncharacteristically not sarcastic. Joel is, uh, well, it is characteristic based on all of the development, but very, uh, warm and concerned. Well, I, I very much like this, and doing all the stuff before is gonna help accentuate what's happening here. She's thinking, obviously, about the end of the trip, and what's just happened. He, on the other hand, is trying right. to make her feel better. Yep. Good flip. He trusts her, gives her the gun now, doesn't even have to think about it. I can, you know, give Ellie a gun. He had a guitar in that RV. It's all smashed up, but got me thinking. Yeah, once we're done with this whole thing, I'm gonna teach you how to play guitar. Yeah, I reckon you'd really like that. I was thinking maybe I could teach you. I bet you'd be great at it. Mm -hmm. You wanna learn how to play guitar? What do you say, huh? Ellie, I'm talking to you. Huh? Oh. 
Yeah, sure, that sounds great. Ellie. Hmm? Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Joel's so much more loquacious ready. compared to how he was at the beginning. Oh, he's so no, open to now, yeah. Brother. I mean, this guild saved his life, so... Hmm? Yeah. They've just been oh, together yeah. many months now, you know. I just think that's one of the bigger things that happened that changed That'd stuff. Obviously, she'd saved it before, but the effort she took to save it the second time was pretty insane. Yep. Yep. It's like, yeah, it's it's that sh it's that life debt shit where you're just like, yeah, I trust you completely. Like Jar Jar Binks owes <clears throat> um, Qui Gon Jinn a life debt. Is it melancholic the fact that any reference to like his guitar, or things that'll happen after the events of this episode, make me sad? Yeah, well, it does. It makes like me sad too because the, I'm worrying. The very the end of the Last of Us is Ellie having lost two of her fingers, can't even play guitar anymore. God, I hate that ending. Why? Because she actually gave up on the, you know, end of the cycle of violence and her reward was she still lost everything. We'll talk about that some other day. <laughs> I was thinking we blast our way through that rubble. I found some dynamite in that RV back there. Really? No, so we're gonna cut through that building. I had you going, didn't I? It is such an interesting shift in the dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Much and it also quieter. speaks a lot that I don't like it that Ellie's sad. Yep. You know? I was like, I don't like because seeing by this like point, this. I just would be surprised if you weren't endeared to her, regardless of, you know, whether you'd play she's the game or She's been through so much. She's a, she's a trooper. Yep. That fucking Maybe stalks out, do you hear that? <laughs> uh, I think you're right, yeah. I think That's so. one of the most common openings of a thing sound ever. It's usually for doors, I think. If I get you up there, you can drop that ladder down. Maybe we go through that way. Hey, that's, that a, that's a fun little reference. Look, video games. Everything all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, you just kind of seem extra quiet today. Okay? Yeah, fine. Just you kind of seem extra quiet today, so... Oh, sorry. No, it's not... It's fine. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Did you hear what I... Yeah, boost. Got it. Ellie. What? The ladder. Come on. Right. You got it? Yeah. Oh yeah, another thing we got to mention, I'm, I'm very much hoping for the giraffe payoff, but the curiosity will be if they do CG or not. I think they can, they'll spring for some real giraffes. I don't know. I don't know if it's a matter of like what you can pay for versus what you're allowed to use in certain yeah. places. Or you it think could, it could a, be a combination like a of both giraffe around here? that may prevent like, it. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I, if, if you ask me to bet on it, I'd say it's going to be CG. It's going to be CG. Probably. Yeah. It's just easier to control. It's just, yeah, it's it's kind of sad. I mean, but, <laughs> think about all the, um, you know, all the giraffes out there that, you know, want to make it big. Yeah, she's seen the giraffe, isn't it? Cool. Oh, where's 
it off to? Here, come on, let's go. Oh, where's she going? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Did she see the shadows on the tarps like a velociraptor? <laughs> Good reference. I don't know why you'd make it. Uh, I don't know. Damn, how tall are these fucking giraffes? <laughs> <laughs> she saw like this enormous head. Come like on. the neck is many stories tall. Unless yep, there maybe it she, is. she heard it yep. or something. This is probably I'm gonna quite well utilized yeah. considering her current state of mind as well. Oh, that giraffe looks really good. I imagine that this giraffe was born um, after, you know, the apocalypse. So this is a free range giraffe. No. That's a very good looking that's giraffe. That's a very good looking real. giraffe. It would be from the zoo, right? I, th I assume that's what this I think that's where they're yeah, from in the game, yeah. Well, yeah, but this one, I mean, it's 20 years. This one is. Uh, well, how long does the giraffe live? Is, uh, well, it's kind of the nature of the whole thing, right? That nature is. Uh, it's kind of the nature of nature. <laughs> nature is, yeah, exactly. That nature how long is, those like, tongues are. Oh, mm, give me that leaf. Look at that, look at that giraffe. Yay, she's happier. <laughs> the giraffe doesn't want to eat you and stuff, it just wants to be chill. Is that like a is that a, a real giraffe? That looks really good. I wonder if we're gonna see a zebra that's real cut up. <laughs> like, don't, just, just don't do that's, it. Joe. That's the cl that's the closest thing to a sorry that we're ever gonna get is a dead zebra, <laughs> like nailed to the wall. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like on a cross. Or something. <laughs> So, is this everything you were hoping for? Is it everything you hoped for? It's got its ups and downs. It's got its ups and downs, but can't deny that view. You can't deny the view, though. This rooftop looks very similar yeah. to the game. Yeah, this whole environment, yeah, it's Can't really similar. Super detailed. Call back! Is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, you can't deny that view. But man, you can't deny that view. We did it! No, here's the convoy. I don't know exactly where this hospital is. Yeah, we'll find it. Maybe there's nothing bad out there, but so far there's always been something bad out there. We're still here, though. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? We don't have to do this. I just, I want you to know that. What do you mean? What else are we supposed to do? <sighs> What's the other option? Go back to Tommy's. We forget about the whole damn thing. After all we've been through. Be done with this whole damn thing. After all we've been through. Everything I've done. It can't be for nothing. Everything that I've done. It can't be for nothing. I know you mean well. I know you want to protect me. You have. And when we're done, we'll go wherever you want. Tommy's, Sheep Ranch, the moon. I know you mean well, but there's no halfway with this. Once we're done, we'll go wherever you want. We'll follow you anywhere you go. Okay. Well, I ain't leaving without you. So let's go wrap this up. We finished what we started. We don't have to do this. Yeah, that's that's just him being like, you know, can we can we not do it? This is the big thing about the story, right? It's the discovery that why are we alive? It's like it to have moments like this with each other. It's not about like he's so much less focused now on like some grand mission. He just I wants to hang out with her. Tommy's sheep ranch. The, the moon. moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the moon. 
dream of sheep ranches on the moon. I will. You ain't cargo no more. Alright, we're nearly halfway. Firefly's gotta get in here. Yep. Unless the, I mean, do you think the structure is going to be cliffhangers with what he's going to do in our season two? No, no, no way. I mean, <laughs> no, the ending is definitely going to take us right back to where it ends in the game. Yeah, there's, God, could you imagine? That would, I think that would piss people off. Definitely looks extremely good. Post-apocalypse vibe is like they I was nailed about it. To say, set, the set design is incredible. The set design, it's, yeah. Yeah, this looks in amazing. You know, there's just weeds and plants growing up growing up everywhere we got a bit of rubble things are and torn. the visual effects of the backgrounds are super well integrated yes they look very good i don't imagine like the kind of effort oh. it takes to do that but it looks great i, mean, I think this, we only got the show like, was uh, filmed over the course, of a, the course of a year i think it was filmed over the course of a year outbreak had a long production the timeline they put these places up all around the first few days after the outbreak emergency medical camps so this place takes me back how so? It was right after everything went down. I ended up in a triage just like this. They had me in one just like this. With Sarah? No, she was gone already. Oh. Everywhere you looked, you just saw families torn apart. Whole damn world seemed to have turned upside down in a blank. It's for this. Not the guy who shot and missed. I figured that would have happened later. No. Nope. Is that after you lost Sarah? Yes, it was. Well, I gotta hand it to the army people. They were way better at stitching you up than I was. I was the guy who shot and missed. I can't imagine losing someone you love like that. Losing everything that you know. I'm sorry, Joel. Sarah died. And I couldn't see the point anymore. And I wasn't scared either. I was ready. That's okay, Ellie. Went to pull the trigger, I, I flinched. Still don't know why. Hey, Joel, I got something for you. Here. Maria showed this to me, and I, uh, I stole it. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you all this is... I know why you're telling me all this. Yeah, I reckon you do. I hope you don't mind. So time heals all wounds, I guess. It wasn't time that did it. you try I guess you can't escape your past <laughs> thank you well, I'm glad that that didn't work out me too in the Sarah? game this is where Ellie gives well, Joel the photo of Sarah that she oh. found I wonder if they'll do that so what was wrong with you also she can talk about she Sarah was... and it doesn't bug him uh, that is yeah. I think a similar sort of realization in the game where it's like damn they yep. really have come far yep. then Look at Pedro right there. Look at him. Dude, everything's ready for the payoff now. Yeah. We, we could have had two seasons of a Mandalorian like yeah. this. Imagine. Imagine uh, his fucking yeah. cargo in the game was a person this old and this aware. Yeah, someone he could fucking talk to and that could talk to him. Not some stupid green baby. <laughs> Boggle. Do you know what I'm in the mood for? What? Shitty puns. People are making apocalypse jokes like there's no tomorrow. Too soon? No, it's topical. <laughs> it's topical. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> Moon rocks taste better than earth rocks. Why? Meteor. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's fuck a, you. That, that was actually good. Fuck you. That was actually all right, good. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Grape. Say to the purple grape. Breathe, you idiot. You look appealing. <laughs> Come on, that's not bad. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I'll oh fuck. Five. Five out of ten. I appreciate that he uh. He covered her. He, yeah. They're the fireflies. Yes, they are. And we didn't do the the water, yep, the are, swimming payoff. They no are bus. being uh, they're being dicks.
Oh, whether or not she's conscious. Oh, I'm very scared right now. These are going to be a tense few minutes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, this is it. This is it. The conversation with oh, Marlene is everything. Keep an oh, eye on them subtitles, everybody, because I'm probably yeah. going to be talking a lot about every single thing they say. Uh, yeah. Hi. Welcome to the Fireflies. You got hit pretty hard. Welcome to the Fireflies. Sorry about that. They didn't know who you were. Patrol didn't know who you were. And Ellie? She's all right. They brought her back. <sighs> Where's Ellie? She wasn't hurt. Not even a scratch. She's mostly worried about you. You came all this way. How'd you do it? It was her. How'd you do it? It was all her. <clears throat> She fought like hell to get here. She fought like hell to get here. She would have been dead on day one. Maybe it was meant to be. <clears throat> you are the one person I never wanted to be in debt to. But I owe you. I pretty much lost everything. And then you show up and somehow we find you just in time to save her. Maybe it was meant to be. We all owe you. Just take me to her. I can't. She's being prepped for surgery. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care I of her. I worry. Just let me see her, please. What surgery? You can't. She's being prepped for surgery. The hell do you mean, surgery? Our doctor, he thinks that the cordyceps in Ellie has grown with her since birth. Why is she in surgery? Doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. It produces a kind of chemical messenger. It makes normal cordyceps think that she's cordyceps. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. A vaccine. He's gonna remove it from her, multiply the cells in a lab, and then we can give it to everyone. But it grows all over the brain. It does. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. A cure. Find someone else. There is no one else. Cordyceps grows inside the brain. It does. Listen, you were gonna show me where- <clears throat> Stop. <clears throat> Find someone else. There is no one else. She's being prepped for surgery. Uh-oh. Mm. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. It could be. Sure. Could be. Mm. We're okay so far. Cordyceps grows inside the brain. It does. Is she awake? Is she awake? Is she awake? We didn't tell her. We didn't cause her any fear. There no. won't be any pain. Find someone else. There is no one else. We didn't tell her. We didn't cause her any fear. There no. won't be any pain. They didn't tell her. her. You take me to her. They didn't uh, tell her. Well, they didn't tell her. She doesn't know. Yes! <laughs> what? And it's exactly... Yeah. I get it. But whatever it is you think you're going through right now is nothing to what I have been through. Any pain. No, you take me to her. You take me to her right now! Oh! Oh! I knew her since she was born. I promised your mother I would look after her. Then why are you letting this happen? Please, you don't understand. I was there when she was born, Joel. Because this isn't about me, or even her. There is no other choice here. I promised her mother that I would save her child. I promised. <sighs> so I do understand. I'm the only one who understands. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that bullshit. I'm sorry. I have no other choice. I do. Please, you don't understand. I do. Was that intro? I was there when she was born, Joel. I have no other choice. I do. It's a choice. Uh oh. March him out of here. He tries anything, shoot him. Walk him out to the highway, leave him there with his pack. Give him this. Don't wait. 
embrace this gift, Joe. If he tries anything, shoot him. Walk him out to the highway, leave him there with his pack. Give him this. If he tries anything, shoot him. Oh, deal's been well done. It's a little bit different, but they're not giving him the weapons. Like they're not giving him what they agreed to. Yeah, it's still it's everything's here. The only thing that's I different. I think it was just the pack, just the pack. That's it. The only thing that's different, really, is that they've made the potential for the cure clearer medically. Yes, but otherwise, it's more or less. I mean, if the game didn't exist, I would expect him to now do the thing he does in the game. And I'm on his team, by the way. I am, yeah. They didn't tell Ellie. This is super they didn't, they didn't tell Ellie. They, tell they fucked Ellie him or... over completely, and they clearly don't give a shit. And then we can go into all the political reasons for why this is fucked up. Whatever she agreed to, she didn't I understand didn't what she was agreeing to. No, and then they've probably put her under. Yep. Go well, fuck them. And like they're the Fireflies. They are. They are. We've been told throughout this season they're assholes in terms of what they do to gain. So what do you think they're going to use this for? I like this. You know, the this face. You know? Keep walking. I said, keep walking. I said, keep walking. Where is the operating room? Fuck! Where is she? Fuck you. I ain't got time for this. Where? Where? Top floor, the far end. I don't have time for this. I like that this is happening at the bottom of a dark stairwell. It's like he's descending in it into yeah. what he knows he has to become to do this. Ammo. Yep. Take a couple mags. They both use the same mags, so it's not a problem. This is, I think this is a scene that a lot of people have wanted for a while. This is gonna be Punisher Joel, basically. I like him shooting through the window. Because glass isn't bulletproof. I like these editing choices too. Yep. Yep. Music is pretty foreboding as well. Yeah, yeah it is. This to me it's just that, seems like, like a, you've brought this upon yourselves. You're gonna execute him anyway. Yep. This is exactly what we've been talking about throughout the entire season. It's been properly given that if you fuck with him too much, he doesn't have any limits. Oh, this is, yeah, this is, uh, this is him real scary. It's just coming between a man and his daughter, that's what this story's about. I love that this is kind of a montage of just, like, mayhem. Well, yeah, and, and like I said, the music choice, the tone here is like, did this have to happen? It's like, there's so many reasons how it didn't, but it did. Yeah. We're going to have to have are. our showdown at the end, yeah. Oh, this, is, this matters a lot. This yeah. doctor. <laughs> yep. Is there a little girl in this room who's like, Daddy, no. <laughs> are we going to do it? Should if do there's it. a zebra in this room, that'll just... That'll just be, be it. <laughs> the whole way. Good job, Pedro, in this whole season. Good yeah. job. Yep. He's That's been exactly. fantastic. Unhook her. <gasps> Sweet Jesus. Doctor? What are you doing in here? I won't let you take her. This is our future. Think of all the lives we'll save. How did you get in here? I said unhook her. I won't let you take her. No! Hey, you fucking animal! Harry, shut the hell up! Come hook her. <laughs> Move! Just, oh my god. Come on, baby girl. I got you. I got Shit. Well, there you go. Yep. You picked up a scalpel, my good man. 
Yep. He does spare the rest. Cover oh, well, I guess, is it up to you in the game yes. whether or not you spare the these game, doctors? It's, it's, uh, you don't have to, it's just the doctor. Turn well, around. I presume they're all doctors, but it's just the guy. That shot is important for next season. Yeah. Yep. Don't have to deal with that shit now, though. <laughs> That's not... No, and it seems like they're not going to. No. Nope. Which, uh... Where is Marlene? I bet I think I know what's gonna happen. Have you ever seen it before? No. Can't keep her safe forever. You can't save her. Even if you get her out of here, then what? No matter how hard you try, no matter how many people you kill, she's gonna grow up, Joel. How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? That is, if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. How long till she's torn apart by infected or murdered by raiders? Because she lives in a broken world that you could have saved. It ain't for you to decide. It's what she'd want. Maybe. But it isn't for you to decide. Or you. And you know it. So what would she decide, huh? Because I think she'd want to do what's right. And you know it. Look. You can still do the right thing here. Even after what you've done, we can still find a way. She won't feel anything. Editing is straight out of the game. Yeah, straight out of the game. Yep. One to one. What? It's alright. You're with me. Take it slow. Uh, what the hell am I wearing? Just take it easy. The drugs are still wearing off. The drugs are still wearing off. I was with the fireflies and then what drugs? What happened? They were running some tests on you. And some others. We found the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you. People that are immune. Dozens of them. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. There's dozens, actually. And the doctors, they couldn't make any of it work. Ain't done a damn bit of good, neither. They've actually... They've actually... They've stopped looking for a cure. They've stopped looking for a cure. I'm taking this home. Clothes. Raiders attacked the hospital. I barely got you out of there. We'll find you some new ones on the way. I'm sorry. Are people hurt? Yes. Is Marlene okay? I'm taking this home. Just come after her. Something they did in the game, and I think they're doing here, is that Ellie is clearly not stupid enough to not think something's this, going on yeah. here. 
Well, something's up. You just come after her. That flaming was yep. identical to the game. Just exactly the same. All of it, one to one. And now we're back to heading back, back to Jackson. Tell, yeah, hitting these landscapes. I will say that we were worried about the um, the amount of time, but they were quite expeditious. Uh, yeah. I think it was like John pointed out the uh, the montage of the uh, fight at the hospital. That was a good yep, choice. That was a way to do it. Yep. yep. Like we're walking. Well, she got us close enough. We gotta walk the rest of the way. Should be a straight shot through here. All right. It's actually kind of pretty, ain't it? Yeah. Probably about a five-hour hike. We can manage that. Yeah. All right. Now watch your head going through. Yeah. I got it. Oh, wow. Feeling my age now. Well, Sarah and I used to hike like this all the time. I wouldn't say it was her favorite thing. She wasn't a fan of the mosquitoes and such. I don't think I ever told you, but uh, Sarah and I used to take hikes like this. She would have liked you. Not to say the two of you are the same. But... I think, uh, I think the two of you would have been, been good friends. If you really would have liked. Definitely different kids. How so? Well, she was a lot more. I know she'd like it. I bet I would have. I want to say girly, and I'm not saying that you're not girly. I'm not. No. Down there? Yeah, you're not. So that. <laughs> it's a little bit further now. She had a killer smile. Again, not saying that you don't. But you know why I think she'd like you? Why? Because you're funny. I think you would have made her laugh. Anyway, I bet you would have liked her back. Yeah, bet I would have. Hey, wait. <sighs> Back in Boston? Hey, wait. Fuck. Back when I was bitten? I wasn't alone. Back in Kansas City, you asked me about the first time I killed someone. When I got bit in the mall, I, I wasn't on my own. My best friend was there. My best friend was there. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do, and she says... So... She says, we can just wait it out, be all poetic and just lose our minds together. Let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. And then she did. And I had to. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley and she was the first to die. Her name was Riley. She was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. And then Sam. That's not on you. I know. It... Look, sometimes things don't work out the way we hope. You can feel like... Like you've come to an end. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you... And you don't know what to do next. But if you just keep going, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. You find something new to fight for. And maybe that's, that's not what you want. Swear to me. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to me. 
Swear to me that everything you said about the Fireflies is true. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. I swear. sense that there's some oh it's getting big or maybe it's always been that big it is well tough the to thing really is that tell. jackson looks reasonably big but you don't go to jackson in the game uh in the first one i'll see it, it like from, this right? uh, outside yeah. like this angle yeah and this will be our conflict for season two the Finds thing about this is soon or maybe she never will a lot of interpretations know. from people at the game is that she knows he's lying okay. yeah but she accepts it it's that that's nod. an interpretation that's, uh, yeah that's yeah yeah, um, we did it. Of hey, we did it, everybody. Yeah, we we, we made it. it. We're safe. We season one is complete. Out. We're safe season one for a while. Complete, and it's a nice, good season of television, right there. That's. Uh, I think that's good. Yeah, this is a this is a solid yeah. season, and hopefully the reception to the season. ending will make them think well, about so really carefully what they're going to do with season two. At the beginning of the season, I don't think we expected it to be that, but I mean that was pretty close to the game. There's obviously yeah. differences here or there, but like a lot of the yeah. major beats were there, and I mean, the it's the closest to is, a game as far as adaptations go that we've ever seen. The critical part, though, is the whole conflict there. Oh god, I'm so relieved. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like, oh, yeah, we're there. Oh. All right, cool. Yeah, now <laughs> I will say, the Gotham show without me feeling like shit. This is, this gives me the impression that they will be on script for the Last of Us two the season two. I, uh, I imagine we're going to be seeing it one to one. Hey, yeah, I, uh, I th there is that, but the thing is, it's like, dude, at least we got this, all right? <laughs> we did, we did get it, and this is yeah. I don't know what they're going to do. The, I don't, I, mean, I don't think we're going to get changes that make Last of Us two better. I think it's going to be pretty much one to one. It's it's going to be about mm. whether or not they feel the, the need same, to change certain things a lot of what oh, destroys that game for me gonna happen. is so many small decisions made by characters there's a lot of big ones too but just things that can be changed to improve the story we've said since the mm. beginning you can kill joel you can you just, can do it it's it's always not gonna like be that. probably unpopular but you gotta but that's the thing at if least they, we've got a season one that hasn't been drastically mired by the existence of uh of the last of us part two yeah it's so weird to think that they would take two and know what the reception is to that game, and then do a second mm. season of TV like it. By comparison to what they've done here, which is more or less follow the broad strokes of uh, of the original game. Obviously, some notable changes here and there, broadly following the same strokes. Do they do the same thing with The Last of Us 2 of like the same general structure, the same core theme, the same, you know, lines of dialogue? I'm not sure, but I'm just relieved we've got season one here. In the bag. It's nice and, yeah. It's there. They did it. Great there are flaws. There are plenty. Production. There's plenty of oh, yeah, yeah, praise. Sure. Yep. But my God, um, it came through as a TV show, I think. I think so, too. The one thing um, I guess I'm sad about is I could never else. experience the show without knowing about the game. I'd be curious how that goes. <laughs> yeah, what does that look like? Because had, um, all of us... Uh, yeah. A guest on Open Bar was saying that like his POV was knowing nothing about the games. He was really enjoying the show, and I'd be like, I wonder if it plays better without knowing all of the things that could be, so to speak. Um, because you've I'm literally sure. seen it happen, as opposed to just potential to TV show storytelling, you know? Well, and that this show has the unique thing operating that some people who have played the games are coming into the show like, yeah, and season and, you know, The Last of Us 2 is great. Whereas um, there's some of us as well who are coming into this. Yeah, I really like The Last of Us 1. Not so mm. big fans of 2. And it's hard not to imagine that 2 is influencing 1. But seemingly not a whole lot because there were seeds that were definitely planted for two but they were not substantial yeah and, um, and i get it right the idea being that this is what someone will do for one person right that's what this whole story is about that this is how far he'll go for one person but what if season two what if one of the people he killed was someone that someone else will do everything for you know that's possible what happens then it's like oh that sounds interesting you yep. know <laughs> <laughs> so, if you do that idea, yeah, good. Yeah, that could uh, certainly be quite a story. But I guess that's the thing. We're simply not there yet. Or we've got 
got is uh, this season, and I think they did a really good job. I think, yeah, I think so too. Um, uh, I'm really I happy think... with the performances as well. Like, uh... Oh absolutely. yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. super happy with the performances of basically everybody. I can't think of any weak performances in this this show. And production has been awesome. It's been so nice that they also, you know, brought back the composer, brought back some of the original actors from the game. Really it's, nice it's touch a, that they did not have to do. It is an adaptation that certainly has a greater degree of reverence for the original material than uh, some How, other That's nice to see. How could adaptations? you conclude anything else? Movie, this yeah. is obviously the best video game adaptation from the standpoint of faithfulness. Is there anything that could possibly uh, beat this? Faithfulness, like, I can't think of anything on faith because I think Arcane is the stronger television show. Um, I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I but, but I mean, if you look at other ones, Uncharted was pretty lame. Um, Halo was awful. Mortal Kombat is like, eh, you know, it's not I don't great. Even know, yeah, what's going um, on? Um, and a lot of it is more and Sonic the Hedgehog, is, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, I guess it's more interesting forward looking because we've got a lot of things that are coming now based on, you know, we've got God of War, Bioshock, Years of War, Horizon. There's a lot of uh, mm. Mario Brothers. I'm so out. hoping. Well, this Mario show, Brothers. Mm, what does this that show connect like? as like a big old flagship for the era of, oh, shit, maybe there's something to these game stories. Well, maybe we should pay Arcane, attention to them. Because unfortunately, Arcane being an animated show, unfortunately, it just means that for some reason, a lot lot of its uh, merits just get overlooked by a mass well, yeah, and audience. This is I'm one of the also, most successful shows on HBO. The thing is that the, the League like storylines weren't taken almost directly and put into Arcane. No, this no, was, where this is a very direct adaptation, and it's been a tremendous success commercially and critically. I mean, I it's think, earned it. I, I think so, at this I point. Think um, too, yeah. I think that by the end of this season, I think that the game is... I think I prefer the game still. I still prefer the game too. Yeah. I, um, however, don't scoff at this show. The... This is a good show. No, no, no. I would, I would recommend it to somebody who enjoyed the game or somebody who hasn't played the game. I think that it, it is a matter of there just wasn't as much time. The game got to have more time of just Joel and Ellie moving through environments and talking to each other. This show lost some of that, yeah. and so it's like the game simply has more good material in it. I think. Yeah, it build. It's I mean. just more time to build, and therefore the payoffs uh, will hit harder. Yep. It's just uh, a simple and there's something bit of math, said, I guess. Uh, as well of a game sort of uh more integrating you into you know you're not just watching joel you're playing as joel and then you're playing as elliot certain parts as well i was wondering in the finale if we were going to get a big old horde of infected and if there are complaints about the finale i imagine that might be one of them but it didn't bother me well, because we're... they focused on all the big character stuff all all yes. the important stuff is there it feels to me the yep. same as the previous episode where it's like oh there really wasn't much infected at all and it's like is that a problem it's like well i'd like to see him but no it doesn't mm -hmm. make the episode bad or worse because there's no infected it's like episode five was the big blowout episode with the infected and then afterward it's you know yeah um yeah. and i can see people already right now saying oh yes it's totally fine for the zombie survival show thing to not even have enemies yes that makes sense it's like well i hate genre arguments they drive me nuts <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them either, because uh, they're often weird and confused and um, hard to be consistent about. This show, what everyone I think agrees on, what is what is The Last of Us and IP about? It's like Joel and Ellie, that's what it's about. And uh, they definitely came through on that, certainly in these last two episodes, in terms of what's happening to these two people. Yeah. But yeah, I, I happily concede I would have liked to see more Raider encounters. I would have liked to see more zombie encounters. I would have liked to see more time with everyone. Everyone. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, and yeah, I, honestly I, I think feel like the zombies were a bit sparse. If we'd gotten all those things, if the season was like, you know, 18 episodes. 13 imagine. episodes. I think um, I could you push it to 13 and that would be enough. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. I just mean, fuck it. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's get to, why not have I a 22 it's just episode a season? Matter of, uh, at that point, it's just a matter of how much money is this season going to cost? I don't <laughs> you <know>? care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, make it as, uh, as long as necessary. Well, what I was going to say is, I think it, if we had that and it was as good as this is, if not slightly better in terms of just the, your quality per episode, I'd be happy to call it great. I don't think I'm quite at the position of calling it great. I'm not quite there either. Um, yeah, it's got great things about it, but overall... It's got a lot of great moments, but yeah, yeah I'm not sure I'm there yet. I think there's enough dragging there, it back think. that I would uh, settle on good. It's very good. It is I'm, I'm comfortable good. with good. Definitely. I'm comfortable with good. Maybe teetering towards very good. A lot of the conversations can immediately be about how it compares to the game or whether or not it's stacked up or is it good enough to pass muster when it's like, probably should talk about the storytelling decisions. What happened in this episode similarly to the game? Why are they important? It's like, well, so much effort was put into finalizing and being definitive about what relationship they have. And then you put Joel in the position of what, what's been presented by the Fireflies. And I just think it's crystallized the moment she says, you know, I understand I've got this with uh, her mum. I did these promises, blah, blah, blah. I 
I've really got no choice. This is what I've got to do. Basically, like, I can't change this. And then he's like, I can. And then Joel says, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, you're forgetting about me. I can choose and I'm, I'm going to choose differently than you. I really enjoy the fact that Marlene's not, nobody's stupid enough in this moment to believe, like, it's like, Ah, okay, so you need to get the fuck out then. Like, this is what I mean. I, as much as I don't like the Fireflies, I still get the decisions they're making. I even get the decision yeah. they're making with Ellie. It's just, I'm sorry, you've made it. This is the kind of conflict you fucking love, where you can understand why the decision was made, and now you're like, well, you know what happens next is he fucking kills you. That's what happens next. Yeah, messing with his... His girl. So I, would, I would feel yeah, comfortable huh? at this point saying his daughter. He totally sees her like that. Yep. Yeah. And but then, of course, it's just, you know, of the elements intact from the game, she didn't get to choose. She didn't get to make a real informed choice. Yeah. And there's stuff to think about for exactly why Joel does what he does. And then there's conversations to have whether or not you support his decision or not. But um, people have no and problem with the game. And I doubt they'll have a problem with the show believing no. I would do the same thing if I were a dad in that situation. Exactly. And then, of course, it's uh, the same as in the game, right? With Ellie's, you know, what is her okay mean problem is that in the games we now know that it wasn't quite that uh, yeah of, i can't understate how fucking uh, happy i am yeah. they left it ambiguous in the season one thank you thank yeah. you so much for Which, that uh, that's right that was the good choice because yeah the, as as a viewer whether or not you played the game or not you're just left to ponder mm, does she actually know what's happened and has accepted this does she really believe him it's it's a great ending yeah because uh, i remember conversations about it at first and it's just like the thing the takeaway i had and this is part of what pissed everybody off about the last of us 2 was she knows what he's done she knows why he's done it that's what the, it felt to me that's what the fucking point of that conversation they had up to that point was he's explaining how much he adored his daughter and how much he sees of his daughter in her and she's like ah oh, shit okay look you yeah. killed everybody to save me didn't you and he's like right. no and then she's like Okay. The recognition to me was always a matter of like, you're never going to tell me the truth, and I know why you're not going to tell me. Let's move on. Yeah, this yeah. is not like no conflict here is going to really move this forward. So let's just we, we got something. Let's keep going. And there there is no hesitation on Joel's part in his affirmation of the lie. It's like, I told you the truth. And she she knows just by that. It's like, you're not going to be straight with me are you like i'm not gonna get it out of you so okay all right it always frustrated people as well about the second game that he just he does such a piss poor job of explaining why he made the decision once he has to to her they that's need another to thing. because yeah of that, their objectives yeah. in the narrative he needs to he needs to be bad <laughs> that's how it comes himself. across yeah they because that's thing, the last of us two fight so hard to contextualize joel's actions as like completely inexcusable and and irrational and it has to fight so hard to try and convince the audience of that bending and buckling and breaking at every turn but it doesn't matter what happens in season two at this point because season one it's it's this it's the game not not quite but you know it, it is the game and that it is a complete story it's a complete package and yeah um i assume part of what she was getting at when she was explaining all the people who've died is the that was supposed to come to a real significant point like a cure right but then he cuts her off to say hey, 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 hey. meaning and what we live for and what we fight for it doesn't have to be that it could be anything and it'll be something something will come that makes it all worthwhile you can look back it's like horrible things happen because i i think it's clear to both of them exactly what both of them are thinking about and that's why it's such a great scene and it was in the game and I it is it, there i think it's worth emphasizing that what we've got here in terms of a season of television is one that's really thematically strong it's got great core arcs for these main characters like that is really it's really like intact i feel like that's something i want to emphasize amidst all of the uh criticism being levied at at the show and some of it i imagine just you know stemming from the meta i mean it's worth taking stock of what we've got here as a season of television i'm also curious about the people who think he's like soy beta cuck joel uh, after that hospital scene <laughs> yeah <what laughs> I don't know. Like that, because that was about as far as you're gonna get from soy beta cuck <laughs> joel <laughs> You know? He just fucking annihilated so many of them. And we even had him executing people who were either dying anyway or giving up. Which, yeah, it's just, uh, this is always something I thought there was potential within him. He's, uh, a lot of the scenes where he's holding back, he has the history. They set it all up with Tommy. That's why Tommy didn't like being with him. Was the, this was the shit he would do to make sure they survive. And something else I appreciated, honestly, was that we kind of kept mm -hmm. all of the things that we needed to keep 
the same. I was kind of worried that he might just execute all the doctors and shit. But no, uh, they actually do show uh, the doctor grabbing the scalpel and he's about an inch away from going for Joel and he shoots him. I was like, yes, they did it properly. Because he could have just had it that he was like, oh my, like, what are you doing, sir? And he just goes, boom, 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 boom. This is like, yeah. oh, like cowering in a corner and stuff. They made and sure. Like, Please don't shoot me. Huh? Yeah, they made sure to have everybody he kills be a threat, at least uh, overtly. In some uh, the, regard, the most yeah. one you could consider is the threat surrendering guy, but I'm more than happy to say, like, yeah, you, you're gonna have to, you yeah, can't he, just leave him there. Could, like, yeah, he could, like, pick up the gun when I'm gone and see what's up. Well, it's just, I mean, especially that, when you've got other enemies around with other guns, you need to get rid of him. I, I can understand in especially the... Especially since I think that guy was shooting at him before anyway, like, a moment beforehand. More than likely, yeah. And then he got the jump on him through whatever move. But, um, yeah, there's that. There's, of course, uh, they, they leave him... What do they say? They leave him with his pack and a knife. So, not only are they welched on the yeah. deal, but who knows what else. They, he didn't get his rifle, even. So, it's all there. This show, I almost want to not have the game in my head so that I can better see, like, all the connecting pieces instead of just being like well i know that's there because that's how that worked before i know what you mean yeah i was thinking the same pretty that's happy nice. and oh it could have yeah. gone so much worse it yeah, could have gone been. it could have been terrible it could have been completely re-engineered to fit like a last of us 2 focused mm -hmm. um everyone so. expected it to all be altered to either better fit last of us 2 or to just better fit new values as a storyteller who's doing it again it's like you know what? i changed my mind blah, blah blah i never thought it would be this accurate nope i didn't think so either you saw how we talked about it before it started we were not really expecting this to be good but I'm impressed. Yeah, the same. I like that the showrunners bring in the infected when they need them. Like in episode five, you build up this confrontation between what's her face and her gang and our heroes. And it's like they're outnumbered. They're in danger. At that point, you bring a horde of infected in to kind of disrupt that conflict. And then our heroes take advantage of the chaos to like escape with their lives and in this there is a big old infected segment from the game that was cut out but it's nothing of character was lost all you're really missing from that getting chopped out from this end segment is this sort of last minute panic of like oh god is ellie dead like and also the fact that ellie knowing that she can't swim she was willing to risk her life to save joel yeah and then, like, he pulls her out of the water, and it's like, oh my god, is she dead? Has this all been for nothing? And she's desperately trying to save her. There's a little something there that's cool, but you don't need it. All the important beats were covered. We already know from in the show that Ellie is willing to go out of her way to save Joel's life, given that she, how he, she looked after him in the winter phase when he's, like, in hold Oh, up dude, in it's the, such a dramatic change in attitude that he has with her that you see so yeah. quickly like and we were commenting on it at the time it's just uh it's all supported he's not only feeling incredibly in debt to her and trusts her and kind of loves her at this point he also wants yeah. her to feel better yeah and he knows what appeals to her he's been with her for a while now i just want to say thanks for inviting me to to watch this and talk about this with no you absolutely guys. dude this is this kind of a first because as much as we did the haunting of hill house that's not quite the same as this this was a you know back and forth with the audience taking it week by week checking it out and i think uh i have absolutely no regrets about asking you to come and join us for it thank you for, yeah. for doing that yep, exactly yeah it's been good oh um, man i've been stoked yeah i just hope your chat isn't too sick of me at this point <laughs> but if you are it's okay this is the last one well i can suck it uh, up <laughs> yeah, I hope you're right, chat. <laughs> hope you're doing okay today. We liked it, of, okay, guys? A lot of people think I'm clinically brain dead for liking The Last of Us Part 2, but you guys had me on we anyway. We can talk about that when Season tolerates. 2 happens, right? Well, I was going <laughs> to say, <laughs> you know, I, I will uh, encourage like, bring you back for the coverage of the Season 2 for the TV show, and that will be uh, really... <laughs> That'll really, be interesting, that's yeah. That's going to be something, yeah, because, you know, that, that's going to be weird, because it's, it's just, will they adapt that accurately? And if so, that's... That's even longer than the Last of Us one. Probably Good luck, Craig. <laughs> Good yeah. luck. All right, Craig. I, there's a I lot hope, of people. I hope, Craig, I hope that you understand Ooh, that there are many, many people. People hate The Last of Us too. You well, I'm, really I'm not going to lie. There's no need. I'll just say, like, if everything runs the same and I have to see it again with these two, I'm going to be pissed off as fuck. Yeah, again. this will. Yep. It, it'll be like watching it all it'll over just again. Be the same for a thing. Lot of yeah, exactly. They'll ruin everything that they had worked to build in the first season. And, and John will be there to be like, well, hey, wait. You know, there's some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, fellas. Uh, you've done the one that everyone likes, so now time to do the one that is divisive <laughs> as fucking TLJ. Yep. And on that note, that is the Last of Us finale done. Yeah. The whole season. Woo! Thank you. 
one season So much for down. joining us, everybody. Appreciate it. And um, let us know if you want to see more for these sorts of things with different shows in future. Could do a older ones, could do newer ones. Like I said, I'll happily uh, ask all of you to cover the second season of this whenever it comes out. We got Gotham Knights and Mandalorian are the next ones, so... <laughs> Gotham Knights and Mandalorian. <laughs> awesome. And of course... Took a second to let all that sink in. Yep. And, uh, you know, of course, Batwomans are still going to be coming out. And uh, it might be as well that we eventually get around to watching his story continue into the final season of Flash. That's something I've seen clips of. I could see us doing that at some point. But uh, I got it just, you know, just want to let people know. A lot of work goes into making uh, and editing these. And so, you know, it's not just a matter of like, tick a box and you get that show. Let's just do it. It's like, no, no, it takes like days to not only schedule, set up, download, upload, edit out you know yeah, copyright. copyright and all that yeah we try and bring you as much as we can and hopefully this was a fun adventure for you all you know good work to everyone for ed editing these putting them together good work for making a good show i didn't hate it congratulations i didn't hate it that's a thumbs up and now we can uh breathe a little bit of a sigh of a relief until um you know until yep. season two happens and we're worried again thanks everybody toodle beep thank you good bye. bye 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 Desert Eagle can shoot through any- What'd you bring me?